to play Series 5 here in the Red Bull Gaming Sphere. I'm Rook and I'm joined by Winterio as we're getting ready for our first matchup of the day here. Yeah, and the first matchup, we do have a banger of a game for you. It's going to be one of the semi finals games. It's AEX 1 Nova versus. Uh, it's going to be. Well, that's ranked my team. Demons. That's rank, yeah, Ranked Demons. Yeah, yeah. So that's technically an X core. So we have Tiny Lady and um, some of the players there. They used to play in sort of the mix in Game Changer Series 3, but now they've got a few new players in and, well, they're ready to take on the qualifiers. So this is technically a regional event for contenders for um, the Game Changer circuit in EMEA. And, well, well, the first and second place, they secure this spot in that regional um, playoffs. Yeah, I think that makes it really exciting that these guys really are duking it out for something that matters and, and really brings a lot of credence to it. And I'm really glad that uh, we've managed to make these Birds of Prey events into something so huge yeah. as that. And I mean, that's why we're seeing some absolutely brilliant competition coming your way. Yeah, let's get into it. Absolutely. I mean, coming on into this, right, you were talking about the fact that uh, Ranked Demons, obviously, they're kind of a mix. They've looked good, though, so far, and they're playing up against AEX, who are well, an actual squad. You know, they've got a team, they've got everything, they've got it all going on. Um, and I think it's definitely going to make a difference. And certainly on maps like these, as obviously we're kicking things off with Haven, they're moving to Pearl, and it's Decider heading on over to Lotus. So a lot of, well, sites. We've got eight um, sites over the course of this series, potentially. Uh, and definitely looking forward to that one. Yeah, I really am looking forward to the matchup of Adina and Ikio. Yes, they have a different roles, uh, Adina being a sort of an initiator, having experience on Fade and the Breach, but also Ikio, she's the duelist of um, AEX1, and well, in the last series both of them played, they both went so net positive in their KDs. Ikio going plus 22 in a best of three, and then Adina plus 13 in a best of, well, best of three, but it was a two-map series, it was a 2-0. So, Talking about the um, way those both teams are going to be coming into us, well, Ranked Demons have a little bit more of momentum since their last match was a 2 0 and, well, AX have kind of had a little bit of a longer route into this. They were in a 2 1 series. Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely true. And I think the fact that Ranked Demons coming into this with that momentum, with the kind of play style they have as well, they like that double duelist as well. They love to get aggressive. I mean, they're a mix, right? They're not necessarily going to have the same level of calls as some of these other teams. But with the way they're kind of just playing aggressively and posing a lot of the questions rather than looking for answers, I think that kind of fits them quite well, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And you talked about the duelist. Can we just talk about duelist of Tiny Lady on Ranked Demons? She used to play uh, back when um, ITB Prime was a thing, just before it joined ITB, like when it was just Prime in the, I think they got top eight at some point in game in the actual Game Changers event. So going into this, there's so many heavy, heavy hitters on that team. Yeah, it's got a lot of pedigree, and I think that's uh, definitely going to be a big thing kind of moving on forward, and it's why they've managed to propel themselves so far forward in this tournament so far. And obviously kind of coming on into this, this is the women, win the winners, apologies, the winners semi-finals. So there, there's still a lot to kind of play for, obviously trying to get to those finals and moving on up. But there is still a lower bracket for these teams. They're not quite out of things yet. And we definitely will catch some of that lower bracket, I believe, later, as there's a lot of teams vying for survival in that one as well. Yeah, it's quite nice that you're talking about the teams in the lower brackets. Just in general, this entire tournament, you've seen so many new teams, whether that's, like we said, with ranked demons, they're quite a bit of a mix. But you see so many orgs now back in these Game Changers teams, like you have um, the teams like Wraith, they're making a little bit of a community org for themselves, but let's, it doesn't matter about the other teams in the lower bracket or in the upper bracket. Let's get to the teams that are playing now. Let's get into this agent select. Yeah, definitely looking forward to this one, and I think obviously we're going to see pickups of the things like the Killjoy recently definitely come back into its own, and on Haven, um, it, it has uh, access to a lot of... Uh, kind of just utility in the way it kind of shuts down some of these sites with that ultimate. Ignore the big word split on the screen. We are on Haven. We are going to be sticking to that one. And I think it's going to be a really exciting map because we're focusing on um, those aggressive players. And I think this is a map where they really can thrive. They're going to split Haven with, with the, the aggressive, aggressive players. players. What, what do we think about that one? <laughs> Has us not on broadcast. I have to do some sort it's of right. puns for him. It's sort of like a memorial thing. But <laughs> He's dead. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's dead to the broadcast. <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, let's get into this. We're talking about um, the players, but look at Ranked Demons. They're hovering the brimstone. And yes, Tiny Lady is, well, really well known for her raise. Absolutely phenomenal on this character. But getting the brimstone onto this map is quite interesting since, well, realistically, you're looking at Haven as a lot more slower paced map. You're looking for regen in smokes like you could have with the Astro with multiple stars up to five but 
Well, Brimstone, you only have three, and that's it, right? So if you're going to um, expel some really early into the attacking rounds, then you haven't got much left for the site exec. So it's really interesting to see how ranked humans are going to come into this. If it's going to be, okay, we're just going to hit this site really hard, and it's just really looking how they're going to play around the smokes. But then AX1, they're looking at the very nice comp. You have the Breach and the Jet, um, and the, jet the Sova, Killjoy, and Omen. There's nothing really... What about that comp? Yeah. I think that's a pretty standard one. I think yeah. it is that kind of comparison. Like you were saying, it's a macro game versus a mac no game, right? They're looking for <laughs> hard and fast. And I think absolutely when you got the brimstone, I mean, I mean, sky, comes, it's my, sky smokes come down so darn quickly. It can be very scary sometimes. And again, with a more aggressive style, that might be what they're looking for. It might be their angle to try and take control over this one. But I think it's something you've always got to be very worried about and very aware of your kind of outs for um, for the map. And if you don't manage to capitalize them on uh, capitalize on them properly, Properly, um, it can be very problematic. I think especially on defense, it's going to be particularly punishing. Um, if they don't manage to try and get any advantage early, they could just get completely kind of forced to smoke. And then, okay, well, we're just going to wait for Omen to regen smokes. And then we hit, and then you have nothing to deal with this kind of problem. Yeah, it's, it's exactly that. Like, how are they going to play the Brimstone versus that Omen? Like you said, you have a lot more slower regening with um, Hera on that Omen. But then, um, just maybe, she's got three smokes. That's it. They have to commit to something. But it looks like they are committing to this sort of default outside A. But look at the fast push down mid from EX. Um, Ikio. Yeah, this is not what I expected. I didn't expect the aggression from this side, but Hikio definitely trying to get something down there, but does not manage to hit. And with Ella, they do back up. They don't commit too hard towards this good usage of utility here with the boom bot, and they manage to take Ella right off the board. That's the kind of advantage they're looking for, and they even catch Koneko as they go around the corner. The frenzy wasn't enough, and with 4 HP, Hikio under a lot of pressure, but there is some respite, but it's not enough as those frags come through quickly for ranked demons. And taking a little bit of a reset now, they're going to pivot straight towards see three versus one Kray has a frenzy in hand we know how well damaging this gun can be on pistols rounds reveal as well but oh, already coming out now from ranked demons they know exactly where she is all now going back towards long it's going to be really tough for her to win in this situation is indeed trying to get some of that information but obviously at the longer range that frenzy is going to be even more difficult to make work and with players just ready willing and waiting for a chance to really peek out on that one yeah, it's going to be difficult for Korea. I, I like the fact that EEX, okay, managed to get aggressive, managed to find some success, uh, at least early in the round, they're taking space, but it just didn't, wasn't capitalized on properly, and now it's kind of very difficult for Korea to do anything. Yeah, and Korea blind to the sky, and it's a good round, right? We're looking at that as a first round in the half. We're expecting sort of an aggressive play from AEX, never like... They, they're quite an aggressive team just looking at the general stats they're on about I think it was 56% win rate on their attack um, on their defending rounds when they get the first pick but with this yes they got down into mid but they had so many um, players isolated in the position like we saw uh, I think, believe it was Ella in the close left um, just outside of garage but then Ikio was then under window and it was very a little bit disjointed and Ranked Demons saw the gap and they took so much advantage of it yeah they did looking for a chance to try and find a gap of their own but has to be a little bit slower here especially with all that utility and ranked demons so far making good usage of what they've got available to them a little bit of a mess up there with the paint shells but it doesn't really matter when they've got these rifles and they've got that weapon advantage and they leverage it well a site is pretty empty even if there is going to be a player on there in Kraya. I mean, it's only one, right? And they can commit towards this very quickly, even going aggressive onto the high ground there, like that from Tiny Lady. And they're yeah. going to be able to take control and get those smokes down. Uh, it's a really heavy buy from Ranked Demons as well. We've seen Spectres, but we also have that Phantom on Tiny Lady there. Really just putting your uh, dealers in the best possible position. But look at this retake coming in. We've got two kills now with a Classic coming in. Three! And now it's a two versus two. One v two. But look at the damage that they've done! Yeah, that was actually really nicely done by AEX1 there, managing to find frags where I really didn't think they were going to be able to find anything with the weapon advantage, with the positional advantage that ranked yeah, yeah. demons had. I thought it was all looking fine and dandy for them, but they slip up, and that gives AEX1 AEX, um, Nova the chance to really deliver that death blow. Classic's a free gun. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just pointing out <laughs> this. a free gun, guys, but look at how AEX have just catapulted that free gun into getting a Classic versus rifle uh, smg retake and it comes down to a 1v1 yeah that's absolutely amazing and they're only able to carry forward 
um, one phantom. Yes, they've invested into some shorties or to some sheriffs, but it's looking like a really, really rough buy for um, rank demons into this bonus round. Yeah, it's nice that they've managed to really deny this bonus round, I think, in terms of the economy that they're going to be able to get. So I'd be very shocked if AEX managed to lose this one, especially with the advantages that they've got right now. But we've seen what rank demons can do. We've seen how aggressive they can get. If they can take this space in that manner, use these sky smokes effectively. They definitely can get something using the information, jumping around those corners, checking things, and they do manage to lock it off. And Tiny Lady yeah. looking to get a little bit cheeky with this shorty. Yeah, it, it, it's got to be done. And the duel is with the shorty on the bonus rounds. But the plant has been put down. They've given a lot of respect to Ranked Demons with these weaponry. They've left the entirety of eight and relying on this retake, but looks like the utility is coming through now for this. Yeah, but that weaponry there for AEX is more than enough. Four players down in an instant, and then there was a one. And I think Tycho might have a little bit of a diff um, difficulty trying to beat this one. Yeah, and the half is already coming through. One shot going through the smoke, and well, they have the phantoms. They can just spray it back. And well, flawless. And a flawless retake at that. They left it in a. F yes, there was a major gun disadvantage, but even so, the utility on the retake has looks just so precise, and it's what we're expecting, right? From AX versus um, Rank Demons, they're a team. They're they're assigned to an org. They um they have strats, they have scrims, and everything compared to maybe a little bit less of experience from Rank Demons as a roster as a whole. Yes, like we said, we had the pedigree of these some of these players, but well. When it comes down to chemistry and anything that you can pull out from your strap book and something that you've rehearsed so much, I feel like AX are just going to um, bite them in the nail on that one. Yeah, no, I think it's absolutely true. I mean, you oh. saw it, right? I think a big measure of how good teams are on this map is how good their retakes are, and AEX showed, at least in part, just how good theirs are as well. Hera, keeping an eye on this one making sure that they know where these players are, getting the smoke in, I think very sensibly, retreating, making sure they have chances for these retakes, that's going to be a big part of it, but losing out on Ella does mean they're a player down, and Tiny Lady is going to use this chance to really push forward, if not for that molly. Instead, going to use those paint shells as the rest of the team starts to step and spread out into better positions as they've got that spike down. Oh, look at the confrontation now. You have two players now towards this long position, Tiger and Kraya. Frag. Ah, oh, Hera can't turn it into too much more. The refrag is there. And Rank Demons playing close, playing tight with each other. But there's an opportunity. There's a chance. Ikkyo moves aggressively on in. And with the back up from Kraya, it does mean that it's one versus two. This is very winnable. But trying to hold down on the spike was not enough. And Tiny Lady executes them. I like that AEX are giving respect to this team. Yes, we, talk, we can talk all day about who's playing on Rank Demons. But it's more of a... They're not taking those early engagements. Yes, they had the information with Hera jump peeking towards C. Yeah, so put, spotted um, Tiny and also Adina with the drone and then retreated. But then that's leaving Ella in a position where she can get 2v1 in garage, which did happen. And then that just opened up such a um, gap in their defense for that retake. It's not the sort of, oh, we got four um, people, we got five people for this retake. It was very, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that sort of thing. And it's not a good sign if it's already happening. Yeah, it definitely could be problematic. And with Hero already gone, not really able to stick and get some cheesy play off on the site with that Spectre. Instead, forced and denied. And Rank Demons again, putting themselves in this position where they take that seed control, they get an early pick. And from there, they're playing at that post point. Koneko looking for a chance to maybe get someone with that Sheriff, but the angles just aren't there. Tycho, however, all alone. This is the kind of opportunity that AEX need right now. But Tiny Lady is waiting in the wings and already manages to net one. Drops the Showstopper right into the... Oh, doesn't what? quite finish it! Just one headshot, that's all they need, and they do just that! It's three versus two right now. Rank Demons, they need to close this one out, but time is absolutely on their side. Ella not quite able to move on forward. The concussion, again, just denying them away. So much utility available. And they even have some ultimates. It's going to be so hard for AEX1 to really push forward here. And the contest is there. They do get the frag, but only one. But it's, they spent so much time then ensuring that they had to stay on site because of how much um, damage they did towards Garage. Well, they lost two people on their way out. And that's so good for AX because economy, we can talk about that as much as we want, but they that was a um, save round for them. So they're going into this, they've got a few kills, they've gotten the showstopper off the board from Tiny, and well, it only really cost them a Bladestorm, which is quite situational anyway. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy when teams invest those Blade Storms in those Loico rounds. I think it's a really great usage of it. Get that damage done. Find yourself in a position. Look, they were they were situated here to buy next anyway. That's what they were looking to do. Any damage was a bonus. The problem is, is I think now they have to really be cleaner on some of these coming rounds. They're already three rounds down. They want to get something in the bank. Obviously, they're moving on to the attacking side for the second half. But if you don't have a solid defense, you don't have the kind of groundwork to really build that from. Again, looking for this pressure, but this time towards the B site. This is a different strategy and already coming those sky smokes from the attacking side and tiny lady even dives on into this backside making sure they have more good usage of the hunter's fury though picks off one and koneko looking to try and give some backup to anyone who tries to push on forward the orbital strike however forcing them away yeah, and look at Ikkyo. Ikkyo is going to be taking this confrontation with the Killjoy in window. Wins that out as well. Spike is down, though, but it is 5v2 in the retake. Make that a 1v5 for Tiny. But Kanako putting a, well, an end to that dream that she dared to dream. I, I mean, I like the idea from Ranked Demons, but you've always got to be so careful when you're pushing this B-site. The retake can come in very easily, and AEX have shown already that they're pretty solid at that. Couple of ultimates invested. I believe Ranked Demons only invested one in that i did don't think i saw the rolling thunder um and it was two okay sure um whereas we just saw one come right back on from Kraya, and i think it was a really good usage to deny to buy some space buy some time to allow aex1 to be in the right positions yeah and also you're talking about the um hunter's fury coming from Kraya. yes that um netted them a kill but it also netted so much dis and jointment of the players on site and it allowed for anyone coming from c-link and a-link to well isolate the players well, running away from the Hunter's Fury that was going on to the default yep. positioning. And then Ikkyo then on that flank. It's really nice pushing out and, well, really great from AEX. It is indeed. Again, going to look towards this mid, and I like it as kind of the start of a round, but I don't like committing towards the B site unless you're really confident that you've managed to pull some of these players away. And I think the problem is, is well, okay, when you find shots like that, it matters a lot less, but you've got access to this Brimstone, and I think it is a real problem for Ranked Demons. They can't play this slower game every time they invest utility. It's gone. Yeah, I'm wondering whether that's sort of a comfort pick, because sure. Raze, yeah, Raze is normal on this map. You tend to have that Raze or the Jet, but then... The Brimstone isn't really someone that you tend to see as like, oh, it's easily switched in and out. It's normally oh, the Astro, the Omen, but maybe it's sort of a comfort pick for the side of Ranked Demon since like we're not expecting them to have scrimmed much for this. No, I mean, if, you, if you're a Brim player, play Brim. I think comfort is always so, so important um, at these kind of levels. And, 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 you know, just being able to be confident on what you're doing, that you're not making any mistakes, that's the most important thing because you give these guys mistakes and they absolutely will take it. Ranked Demons right now, Taking those mistakes to the absolute limit here, getting that sight control, even though they're down a little bit in terms of weapons, shows you just how scary those sheriffs can be, especially in the hands of gunners like these ladies right now. And, well, that A site is wide open. The lockdown going through on both sides, but the flank covered. That was big from Ella. Yeah, not even investing the Hunter's view for that. Going for the um, kill, but then shut down. It's 2v2 now. And the, well, the killjoys has pushed them back so far, but Ella's already stuck. Uh, does have a chance to sit on it. There is going to be a player coming around the corner. The dark cover was just a little too late. Ella, however, will be able to survive somehow here. He's sticking on that spike. I don't know if they know. Here is trying to cover it, trying to find something. They get the half. Can they get the full? They know the push is coming. They get the frag, but it's just one, and the spike goes through. That was really well played, timing-wise, from Ranked Demons. I just want to understand how both players from AEX got stuck in the ultimate. I understand Ella was on site, but... Where was her? Was she... It looked like she'd gotten out of the Ultima and maybe stepped back in just too soon, possibly. But it was really great trades from the lockdowns from uh, Taiko and Ella there. But... A little bit disjointed still. Yeah, I, I really wanted to see AEX play a little bit more sensibly into that one, but I think the early usage from Ranked Demons was actually really nice because they mm. invested it yeah. beforehand, which means they were going to get it to go off first, which means it's quite difficult for them to push in sure but they made sure they've got it down they've got a response that they can deal with that problem and because the players were too aggressive because they were looking for too much that's why they got hit by that lockdown because they weren't able to deal with that kind of problem now obviously they did have to invest a lot to get that one done but it means the economy of aex is not exactly in the best place now and look at that seaside's already cleared for them one paint shell from uh side of Ranked Demons and that Seaside gone. Harris come back 
But look how fast they're going into CT. They're taking the fight to them. Tiger and Tiny Lady taking up three for themselves. Make that four, and it's all down to her. The omen of Seasai and, well, the double peak coming in then from Ranked Demons. Yeah, there's only so much you can do, right? And I think that is absolutely what the Ranked Demons are looking for. We were talking about this right at the start with the Brimstone pick. They belie that they want to go hard and they want to go fast, and that's exactly what they're doing. They're like, okay, let's go in, let's get a frag, and then not just take the site, but go kind of go deeper, take more space, take whatever you can, get advantages. And obviously that can backfire in some situations, but especially when you're the ones used to playing it, you're the ones used to kind of playing that aggressive style. Um, I think it works well for you, especially if you're not the most coordinated team sometimes, just getting as much advantage as you can, then you have more to lose before you lose the round, so to, so to speak, um, is not a bad way of going. Yeah, and it's definitely interesting to see how Ranked Demons are playing with that Brimstone. It doesn't seem to be, well limiting as much as I thought it would be just since how you're talking about how decisive they are to what sites they want to go well one paint gel and a smoke in garage and a paint cell back C they have all of C already and then instead of just okay we can play post plant nope they are ranked demons they are going to be pushing into that CT and then they netted up kills against Hera who is all the way back in um well C, um, C link into CT and then you had players on B and in garage window and well they have nowhere really to go they're not expecting this aggression really from ranked demons which I'm hoping that's what the coaches were talking to them in that time out there and possibly a change up towards what they're doing on C a little bit more of an aggression and push towards the left side of this map rather than um, the slow push they get from Ikio when they do show presence mid towards the A lobby I really do hope that they have a way to deal with this because otherwise they're just going to fall behind again and again. Good usage of the bot here. Like the AQ's daring to get aggressive, but it's not really working out for them. Kind of co looking for a chance to maybe let themselves escape. No, they're sticking around here. They're taking that C control early, and I like this as a response to the aggression that we've seen towards C site. If you can get something going there, then you can deny the push, and that means they have to go towards his A, where you're a little bit more comfortable. Tiny Lady clears a lot of the utility of the Killjoy there. It's a very nice thing to be able to clear quickly and efficiently so that you can get the spike down in the same manner. Yep, well, spike down, 5v5, a little bit of health disparity, but oh my gosh, Tiny Lady up in heaven, takes that kill down on to Ikkyo, the knives, the blades are not working out in the favour, but the utility from all of these players is just bombarding Ella. Um, that is so, so unfortunate. They try to get aggressive onto someone here, but it's just Hera alone now. And again, Tiny Lady's aggression, Tiny Lady's positioning has really allowed a lot of what ranked demons are looking to do, constantly pushing forward. And behind her, there's just more people ready and willing to frag out, to refrag. And I think that's a big thing that ranked demons, sure, they're a mix, but they're confident, they're comfortable with each other. And that chemistry is really shining through in the way they play around each other in kind of two to three person groups. Yeah, and like like I said before coming into this, there was a core of two with uh, Tiny Lady and Taiko. Uh, they did have Yasmin, which is the current sub for th this version of Ranked yeah. Demons, but they've been playing together for months now, whether that was back in Game Changer Series 3 or, well, well the Contenders qualifiers. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, and it's good to see that that's really paying off here, right? Sticking together as a group, and I think it's something that a lot of teams, you know, sometimes struggle to do, especially some of these mixes. But especially if you find people you like, you are confident with and think are good players and are going to keep on improving like these guys are doing, yeah. uh, it, it's really going to make a world of difference. And a world of difference is what they've done this round. Ranked teams are very slow. They have expended, I believe it's one smoke so far. So enough for a slight exec, but they haven't committed to anything but Ella. There we go, taking the Killjoy v Killjoy battle and going out on top, putting the team in such an advantageous position. She can just back off now, play complete retake since, well, they're 4v5, the numbers are in their favor. But Tiny Lady, let's see what she can do towards B site. I love the usage of these paint shells as a space uh, denial tool, and it's making a massive uh, difference in how Tiny Lady can push on a lot of these angles, but I don't think they're going to be ready for Koneko, who now communicates that they're actually not going to be in on this B site. They're moving over towards A. Ella is going to have to be careful and going to have to give themselves a little bit of space, a little bit of time, but look who's holding behind the rest of this team. Ranked Demons with Adina and Bebop are going to be able to crush that one there and trying desperately to get these flanks going, but it's just Ella alone sitting in a smoke on this site. <laughs> even get sprayed that is brutal from ranked demons right realistically this is an attacker side of map right yeah. 
how attack assigned are we going to say the score line should be, though? Uh, I'm saying 7 5, but they've already secured only the um, half win. They've kind of doubled it and passed it on. They've got another extra two um, rounds this. So they 8 and 2. They're looking so strong. But like you said, one, um, we know it's an attack assigned map anyway, but two, they're a mix. And they're very aggressive. They're doing a lot of pocket work with. Um, well, Pay is around the map, and then obviously you have that Killjoy who's doing the lurking. So it's really interesting to see how they do it on the defense, but look at their attacking rounds already. Mm. Does manage to trade one for one, but yeah, those attacking rounds definitely can problematic. Ego even gets caught as they try to escape. That's exactly the kind of situation Rank Demons are here for, as Tycho yet again beats this point home town Ella it's gonna be four versus two and then likely another round going the way of ranked demons this is really nicely done and, and I think you're right right it's definitely gonna be a problem I think right, ranked right? Demons, you're right um, <laughs> Sorry. Um, ranked demons go to their defense I think they are gonna have a little bit more of a struggle but I don't yeah. know if it's gonna be this bad right they're confident players yeah right? They're going to be able to, you know, outgun in a lot of situations and even just play those kind of, you know, small small groups tactics really well against AEX when it comes to these retakes. I love this positioning. The, well, you have Tiny Lady having the whale of her time over towards um, spawn, making sure the flank's covered, but the double positioning of the Brim and Breach under um, Hell, they have the stun, they have the flashes that can really, yeah, there you go, the stun, delay in time, Hera cannot do anything, it's, even if... It, she had a phantom, she's completely stunned. There's nothing she can do in that situation. The delay in utility from the side of Breach and Ranked Demons has been amazing here, and it really does seem like there's not much for them to do other than save guns, really. But they get the two kills, get those all points back up for Taiko there. Maybe getting the ultimate in this round if she collects a few orbs. But we were talking, I think we can say this half is pretty much solidified in how we were expecting ranked demons to be coming into it quite aggressive and well heavy hitting but i just there's so much good coming from aex it's just it's not as consistent as we need it to be like take the first three rounds it yes it was pistol or bonus whatever but they were good they played it well and then that one round that they did the 5v5 retake the re retake utility was amazing i just really want to see more of not losing who they are as a team because of how ranked demons are playing. It feels like they're getting forced into a playstyle that they're not happy with. Yeah, I was going to say, right, like, teams are, you know, they're going to be, sorry, t people with proper teams are definitely going to be more rigorous in the way they approach things, more tactical. But the problem is, is uh, no plan survives first contact with the enemy, and right now ranked demons are really forcing their playstyle onto AEX. How are they supposed yeah. to deal with that? Well, obviously by having kind of situations ready for this. They managed to trade one for one, even with that rolling thunder. This is looking not too bad as AEX managed to get the frags they need, bring it to two versus two, and even then two versus one. This is a great opportunity. Kraya absolutely on fire so far this half and definitely a bright spot for AEX as they managed to at least find one round at the end here to bring it nine to three. And it's really nice that we were talking that's exactly how I want them to play. They're playing for the trays, they're playing together and well they've netted a round win. Like this is what we want to see from both teams really, that sort of situation. But in the end it is a nine three. Nine three curse for any of the AEX fans is still um in chat then hoping for it but then I didn't want to say coping because that sounds cool. It's <laughs> that that makes it seem like there's yeah. no chance of a comeback, but there definitely is. Let's just see how the pistol round goes. And it looks like there's so much heavy stack towards mid. Like on the pistol rounds on defense, they full push mid. Maybe this is sort of a preference AEX have for uh, map control, especially in the pistol rounds. They want to take the skirmishy fights, and they're definitely not shying away from it. No, I don't think they are. I mean, we saw in the first round of this entire map that they are not shying away from any fights, and I really like that. And I think, while I was kind of making that joke about Copium, it could be their chance to really force their opponents into playing their style, but they lose a player as they move on in already, and this pistol looks good for the side of ranked demons. Finally, Eku bursts onto the scene, and those are the kind of shots you desperately, desperately need. Has access to the spike, can try and drop it down. You see Adina moving on in. Good shock dart, and look at Tiny Lady, who's really looking to find this. And these are two fraggers we were high highlighting before if you fakes on the dash but look who's ready for it tiny lady wants to just get one shot i think it's one bullet from each of these players right now could make it she's just sticking. sticking on it but this is going to be in the nick of time and they do pick it up that was quite close 
just a little, a little uh, just a just a little just a little bit close but like i said it's the pistol round that we're looking for ax to get back into this and well they've done it they've got that pistol round hoping to convert this next one now but can we just talk about how happy they are for the skirmishes they were so happy to take on to be um eco leading the charge with the dashes with the frenzy in hand and then that lovely clutch there but then tiny lady she was just coming in from a link doesn't matter if my teammate uh, Adina has put some shock dots. I'm just going to go for the planter and then leaving it in that um, 1v1 situation. Yes, it's great. And then unfortunately it just came down to, well, a clutch situation. But both teams exhibiting really great stuff. Yeah, and I really like it. And again, this is showing that AEX definitely are still a swinging in this one, looking for a chance. Koneko down though does make executing on those sites a little bit more difficult. Still have access to one initiator, but it's not quite the same. Bebop! does manage to get that frag onto a key player as AEX squad and that's denying a lot of control but speaking of control, Hella going very very deep here looking to find something wonder if they're going to be ready for the player coming around the corner right now will trade with them a little bit a couple of shots back and forth but no kills just yet as they commit towards this A site, this is a really good call, but will they be ready for <gasps> Tiny Lady waiting in the wings Sorry. with the shot? That's no! one, that's two, and oh no, that's the spike, because AEX, they slip up, and Ella is looking for a chance to maybe set their, themselves up for this, but it's a one versus three, it's going to be very, very difficult. They've got their work cut out for them, certainly, as Ella trying to go ring a ring a rosy with this Murphy. She does have the better gun, technically. She does have the Bulldogger rifle coming into this, and everyone else on SMGs, but it doesn't matter. Well... I've, I've flamed the Brim pick a little bit, but the comfort pick from Dismavie is looking so strong. She's looking very much in her element there, and, well, so are Ranked Demons. They're on double digits already. Now they've, well, stopped the conversion of that pistol run into the second, so they're going to go into this with so much money in the back pocket, whether they choose to invest or not, like we've seen um, we would be bop <laughs> um, with the rifle there, which technically this is the buy round. They didn't invest much into that. They had shorties and yeah. classics and frenzies, and well, Tiny is just doing tiny things on uh, over towards a lobby, securing the spike, and then yeah, it's there's not much else to say. Uh, Molly was a little bit slow, and as a result, the dash could come on through Ikkyo, taking that space, however, and this is the kind of aggressive play that we've seen succeed so far on this map. The question is, can they close it out? Can they clutch it? Because before, they struggled to finish things off. This time, they've got to go fast. Tiny Lady moving forward aggressively, Adina in position as well. This is exactly the kind of push they need to make things work, but look who was waiting in the wings. Ella makes it happen, and the shorty, not quite so powerful at that range, moves up to a Vandal. Two HP available for them, and eventually Iku will close it out, and that moves them up to five. But AEX again, a little too close for comfort in my opinion. But, okay, they won the pistol lost the conversion, but then they won the third round. So looking at the economy, it should be getting back a little bit into more normal economy across the board for these players. Um, and ranked teams are going to go into sort of a half by here, but AX, really great pushback after losing the second round of the half there. And they're really just showing that they are here. They are capable to win these skirmish fights. But again, it's so much skirmish in fights during the mid round. It doesn't seem that we're having a pick and a reset. We're just going, okay, this is where we're going. Yeah, I think AEX maybe need to reset themselves and play that more, you know, reserved style. I think that'll work quite well for them because right now they're playing to the skirmish style, as you say. And Ranked Demons, they thrive in that. They're very happy to play here. They are literally Ranked Demons. They are happy to <laughs> frag out wherever you darn well can and just fight every single one of these and if, if you're going to give them that again and again and again you're going to lose some of these rounds and you do not have the space to do that right now this Mavi looking for a chance two versus three right now but some very low health players finds one almost gets the second but Hera just rounds the corner in fantastic fashion as Tycho sets themselves up with that drone but with two players playing Pretty reservedly, I think, in these positions. And with the dark cover as well, meaning you're going to have to jump on down. Tycho is in for a world of hurt as they go to 40 HP around the corner. There they are. Manages to deal with Hera. Does have access to the alarm bot, though, does Ella. And that's going to be the perfect chance for them to deny that nano swarm forcing them out into the open. Really nice repositioning as well from Ella. Obviously, last scene towards the long position and ramped all the way around through lobby down into um, short. And, well, Tycho just didn't expect it and well, was back to the player and a Really nice, um, easy clutch for Ella there in that 1v1. And I quite like it, how they've been playing, but it's still quite a lot to be left imagined. We pick a site, we go to it. The, that's it. 
there's not much else to be said and when we're going into these full size xx it is just so puggy in the sense of how ranked demons like you said are able to thrive in it but ax are kind of keeping up in regards to their gun skill it's just it's not it doesn't seem like it's the style that they want to play if that makes sense yeah, that's fair. And I think especially with their comp, they don't want to be playing that. They want to be playing slow. They want to be playing rotate to use that macro game. I said at the start, macro versus macro, no. And right now, <laughs> it seems like AEX have forgone all of that. Forgone maybe what their kind of team has practiced in this one. And it could be a big problem for them because in this situation, sure, they're succeeding. But that's off the back of some brilliant gun skill. And eventually, that's going to come back to bite. You've got to be very, very careful. You can see Tiny Lady waiting right here. And that's a player I want to highlight because if we're talking about gun skill, well, they've certainly been up there. Yeah, lovely 3k towards CT there from Korea. Looks like they are going to be going for this, going for these picks. Yeah, nicely done by Korea there, waiting in the wings. Closes that one down, and, and as you said, off the back of that 3k, it's a pretty easy round for the side of AEX 1 Nova. But the problem is, is you can't rely on that happening every single time. Unless you have a, a, a recipe for success, you're going to find yourself struggling in some of these rounds. And as I said before, there's only three rounds between them and a loss. But importantly, they've got a couple of rounds on the trot, and there's only three rounds between them and ranked demons. So if they keep up this pressure, if they keep up this momentum, they really can ride that wave all the way to victory when you're on this attacking side that is that bit strong. And, well, they've just forced ranked demons onto a bit of a more scuffed by again. Only got like two rifles, they got some sheriffs and some pistols, but AEX definitely looking so much more stronger now when it comes to their attacking half. Certainly does, looking a lot more comfortable now they're playing their kind of tempo. Maybe not style, but definitely their tempo. Ranked demons are mm. not the ones dictating the pace of every single engagement. That rolling thunder tries to do just that, and they will actually manage to get one, but only... No, actually, yeah, don't even get too much. Only plus one in that situation. Trying to make these weapons work, but there's the rocket launcher. Doesn't quite land, however. Tiny Lady has to double that one up with a couple of shots down range, but it's two versus three, and this is exactly the kind of misstep, exactly the kind of opportunity that ranked demons were desperately looking for. Can we buff the result? Like, just a little bit. Because so. I've seen so many results recently, and then Tiny's had, like, two already, yeah. where it should have hit. It should have hit, especially the one in Garage earlier. But, yeah, well, this spike is over towards A, but there's going to be this um, Omen Ultimate Invested, going to pick that up. And look at that, they already know this. The rotate's coming through so fast. Yeah, I think they kind of looked at it and went, okay, there's an Omen ult. We know exactly what to do with this from the shadows. Um, and they read it completely. Good calls from Ranked Demons, whoever's on that one. So good strat calling, a good uh, just overhead kind of position. But the trade was there. They were, had the player disadvantage. And as much as you're kind of pushing on through there, Ranked Demons do play well in those kind of small unit tactics in these kind of mm. situations when you've got players ready and willing to refrag and refrag and refrag and eventually move themselves to eleven. Yeah, especially since you're going into that with a uh, 3 versus 2. Yes, so the spike is down, and because of the early rotates, they weren't able to get into very profitable or good um, post plan positions, which then let um, them come in quite heavy hitting 3v2. Okay, we'll just play the trade game, in which they absolutely did. One for one, one for one, and then it gets down into, well, um, Miss Davy left over to do defuse that spike. Now, I like the fact that AEX are playing this more aggressive style on the surface, but I really want to see them branch out. Now is the time to use the fact that you've got access to this home until you've got access to the rest of things. You can make this contact play on A, maybe get a player pick, maybe get some information, and then play around the rest of the map. Ekyo is in a perfect position to get aggressive and set them up, but good the usage there from Adina does mean they are able to take that one right off the board. And this kind of slip up again is what leads AEX to being in disadvantage and giving ranked demons that opportunity, just that one opportunity that they need to move this forward. Yeah, that reveal was amazing from um, Adina there. Perfect timing and Ralph just shut down the jet of AEX1. And yeah, you're not losing a gun, but you're losing the blade storm, you're losing your fast entry, and it's back down onto these supportive plays now to get these, well, entry kills now onto the side of ranked demons, and it's just, it's not looking very fruitful. They're very disjointed. We have um, Killjoy, well, exploring towards Garage, but it's still, they haven't had to move ranked demons. They've got a really good defensive line, but Ella's definitely putting a thorn in this side over towards the seaside. Here they are. 
This will give them a chance. Tony, they're looking for a way to maybe make this execute happen. Use his to satchel, but picked out from the sky. Good play by EX there. Does mean it is two versus two. Ultimate available on both sides. Like the fact that they could commit towards us, but Conoco just plays on site and domes. One of those players, they move on in. Adina not able to provide the information this time and just seeing a Brimstone move on in here. It's a little bit more difficult than it would be otherwise. Is Mavi going to try and get it? But Hanako is holding the angle well. And that is a round on the board again for AEX1 Nova. They lost the momentum for a second there. But they did regain it with strong, tight control on this side. Yeah, absolutely. And that's exactly what we want to see from AEX. Nice regimented, very full, like um, form fit in regards to post plans, how they're taking the site. Even after losing Ikiri in that fashion, they were able to reset. And because of the type of utility they have, they can reset, they can cycle those smokes out, they are able to let um, Ella explore towards Garage, get a pick there, possibly pull a bit of attention, in which it did until she got um, put down herself. And then they just played that sort of retake situation in the post um, postpans with the crossfires. Yeah, he did. I'm actually impressed that people actually managed to find a frag there. I thought with that sheriff and with so <laughs> many players, it wouldn't lead to anything, but just showing that they can hit those shots. Tiny Lady slipping on in, but did not know there was a player holding the backside. Good play from Ella there, making sure that those flanks that actually I think ranked demons are very, you know, prone to going for, uh, completely shut down. They don't lose too much. A very clean round. Sure, not flawless, but pretty much coming out here from AEX1 Nova. They managed to trade one for one to get into the site, but beyond that, it was pretty nice. Okay, so this is what I was worried about in regards to ranked demons. Yes, they have that brimstone, which it's working for them how it is. Like, um, this maybe is going absolutely insane, 17, 13, and 13 on it. But it's the way that they're playing their defense. I wouldn't expect them to be great at defense, especially when attacking tends to be the easier side in regards to whether you're a mix, whether you have um, really aggressive players, in which you do in the side of, like, Tiny Lady. But it's the way... I'm quite concerned on how they're going to be taking these defenses when they're not taking the early fights, but I've just had my words taken out of my mouth already with the two early picks there. But it's the aggression that has been lacking really from the side of ranked demons on their defense because they're like, okay, we, we defend. Yeah. That, that's it. They haven't really taken any initiative and it's great to see that they have. And while they've gotten success from it, they've gotten two kills, haven't lost much, maybe a little bit of health of Tiny, but... Other than that, they've taken the do list and also the breach. Yeah, I mean, th those are nice frags to be able to find. Obviously, yeah. it means that the execute is going to be even more difficult. But I think this is kind of the thing about AEX1 Nova right now is their executes onto site. I mean, other than some of the smoke placements, are not insane, right? I think the post plants, they've looked really, really confident and comfortable um, in. So they should yeah. be able to hold those well. But I don't think they have enough to really make this happen. It's just pushing forward, trading out just using bodies on the line and when you don't have the right numbers when you don't have access to an advantage it's gonna be so darn difficult to make it happen when we see ranked demons go aggressive find those couple of frags it feels like we see the return of them in this attacking half when their fangs are actually out rather than pulled where they've kind of been more passive on this defense do you know i quite like the puns today oh well not puns are they sayings yeah yeah they're quite nice I, I do rate them. Thank you. It's it's kind of like I've had the silly hazard with his puns, and then I have like more, I say more intelligent, more wordy puns rather than funny ones. I quite, I'm quite enjoying the change up, the switch up. But you make a very valid point. And while ranked demons, they are one point away from taking the first map in this series. It is a best of three. Yeah. So it's not looking too bad, and I believe this is. Them their pick yeah so especially when they're going to be taking their pick on this and it's quite close to for AEX it's not looking too bad for them no it really isn't and I do think this map still could go the way of AEX right we're, we're looking at this and we're talking about the fact that AEX they get aggressive they get these advantages and they're making it work if they don't slip up these couple of times ranked demons are not going to get a word in edgeways and they haven't been aggressive they haven't been dynamic enough is what I was going to say but exactly swings like that again playing with the rest of these teammates is exactly where they need to be they close it out in quick fashion I cast a curse them right away and yep. AEX1 Nova drop this one to rank demons who take their map pick here on Haven and well it's good to see that they're taking their map pick but what a great showing from AEX on it as well they're coming up against players that we're very happy in seeing again in the game changer scene like Tiny and then also you have Miss Davy as well absolutely for a showing on that brimstone which we did doubt I, I, I did doubt it I'm putting my hands up I did doubt it but it's a comfort pick that she definitely excelled on 
Yeah, I mean, we saw signs of life, and I'm definitely excited to see what AEX are going to show us in the coming maps, where they're a little bit more comfortable. But yeah, I mean, with Tiny Lady going as aggressive as they were, um, that was a really, really fun game to watch in the way they were kind of playing the contact. And I think it's definitely going to be interesting Move on and moving on into our next map, where I think things are going to be a, a little different here, right? I think it's Pearl, if I remember correctly. I believe it is Pearl, and that is going to be AEX pick. And, well... From what I've seen with AX when they're playing in the matches that I've seen them previously, Pill's a pretty strong map for them. They and I think they're going to be good with the playstyle that they want that we saw on their attacking half. If they can come into the next map with that same sort of commitment to their identity as a team, it could look so strong. Certainly could. Well, that's definitely something we're going to have time for in just a sec. But just now, we're going to go for a short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Birds of Prey action coming your way.
And welcome back to Birds of Prey series season five. Um, I am Rook and I'm joined by Winterry as we're getting ready for the second game of our first matchup today. Yep. And the first map was really exciting. Yeah, I was expecting a little bit more of a pushback in regards to uh, EX on Ranked Demon's map pick, but it was quite a close game in the end. It was almost a 9-3 kiss. We almost had the 9-3 kiss, but Ranked Demon's just taking it at the very end. But now we're going to be going into AEX 1 Nova's map pick, which is Pill. Yeah, and I think that's going to make things really interesting. I think we saw a lot of kind of aggressive, very contact play uh, over on Haven. And I think on Pearl, you've got to be a little bit more measured in your approaches, especially around the mid and around some of the longer parts of the map. You've got to be very, very careful because the util is going to shut you out and shut you down. Um, and I think it's definitely going to make this one um, a lot more interesting. And I'm interested to see if we're going to see the Brimstone again, because I think this map it could be a little bit questionable. Yeah, I think Haven's one that you can get away with the brimstone. It's not one that people tend to go towards anyway, but it's something that, okay, we can make this work. Teams have done it in the past. We can like adapt how they play style in which they did. Ranked teams were very much, okay, we're going to go here. And that's exactly what they did, and they were very good at it in regards to their attack in half. But then when it came to the defense, it was a little bit lackluster in regards to the utility, and that's nothing to do with just the brimstone. But it was the way that they were trying to. It felt like they were trying to play it like they had an omen or they had an astro with hmm. the rechargeable utility, and well, the map wide, the universal way they can use it as well. And I just want to see a little bit more attack in the defense from mm -hmm. the side of ranked demons. They're really good at taking the initiative in these uh, gunfights, but when we're going on to the defense, it was probably about six, seven rounds into the defense until they finally, okay, we're actually going to try and get a first pick rather than we'll wait for them to come into us, in which when they did, AEX1 was so good at getting that um, first pick and then getting onto the site and into good post plant positionings. Yeah, I, I think a big thing that teams always need to remember, and, and you guys probably in your ranked games as well, is just because your defense doesn't mean you have to be passive, right? You've got to constantly be looking for information on a very simple level, you know, with your initiators by jump picking around those corners, um, or looking for contact plays, looking for a kind of an advantage wherever you can, because once you get that advantage, you're able to really thwart whatever the attacking side is able to do and get that information and relay, relay it back. If you just sit around going, oh, they're somewhere over there, you're eventually going to find yourself surprised by something because obviously you don't know exactly where they are, so they're going to burst through with their most advantage. Like we did see Tiny Lady and a shorty play towards <laughs> A Lobby, which is again part of map control, which we were talking about. Yeah. Pill, you were talking about um, how important mid's going to be. Well, it's going to be important whether they're going to lock down the avenues as well, since we have two very um, long avenues, whether that's on B site, on B long, or towards A up until um, the window area and then you have just such an open mid, it's going to be really important that they are aware of possible flanks or possible pushes and able to shut it down, whether that's as a reactionary um, taking from, okay, we see this, we go here, or it's just, okay, this is our game plan, this is exactly what we're going to do, which is something I feel like ranked demons are going to be leaning in a little bit more towards. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a test of whether they have the ability to adapt as well to a lot of these. I, I think every single time they're going to a round, they've got an idea of like, okay, let's do this. Like, for example, when they pushed B, we saw them go B um, over to A straight away. They were committing towards that. They weren't like, oh, B, and now we could go A. No, they are always got something in mind, and being stuck in your ways can be a real problem. But let's see if they are stuck in the ways as we're going to be going heading over to Pearl, the map under the water, the city. It's kind of like a little snow, snow globe, but like opposite, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's really cool. It's a really pretty map. I do love how um, the designers did it, but let's look at it. Yeah, let's see if they can have some success on this Atlantis light um, is the way I would look at it. I guess a little less sunken. I guess in Atlantis, they don't like they live in the water rather than under the water. Uh, I guess that's the big difference here, but definitely still very cool, very uh, interesting setup, and and I think it's going to be 
cool to see whether these players kind of use that harbor which we're seeing already hovered here by Kraya to great advantage because I think this agent is fantastic here when you've got access to that Viper as well the double controller definitely looks really really um, interesting in how you're gonna be able to cut up that map yeah and well we don't have the brimstone the Viper is locked in now that's officially on the board for yeah. um, this maybe and I think Viper is definitely one that's less of a controller in my perspective in how she gets played mm -hmm. she's very um similar to the sentinel well, like you see on icebox it's you're anchoring a lot and it does tend to be the viper with the snake bites are able to delay it. and we have that um pick mirrored on both rank demons and aax one nova but they do have like you said the harbor i'm, I'm interested I, i'm intrigued on how they are going to do this we've seen them play in um, previous matches but whether this comes up to the playstyle of ranked demons, whether it is fitted for the playstyle and able to shut them down is what we're going to have and see. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in, in seeing how they take control over the map um, with these uh, the kind of access to the utility they've got. I think with the uh, fade and KO, that's a really great way to partner with the kind of... So so I, I, rather than going, you know, Sentinel, Controller, uh, Initiator, Mortar, and Duelist, yeah. right? I think it's good at looking, do you secure the map or do you um, do you take control over the map, right? And it's a good split there where they've got yeah. two agents who are really good at securing parts of the map and agents who are really good at taking control of it as well. So having the fade and the KO is something I really like in this kind of, this double up with that. Um, and I think it's going to be a big part of how they approach, uh, even the defense, right, when they're making those individual plays, like we desperately want to see from uh, ranked demons, they need to be making great usage of um, the fade. I think Edina is someone I'm definitely looking to for that. And they've been impressive before. Why not again? Yeah, absolutely. And, well, it's one of the better maps. They technically have a 75% win rate. There's only four um, maps for this roster available, but three out of four is still a pretty good stat, especially when they're so strong and net positive in both attack and defensive round wins. But look at this. They're taking such an initiated two for one. They're tiny picking up one for herself. But Korea, the frenzies are, are galore for AX1 Nova, getting it down to a four versus two. Does seem like... Everyone was on the right page for the Frenzy Memo? Yeah, I mean, it was working well for them, but just trying to slip on through with that Ghost seems to be better for a Bitbop here in this position. But they're going to have to deal with Kaneko, who's sitting and waiting in the wings with this Frenzy yet again, trying to assert that Frenzy dominance. But might get caught off guard. Only 27 HP easily going to go down if they catch them off guard. But the sprays come on through, and that's that first round for AEX1 Nova. Exactly what they wanted to see coming into their map pick. I know we're on the wrong half for me saying this, but I'm really excited to see next half since we do have the... You just died! I know, I know, I know. But we have a double controller versus double initiator, right? And I think, especially when you're talking about double controller on attack versus double initiator on defense, it's it's a little bit less yeah. lackluster when you sw switch it to the other way. But I want to see how they're able to take the defense with that double initiator to take the space in which... Yes, AX went over, took a lot of space towards mid there and maybe call um, ranked demons off guard. But going into the rifle rounds in the next two or three rounds coming up in the first cycle of economy, I just want to see a lot of space getting taken rather than letting them come into your space and retaking it from the side of ranked demons. Yeah. No, I agree. And I really like the fact as well that AEX were kind of. Um, taking that space aggressively, even with a sentinel right there. Yeah. Great usage of mid um, of that sentinel for mid control, and I think that's a really unique way to approach it. All goes up, forces them back. Adina, though, is in a position where they could get aggressive. The problem is there is no support. They're down in terms of weaponry. You can see the rest of them moving on, and you see the orb go up. They don't commit towards anything too hard. They know it's not going to be a proper committal here. It's like you was looking for a chance to push on forward, manages to find them, and with Ella finding so many frags to kick things off, this was just an easy round for AEX1 Nova. Yeah, only losing one there, and then also being able to recycle that um, Bulldog, picking up Bulldog over Spectre. It's great recycling for weapons, but it's more of the fact that they're able to get into those post plant positions now that we know that the Viper has uh, lineups, um, it's going to be a lot harder in the coming rounds that ranked demons are going to have to either commit a lot more to the push out of main when they do have the weaponry that can fight against it 
or get someone on that flank, which we've seen people explore towards mid, get um, two players up into window, breaking the um, kill die turret, but then they retreat back into art. Whether that's going to be a trend that we're going to be seeing for the rifle rounds now, but it is a mid that is going to be the center point for this round. Certainly is. I think it's going to be interesting as well. I feel like Ranked Demon's comp does set them up well to try and take back some of the space with that double initiator, but they have to keep those players alive. And that they are certainly doing now with rifles in hand. Tiny Lady yet again tries to set the pace. It's finally abated, but it's just one versus two. But if you're asking me for a player to pick on this AEX side, it would have been Kreia. They've been very impressive in the previous map and in other performances uh, on this squad, but unfortunately shut down there and ranked demons, they strike right back. And, well, that's ex we're, we're expecting that. Yeah, it's, yeah. The round differential is going as you'd expect, especially when they win the pistol, but it's coming down to that um, 1v2 situation. They're still able to get a good amount of damage on their bonus, forcing some people on the side of ranked demons onto stingers or onto lesser bites or half shields. Whether they want to play as Fnatic and always go half shields, that's up to them, but they are going to be on lesser utility, lesser... Um, Shields and going into this AX one over, they're going to be pretty happy. Yeah, and I, I think it makes sense as well. You know, just contesting, getting as much econ new going forward. I'd love to see more teams going for that Fnatic style, making sure you have access to as many rounds possible. Sure, not the most high power, but you've got access to those rifles, and that can make a world of difference here. Good spray through does actually find Tiny Lady, and that guts some of the power out of ranked demons here. Their weapon advantage, so the weapon kind of uh, advantage in the next round is going to be definitely very brutal for them if they can't pick this one up. Investing a lot of utility to try and contest, but that harbor putting a lot of walls in, slowing some of these players down, making sure that trying to push forward is not as easy as you would like. Adina covering the back angle in case they try and retreat from this one. As they step forward, finally drops on down. Deathbop tries to contest, but is taken out. Those players in backsight are making it ever so difficult to really contest this, and you can see Mavi trying to contest on here, but uh, uh, Miss Davy, Davy is uh, definitely not really able to push forward over on this Viper. And there you go, the Viper v Viper towards the end there in that um, confrontation here, putting an end to just maybe in that round. And I really like how they're taking it onto the B side with the Harbor utility. We haven't seen many Game Changers teams in this series so far use Harbor. It's one of the least picked agents. Well, Gecko as well, but they're a bit of the beaky agents, right? But when we're coming into this, Harbor's quite good on this map. We've seen pro teams use him, and, well, Carmine Corp have been very successful as well. But when we're talking about um, Kraya on it, she's been using her utility so well, especially with the orbs to secure plans, to cut off um, vision, and then it's so initiator type in regards to how they're using it. Um, the harbor utility to get the first picks but the first pick this time is going in the favor of just maybe but traded back out one for one in that situation but they are on an eco round for the side of ranked demons yeah trying to use those pistols but just outranged I, yeah, I mean, I completely agree with you, your point on Harbour, and I think Harbour's, one well, of Harbour's biggest strengths is actually playing as that second controller, because kind of flex into that role. We see a lot of agents kind of flex into a role, I think. I mean, I look at uh, Raze, for example, and she definitely has the ability to be an initiator of sorts yeah. um, for your team. Obviously not entirely, especially with the nurse Boombot. But yeah, um, I think Harbour is really, really good at that, and that's why I love it in this exact situation when you've got that Viper as well. You can just shut down so much, and you can keep it as well till the later parts of the round. There's so much flexibility and it kind of covers for the fact that you know there's long periods of time where you don't have access to that viper wall mm. and it's a really nice way to supplement it absolutely and again rechargeable utility you have the viper and the harbor with the walls and you can kind of play off each other with like doubling up wall and well it's like you double up flashes but taiko going in for this retake it's a 1v4 for her, trying to do as much damage as she can aware of the player backside only eight hp to their name but Kraya, Kraya's biding her time, not over peeking, but with a flash there, securing the round, and that's four on the board now for AEX Manova. And it's nice to see that they are coming out like hitting strong. Like we've seen a nine three half in their deficit on the last map, and they were able to bring it back on their attack. They really need to use this half now to cement the lead. Maybe get sort of an eight four seven five half. Even if they can get the 9 through, obviously it would be great for them, but I feel like this is where they really need to get their rounds in. They are net positive for um, defense when 
defense and attack win rates in regards to round count, but then ranked demons, we've seen what they like on attack, and it is a beast to be old. Yeah, it's something can make things difficult. Love the usage of the ultimate here as well to make sure this one is locked on in. Gonna take control over the entirety of this site, completely denied again. Look at that line, that line is so brutal, and that's what makes Harbor so, so good. Good usage of flashes, sorry, flash flashes, <laughs> coming out here from AEX, <laughs> as they just push on forward, and they know how to pair this utility well. Just like a fine wine with a, bit, a little bit of cheese is what, it, I mean, I'm complimenting it still. Really great usage from them, but it's just the aggression from Ranked Demons that shuts it down. They play to their own pace this time, and that tempo is exactly what they need to push through. I love the null command there. The null command so was good. so good. But the, look at this flash. The ability, like you said, with the um, harbor wall, having a sky flash through such a harsh line there has been great. And the way they played off it is amazing. But then they also kept going. <laughs> And especially with the plant spot that they had, it wasn't planted necessarily for the people in main or if someone was to go all the way around to flowers from that pit position. And while ranked demons found well the loose thread and they just kept tugging, they were able to get that satchel onto side, they had the trays coming in, even players protecting each other's back. They're, okay, I peak life, you peak right, that sort of thing. And it's been doing great ones for them in that retake. I think even when you've got some disadvantages in the rounds and you find frags like that, ranked demons are going to continue to set themselves up well and win in these situations just because they're, fr frankly, very solid players. Sure, they're not as organized and don't have the strats that AEX have, but they certainly have the firepower, the know-how, and everything else they darn well need in order to make these rounds a success. AEX this time, they back off, and I like this from them. This is what I wanted to see from them a little bit more on the attacking side over um, in Haven, and the fact that they're willing to rotate is a nice plus. This Killjoy duel, if it does go down, is going to be so important. The turret is still up towards A and R. It's going to be the first inkling for Tygo that they are rotating. There we go. The call from the team. Now you have the Viper and the K already by water. And they're going to beat AX1 over to site. But they're taking the due diligence, making sure they haven't had someone look up already. And going to bide in for this retake. A really quite shallow harbour wall as well. Yeah. On there and love the fact that they're investing the Vipers pit here potentially. Can we be able to get that spike down but will not die for it? Thought maybe the fragment would lead to something, but instead it's Bet Bob going down here. And in fact, a counter usage of the Vipers <gasps> pit with this shorty coming out from this maybe, and that is exactly what they need. Craig gets a spray, does manage to take it back. Three versus two. How do they approach here? They don't need to, as it's Tycho who steps out of the smoke and it's Hikyo even looking for it. Wants to get the shot. <gasps> what? Does but dies to their own teammate <laughs> Nano Swarm. Oh, how brutal. <laughs> it was in, okay, it was in the Viper's pit. Couldn't see it. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that's what we're gonna say. They couldn't see it, they didn't know, there was a little bit of, yeah, there you go. It pops just as she runs into it, so I don't think anyone's to blame. We, <laughs> it's just a, such an unfortunate situation, but it doesn't matter, they won the round anyway. They've got plenty of money to rebuy that weapon for um, EQ there. And they're building up the orb counts. They invested the Viper Spit for Viper Spit, but Rank Demon invested so many ultimates in that round for nothing, really. Ella, this time getting forced off that mid contest. And I love the fact that ranked demons are willing to play aggressively for this when they're at the deficit, knowing that they've got to make something happen. The only problem is, is while well, they went mid, uh, well, AEX just took over the B site for free. B site for free. And look at that aggression that they have. They're already up in each other's business, but it's not where you'd normally see those confrontations in mid. It's all the way up in, well, the spawn. They're in the spawn kind of thing, and really nice round from uh, AX. They're not letting anything go from the side of uh, Rank Demons. They have pistols. They're not giving them the space that they can, well, like I said, pull a thread and, well, pull apart the seams of AX1's attack. Yeah, I mean, I really like the fact that uh, Ranked Demons, as I said, went for that mid control. The problem is, is when you get seen, when you get caught red-handed trying to do something like that, and AEX were already committing towards the site anyway, it was just so easy for the committal to come through onto the B site, and from there, you could just box them out. You know exactly where they are, you know exactly how they're going to come at you, um, and when you've got the weapon advantage as well, when you have the knowledge and the power, what really can your opponent do in that situation? 
Absolutely, and it's not as if they're running scared from these fights. They are respecting it, and they're not over peaking. Yes, they have sheriffs, but they're going to respect it. They're going to wait for the utility. They're going to play it off their teammates, and it's really nice to see that sort of um, passiveness from the side of AX when they need it. And while it looks like ranked teamers are the ones who's going to be passive at the moment, if you look at the positions across the map, no one's done well any exploring anywhere in regards to their staying behind their defensive line and so are AX1. No one's really having a bit of a gander anyway. You have Ella always towards this mid position, whether it's playing um, opposite uh, Miss Davy on the Viper or playing towards the Kildra of the side of Rank Demons. Mm -hmm. So this is an alternate to what we saw from this previously. When we saw that mid control before, they'd already rotated over to A, but this time they stuck on the B. This time they're committing towards it. They have access to the Viper's wall. They have access to Harbour as well. There's so much here. And with all these players dying in just a few split seconds and Ella even able to have that success in mid, this is brilliant from the side of AE. X1 Nova, and I love the fact that they iterated through their options. They played around, they messed them up by just changing a few small details, and it completely threw Ranked Demons off to the point where now they're playing 1v4. I think Tycho's looking at this one going, mm, maybe I saved this rifle. Copium? Is, is, there, is there a chance in which the, she 1v5s this? No. EQ takes the word right up. As soon as I ever say anything that could possibly have a chance of Possibly's. happening, it, 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 Ikyo always shuts me up, basically. When I've said, oh, could this could happen? Nope. Ikyo's already there, shutting down the possibilities of any sort of retake attempt or, well, exit attempts in regards to ex exit frags. They're getting a little bit more worth for any damage she can do to the economy, since the economy of AX here is looking very strong. Yeah, I, I think this, this is definitely true. Um, a Hex have got so much available, not just in terms of the monetary, but also those ultimates. So even yeah. if things go horrendously wrong, Akira still has those knives. They've still got Seekers. They've got a lot to use here. And I was going to say, one of the big things about Seekers is you, you could just kind of pop it whenever. It's like never horrendous to use. Like you're just going to be able to lock out a round, even if it's XV1. Um, it is a really nice position to kind of find yourself in, to really set yourselves up for these rounds quick and clean. They cut away the excess players from ranked demons here, and it makes it very, very difficult for them to move on in. Again, with that harbor just constantly denying all these different sidelines, they push for aggressively. Okay, well, just eat a bunch of hot lead, buddy. You're not making that one happen. We will be bot, bet bot is trying to find something, <laughs> but cannot make it away. Honestly, I love that name. It's such a good name. I I feel like if I ever tried to say it like doing sort of a play by play class, it was like we be be bop kind of I sound like a very bot trying to like doing like a play by play moment, but it was a really nice round from AEX. They they were able to isolate certain positions. They had the Vipers Molly, like you said, with the seekers, they had the information with the dog then and then Vipers Molly and it, all this utility stacking up has been really great. Yes, they were on an eco, so it, yeah, it might not have been a bit more fight to rank humans if they did have uh, rifles but AX1 they're really showing why this is their map pick they're 8 and 2 up on the attacking half yeah, I mean, they are making it work for them. And this isn't even their slightly stronger side. I think moving into the second half with double controllers on the defense is going to be definitely scary as well. Uh, it's definitely going to be a real problem for them to move on in. Look at all those smokes. It's not just the controllers. It's also the initiators who have access to the one. This maybe tries to hold down that angle, but it just doesn't happen for them. The judge, even for Adina at point blank range, can't be made to work. It's two versus four, but tiny lady looking for a chance to put their pocket power to the test they can find these frags, but there's two players right behind them. They are going to get flanked if they are not careful. You can see them stepping up, but look at who holds it down. Tycho as well, providing an opportunity here to set the rhythm for their team. There goes one. That almost goes to second for Kreia, but it's one versus one. This late in the round with so much utility Mollies. ready. You see the lineup here. It's like, I don't even have to interact with you, buddy. It's just going to be Viper's bite. And well... It's going to be so difficult for you to even look for that spike or aggress onto me because I'm so darn far away. And then still with the position of Hera up here, she can just, well, jumpy go over and it's going to be the head glitch position. And there you go. Tiger's going to have to take the fight. But whether that she wins out that fight or not, really nice kills for her in that round. But it is a round nonetheless that's going to AX1. And I just want to talk about the isolation just here in the retake of these positionings and then um, Tiny Lady's utility of like, yeah, the boom bot, we can, I can use that to clear, use that as the initiator sort of value when they were pairing up with the um, raised killjoy back there. But then you also have a really nice post plant position from AX1. You have error, like you said, don't even have to interact, but wins the round anyway because she remembers which pixel to left click on. Yeah. 
right? And that's obviously it's a part of the game, and she's definitely perfected that. And it's the way AX one look like they want to play in those post plants. They're very much happy to be in those reserve position, happy to let um the players waste time and then her then in that clutch situation. But in this situation, it's going to be a 4v4 going onto this side. Ikkyo then, with the Bladestorm, three knives less. Can she get any more for it? Mm -hmm. Wanted to try and find something. Doesn't manage to land, unfortunately. This may be already gone, but did manage to trade one for one in a pretty dire circumstance. But with Uwo Bethbop gone, it does mean that AEX Nova again able to just push through, take control. They've got a player waiting for this rotate to come through from mid, and Ella shuts that down as usual. And this time it's Adina versus four, and as much as we saw a great clutch to a near round win in the previous one, I think this one's not quite so likely, and it might just be double digits for AEX in this first half. The lockdown, even invested like, okay, well we've got it, we might as well use it, right? Yeah, it's, it's the last round of the half anyway, so it's going to be a bit of a do or die for Adina in this round here, but like you said, it's not looking very fruitful. It's a 1v4, the lockdown, they're buying time, the harbour wall's back up now, so the recycling of utility there, the time is created, and look at this crossfire, <laughs> there's nothing... Right, okay. If she had wall hacks and if she had aimbot, I reckon she could get both of them in, like, <laughs> jumping spinbot out of CT, what are we thinking? I mean... Yeah, if, but if. luckily uh, for uh, AX1 Nova, <laughs> no Dina has chosen to abide by the rules. Yeah, it, it, yeah it's, it, it's interesting, isn't it? Um, they've decided not to get aimbot and jump out and spin and spin by everyone, but t double digits for AX1 Nova on their attacking half, on their map pick, which also means Rank Demon's pick to start defense. Yeah, it's a bit questionable, yeah. in my opinion. I think they would have preferred to go for offense, especially with the composition. Uh, but exactly. it might mean they're not so comfortable with it. And, you know, Possibly. as much as their comp should be good on the offense, they're also going to have to deal with AEX1 Nova, whose comp should be good on defense. I'm looking here at the double controller and going, okay, well, yeah, sure, you have, I don't know, 12 flashes or whatever, probably a bit of an exaggeration. Well, on one teams, team. But... <laughs> Let me count. Um, but it's still going to be very difficult to push through quite so many controls. Yeah, <laughs> you just have two. You know, information okay, gathering okay. tools, ways to push forward on those initiators. This They've is why you're a play by play. Away. This yeah, is why you're a play by play. I'm not allowed to talk um, <laughs> on my brain at all, ever. Um, well, it looks like you don't need to uh, think that much. You just need to go hard or go home. And right now, AEX1 Nova are going hard as anything as they jump on into that one, deny the push uh, coming in from ranked demons, and well, already have a two player advantage. Yeah, two player advantage on the defense as well, and they've got um, Sky still towards um, B, holding the fort down for any sort of information, possibly going to be cycling out a few flashes for information towards there. But there's still three um, guns, three faces of AX1 Nova looking towards this now sight hit coming from Adina. Probably going to go out to get them a little bit from more information, but they're just hemorrhaging time. And, well, they haven't lost anything since earlier, but likely could hemorrhage in players if they try to overforce it. That's the problem with all these controls with everything set up with players like you just go into town as that's three for them. Almost a fourth. Has to back away from that one. But then there was one. And this maybe is uh, kind of look at the situation going, eh, it's not quite working out for me, is it? Unfortunately, in this one. And as a result, it's just going to kind of play around the corner, try and get some frags, but to no avail. 11. 11 rounds on the board now for AEX and realistically from what we've seen what we've seen in the past from them and also from Rank Demons it's going to be 12. They've got that pistol round they're going to, and it's not as if they lost many players so they're going to be in a good position that well Rank Demons didn't get planned down didn't kill many people so they're not going to be able to really force up into this as much as you'd realistically see maybe Stinger, um, Stingers and Spectres half armor and like we having to go into sheriffs and it's just not looking that strong. They need to get something fast and catch AX1 over off guard since they just look like they're ready for whatever um, rank demons have to throw at them. Yeah, I mean, and I, I like the fact that AEX1 Nova are kind of showing that more well-drilled side for them that we didn't get to see so much of in Haven, and I was yeah. a little bit worried. I was looking at them going, yeah. oh, if they, they can't dr um, drill well, if they can't use the fact that they're a team and have played together for quite some time to their advantage, they're really going to struggle against a really solid squad like Ranked Demons. But coming in and to their own map, they look far more comfortable, far more in control, and you could see that right there from... Um, Ella, just finding these kind of plays around the mid. The mid has looked so confident for them on this map. It's been very difficult for ranked demons to do basically anything because they've been smothered at 90% of these opportunities, and frankly, by one player in Ella half the time. 
Yeah, and when we were talking about the last map, that's probably one of the worst maps statistically, Haven, and I'm surprised that they did take them there and cho chose to opt to ban Ascent, which is one of the like 50-50 maps instead. But going over to this map, this is the one that counts, one that's going to make this a series realistically if AX or Nova can close this out. Oh, it's, the, it's, it's the close angles, but the, the spike is down. The spike is down to the left. Oh, Tycho finds some good frags as well. Does manage to try and force it, but look who's waiting in the wings. It's always Ikyu, as you said before, constantly ready to prove a point, constantly ready to contest these angles. And on that jet has been so brilliant in their positioning and their ability to maneuver around the map. And Bebop there, just in a position where she can't go forward, she can't go back, and then just very much corralled into the sort of link section there and yeah very nice run from AX this is going to be the one that <laughs> it looks like it's going to close out since they did force up into that ranked team as they had those stingers and unfortunately the specters of AX1 Nova are just better along with the positioning and ability to fast flank they were very much all on the same page in regards to if they were fighting if they were letting it go and it just seems the they are so well oiled but do you know who is well oiled in this game like i said ikio is the one that i say something she just shuts everything i say down in regards to any possibility she's going 20 and 6. yeah I mean, really has been the grace in the engines um, of AEX1 Nova right now. Constantly making sure those gears can turn, that everybody can get into the right position. And Ella has really kind of backed that up as well. Over on this Killjoy, shutting down, controlling a lot of these spaces. Ikkyo takes it, Ella holds it. Now, Ikkyo goes down, but it's still a three versus three. I mean, that two versus three is ranked demons using that aggression to their advantage. But look who's here. Ella taps the spike, says, okay, guys, you need to know I'm here, but... Adina holds well, and unfortunately now it's Conoco versus three. Vacant versus two is getting aggressive in the right way, but was not ready for We Will Beat Bob to say, um, I'm ready, and I can take that frag. I think they are ready. I think they're ready to make this a game, possibly. This hey. what, at what point do we say it's a comeback? Well, okay, <laughs> let, let, let's, let, let's let them get to at least six, six. rounds. So, should we say six? Okay, right. Then I can start getting a little bit excited for it. Yeah, but... AX1 Nova fans, you're okay for a little bit longer. It is 12-3. And realistically, we're hoping that they can close this out in regards to the for players. Their mental, for their sakes. Yeah, it's not even that. It's just like you've got, they've done so well so far on their attacking yeah. half. And while their defense in regards to statistically and how AX1 Nova's played in the past is only like 2% lower um, in regards to round win rate versus attack and defense. So they should be okay. Okay, this should be okay. They win 52% of the <laughs> defenses round. So out of the ones, right, you have six possibilities where you should win, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm very confident in them, right? They've still got access to these rifles. They've still got access to that power. And with players like Kraya stepping up to the plate, AEX1 Nova look strong, look confident, look comfortable, look like a team here as it's three versus one. And Tycho, you've shown us some clutch plays before, but will it be enough to shut this down? Tries to wide swing, but was full flashed. And that's a full game going the way of AEX1 Nova as they pick up map two here, moving it to one to one. And I am excited for our third and final map. And that is... It is going to be over Lot on Lotus. Lotus. It's the new map. So I really want to see if we're going to... Oh, right. Before we talk about the next map, let's just talk about the one we just saw because I'm going to go down a tangent about how I like Lotus, okay? That's <laughs> that's not what we're here about. It's about how well... And I think I'm going to have to have a name and repeat or something, but Ikiru has done so well on that map. She might have had a good performance on Haven, but coming into Pill then, she definitely showed up for a team. And like you said, it felt like the glue that was holding the team together, whether it was the space that she was making or just the general fragging power that she brought to the team. Yeah, they were really able to kind of take advantage. And I think the big thing I always look for in teams is, are they one the ones not necessarily to take the pace, but dictating how the fights go? Dictating mm. dictate where, who, what, when. That's always the big part of it. And I think with Ikkyo doing that, with Ella holding down a lot of mid control, meaning that the rotations weren't quite there, that the positions, the flanks weren't ever coming on in. It really meant that um, they were able to just play to their game and play to their outs. And we were talking about playing to their game. They weren't exactly the team that we saw getting all these first bloods. There was only 11 f first bloods. And yes, there was only 16 rounds. But in regards to how dominating it was, you'd expect there to be a lot more than that. Maybe possibly 13, like, if you get a first blood, they win that round. But it, was, it wasn't actually Ikkyo getting all those first bloods. It was Ella, like you said about her presence in mid and then the presence that 
um, on the defense side that we saw. We didn't see much of it, but she was also able to hold down those sides, anchor a little bit in regards to positioning. But yeah, definitely the first bloods going in the favor of um, Elevate in mid was so crucial in regards to the um, attacking half. Yeah, and I was kind of looking at some of the stats of the games where they succeed, and it has been Ekyo and Ella showing up again and yeah. again. Kreya as well, a player who I've kind of highlighted a couple of times there and have been very impressed with. Um, but it is, it is this kind of duo that really does lead them when they're having a successful game. When they are able to run their game plan, things look good. Yeah, it does seem like the Sage mains have been saved in regards to how Gecko and Harbour have come out now, because Kreya had 10, 10 double-digit plants yeah. in that game. 10, like... Obviously, the utility we've talked about the harbor, we've seen it before on um, Pill in regards to just general agent uses on the map. But seeing Cray on it, it definitely gave me a little bit more of an insight to how well she fits in in regards to utility to this team comp and how they want to play. It does seem like Pill is a bit of their playground in regards to getting the plant down and really strong um, post plant positions with then Hera playing the bit of the lineup nerd in regards to having that deep deep post plan position is available yeah it's so hard to push through all those smokes and all the information denial uh the kind of setting on up and, and even with that you've got to be worried about that flank they were constantly ready to put players on it i think in particular ella obviously kind of covering the flank themselves and then going for it as well over on that yeah. sentinel kind of fulfilling that pretty standard role pretty cemented role now um i, I really like it especially on that offense they were shut down so much yeah, absolutely. And that's not against anything of Rank Demon's um, playstyle or anything, but it just didn't feel like they had the real opportunity to get into this game since they were just shut down. Every single yeah. chance they thought that they could get, which I commended them so much on Haven because they were able to find the little loopholes in the defense of AEX. But coming into this, AEX looks so like well-knitted as a team. Mm -hmm. Just absolutely amazing. Which... Now I can go talk about Lotus. It is the three site map, similar to Haven. And statistically, AEX Haven's one of their worst maps from what I can find on the, um, well, their win rates. It's, 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 in, it's in the red. Let's just say it's in the red, okay? So when we're going on to Lotus then, I'm really interested to see if they're able to take the momentum that they're going to get from Pill and how well well some of these players are doing onto Lotus then and kind of still be okay with the fact that there's three sides now and not be too similar to Haven, how it was played out. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely interested. I think it's a little bit more strat heavy. You can definitely yeah. focus on that more tactically. Uh, but we'll be interested to see if AEX have had the chance to do that. It's only been out. Well, a couple months now. Um, and, 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 and it, I mean, that's enough map. time. You know, they should have something on it. But while they should, we are also uh, going to have to do something. We're going to have to go to a broke. If you're looking for Lotus, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Valorant action coming away. So don't step away from your screens. Brother, sister, find your spaceship and let it take
everybody, and welcome back to Birds of Prey Series 5. I'm Rook and joined by Winteria, and we're here for the final map of this series. It's gone 1-1, it's gone the whole way, we've had some brilliant matches to show for it. Yeah, absolutely. We had a very close map on Haven, but it was a little bit more one-sided is a weird for it with the map we've just seen on Pill, but it's latest, that's the next one, and that is going to be the decider. It's 1-1 one, one so far in the series of Ranked Demons versus AEX 1 Nova. I know we probably should have done this before, but what are your predictions going into this? Into this final map now? After everything that we've seen, like, so we've had a little bit of background information from ha seeing the teams, how they're performing today as well. What What's Lotus looking like for you? I think Lotus is looking like it's... I think it's going to be like 12 6. I think it's going to be the f side of AEX 1 Nova. Okay. But I really liked how they played over on. Um over on Pearl. I think they look super confident that they look super um, coordinated and I think Lotus is a map which really rewards that and I think they should be able to find some a lot of success there. Yeah and I'm just worried about the fact that we're going back to a three site map. Yes True. but we've seen both teams have a little bit of teething ground on there but I want to see what's going to happen in regards to the smokes on the side of ranked demons. Are we going to be going back to that brimstone since that is one of the comfort picks of some of the players there but then Obviously, the Viper pick, that can be brought down onto a Lotus with the Harbour. It's, it's a little bit more up in the air, I feel, for the smoke picks. But again, Brim, I don't think he's as useful or can be as useful on Lotus as he was on Haven, which is another map that you kind of see him sometimes, but don't tend to. So it's going to be interesting what kind of agent lineup that we get from both teams here. Yeah, I think it's definitely going to be kind of the thing which I will look at and go, okay, this is how this game is going to go. And I think we saw that um, in the second map, right? Where we saw the double mm. controller and they just used it so effective. I was like, oh, wow, if they can use this well, well, that's game right there, right then and there. Um, it was kind of dominating in how they used that utility. And if AEX have something prepared on that level, yeah. we're going to again see them dominate. I want to see a chamber, actually. I don't. What, what, why? What's wrong with Chamber? I'm just not why big... is this Chamber slander? I'm just not a big fan. I, I was not happy with the days where it was, oh wow, you got Jet or Chamber and they'd hold an angle and they'd dash away. Not a big fan of that. And I think with the with the changes as well, um, Chamber just doesn't bring the same amount. I much prefer to have a Killjoy in this situation. I think we've seen a lot of good Killjoy already. Mm. And why change what's working? I think you have a little bit of um, pent-up anger against Chamber players. Yes. Did, did, did they ruin your ranked experience? Yes, they is, that, is that what, is that what we're going with? But no, when Carried. we're talking about when we're about, talking about Lotus, Chamber is a pick that we see coming up a lot. Whether it's in the um, main league version of this sort of level in regards to um, regionals, um, talking about Polaris. Um, Polaris has a few Chamber players up its sleeve, and they definitely thrive on Lotus. So whether we're going to be seeing Ikio play Chamber possibly on this map, get some um, operating to shot off as well since we see her play in the jet as well it can be interchangeable from the jet to the chamber less movement per se for the attacking half but then when we're talking about that that could be really good for the side of rank demon since we've seen them run double duelist in the past so it could be a double duelist comp from rank demons possibly i really want to see it though or at least a chamber I don't hate the idea of a double duelist comp. Okay. I actually think it's pretty good here. Uh, it depends on what you're kind of going for. I would love to see a Phoenix. I actually think Phoenix works really well with taking a lot of the corners. There's a lot of really important places. And I'm a big fan of Phoenix Wall. I think him being able to cut up the map in a similar way to, obviously, Viper um, and um, Harbour is very nice. While it is short-lived, I think it can give you just enough time to clear some pretty pivotal positions. Speaking of positions, well, we're getting ready to position ourselves ready for that next map as it is coming your way Lotus here for map three, and as we said, and as we've clearly expressed, this is exciting. Ooh, Ikyo hovering the raise locked in now, so it's going to be sort of a little bit of a raise battle now between Tiny Lady and Ikyo. Someone we've seen raise be sort of a pinnacle of her career in um, game changes, and then Ikyo is someone who's a little bit more flexible. We've seen her on that jet, we've seen her on the raise as well, but I feel like it's going to be coming up to a little bit of an entry battle from both of these two players. Not necessarily the first kills and first mm -hmm. death regards, but more of the spacing that they're going to be able to create with the satchels and just with the general um, positioning. And we got a chamber, so I think I win that bet. Yes, we had a bet. You did not know about it, but you technically <laughs> owe me lunch or like a boba or something after we finish cast. But Ella is going to be on that chamber instead of the killjoy. Hmm. 
I mean, yeah, I, I, I just, I, I prefer to have the Killjoy here because I like the utility that is available. I think Nana Swamp, I think the, the very standard, the very default setup for Killjoy on this map is just so brilliant in shutting mm. down and kind of a great way to kind of position yourself around. And I think they've done that well with Ella before, so why not go for it again? The Chamber has rotatability and has the ability to rotate very effectively and have impact on both sides, um, on a, lot, a couple of sites as well. I just don't like it quite as much um, as much as you guys might like looking at our faces. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, looking at this, I really like the fact that we've got um, the double rays coming through. Um, I think it's a really, really nice um, change to come on through for Ikkyo to kind of have that to deny the space. The problem for me is, is I think Tiny Lady is definitely going to get a lot more use out of it. And obviously we've talked about the rays and the utility wise. I just want to like completely not answer anything that you've said but talk about the <laughs> agent still we're still on the same topic okay but it's more um miss um this may be on that viper as the only smokes for the side of ranked demons i okay i was skeptical about the brim i'm more skeptical about this especially when we're talking about when you're going onto your attacking half going towards like the a sites or the b you're not going to be able to cut off all of those angles with a solo viper wall and an orb it's just impossible to do yeah, it's definitely interesting from Ranked Demons here to kind of go on into that. I guess the choice is between Brim or Viper, and I don't know which one I'd rather have at that mm. point, but uh, I, I think mm. it's definitely going to have some success, at least on the defense. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I think it's the, I think I agree with you, right? The offense is not going to be able to kind of have that up to snuff, but they could just play a good macro game. The problem is I don't know if Ranked Demons are capable. And look at this, there's no sort of sign of AX1 over across the map, so they coming into the end game going for this full exec now the satchel's coming in but Adina's going to wrap around right clicks Ikyo in the back but Ella there with the head done to, to trade out yeah manages to make good usage of that one before finally falling it's gonna be three versus three but the part is going down so now AEX on the front foot they're the ones who can kind of control this one as the aggression is gonna have to come out from ranked demons here they're the ones who've got to push forward and time is very much against them they're tracking some of these players. They're looking for Charles to be one in. Koneko waiting around the corner. Tries to get a shot, but at close range, that classic is just so deadly. Makes things a little bit too problematic for them here. Uh, trying to keep an eye out, trying to find someone. Does indeed gets the shots down, and that was great from Kreo as well with the spray on the Frenzy. Yeah, really nice positions from them as well. You had that um, fade reveal going up towards heaven, buying a little bit of time there. But look at this. The wrapping of the players onto the site, whether it was from Hera or from the original site anchors of the side of ranked demons it's just being able to play around the smokes on site the utility but also the sort of the little shack the little huts on there and being able to use the um, built-in walls there is just so good for the players just to be a little bit of a rat basically wrapping around playing a bit of merry-go-round and it just comes out of ax1 nova on top with Korea's frenzy kills and then also hera's wrapping always gotta look at that ratty behavior taiko not being a rat, just being a nuisance and taken out quite accordingly by AEX1 over here. Let's take that advantage to get that C site and well, no one's really able to contest us the thing without the access to this sentinel. If they push forward aggressively like that, there's no information. Obviously, they're at a weapon disadvantage. They're just going to be able to claim this one. And Ella is going to town on that flank watch. It doesn't matter what agent uh, she is on. She's still able to have a lot of success as it is a clean round coming through from AEX1 Nova as they shut out Ranked Demons again. And now we're moving on into that bonus. This is where Ranked Demons really should start to at least find some footing. And obviously having that flawless coming through from that second round where they had investments into Bulldogs, into Spectres, and they're going to be able to carry all five of those through while also saving so much money for the next round again. But Ranked Demons, they're not even going to be able to fall by. Yeah, I mean, they just don't have the economy. They didn't find that many frags in that second round. It's going to make things exceedingly difficult for them. And, I mean, obviously, if you give AEX Nova an inch, they have absolutely take a mile. We saw that in map two over on Pearl. And this is showing again that AEX Nova are able to capitalize well off of the pressure that they're putting down. Yeah, absolutely. And the pressure this time is going to be all towards the A site with obviously Hera just hanging back a little bit towards spawn, making sure no funny business happens on that flank too early on. But the positions of Ranked Demons on this A site are so disjointed. You have um, Tiny Lady over towards Tree, but then Breach towards backside. They're going to have to clear these players out if they want to go there. But do you know what? They've said no. 
We know who's on that site. We don't want to take a fight for them. And Ella just making sure Tiny Lady does not follow them through onto this B-bomb site. I feel like trying to follow up on the backside of AEX1 Nova is never going to work for you. You've got Ella covering, you got them denying, and they just look so confident in that, trying to push through the front. However, they get a frag, they take that crayon. This is the chance to move on through with Kenneko down. They're going to be able to try and see back some of the control here. In fact, they take a player advantage. Ella is denied this time on the front side. As Hira trying to play slow, trying to play patient on this angle, but just has to push on out. There's too many players, not enough time. Not enough time, but do you know what there's enough time for to do is to get that defuse down when there's no one shooting back at you, which is exactly what Rank Demon's done. They cleared out all of AU1X's, um, well, players onto that site. And while well, isolating these 1v1s towards the end is really crucial for them, and we're able to get that defuse off, saving three rifles going through, so the economy is building up a little bit now. But again, it was a bonus for AU, uh, AEX. But they also have that breach rolling thunder now online, almost uh, super close to Alice Tour de Force, and it's the alt economy for the side of AX1 Nova has come online just before the side of Rank Demons, which could prove pivotal for this round. It could flash catches them unfortunately here as they try to get aggressive, but AEX don't manage to find too much of the safe side. But look, all those players trying to pile on through, trying to get aggressive. They don't manage to quite get the space enough to get a frag, but they do force them into the waiting arms of this C site. A lot of util drop there, a lot of things expecting. With the access to this Viper, with the access to this Killjoy, they should be able to shut this one down with this maybe going out here. That is so brutal, and now AEX1 Nova can really start to claim this. Look, he's waiting in the wings. Tycho doesn't even get one. That should have been a frag, but it wasn't quite enough. And the smoke phase just in time for you to get that, but the dividends of um, A1X, they are aware of the possible um, players being there, shutting it down, not allowing um, her to get too far with that exploration. But Tiny Lady is going to be exploring all corners of this side, getting two for the side of Ranked Demons to make that three is all down to the side of um, A1X on the shoulders of Ella. Oh, wait for it to speak. Oh. There it is. Tiny Lady gets the frag, denies away again, and Rank Demons with a really nice round there, managing to get the wrap around um, and really shut down what AEX1 Nova were putting down, even with a pretty disastrous initial hold. Yeah, some of these kills obviously are going quite unfortunate in regards to getting full blind kills or getting running gun kills, but it's more of the idea that a one x um aex1 had in regards to they take the site then they'll take ct but the take on ct didn't exactly go very well no and unfortunately for them they tried to overextend they got completely shut out um and, and it was just a really you nice opportunity play. then for rank demons play. to push on forward with aux1 nova trying to hold some of these angles and just getting completely called out on them i don't think there was any information they just went okay let's check the right normal angle let's make it happen and here well it's just Koneko going hard with some of these shots, denying away these players, and Adina is even going to have to beat a hasty retreat here to try and get back to some sort of semblance of safety as the A site is very much in AEX1 Nova's control. Yeah, and they are definitely aware of Hera's positioning, but she does not have to do anything where she is now. Just stay alive by as much time as possible, but Adina's not going to have any time for Ikea left in this round, but Koneko three for herself there, and then Hera picking up the last two stragglers. Kaneko just uh, really showed up that round, not even really using the flashes to that great um, effectiveness, just kind of swinging out, showing that gun skill. Yeah. And again, I think this is the big thing, right, is AEX have that gun skill, so do Ranked Demons, but AEX, they're on the same page, at least in some of, a lot of these rounds, and that's been a real turning point for them, I think, especially in map two, and now into map three, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable about pretty much everything they're doing. However... Rank demons. You give them an opportunity to get that momentum going, and we've seen what can happen. Yeah, and especially on a map like this, I think it's a little bit of a unknown for both teams, so we're not too sure how both well react on attack or defense. But you know what's going to be reacting is Tiny Ladies, another showstopper miss, but it doesn't matter. The gun skill is there to pick up the final kill on Kaneko, but they have a lot more to answer back from the side of AEX1 Nova compared to rank demons. <laughs> Right a click. little bit scrappy, I think, is the simple yeah. answer for that round. As you said, I was really shocked that that showstopper did not kill both of them. I think we need a buffer. I, like... I think it's now the short stopper. I think that's the problem. It's, it's just not got that range, um, unfortunately, to deal with that one. And uh, yeah, AEX um, one do pick up the round, but that's in spite of 
some pretty dire circumstances. They got yeah. really close to that one. And Ranked Demon is showing that they are a powerhouse who can contend with this. I'm not sure if Tiny's missing or it's generally just a lack of damage from the race or... Because some of the ones that she's sent, especially in this series, it just looks like they should have hit. But they are not hitting. And do you know what? who is hitting? Is AE1X and their shots. And it's exactly what they've been doing in the last couple of rounds. But Adina has a position to say something about it. Stephanie gets down Koneko down for the can to breach out. And she's going to be retreating back oh. into B. But Ikio with that showstopper definitely hitting hers this time. So maybe it is uh, a cast of kiss on um, a Tiny Lady. Rather than the showstopper, but it's going to go into this retake now. It's a 4v4, and Tiny Lady's already up in the faces of AE1X. Here they are. Tiny Lady tries to put themselves up, but unfortunately, it's going to be the rest of their team capitalizing on that positioning. And it was really, really nice to see we will beep up, rock up, and in and be like, terminate. <laughs> I really want to know the origin of that name. That's a good name. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a good question. Is it just they thought, oh, it sounds funny? It really just could be that. Possibly. It, it could be. I feel like we might we might need to get reaching out to some of these players for the, the origin of the name. It could be a little bit of like a mid-game section. It's like, oh my god, where did you get your name from? Oh my gosh. Where did you get awesome. your name from? Uh, basically, I was thinking about fantasy animals for like a new name and I chose the rock. Cause it's like a cool bird thing. Okay. And I was like, well, my initials are O and O. So I added another two O's in and now there are three O's and nobody ever remembers that there are three O's. I think I put two. You, I okay. think I put two. You, uh, it, it, two three. is very common. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter that much, as long as you Rook, know it's me. Rook is <laughs> like, that, that's the difference that you're going for it. But the difference in AEX, AEX1's attack this time is that they're going towards the C straight off and then leaving Ella to this mid position on this chamber. The stuns, the flashes now, they are aware of certain players, but we will be Bob is getting one, but Kraya and Hera trade them out and it's out of four versus three. But Miss May. This maybe is still towards the side. The door turning around gets two. That lovely shot onto Kraya. And is aware of the omens position. And Hera is known to this maybe might possibly be apprehensive of going up against her, especially in this round. She's been hitting her shots very nice and clean. And well, it's on the shoulders of the breach and omen now into this round. I don't know if it's the map. Um, or the way they're playing and the way mm. they're communicating. Right but there. Ranked Demons have been hitting a lot more shots in this map. It might just be, you know, they're a little bit more comfortable here. Um, and they've yeah. been shutting down a lot of these angles more. Uh, whereas kind of in in Pearl, I mean, we saw them hit some of them, but with so many smokes in the way, potentially, or all of the kind of flashes that were coming out at the right time from AEX1 Nova or the information gathering, it made it really difficult. They weren't able to have that kind of success. But now they look a lot more comfortable, especially on this defense. They're just able to sit back, relax, and... Hit some nice shots, and that's been a big part of what has allowed them to shut down this seaside. I don't like this. I'm a hater. Uh, especially this round is now over. Like, yeah. you just have two players cover this. Koneko is not in the right position at the right time, and he's even looking at this and going, okay, well, there's nothing I can do. I just have to back up, and then, yeah. well, she's going to get to save this rifle, yes. But you really wanted the round. They've got, they get the plant down for the rest of the team in regards to a little bit of the extra economy, but look at these shots from this maybe, they're absolutely crisp. But the situation is, they have to, realistically, if you're already split up anyway, there's nothing too wrong with going down that avenue, but it's when you're planting and it just doesn't seem like you're on the same page. Yes, they're split up, they're in a 2v3, there's not much time left on the clock, they have to do something. And it's just unfortunate how split up they were at that point of the decision making coming through. But the timeout coming in now for AEX1 uh, with Alexander on the coach position. What wise words would you be saying? What do they need to um, change up now since, well, ranked team is econ um, economy is good, the alt economy is even better. And it's tied 4-4. I think actually something I'd really like to say from, see from AEX1 Nova um, is not... I feel like there's a lot of uh, kind of sight towards this uh, this C position, right? Okay. They're wanting to contest that a lot. I don't think that's right when you've got the Viper and the Killjoy both locking it down and also hitting their shots. You want to be looking towards the A and B, and that's where a lot of the focus often is on this map. And I'd like to see them kind of look at it and go, okay, how do we do A, but also in conjunction with that, put pressure on B, because that has not been a place they've been focusing. 
I am quite interested in to see where they're going to be positioning this Killjoy and Viper since they are getting the Viper towards B this time with the Killjoy setup with the Rays on C. But like you said, it's the Killjoy and Viper we're playing towards C together. They have double sort of Sentinel stopping power towards the side that, well, AX1 Nova have been very favourable towards. They are going to be on an eco now. They have some Sheriffs in hand. But if you know anything about Game Changers players, their shots with the Sheriff are crisper than anything in the world. So this could be an interesting round to say the least but like you said you're talking about that a and b pressure which seems like they are listening to you they like you're telepathically telling them what to do <laughs> well bias caster actually that's that's actually quite biased that you telepathically tell them yeah, the a no, and b. that's cheating. awful yes yeah, awful but you know at least you're getting these players to show us some great shots at the very least uh, i'd love to see more of that i mean the sheriffs have certainly been pretty punchy i um, mean this one so far we see finally a punch on through as they take control of a lot of space here. Again, using those satchels effectively, I like this from Ikyu. It's not something we've seen so far, but obviously now we know they're a lot more comfortable here. That spray hits the Prowler, kills Ikyu. That's just unfortunate. AEX1 Nova not able to deal with that one. Instead, Ella will have to hold down the fort, take down two, set up their team for the kind of position they really need to find once to land those shots with that gun, but not quite able to make it happen as we were beat Bop. Forces them away. The lockdown means that Ella just can't contest a lot of this. Wants to try and step on in, but knows that that detain is going to be a real problem for them. It's one versus two. Can they make it happen right now? This maybe is in a fantastic position to try and land some of these shots, but they're just playing so passively around it. The flash forces them off. The wall goes up. That's the kind of opportunity we're looking for. The lock, uh, sorry, the concussion is big. Is going to allow them to force on through, and that's a good round here for AEX1 Nova. What did I say? Sheriff shots. Like, honestly, Sheriff shots of the, some of these players are absolutely insane. But that kill from uh, Bebop there through the smoke, but it's the investment of the kill draw lockdown and the positioning that they were able to secure during into that link between A and B, able to stay in the little pocket where she wouldn't get contained, and they that meant they had to face her. And she gets two um, players from that position in there, and then is left into that 1v2 situation with the two players back in main. And it's just really nice um, time biding, but the Kreia's um, sees on Tiny Lady catapulted that round in favour of AOX because she had the sto showstopper online. She was satcheling into sight but got sucked back because of crazy utility and was able to get that kill, pick up rifles, and it really just, it was kind of like a snowball effect from that. Indeed, oh, just maybe playing well around this pit and showed us that on the previous map. Let's see if they can have that success again, forcing away. This time that Viper's Pit focusing towards that B and I like that they made this adaptation as soon as AEX1 Nova are putting pressure towards there, they shift it up, they don't commit too hard towards that C site, instead they've got a single player pushing up that aggressively, they now know how this strat is going and they know how to break it as well. Yeah, and it's going to be players swarming onto this A site, picking up one for themselves, the flash, the information is there, Ikyo hiding in the smoke just under is it by Tiny Lady picking that one for herself? It's going to be a four versus three now for this retake. Oh, they're going to be able to check it. Tiny Lady, well, won't be able to move forward with that backup as well. That was a very easy round for them to pick on up. And it feels like however AEX1 Nova start to step forward, in lockstep, right there, are ranked demons. Yeah, it does seem like any time either team have something to say, the very next round, there's always a rebuttal to it. We get a round from a really nice, well, uh, eco round technically from AX1 Nova against uh, ranked demons. But then the next, the next round we've just seen is they kind of wipe the floor with them. So it's kind of like it's a really nice back and forth. Especially if we want to see this in the third map of the series. We don't want to see like a super one-sided um, last map. Makes it a bit boring viewing, doesn't it? So we do. They're doing this for you guys at home. They're doing it for the Twitch viewers out there. So we do appreciate you guys tuning in to support the female and marginalized gender scene along with the Goose House. But 5-5. Five, five. Scores tied. Even if one team was to take the half now into a 7-5, it's not that strong, especially for the side of AEX1 when this is a very attacker-sided map. Yeah, my 12-6 uh, prediction, sorry, 13-6 prediction, not looking so hot right now. I think no. that uh, Ranked Demon's certainly showing up a lot more than I thought, and I think a big part of that has been the fact that they've been able to set up well um, four players like uh, Dismavy um, over on this Viper. They've had a lot more success. And by doing that, I think they've freed up a lot of the other players to rotate around to play more fast and loose where they've had a lot of success like this before. 
Exactly, and look at where all the players are situated in regards to rank demons and AEX one Nova. There's a very heavy presence towards A, and then we see Ella on an ever so lurking roll with the Tour de Force this time holding down the C push. Yeah ready to move together. AEX definitely need to focus on that synergy if they're going to have a lot of success here. Steps out, but the rocket lands and takes down Keneko, meaning they're lacking one of those initiators. When they go down, space control could be a problem. In fact, they're trading for players left, right, and center as Hera. Feeling wise beyond their years right now, looking for a chance to find a round for them, set their team ahead. Yet once again, they get the spike. They're going to look for the plant. They've got to deal with Tycho, who has shown some impressive clutching ability before. He's moving in quietly here. Catches sight. Can they catch one of these players? They can indeed. But there it is. The shots from Ella. They certainly don't miss. It's really nice that they weren't given those 1v1s. Like, Ella came back to re, um, rejoin her teammate over towards A rather than going on that lurking roll. And being able to have that sort of grouped up mentality, one had to go get the spike. They went together when they were planting. Ella covered. And then in that situation there, um, Hera gets shot in the side. Ella's there to refrag, which is really nice to see that AX have fixed tiny, like, the little mistakes that we've seen um, already in this map that people have been one side of the map when something's happening the other and it's like the support system is not always there for them and it looks like they're getting a lot more consistent in the sort of um, unity of their team yeah no you definitely need to be playing as a squad especially against a player players like ranked demons as we said before in terms of individual skill they are absolutely up there so you need to be refragging because that's how you get the most value out of it they can't be consistent every single time so you just need to be ready waiting and aggressive it seems for AQ right now as they take control of that site deny away so much as Ella covering the backside as usual denying those flanks to denying those exceptional plays to come out from ranked demons, which might have made a world of difference. The rocket does not land, but certainly is a rude awakening for Wee Woo Beat Bob. Yeah, it, it, the rocket for the dog is, it seems like a good trade, right? It is the last round in the half, so it is use your utility or, well, it goes to waste realistically in this situation. But two kills coming from Dismavy there is now back into a 2v2 situation. A lot more winnable for the side of ranked demons, but the time, the time is ticking. Certainly is. You can see John hold away on that one. Conoco finds one, denies away, and that seeker will find very, very little. The Having time. to sprint for it, trying to make sure you can get the uh, defuse here, as it just ain't going to happen. You can see Conoco looking at that one and going, okay, well, that's GG right there. Seven to five, a decent first half, but not as successful as we would have liked, I think, from AAX1 Nova. Especially when we're talking about how we see Rank Demons play. Right, Ranked Demons is a quite high level mix in what we're talking about the players, um, certain cores that are already on the team and how these players are with chemistry wise that we've seen over the first two maps. But AEX, they've done so well in order to keep their cool under a three map um, bomb site, a uh, three bomb site map. When we haven't seen them do that realistically very strongly before and having the winning half year is so dividend for them especially when we talk about how well they did on haven versus lotus it's it's that's the kind of comparison i want to make rather than taking pearl into account because that's completely different play style to the two maps that we've seen but tiny lady her play style is getting these first bloods and taking names for her bug in the ones that are in her way to win in the series yeah, I've been so impressed uh, by Tain Lady over the course of this series. Sure, Pearl was a little bit quieter, but this map has certainly looked loud for them. They set themselves up well, but goes deep, but doesn't really find them too much information. Instead, they're going to have to play some physical contact play here as they just step up, Ooh. take two, and that is the ghost in the hand of a strong play. It's so darn scary in these pistol rounds, and AXX1 Nova. Look at this going, okay, well, how do we make this retake work? There's so many players covering so many angles. Nikyu certainly has to be that first point of contact, but can't get a thing going. And Tiny Lady will even move up to four. Yeah, we've, I've talked about Tiny Lady and how lovely it is to see her attack, especially on the raise her movement. Raise is kind of like her like her character. Whenever I think of a game changer um, raise, I think Tiny Lady. And when we're talking about their team play, they 
were on site, the bomb was only just getting planted by Dismavian. They were already all the way basically in B bomb site through um, C Link. And you saw the um, stun from Kaneko miss because, well, they're not expecting that much aggression and that much space to be gained when the plant isn't even fully down yet. It was about 75% down, and they're already picking up the second and third kill in that round through the. Like, they were fast rotates, but they were already um, too slow for the side of ranked demons. They are so confident in their ability. Here they are. Ella backs away, doesn't die, gets caught with a little bit of damage, but importantly still alive. Still has access to a chance to use these five remaining bullets. Attacks the dog, can't get the shot, unfortunately, to kill, but there is a refrag. Hero is in position to deal with Tiny Lady, so they get that unable. To claim that um, Spectre though, that is an important part of it, so they're not going to have access to those slightly stronger weapons instead. Still at a disadvantage, still at a deficit, still unable to do quite what they want to do. Defuse trying to go, sorry, the plant goes on in, and now it's the chance of AEX1 Nova to look for that defuse as the bite goes down, forces them back again. They can't push on into this site. And AEX1 Nova kind of pigeonholed in this one. Do manage to find a frag, it's Dismavy, is, well, dismembered in that one there. Tycho, however, uses that Spectre while uses the ability to kind of move forward and really nicely shuts down AEX1 Nova in that round. And it is three players then remaining to carry over weapons like the Spectres, the Vandal as well, but it is still a good round in regards to AEX1 uh, Nova. They were able to get two kills, did some damage, and also they all Died. I know that sounds like bad, but having the ult economy starting to build up as well, they know they had to bite fully into the next round. They had no shields really, so it's, it's better for them to die gain ult orbs than yeah. it is to save, well, a half shield or something like that, in the position they were in at least. It doesn't really matter that much. You definitely want access to those ultimates as quickly as possible because those are definitely going to be a game changer, if you'll pardon the pun. <laughs> um, uh, I, I think, especially with the way we've kind of seen these um, lockdowns and some of the other pieces we've seen, the Rolling Thunders in particular, have been very brutal. I want to say uh, the Showstoppers, but we've seen them obviously come up short. Um, AEX1 Nova right now on the defense as well, looking to try and generate as much as they can. They don't have access to that lockdown, but they still have a lot, and especially that Tour de Force would be a terrifying idea in the hands of Ella. Just with shots like that, they can double up for even more. Yeah, and the TP, the use of the uh, rendezvous as well, being able to take an an advanced position in down a long pick players up off guard and then TP back to the safety behind the wall on Bieber. Do you know who's not safe? tiny lady. She is not safe at all. Hero getting that pick, making sure there's no funny business going on with any looks through C, but it is definitely see where these players are going to be ending. And 5v3 for the retake is looking like they're not going to be committing too much too soon. Yeah, they do actually get that spike down, but look who's dropping from above. AQ running and gunning and even more running, it seems to be the plan. As uh, eventually will be Koneko finishing that one out. AEX1 Nova pick up the round. Again, this was a bonus for Ranked Demons. And they still managed to find a lot of damage here. I think it's actually pretty successful for them, all things considered. Yeah, especially when you're looking at that. That was a 5v3. Yes, they, they're playing on the trades oh, yeah. as well. But a great utility usage, I suppose, from the side of Ranked Demons when they're able to isolate those gunfights. Especially with, <laughs> like you saw, Ikkyo just satcheling over a few heads and <laughs> getting a few kills there. But... It goes down to the situation where you have Tiny Lady lurking uh, through C, which would have been great, but then it came down to Hero. Hero was just on, on the ball, got Tiny Lady down for the count, and then it just left the three remaining players stuck with nowhere really to go at the time that they were given. They were stuck with three, and then AX1 Nova's patience to wait for everyone to come back for that retake, whether or not they did it as cleanly as they could have it was still they were waiting for all five players so they weren't given any 1v1s or 1v2s unnecessarily yeah they, they didn't misstep and give an advantage over because yeah. simply they can't afford to um otherwise it could have been a little bit more difficult ella again in this aggressive position has a way to back out and i mean it, look I, i'm not a big fan of chamber because they can do things like this but it certainly is exciting when they can do things like this um just at least when it's not like, too non-committal just because you can't play against chamber right, doesn't mean right. we have to say we don't like him okay i don't like him why though uh mad because mad just a simple answer. Exactly. Right now, these players are certainly not bad. Neither mad as Tiny Lady tries to get forward, get aggressive. A showstopper again 
Not able to land, not able to find that frag that they so sorely want. Conico gets tagged up for a little bit as they rotate around. They want to try and find this player and they will in fact manage to take down Tiny Lady as they were isolated from the rest of their team. As now it's a push towards B. That's where the focus is going to be. Hera wants to try and contest it with a little bit of a dark cover as well to give their team more kind of space to work with. But Adina gets that frag. They put down the Viper's Pit as well. This is going to completely cut this site up for AEX1 Nova who are going to have to try and make this retake happen. But Ella almost, no, does Spice deny the plant. That is absolutely huge. However, gets caught by the shorty, and I think Adina will have time, but this Grenade. usage of the paint shells could be huge. Does deny as well, and that is time. They're not going to have enough. Now they just have to make sure they live, as Dismavy is kind of looking at this one and going, okay, sure. We've lost this round. Let's at least get the plant. They got the plant. In the end. They didn't. Did they not get a plan? No, tries to go for it at the end there, but gets caught in the smoke. And, and again, this was a game of just denying the plant. And really good for AEX1 Nova to look at the situation and go, okay, this is how we win. Yeah, it, it is an interesting situation since they had so much space on site. They had the Vipers put up, but they were still unable to get that plant because that's it. There was obviously util used by AX1 Nova to push some players out of that pit and into the arms of players like Ella that were waiting in well the sidelines to make sure that plant does not get go down. Information relaying that the plant's not going down. And well, really well played by AX1 Nova. But Ella, it's, she just seems so consistent in these first bloods over towards Along when you have that rendezvous set up. Confidence is key, and I think it's been a big part of uh, what has allowed um, AEX1 Nova and Ella to really take over some of these games. I think, again, I'm highlighting Pearl, where they had all the success, where they were able to completely deny a massive part of the map, and they're doing the exact same thing again. That's three kills for Ella in this situation. I think didn't even have a rifle, managed to get an upgrade here, and is even just going aggressively for the next one. Make that a 4K and a flawless round for AEX1 Nova. It was an eco, okay. It was an nice. eco for the side of Ranked Demons and any of the Ranked Demons fans. But it's more of... We're on double digits now. They're on defense, which was a side that I was saying I'm worried about seeing from the side of AX1 Nova, especially since what we've seen in previous maps and what we haven't exactly seen on Pill because we didn't really get yeah. to see their defense because their attack was so strong. But from the side of Ranked Demons, like I'm looking at it as... They were a really good defensive team, but they still lost the half. They have Killjoy, you have Viper, you have Breach, you have Rose and Sky. That should be such a solid defensive line, especially when you're committing to the double initiator and only bringing Viper as your smokes. Yeah. It just seems kind of like a crux in their plan when they're going for these attacks because you can't cut off as many angles as you'd like. And they're having to go for these first picks, but then the first picks are always going into the way of AEX one over. Yeah. And also, even if there is something going away, it feels like there's always a refract. That's always the thing that you got to deal with. Or it's someone playing really aggressively and dynamic, like um, like Tiny, uh, in the way they've been playing on this race. But even that doesn't feel like it's enough when you've got players like Ella just ready and waiting and willing to shut these down. Mm. Finally, there's going to be some site control coming out here onto the A site for ranked demons. And they haven't lost a player to do it so far. That Prowler does not spot anyone, and that could be brutal for Kraya. They are expecting still someone yeah. to be there as the wall goes up. And they're able to shut off that site for now as they set up for the retake. Showstopper available for this retake as well. And it is going to be an all CT and stays retake into this. And there you go. Show, showstopper and Ikio getting that kill onto Tiny Lady where they're going to clear the players in tree. Ella gets two for herself there. Ikio picking up another. And then it is Hera with the Phantom in hand to put down Adina. And knowing where the last player is through the smoke, the... Well, the defuse comes in, and that's 11 to 7 now for the side of AEX1 Nova. Forced off and denied. Ranked demons, unfortunately, fighting demons right now as AEX1 Nova are un, uh, just unable to really hold back at all. They just mm. keep on going for the retakes, for the aggressive parts early. Ella has been the spearhead and the heft and the entirety of the spear, honestly, just running them through in some of these rounds because they've just been brilliant in shutting down any of these pushes forwards, any of these kind of aggressive flanks, um, or just straight up on a retake, pushing forward aggressively with a little bit of util and just make it work. Yeah, we're, you're talking about Ella in this map, and then it was Ikea in the last map, and it's just kind of like they always have that... It's not even one star player, because it's not as if it's one person every time, but they have the ability in each and every one of them, and the 
um, way the support uh, agents of AEX or Nova are playing to help the duelist, the chamber has been amazing and it's just really nice to see that sort of coordination in a team that is fairly new in regards to the, the game changer ecosystem. Yeah, Tiny Lady tried to get off something cheeky there, but instead it's AEX yet again capitalizing on some missteps. Sure, there's going to be the lockdown coming on through, but it's to no avail. And AEX on Nova really feel like they've turned the corner. 12 to 7 right now. A dominating performance um, and they've still got access to I believe four ultimates going on into the next I don't know what the economy looks like for ranked demons just gonna check they can buy up but it's it's very potentially the bitter end of this of this map and and of this series that's been so hard fought by them but alas might come to nothing Absolutely, and it is all to play for for these two teams. This is the upper bracket semi-finals, so they're competing for a chance to play in the upper finals. But it is a double bracket elimination, so they will, well, whoever loses out of these two teams will be going into the lower bracket, and that is a best of one, though. So it is really important for either of these two teams to have more of a chance of progressing, that they are able to stay in this upper bracket and play the longer matches, the best of threes, which... Normally, you tend to get a more competitive um, aspect there where you're not forced onto, a, say, a very equal paced map between the two teams. It's more, I feel there's more of speciality when you come into best of threes rather than just a boring best of one. It's, it's, it's more fun to watch, though, as well, and to cast. It's more of a story there. It certainly is. It's a story of hearing that total force and or well, having fear. I think that's very <laughs> sensible right now. Right yeah. Demons. They do not contest that. Do, do not mess around. They even invest the um, the rolling thunder in order to actually contest the um, the site. Koneko though is set up with a rolling thunder of their own, and right now, but it might be time to rock and roll as they get so aggressive. <gasps> so what? deep, and Hiko flying through the sky denies, and that is so big for AEX one over. And then there was one, and look who's on the backside hunting for play. Players. This is just Adina alone fighting against the remainders, and it's 13 7 for AEX1 over here as they pick up that round, that map, and that series with a plum. Well, that is the end of that series. It was a 2-1 to AEX1 Nova. And what a showing we had from the very start to the very end of that series. Incredible from players from both of the teams. But can we just point out AEX1 Nova's fragging ability over the teams? Kraya in the first map, albeit they did lose, was like 23-17 and 17 on Sova. We had Ikiro in the second map on Jet going 22-9. and 9. And now Ella stepped up for that team as well, going, I think... I think it was something like 23 and 16. I'll double check that one. But either way, it's the fragging power of these players. It's not even just one player like, oh, it's going to be a hero on the top all the time. It's it's not. It's the ecosystem of this team is amazing. Yeah, I think it's really big um, uh, to keep in mind that you, you very rarely can you have a team that relies on the strength of one player. And AEX don't bother doing that. They don't bother trying to find that, that, that center player. Why not find a good couple of them, a whole team of them, in fact, and really showing up in this one. Uh, as, as I said, across the board, I want to highlight Kraya as well. Their performance before was exemplary. Uh, and I'm definitely looking forward to more of this, especially looking at that fine, upper bracket finals. I, I'm pumped. That, that's all I can really say. Yeah. I, I'm really excited as well since we like we've seen these sort of games in the semi finals. What can we expect in the upper finals, whether that's in the upper finals or the lower finals, but then the grand finals, it's all to play for for these teams. They're playing for a chance to qualify well straight through the regionals to the contenders league of um EMA game changers, which if you don't know, that is sort of the next level in regards to you have the open entry tournaments in regards to the open qualifiers, then you have the regionals for contenders. Contenders have open qualifiers as well, but this goes straight over to playoffs if you qualify through the regional events, that this is the one for the Pol Polaris regions. And then after that, in that tournament, if you win that, you qualify straight to VTT EMEA Game Changers Circuit. So it is sort of the stepping stone for these players. Some of them definitely have experience at the top level, whether it's in the past um, ecosystems, but they're definitely coming out heavy hitting for this tournament. Yeah, I know the fact that you've got something so prestigious on the line makes this all the more exciting, all the more, and it means that the winners of that upper bracket finals, they're, they're qualifying. Yeah. They are making it, even if they're going to, um, obviously, the grand finals. Well, the two teams that make grand finals, they are the ones who are going forward. So I, I'm really, really, truly um, pumped to see the success uh, of, of, of these gamers, is, is the simple answer. 
Yeah, absolutely. But that is the first series of the day over. So don't go anywhere. We're going to have a 15 minute break. So that's enough time to get some snacks. It's just after lunch. I'll get a cup of tea as well if you are British or some Red Bull. I've got my green one. I'm going to go get a yellow one, I think. What's the What's the yellow flavour? Uh, tropical. Tropical. We're going to go get some tropical later, but be back with us in 15 minutes for the next series of the day.
time is barely on our side. I don't wanna waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us, and love is all we'll ever trust. Yeah, no, I don't wanna waste what's left. And I
everybody and welcome back to the Goose House Birds of Prey Series 5. I am Rook and I'm joined by Ontario as we're ready for our second matchup of the day. And this time we're sticking with AEX1 Nova. And who are they up against? Well, they are up against the A team. So this is another newly re uh, newly established team for a little bit of a mix. But they are, again, similar to Ranked Demons, established players in this scene. But the issue with this matchup, right... We're doing the upper finals. So this is the match that qualifies one of these teams to contenders. So whoever wins this has already secured this place, not only one in the grand finals later on today, but also in contenders league. So what are we expecting from these two teams then, Rurik? Well, I mean, we got to see already what we're getting from AEX1 Nova. Brilliant play, focused around, well, whoever's popping off at the time, frankly. Really great coordination in the games where they had success, but they did look fallible. They struggled to get things started on Haven. They were not able to be as um, kind of aggressive as we would like and kind of dictating the pace of the game. And unfortunately for them, they felt too far behind and Haven just did not look comfortable with them. So I think... The big focus for them as well is to pick up that firm, to win that map veto in, in, in some sort of parlance, um, and then show us the kind of fantastic fragment power we saw of players like Ella, who was really able to be a linchpin of their play. Another player to look out for now, since we have a new opposition, is Mizzy. She, she used to play with um, Tiny Lady, so that's another player from the last um, sort of mix that we had um, back in Prime Day. So that was ages ago now in Root the world of esports since we're moving forward so quick with roster changes signings and everything like that but again another player to look out for a very good operator player as well so possibly seeing a jet or a chamber coming from her in these maps but talking about maps and ages that we want to see let's get up the let's get up the map veto should we yeah, I think that's going to be really impactful, as I said before. I'm looking forward to seeing if we get to go back to Pearl in particular, because that map was awesome from yeah. the side of AEX. They really showed us that they knew how to play it, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them go back to it. But that's why it gets banned away right at the start here. I think it's a really good call from the A-team. Yeah, A-team definitely going to be having watched or at least looked at the score lines from the last series and like, oh... Okay, the other two maps were quite close, but then this one was just an absolute domination from the side of um, a a AEX1, so that's getting taken off the board straight away. They definitely stick into the Ascent ban, which then leaves Haven open for the decider, but the first two picks is Fracture and Lotus. AEX picking and opting for that Lotus, and well, A-team going to be starting on Defender side for all of these maps. I think it's, uh, I mean, that's fine for them. Obviously, they get played around by what map picks they're going for. But I think starting especially um, on Lotus is going to be good for them to really assert themselves going in into that one. But I love the fact that we're getting this Fracture. It's a map that really allows for a lot of interesting play and I think really demonstrates a team's identity quite well in how they approach it, how they deal with a lot of problems. Because I think Fracture, more so than other maps, is a map which goes, okay... This is a bit off kilter. This is a bit of a strange, um, strange map composition, and it asks questions of the teams. How do you want to deal with this problem? How do you want to execute on the site? How do you want to play those retakes? How do you want to shut down one of the various things that are going to be coming your way? Um, and I think as well, focus on ultimate um, usage as well. It, it, it's a really nice, succinct map to explain how a team works. I think also when you're talking about it, it's Fracture and Lotus, one of the two main maps that you might see a chamber on, and we've seen AEX one already opt for the chamber most recently in Lotus, which will be the second map of the series. We will definitely be seeing both of those, but it depends on how they go if we're going to be seeing Haven. But talking about Fracture, you're talking about it's sort of an identity of this of the teams really, and it really proves to you how they approach certain issues. What are you expecting on the attack then? Are you expecting like really slow methodical defaults or sort of similar to what we saw in Haven from Ranked Demons? They picked a site and they just full executed against it. Hmm. I think for AEX, right, is I want to see that slightly slower, more methodical, good usage of utility to really lead them into success. But I don't know if we are, right? Again, I want to harken back to that Haven map we saw from them. They mm. were too fast. They jumped the gun a lot of times. They were just forcing on through. I'm sure it found some success because they've got great individual players. But I don't know if it's really going to be enough to really force them through. So I need them to play more passive um, and more reactive, I think, actually, rather than passive, sorry, um, in order to kind of deal with the situations at hand. Because I'm certain that a team like A-Team uh, are going to be able to kind of consistently put threats on the board. Okay, so we, we're going to be seeing a little bit more of a held-back approach and then sort of decision-making into that fast take. 
is what I'm kind of coming yeah. from, your reactionary plays. I really want to see the chamber again. Like, we've seen how well Ellis played with it on um, Lady's Test, which we will be seeing. Hopefully, she's on chamber again. But when we're coming into Fracture, I really want to see a chamber, possibly even a cipher from the side of um, the A-team or um, from the side of A1X, whether they opt for the cipher, Killjoy, or um, the chamber. So that is definitely going to be down to how these teams want to play and kind of the comfortability as well on these agent picks. Yeah, I mean, I think especially the chamber, as I said before, uh, while I don't like it too much, I like it when players are really good at it, and I think yeah. Ella is absolutely fantastic on it. I think, to be fair, you can put Ella, um, Ella on most things, and I'd probably be pretty happy just to see Ella play. Um, so, I'm, so I'm absolutely here for that, and I think Fracture is a map where it really can succeed. So yeah, I would love to have that here as well. Um, maybe, obviously, taking the lockdown on the Killjoy could be could be a kind of choice, but we'll obviously get to see what the teams are picking on. Uh, we already see... The, double do list. Oh, the, the neon as well. Hover. What, That's quadruple do list? We have double do list on both of the teams. Mm. If it gets locked in, yeah, it's locked in there. So Korea is not going to be on any sort of initiator this time. She's going to be on, well, the neon. She's going to have stun, so technically we can... It's kind of an initiator, right? But then we have the difference between we have the rays and the neon versus the jet and the... Um, race on the side of the A team. Breach on both uh, both sides, priest. Um, default, the Cypher as well, and then the Brimstone. Those three picks I kind of expect to see, but instead of seeing the Double Duelist, some teams opt for um, the Fade as an extra initiator, but then Double Duelist, again, it's not too off meta. But the Neon pick is going to be interesting to see how the A team adapt sort of utility, like the Breach done, to combat the fast closing um, utility space of Neon. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting. AEX one. I mean, I'm a. I, I like the neon. I, on fracture, it's pretty decent. They've had mixed success though, so I'm very apprehensive about that. I think Kraya is a player who certainly could deliver. Um, and again, the fact that they've got this good rotations that they can have players constantly present go for those retakes. I, I, I like the idea of it as well. That's why I would wouldn't mind the chamber here as well. Um, but. It, it really, you know, remains to be seen how they're going to be able to do that. And, well, Kraya seems to be going fast as anything. That's the name of the game. And, you know, completely understandably, wanting to just get these opening frags, force players off, and even just pushes on through the molly, forces them back, and eventually they do die. But there is a good refrag here. Good usage of the paint shells. Yeah, there's two um, paint shell kills there, but the more kills going in the favor of the A team now with the frenzies on board. It is a two versus four, and the health is so low for these players. Um, Mizzy picking up one for herself and doubling that. It's like double it and pass it to the next person, onto Hera then, and then it is a single round now onto the board. The first round of this series of the upper finals, of the chance to qualify two contenders from this regional league, and well, they're definitely putting the best foot forward. Oh, they really are. I mean I mean, that was a really nice start for the A-team, getting the kind of launch they need. And I think a big thing for me on Fracture is making sure you have access to weaponry and all the util as well, because it feels like you have to invest a lot when you're on this defense. Um, and it can be really, mm. really impactful. If you fall behind in terms of economy, it's it's much harder to win these eco rounds than it is on some of the other maps, right? We talk about Classic as a free gun, yes, but that's less relevant here when there's all this utility, so many angles that you have to deal with and really stop players from coming from. Love the usage of the Brimstone here in order to provide themselves a path onto site, but that trap wire does mean they can at least get one off the back of this AEX misstepping a tad there and giving an opportunity over to the A team yet again. But they have managed to get a plant even when they're on this sort of lesser buy, only classics or sheriffs in hand, and it is going to be going into a retake now. If they can get one or two kills or even just damage onto the side of the A team players, it's going to be so fruitful for them, especially going into the next round out of the bonus. Yeah, pushes on through here, tries to get something with the pistol, but it's sure managing to deliver that one there. Does use that fault line there to try and force them off as Koneko wants to get something going, but look at the aggression. And I love that from the A-team as well. They had the backup there. It was considered aggression. They knew exactly what they were doing when they were going for that. Yeah, and there you go, securing that second round, really nice. They did lose two players and the plant, so even for AEX1, -E it is not that bad. That is kind of what you're aiming for when you're going into, like, okay, we're going in with, like, really bad buy. They didn't get many kills in the first round, so they can't really force into the second, especially since, well, the plant wasn't down. But going into the third round now, they're in a very good position. Full rifles, um, full shields, but then A-team... They have two pistols and then also that um, Guardian. So they haven't got that stronger utility and um, gun power going up against AEX for this bonus. No. No, 
don't just yet. Kraya. They should give me that play, and look who's here. Ella is covering the backside, this time taken down. And that is a rifle as well for Mizzy, as they will be able to upgrade here. So this is a nice frag for them to find. They take down the numbers of the attackers as well. They're going to give up that site, but this is something you often do on this map anyway. You go for those retakes, because just holding a site can be very, very difficult. Yeah, absolutely, and it's a lot ho harder to hold a site when you have not the number of players that you need, but Kaneko and Hera underneath are just causing menaces for the A team, and it's now all down to Inyo on the Cypher to clutch this up or get any sort of damage. There's only a ghost in hand. It's indeed. Arena looking for a chance to... Maybe try and find a frag here, but AEX1 Nova are not going to give that up, most likely. They play well with it. They use uh, Kaneko in that position before to undermine, to take down three players for their team. And then from there, they flex the fact that they've got that weapon advantage. So the A team kind of coming onto this one, kind of expecting something similar to that. So now they're going to be able to buy up. They're going to be able to probably con um, contest it. Hira and, and Kaneko playing so well together to lead themselves to this kind of round pickup and... Again, that duo play we saw from AEX in the previous series is definitely coming to light here as the A team is starting to kick it into a slightly higher gear with that operator coming out from Shura early on here. Yeah, and for the A team, this is one of a, well, a prevalent map in regards to the map pool, especially in Birds of Prey this season. Um, over the last today, earlier today, and yesterday, they haven't really lost Fracture yet in this series. So uh, in this um, tournament they went 13-8 against uh, Gorgeless earlier and then also 13-10 against LC Gaming yesterday. But when we're talking about this, this is going to be somewhere we're needing to get cleaner fights from the side of a AEX or Nova and being able to get that pick and get out rather than falling to the trading that the A team have been so good at. Yeah, you definitely don't want to opt into your opponent's style of play, especially when AEX1 Nova have been so good at kind of getting those set plays with utility. The thing is, you've got to be able to deal with players like Ella as well. That's a big misstep from the A-team. They're not aware of where Ella is, and that's always the moment before you get absolutely destroyed by this player. As the rest of the team starts to bear on in, good spray coming out here from Mads does mean that they're in with a chance one versus three, but with the cyber cage up, with everything forcing back, with the retake kind of being forced away, I think Mads very sensibly goes, okay, let's save the Vandal. Yeah, and, well, no one's going to be trying to contest that since a AEX One Nova is a little bit on the um, lower side in regards to the economy. They want to keep their guns as well, not giving anything to chance for, well, we've seen the gun skill from Mads already with the first two kills, not feeding her any more. But going into the next couple of rounds, it's going to be the alt economies coming in line. It tends to be between the four and seven round mark. And it's already online for um, Essie on that Brimstone Ultimate. Kaneko has already got that Rolling Thunder, so it could prove really good post plant or um, retake possibilities with these alts, whether they're going to be used for trading. But they are on a half buy for now. Yeah, I mean, they just don't have the economy to make that work. So trying to generate the alts is definitely a focus of this map, uh, I feel. Especially when you've got access to those breaches who can be so brilliant in retaking or taking in the first place with that rolling thunder. So keep an eye on that and how they manage to iterate through as right now AX1 Nova is going to take the site and they have the rolling thunder for when there's actually a threat on the board. Without the uh, rifles it's not going to quite be the same in Arena tries to try and maybe stick that one but still dies to IQ. that gives a chance over to AEX1 Nova again to really hammer this point home as these players with low econ are going to make their move on in Ikyo not able to really deny that push on forward gets nearly caught by the concuss but doesn't quite instead it's going to be Shura playing on the bottom side finally falling this is a decent amount of damage coming through here for the AT and the bomb is down, and like you said, the um, Hellfire is also available, but not having the opportunity to use it. There you go, Ikyo, they closing out. Another kill together, and now they're all in the, man, um, in the round advantage, 3-2. Uh, it's something that really nice, that if you saw right at the start of the round, there was the four-man push down from B-Main with um, uh, Unio up in um, on a drop, just hiding, obviously, killed by the paint gels, but it was the fact that they had four man pushed down B main and it was the reactionary playstyle of AEX that they just waited in spawn where they are now for any sort of reaction, any push, especially since they're an eco, they hid, 
th at least three the utility coming from B and immediately like that they rotated all the way to A and they were able to take that um, A site well with relative ease since everyone was flanking. Yeah, I mean, when you're against these eco rounds, you know they're probably going to get up to some sort of shenanigans, so why not just wait for those shenanigans to happen and then, well, make the apt response, considering that you have all the information, you have all the advantage. Why not make good usage of it? Kind of going to be able to get onto site. They do manage to clear Shura. They're pushing out into the open here. Still managed to make it work as the Ultimate Bombardment does come through. But at what cost? They lose a couple of players here, and the Econ isn't looking that bad for the side of AEX1 Nova. They're very happy with this, but Mads again with a spray down that nets them two. This is exactly where they want to be, is it's two versus two, and the A-team making a move now. They've got access to that showstopper. They've got lots of ways to push on forward here, and they're looking to do just that. You hear the showstoppers, I believe, from both sides coming through here. Zikyu does not quite manage to hit the shot, and they back off. They move into these better positions, looking for the chance for a crossfire. This man's is going to move on forward. You see that whole double bubble come on through. They shut it down and shut it out. AEX1 Nova move up to four rounds. And really nice utility usage there, whether that was the trading of the showstoppers. I think with our caster cases, we're just not going to see any single game or match where all the showstoppers hit. Whether that's just based on um, not having the line of sight or just the showstopper not being that great in regards to damage when we've seen some really, really close ones. But it was the use of the orbital strike that I really liked is the adaptation of the positioning they moved away from main obviously with the sound cues of the um, showstopper coming in, traded out, and then the orbital strike just behind the opening to push them out into that crossfire that they had set up. They don't know where to do it. Could be up, could be right. They had to push out that smoke with that um, orbital strike coming in as well. Yeah, rather than worrying about timing, they were just like, it's our time, you've got to push now. And, well, that works out well for the side of the A-team managing to get a trade here. And they've got access to those knives as well for the jet. Despite the fact that they've got a weapon disadvantage, I think they were able to claim a rifle as well. I didn't quite see it, but Hero will be able to get that spike down. They're able to back up. The Sky Smokes have given them all the cover they need for at least this scenario. As sure trying to get the info from on high with this jet as they back away. And now look to re-engage better as a team. Crouching <gasps> underneath that it doesn't trigger, but Ella dies at the exact moment anyway, so it didn't matter too much. And look at this, the A-team, dynamic, aggressive, managing to find the openings that they also sorely needed. And with a weapon deficit, the A-team, they come together and they pick up the round. I like that retake in regards to the positioning that they had. They prioritized um, sand positioning and the sand kills up and towards the um, zip wire positioning because they had people coming from drop as well. They were able to isolate the players towards the sand from um, the zip wire along with the drop positioning. They, they, they were kind of like sitting ducks. They had nowhere to go unless they were fighting their way out. And while well, they were fighting on two fronts, forward and behind, which... Obviously, if you get shot in two different places, you can only just about kill one. And it obviously, it went in the way of the A team in regards to that trade. But it was also, they had positions in main as well. They had um, up in CT, they had drop, they had main. It's nice that you're getting the site. Yes, that's great. But you have to have some sort of control somewhere. But do you know who's taking the control? The two Cyphers getting traded back and forth, but um, A Team Cypher coming out on top, getting two for her troubles and only getting, well, only losing her life in the process. Yeah, Arena really making it work for them. It's the A Team as a whole. Starting to come together, starting to find that footing, starting to show us that on that defense you can still have a lot of success. Arena doing just that cry at court by the paint shells and AEX1 Nova, they had an advantage for sure, but it seems like it's dissipated completely and now the A team has started to find exactly what makes them tick. Yeah, absolutely. And do you know what's making them tick? Fracture. I, I don't know. I, I, I I'm oh, trying. Is that to... supposed to be a joke or? I don't know. I'm, I'm just. I'm not a punny person. And you and you and Hazard have got them all. And I'm just like, I just, I just come with the stats. I'll, I'll go and learn some new English puns. I think. I think. I think you, you're yeah. gonna be able to do it. You're, mm. you're funny. Not on stream. But you're funny. <laughs> right. Not on stream. <laughs> okay. I'm. I'm supposed to be the smart one on the cast. You're yeah, supposed to be true. the funny exactly. one. Yeah. Okay, for the smart for the smart perspective on this, look at where the cipher is from AEX1 uh, Nova. They're playing towards the north side of this map with their camera. They can control the entire north side push while their team can explore the two other avenues towards um, A and also towards B. But B is where the bomb is, and look at the stack that they have from the A team. Yeah. 
good usage there, forcing Shura back into a pretty of a difficult position, and I really like this conceptually. It means that you can kind of force them, pin them back into this one situ one sp um, specific spot, and then you can easily sort that with just a single piece of utility rolling thunder. Not exactly where they wanted it. Shura can't move forward, as that's a great concussion, and well, now the execute should be pretty simple, but they're still contesting and just pushes out! How does Shura find two there? The A-team! Just deliver when they desperately need it to. AEX1 Nova now looking for a chance to push on out, get that spike on down, but look at it. Kaneko is trying to play at range, trying to get those shots, but it just doesn't happen. It's Mads. Let's loose! And that is another round in the hands of the A-team that surely they shouldn't have gotten. Fully stunned. Fully naded, boom botted, and l l just watch this replay. Has no fear, runs out of a cipher cage, concuss, but still manages to pick up two in that situation. And Mads does the same, grabbing two for herself towards the end of that round just to clean up some of the mess that they left behind on the A team site towards B. But I, it's just really unfortunate timing, realistically, if you're looking at that round. Yeah. But then it's also sure having that confidence, having the ability to know, yeah, do you know what? I can either stay up in tower and most likely die to some paint shells or through some smoke, but I'm going to push down, get two for myself, but and there you go. Sure is online with that operator now and it's really, really rubbing salt in the wounds of AEX one overs well, attack in half. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly what the A-Team really wanted to show, and I love the fact that we're getting the Operator, something we didn't see at all in the previous series, and I think on this map it certainly can be brilliant in the hands of a player like Shura. I know it's going to be brilliant. Absolutely. But look at the positions now. We have lost our Cypher player, which means AX1 over, they're either going to have to go for some sort of burst out play, especially since they're on this eco, or try and explore and find... They're grouping up now, going over towards this B site, which is technically the correct stacks and there's only two players here but the operator is waiting in the steadfast over towards the CT positioning but you know, they're going to be pressuring the cypher going to try and exploit the positioning but they get one for one and a, um, a, van, a phantom picks up for the sides of AEX one over but the operator the angle Oh, belly didn't hit that. The angle was good, as you were going to say. But IQ just moves on through, manages to survive, and the molly and all the smoke would have done it, but the shots through from Mizzy do find IQ. So they've got a pretty significant player advantage now. They should be able to make this execute happen because even that initial trade that looked good for AEX1 Nova was only a one for one, and it, it was it was well executed from them to make it happen because otherwise they would have just been on the deficit. But here are almost the hero there, but the A team they withstand it. They get the defuse, they move up to six. And they've already secured at least halfway in regards to the first half. They're at least equal standing going into the second half now. But realistically, with the way that they've been playing, they just want to keep pushing this advantage further and further. Mad's been a name that has been echoing throughout this room in um, Red Bull Gaming Sphere. She's 11 and 6 on that duelist, but then she, you also have Shura on the um, jet, who's supporting greatly on that operator but also when we had some key rounds from here and compared to the side of the ex1 nova it just seems a little bit not what you're expecting in regards to how we've seen them play in the last series as well but alt economies online for both of these teams the operator encounter goes in the way of sure are they and there you go another first pick another first blood for the side of the a team and they're just extending their man advantage um, Shura got me screaming like Shira right now. An old school football joke. I don't watch that's football. Right. Okay. Me either, but I know Alan Shira. Um, that's the very case. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mims, Mizzy will be able to put down those shots at range again, and Hero just getting clipped as Shura lands yet another operator shot. Access to that dash as well. They're able to just claim this space. IQ has to get away from that one. Still very low. They don't have control over the space and the positions that they need to make this happen so much so that IQ is even just running away from this one. Maybe trying to get a flank, but it doesn't even commit towards it as the defuse is going through through, completely uncontested here, and the A-team, they just, they just look so confident here. Confident and definitely hitting the ground running since this is the first time we are casting them this tournament, and well, it's a really good experience for us 
well, we've seen AX1 Nova's dominational p performance on Pill before, and now we're seeing the A team have a little bit of a taste um, of that and giving AX1 taste of their own medicine of such a nice lead for them in this half. And realistically, looking at their comp, I'd say it's attack sided So they've won their defensive half already. It. Oh, I, I just can't wait to see them on attack. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they look like they've been really dictating the pace from defense. What are they going to do when they're the literal ones who have to move somewhere to make something happen? Yeah. That's that's the simple answer. Obviously, without Econ, they didn't look so confident. I think especially the pistol rounds AEX1 Nova um, looked a little more comfortable, um, especially with no operator in the hands of Shura, and it's going to be a little less effective on the offense. Maybe that gives the respite and the kind of opportunity for AEX1 Nova to really make something happen, but... It's going to have to be that in conjunction with this timeout, in conjunction with really resetting themselves, because otherwise I think they're really going to struggle in the coming half. Yeah, struggling is something that we do not want either of these teams to do, especially given that it is a BA3, there is more games to be played after this, whether that is the Grand Finals, the Lower Finals, but also the end of the series. Going into this now, it's the last round before the half swap. We have an Odin as well on the side of Mizzy, since, well, if you don't use the credits now, you won't use them until you can save them up. Some, save some pocket money next round, but Korea now with the Neon Ultimate. Yeah, just absolutely sprinting it through. Has access to that ultimate as well. Knows what those players are, but can't quite finish them off, unfortunately. There's the backup. There it is indeed. AEX, they get control, they get the sight. The Uribe to play at range. Kraya manages to dome Mizzy, and maybe that Odin buy wasn't quite what they needed at that kind of range. Shura's position going to be known, obviously, with the Cypher uploading the info, and they set up for one of their own, the Neural Theft, going to give them the information that they oh so desperately desire. Trying to change the weapon, but gets tagged a little bit as they jump for it. That operator still in hand. Arino, knowing that they're going to have to just lay down the law with this one, as the shot just about misses there, and we'll be able to change the weapon. She can Not quite, unfortunately, here. Still has access to the operator, which can catch these players, but just not enough to spray through these difficult situations. And with that orbital bombardment, that is the final round of the half going the way of AEX1 Nova. That looks a little, a little bit shaky from the side of the A team. I think there's a little bit of miscommunication, or just unfortunately not being able to jump high enough, yeah. possibly. <laughs> Maybe if the, some of the Valorant char characters were a few inches taller, be able to reach up onto that ledge. But that is it. That is the first half of it done. It's 7-5, a very close game now for this upper finals. It is now AEX1, like you said, turn to go on this defense. And it's the A teams who are going to be dictating the pace of this half in regards guys to where they want to go, when they want to go, and how they want to do it. Yeah, I, I think with that and with the kind of aggressive plays we've seen from Mads, I am really excited to see what we're going to come out of this uh, this half. I think with Mizzy as well backing that up, um, especially if they're able to pair their duelists well with this breach. I am absolutely terrified of what exactly is going to be going on. Keep an eye on that wraparound. AEX1 Nova definitely looking for the backstab here. And they're buying time. They're playing passively. Sure, they're losing players, but they're just waiting for the haymaker chance. But Shura deals with two. They get flanked. They lose two right back. So it is three versus three. Spike's down. They've got sight control. The spike is down in an all-important position. Can Ella hold out here? It doesn't even matter if Ella's holding out. Ella's just buying time. They have the spike. They have the smoke over. The trade's going back and forth now. So it's a two versus two. But the spike still down. The smoke still in place. Hera ready to um, re-smoke that. Now, the joining of these two players just behind that smoke. Whether they're going to cage it and smoke it over. They are, but through the smoke is going to be the spam. The spike picked up now. So Essie's going to be retreating back to site. 75 H 74 HP to enable Frenzy in hand as well, but it is still a 1 versus 2, a Goliath of a task to ask over the Brimstone player. But the information of her positioning is unknown now to AEX1, and they're going to have to clear everything until this plant goes down. They're going to be have to be so careful since they are so far away now. Before that plant goes down, Essie's going to have so many chances to reposition. Yeah, but with the spike plant, the jig is up. They know exactly where SE was at that moment, so they know they're near the A site. Obviously playing for the A site. Has access to that molly. Yeah. Has access to a decent amount. The smoke's actually going to come through. That's exactly where they wanted to be. SE making sure that no one comes in from the main area. That molly goes in great position here to deny away. I don't know if they would have seen where it came from, so I like that SE is playing patient, trying to reposition. 
They're keeping an eye out. They really are watching for this one. Tries to get spray, gets one. Needs to go for it. Actually drops off the spike. And this is exactly the kind of time saver. But Hikyu is just too clean with that ghost. And the backstab for AEX1 Nova manages to pick them up this all-important round. And with plenty of time as well left on that clock, the um, position it was uh, revealed when she did the molly. Yeah. And the sound call, it was the pings you could see all over the map as well from the side of AEX1. So they're definitely on the same page. And well, 1v1 situation is nice, quite close. And it was a really nice shot from Ikio as well um, with the ghost to ensure she could get a safe defuse. But now, We've seen a pistol round go in each way of both of these teams. So it's less of a, oh, they won all the pistols. That's why they got so many more rounds ahead. It's more of an equal footing now in regards to what we're it, counting as sort of free RNG rounds in regards to pistols and bonuses. Yeah. But going into this round now, this is going to be the buy of AEX. They're not going to want to overextend in regards to take too many one on X fights. But look at the wraparound already that we've seen from uh, Kraya. And look at that. Missy, unaware. Missy, not aware of that angle, not aware that there was going to be someone waiting. And AEX reap the rewards of that one. Tries to push forward, Shura tries to deny, and it looks like the aggressiveness from AEX, even on the defense here, is working wonders for them. We saw it succeed for them on the previous round, where they got that backstab in, that was the real deal breaker for mm -hmm. them. And then this round, they just push forward, they have the weapon advantage, they know what they can get away with, and it's going to work wonders for them. Waiting around the corner, gets completely concussed, and that was, unfortunately for them, all she wrote is it's 7-7, seven, seven, tied up, even Stevens, the A-team versus AEX right now. Let's go tip for tap. And look at this, the unawareness that how fast AE um, X1 were able to wrap around, it's like they have no fear. As soon as any sort of presence is shown, or heavy presence at least was shown towards B, you saw um, Ikio and Hara, um, not Ikio, sorry, Kraya and Hara already down into this spawn. And well, Mizzy expected the flank, but not so close up and personal there. But it was still only an eco for them. But now going into this, they have full rifles. They're going to be the team who are more favourable, per se, in that position in the lineups. So that is very nice, actually, to try and clear <laughs> clear um, Irenio from this position, which is something we've seen a lot with the sort of reaction we play. So you tend to have the Cypher to the north side and then the uh, four players towards the south exploring. But being pushed away the camera's broken as well but Mizzy's gonna break um Ella's positioning as well breaking a bit of the line of AEX1's defense yeah I like the fact that they were pushing up for it they still want a player contesting but they do lose Mizzy that is hook line and sinker they're gonna have to get on the safe site pretty quickly here maybe even deny they do in fact deny Hera from getting sight on these players as they move on in that's exactly where they want to be a weapon upgrade however for the a team due to that earlier frag so they should be able to pick up a rifle at least get something going for them as it is even stevens in terms of these player numbers right now but the positioning certainly in favor forced forward Hera just pushes on into it happy to go with the spectre but look who's waiting in the wings it is mads a player we highlighted AEX1 Nova, lose that round, AE team strike right on back. Honestly, I think the main thing that I'm really enjoying about the A team is the ultimate usage. Oh yeah. They're not worried to use their ultimates. Like we just saw a um, orbital strike in round three of a half. And one, how have they got that all, many all <laughs> points so quickly, especially since they lost the first two rounds. So having that um, prioritizing who's picking up the orbs around the map, since yes, there are four orbs, but getting plans, getting kills and that sort of um, progression. But then they're also not afraid to use it, pushing them into taking certain gunfights, which are going to be so beneficial for the rest of the A-team, which we literally just saw in the previous round. But going into this now, you, again, you see where um, the ciphers tend to set up camp for majority of at least towards 40 seconds of the half and the rest of the team are exploring towards B this time and away now no one could have pushed up too far since well the position of the cipher and the cipher camera as well yeah they pushed up a lot but having a spot quite just yeah I think very sensibly AX1 Nova not pushing out too much but you're getting caught there that's huge 
a player who's really been able to spearhead some of those retakes and now completely denied sure in a great position has access to that dash as well can get aggressive can contest for it does just that they lose one but usage of the cloud burst does mean they don't get caught however Kreya delivering over on this neon so far now on the defense didn't get to have as much impact as they necessarily would have liked but certainly able to do so here two ultimates for the side of AEX1 Nova and they should be able to make the A side relatively quick but look who's behind oh, you what? it's Shura and they say an hoorah as they find two brilliant picks to set themselves ahead in this round still access to one ultimate but they're just gonna have to contest in this way double cyber cage to really check that one but look who's just walking on out to sight Hera has no cares in the world what a spray transfer but yes yeah, so you're coming down to it it's a one versus three the over peaks the one the two <gasps> but no Shura there. Shura picking up a fourth for herself in that round. No funny business going on. We've seen spray transfers galore. Look at this one. One, two, and then if we, I hope you can see the next one. Look at this. The skill of some of these players is insane. But doesn't matter. Skill transfer, um, uh, spray transfer, and the skill of the players, it is still nine on the board for the A team. Closer and closer to getting the double digits. And, well... I don't think necessarily there was anything wrong with what AEX1 Nova were doing in that round. It wasn't any sort of massive macro play that was wrong. But it was just more the gunfights just weren't necessarily going in their favour. And now look at this side. We've kind of switched the um, way we're playing. And had... Like normally you have the Cypher alone top side and then the rest of the team bottom. They've switched that. And it's the exact read that AEX1 has done. They've put every single person towards the south side of the map. And, well, only Cypher was there. Zip over. And the adaptation of the A-team, they have a site, All of it. And also all of CT. Yeah. I mean, they've taken complete control of that one. Heading on for a flank here. Shift going through on the zip line. I don't know if anyone's watching for it, but I'll tell you what. People are watching AEX1 Nova right now. Look at that! Korea with a 3k, a brilliant performance on this Neon, delivering exactly what they need. And Arino is there, but it might be too little, too late, unfortunately, for them here. Trying to get the spray, trying to get the deny, but you can see that the laser just finds its mark. A 4k for Kraya. And, well, a flawless round as well. We're talking about going into that with a lesser buy, but, well, if you have the ultimate available, yeah. may as well use it, and Korea definitely gave us a little bit of a masterclass on the Neon and why Neon is her pick on this map. I, I kind of quite like how flexible Korea has been. Yeah. We've seen her on Harbour. We've seen her on um, the Neon now as well, and it's really quite interesting to see how adaptable she is to the playstyle change. Like you're saying, like Harbour, Harbour te doesn't tend to be zipping around the map, taking a lot of the first engagements and multi-kills. He tends to be a more supporting agent with the smokes and the orbs and the planting. But now she's really coming to her own on this duelist role. But sure, Ooh. going for the trip, but then still able to pull out the blaze door and get that kill. And it's a five versus three. And the economy from the side of an AEX one is not great. So unless they can get sort of a kill without a massive trade, it's looking like it should be a save. Oh my lord, Shora! Sorry, sorry, Shora! Sure is actually oh, sure is just finding these headshots with these knives. It was absolutely dead. I thought they were dead to rights when they pulled out that pistol before. Yeah. They found another. They set up their team. Right now, the A-team are looking confident as anything. And that's exactly what I want to see from a team as strong as this. Yeah, and it's definitely a game on our hands. And, well... It's 10, 10 on the board for the 18 double digits hit now, but still it's only two rounds differentiating these two teams. And this is the A team's map pick. So Yeah. I'm quite interested to see if we're going to see a strong performance on from them as well on the next map onto Lotus, which we've seen AEX1 well play incredibly on in the last series. Yeah, I mean, we might see akin to what we saw from AEX in literally the last series again, where they lose that first map, but they show us what they're made of in the second. Oh, this oh, actually gets spotted. It's a big opportunity. Now that showstop, we're not going to do very much, but pops up. Arino does not care. Pop up Pirate as we get take on down. It's unfortunately stabbed with just too many bullets there is now AEX1 Nova. They're going to have to go for that retake with a massive deficit. They've got access to an ultimate. They've got the Rolling Thunder. I really think they should use it here.
But Rolling Thunder, what the A team have vacated the site since the orbital strike is available. The um, tap on the bomb, there you go. The orbital strike invested, and it's just the buying of time. They don't have to peek. It's planted for main. The camera as well is up, so they could check that. But then Hera shutting down, shutting down two, and the diffuser's going through. The diffuser's down. Oh my lord, brilliantly done there by Hera, buying the time, buying the space that they oh so sorely needed. And a round that I really feel should have been the A-teams. AEX won Nova, steal it from right under their nose. They had such good position and they had the orbital strike. They had players in main, players from underneath as well, able to wrap around into arcade. But then Hera just was like, nope, sorry. I have different plans for this. They did not want to let the round differential grow anymore, and now it's back down to a one differential. Only one round separating these two teams in this upper finals. And, well, it's been a series so far, and, well, if this is just the first map, what are we in for for the rest? Oh man, it gets me excited right now as AEX1 Nova sure are excited because they just found a plethora of kills. That 10-10 scoreline is looking closer and closer by the second. Arena sure has found many a multi-kill, but a 4k? That's going to be hard. Along with no spike in hand, and there's no sort of way you can come to this and be like, okay, get one or two kills and get the spike and it'll be a good round or possibly even a clutch impossibility. I don't think uh, AEX1 are going to give too much to them. They're not going to be going chasing for this kill since realistically they can't afford it. No, they really can't. I think Arino definitely wants to kind of save this rifle as well. I don't think it's worth for them to do anything else of the sort. And, and, and yeah, if you don't have to fight, why fight? You've got access to the ultimate as well. You're building up a little bit more where you can. The A-team, uh, I think you'll be able to buy up anyway. I don't know quite what their cash is looking like. It can't be amazing, but I think they have just enough to force up, if I remember correctly. But yeah, I, I think looking into these next couple of rounds, we really need to be focusing on, first of all, the couple of ultimates we do have coming up, um, but also how we see those initial exchanges go, because they seem to decide a hell of a lot. Yeah, and there you go, the Cypher meets the Cypher on sides and there's, well, 17 seconds left on the clock and the convergence of the three players from Arcade's side is going to be there. Kaneko picking up that kill and like you said, the 10-10 scoreline is now upon us and, well, the timer is invested wisely from the side of the A-team now. Yeah, I, I mean, this is a good cho choice for them. They hadn't yet called one. They've got, they dropped a couple of rounds unnecessarily on the trot. So why not commit towards it? I, I mean, you've got to sit back and really think about what's been going wrong. Because the AEX1 Nova have picked a couple rounds up there where they really shouldn't have been able to get away with it. And you know, as a team, you could shut down kind of these aggressive approaches. You just need to be able to dis dissect them properly. And this little bit of time might be just that. Yeah, and the A team have had pretty good reads on in regards to how um, AEX one over are approaching certain pushes and taking of space. When we saw the adaptation of the A team wanting the cipher to be south um, south side and then have the rest of the team north, then that is the exact round where we had a five man push from um, A main and then also B main as well into that south side position, and all they found was a cipher who just quickly zipped across the zipway and um, across the zip line and reconverged with the team and then they just went to A which was an open site since they dedicated everyone to this south side positioning which was well it was it wasn't a wrong call but it was the reading in from A team to know that was kind of the position that they'd want to go in and the t space that they'd want to take is it's just really well played from them so far and it's definitely a lot more than I was expecting from how well that they're playing together as a team. I want to look towards the A-team right now, and I really encourage the usage of this ultimate. They've been great at iterating through and using the utility and the resources available to them. Effectively <gasps> is what I was going to say, but it seems like no matter what they do, that orbital strike is completely gutting this round for them. And yet again, we find ourselves in a position where it's Arena versus the world, because they're the only one left remaining. Those initial gambits from AEX1 Nova, oh, heartbreaking if you're an A-team fan. Honestly, it is kind of the life of a Cypher on Fracture. If your team aren't getting kills, it's kind of unfortunate. The dink going on to Kaneko then, but not enough to put her down. But the <laughs> you're talking about the ultimates that they used. They used a stun and then the orbital strike. And then how many kills was that? It netted three, I think it was. Or at least it got 
well, two and a half, it pushes people into um, unfavorable fights. And it's that kind of um, combination of utility. That was a read. They've been um, defaulting so much towards this aiming pressure that they were able to just like, okay, stun it, orbital strike it, we maybe get one or two, but then it really netted them the entire round that one play. Yeah. I mean, it was a crushing master stroke from AEX1 over there. This time they don't have access to those ultimates. The Rolling Thunder available for the A-Team to see if they can make good usage of it, but IQ finds one to kick things off, and with Shura gone, that firepower starting to lack from the A-Team. Can they make it happen? Arino covers the backside, manages to trade one for one. That's not bad, but it's certainly not the best. They wanted to be able to keep that player alive. Arino, a strong fragger when they can find it, but the Rolling Thunder lands there, forces them away, but AEX1 Nova are happy to play in this position. The, bro the Rolling Thunder wasn't enough to get it. The back up there is brilliant Kraya and Ikyu cut them down it's match point now and AEX1 Nova looking so dominant on their opponent's map pick in these last couple of rounds I think it was just how much um, Kraya and Ikyu were able to protect Ella they obviously full blinding she did die and fall in the end but the how long is she survived in that position because of how quick the um, rotates were three spawned and also three drop to converge on the main position since well that's where the A team were coming from but also how well Ella did in regards to the cypher utility on the site she didn't kind of get pushed when the rolling thunder was still active she was able to buy so much time for her team to rotate but also for the rolling thunder to well deactivate it was, it was really nicely played to try and make the most out of these situations. And AEX1 Nova have been doing very similar kind of things over the course of the entire game to find these edge cases because these two teams are very evenly matched here. Makes you wonder what map 2 is going to look like as right now Shura denies a player, pushes through the spoke, big mistake. And that is exactly the kind of opening that the A team also solely need. In fact, they're going to invest in neural theft to make sure they know where these players are. And here I can look at this one and go, oh no, need to get out of there. It's the rocket yet again, not quite able to lead to a kill, but certainly leads to space creation. And sometimes that's all you need. Yeah, and space creation is certainly what the duelists of the A-team have done so far. And Ernio um, just holding on to that with the help of Mads and Kraya, only picking up one for themselves in that position. Four players surviving while um, um, AEX1 are on match points. They're bidding for this overtime and, well, they're getting closer and closer to it. They are indeed. A team right now, I mean, they're a team who could definitely pull this back to overtime, who could definitely pick it up in overtime. I'm looking towards them. The problem for me right now is that they don't have any ultimates initially available. They are close to Shuras. They are close to Essies. How they use Dissolved Bombardment, I don't think they necessarily can force any set plays like we saw from AEX1 Nova in a couple of rounds prior, but they can definitely make great usage of it. We've seen them use it in post-plant situations to great effect before. We just need to see that again. Yeah, absolutely. And again, the positioning, we have um, the Cypher starting towards the north side, coming back over now, re rejoining their team towards the south side, and um, splitting off into three and two packs, with the spike being towards A. And it just seems like AEX have realised the... I don't, I don't even understand why... AX1 have cleared the top and they've come over towards A, leaving um, the Breach as the solo B player there, while you're also playing four on the site with the Anchor. Yeah. But they're coming over towards the B site now. They've given up some presence towards A and it looks like the rotates are mimicking. So AX1, Nova and the A team are both on the same page realistically here. And it's going to turn into a B site exec as it's coming down to 40 seconds on this clock. We have um, Neon and Kraya towards the top side of the map, making sure there's no funny business going towards A, which means the Cypher and this race are going to be starting to rotate now as soon as sound comes through. As soon as they do indeed. Conoco trying to deny that push on forward, but so much utility flying on in to try and deny away re in retaliation. Mulsey gets that plant down, but does fall. That's a chance for AEX Nova to move forward. No offensive ultimates. They do have an a chance to use that Neural Theft if they make it to the site, if they can use that ultimate. But Essie is waiting in the wings, looking to really play spoiler to any sort of action just like that. Neural Theft goes through. They get a good couple of frags, and AEX 1 Nova finding exactly what they need. But the, oh, the bombardment comes through and buys them some time. Mads 
is looking to go wild here, but they deny one, and it's just one versus three, one versus two. Those are the frags they need as the paint shells buys them the space. Can they clutch this out? Can they find it? They bait the shots. They try and bait the defuse stop, but there it is. Ella delivers and sets their team just ahead enough for AEX1 Nova to pick up their opponent's map pick here and fracture. They come together as a whole and deliver as a team. And deliver, did they do just that? Like you're saying, it's the first map of the upper finals and they are biding, they're bidding for that chance to go to contenders. And well, they're definitely putting the best foot forward since, like I said, this winner of this series goes well qualifies already, but also has a chance to play in the grand finals just for a bit of bragging rights at that point. But can we just say, I... We've seen three maps now from a AEX1 and every single time we've had a different star player from their team and I think this is just something I'm going to be reiterating every time we cast them is it's not just one player, it's not just the duelist, it's not just the initiator fragging out, you have support players as well but the last round as well from Ella then with the um, neural theft, with the positionings and then it's just the teamwork that just looks so well refined now that they're settling into the tournament as we've seen a little bit of a shaky first map but since then it looks like it's been cool run-ins for them yeah i mean they've shown that they are valuable that teams can exploit that of them but it's gonna be easier said than done well we'll have to see if the a team will be able to pull together and do it in a classic a team heroic fashion uh but in that we will have to go to a short break as we get pep for that second match don't go anywhere because we'll be right back with more valorant action coming your way we'll go
All the faces in this ocean come together, making memories in motion. With the traces of the chosen, let's come together with a heart wide open.
Hello everybody and welcome back to the Birds of Prey Series 5 brought to you by the Goose House. I'm Rick and I'm enjoying Winwin Terriers. We're in our second map of our second series today and oh boy was map 1 an absolute doozy. AEX ended up taking it but darn if it wasn't close. Uh, yeah, and I think you've just taken the words right out of my mouth. It was such a close series, and I'm so excited to get into the next map. But, well, it's AEX's map pick next, which is on Lotus, which seems how well that they've played on that map before against, um, in the last series, against... Um, Ranked Demons, yeah. Yeah, uh, against Ranked Demons, thank you. <laughs> but it's... They've just won on uh, A-Team's map pick. Mm -hmm. They're going into a map that they've dominated against ranked demons, a similar sort of playstyle with the A team. So when we're looking at our, my sort of prediction and what I'm expecting to see, is it's going to be such a good, um, at least a foundation for AX1 um, Nova to get into that map quite quickly, especially since they have the um, they've played five games already. And they have had one loss, and that was at the very start of the day. So they're going to have so much momentum going into this map now as well. And like we said before, whoever wins this map um, series goes into the grand finals, but also they get a place in contender. So there's a lot to play for, not only just to get into the grand finals, but whoever wins this series, this series that we're in the middle of now, gets that place. So it is a lot to play for for these two teams. Yeah, I mean, this is literally what they've been fighting for for quite a while now obviously yesterday as well but it, it just in general trying to get these qualifications you guys have, have mostly gone through um, the open calls as well obviously didn't make it or they wouldn't be here uh, but another chance at life another chance at making it into contenders I mean what more could you ask for right especially going on up into the world these guys are improving uh, day or, day in day out and I'm always impressed with what they're really able to show us on screen and I, I think the previous map was a brilliant demonstration of that yeah, absolutely. We'll get you into that map as soon as possible. But what are your expectations for how these two teams are going to come up against each other on Lotus specifically? Hmm. I think it's a really good question. And I think there's certainly a world where the A-team are able to deliver on Lotus as well. I really don't know how comfortable they've been on it, as again, they're kind of more of a mix. Um, but what we do know is just how good AEX1 and Nova are here. There's a world where they just completely take over this one, shut it down. But when they were on the map versus Ranked Demons before, they did show some weakness. They did show that they were able to bleed. Um, and as a result, if you bleed, you can kill it. You can definitely beat them on this map, but it takes you to kind of be that upper, that upper crust, that step above. And I, and I think if on the if you give them the right kind of opportunities, the A-team can absolutely do that. We've seen them when they're really uh, firing all guns are blazing. Shura in particular was a player we were absolutely gobsmacked by. So I'm looking for more of that. Yeah, you mentioned Shura um, briefly there, but Shura and Mads, I'm really interested to see how they... Um agent composition comes into um, into the game but instead of me speculating let's see what they're actually going to pick let's get into that agent select see if they're going to run a double duelist on this map or if we're going to see two chambers again Ooh, I'd be excited to see some uh, double duelist I think especially maybe that neon coming right on back would be fun to see as we get to see these picks already come on in but the Yoru being hovered for a second whoa, there whoa, but whoa. Let, let's be real Ella's not playing the Yoru Ella's playing that chamber it worked so well for them before uh, a double smoke com a double controller com coming out from the A team I like that I like the fact that they're willing to pick the Viper I think it's a really solid uh, agent here especially with some good backup yeah, and um, similarly, we saw um, Viper being picked on uh, Lotus previously, but that was done as the only smoker. So having um, the Omen here now from Essie is looking a lot more viable, in my opinion, for how they're going to be able to play around it and the flexibility of it. But then we see Mads going onto that sky. Instead of going for the um, double duelist, they've opted for this double controller and put in Mads on this initiator role into the sky flashes. I'm really interested to see how well she's going to be able to um, set up her team. Yeah, uh, I, I'm interested to see if Mads is going to be able to have that same kind of um, playmaking ability over on the sky. I think obviously you can flash yourself in, but it's never going to be the same as the Rays. And I think I worry that lacking that kind of spark for their team might be a problem. Uh, obviously, I think Shura could definitely take that in hand on the Rays, but without the two of them kind of doing that, I do worry for them a little bit. Um, however, I think the A-team are a strong enough squad that they would have thought about this, they would have prepped for this, and they should still be able to uh, do something against uh, AEX here and hopefully, at the very least, give us a good map, but hopefully pick it up and take us to map three. 
Absolutely. What do we love more than a, well, a, a close series, but also a three map series in the, these best of threes that we're seeing today. Again, we've seen Ella going back onto that chamber. They're going to be running the same composition as they had earlier. Cray on the um, fade, Kanaka on the breach. We've seen it before. We saw it like not even an hour and a half ago. So looking at this team it's going to be really on the side of the a team on the space taken i think on the defense with the viper and the omen i'm really interested to see how they prioritize um the areas like we see a lot of teams going for the a main like that's where you have the skirmishes really early round or if they're going to be going for a more of a b push or a c push and taking the space there and opting more for a retake um, aspect towards a with the amount of utility that they have to re-smoke and re-smoke mm -hmm. I think AEX1 Nova were really focusing on the C push and the A push the previous uh, time we saw them on this map, uh, but I would love to see that B push from them more because they had a lot of success there. Uh, obviously, they didn't do it very often, so you know there's, there's, there was no ad kind of adaptation towards it, but it was still very uh, poignant, at least in my mind, of, as to how they were playing the map, yeah. um, getting that pressure on and kind of going from there. Now, they're going to have to push on into this A site, it seems, if they want to try and get an early control, but... They're kind of setting on up, opening things, using concussion, even the Prowler dashes on forward and even gets a frag. The fact that AQ made that work is disgusting. And they're not even able to find all too much. Sure, Arena gets one, but the A-team completely shot out of that one. Mizzy on the flank position is going to be completely known here. The shots are struggling to hit, unfortunately, for Ella, as it is a two versus three, but a lot of damage down. Yeah, Mizzy there on 15 HP, not much to the name, and it is still a man deficit for the side of the A-team. It's going to be heroics coming from the two remaining players to get this. The reveal coming from Kraya, not spotting out the place, which just signals even more information that they are still too far back to be spotted. Yes, indeed. Oh, the smoke dissipates. The shots ring true. It's one versus two now. Oh, here is in the perfect position. That wisdom may be coming in clutch right now, but can't hit the shots. Unfortunately, if they got that shot, it would have been an easy collapse onto the player on the spike, but just holds well, buys the time, and exactly what they needed. The A team, they make it happen. And it's off the back of a two versus three. Brilliant delivery. It was just the way Essie and Mizzy both got kills at the exact same time. And then um, Hera then in that position was of, we've just gone from a 3v2 to a 1 versus 2 in the matter of a second. And obviously great from the 18 being able to isolate two 1v1s and then use that man advantage then to stick the spike defuse and have um, well, a player looking over and protecting the diffuser. But it's looking like a really fast push towards um, the C bomb site. It is an eco for them, so they're going for a fast push, trying to get up close and personal. But Mizzy's not going to allow that much going far with the Aries, but Eco with the short shorty into the face of Mizzy, taking one for one in that situation. But Essie and Ernio there to trade out back for a 3v2. Still in the man advantage, but also still in the gun advantage. Kraya has that spike but he's also surrounded on all sides getting that down is certainly easier said than done starting to move forward here dog does not catch them so without the trailblazer they might be able to make something but sure eventually lands that one shot they needed and it's a second round in the bag for the 18 but they lost a decent amount of econ there it's not all uh problems for aax1 nova obviously they're going to be going up to the rifles in the next round and that should allow them to get some sort of foothold again we've seen them in this position before once they get access to the rifles, that's where they really start to turn the corner. And turning the corner is exactly what they need to do if they want to come back into this. Yes, it's only two rounds in, and when, I'm not saying it's do or die for these teams at the moment, but they're definitely wanting to get some rounds on the board. Yeah. Now is a good chance to do it. They're going to be on a lesser buy. There's only three rifles available for them, and mainly Bulldogs, so AX1 Nova really need to come down and hit the ground run and try and keep as many rifles as they can through this round. But, well... Mizzy has something else to say about one, two, three sheriff shots onto the heads of AEX1 Nova's team. Shura picking up one for themselves and is all down to the chamber player. And look at that, the flawless round off the back of Mizzy's sheriff shots. I've told you the game changer sheriff scene is absolutely insane. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that was absolutely fantastic. It's like a recreation of how the West was won or some kind of old Western movie just slinging that pistol around like it ain't nobody's business. The A-team, again, finding that. This is a player that you were kind of highlighting, I think, before the series, right? I was coming in into this and you were like, Mizzy's great. And Mizzy played well in map one, but... um 
it was kind of you know it was the it was the Madsen Shura show when I was looking for players to kind of highlight. Um, but a great kind of show up again that you could sit in the back and kind of you know play that supporting role on the breach on the um, Killjoy, but you can also just pick up these frags. And again, it shows just the depth of talent we have here in the game changer scene. Yeah, absolutely. I never want to be on the other end of a game changer and a sheriff. Honestly, the skills are insane when it comes to the eco shots. But it just makes the games closer. But do you know what is close is well, Mans and the enemy team. AX Nova converging on a position. She's managed to get off site, but Kaneko taking down Shura before that can happen. Mads waiting in the wings, she gets a great frag there onto Ikyu, meaning that they are going to be able to go 3 versus 3 in this position. Spike goes down, Trailblazer checking a lot, Mads gets a lot of information and even gets a near sight there. Not sure if they landed the damage, don't think they did, but Mads still can be able to get a lot of communication as Kraya starts to slip away from that. The dark cover does mean they're able to get into a slightly better position and make a little bit more for themselves. The flash could go on in here, and that bird would be absolutely brilliant in setting up for this push to come on through. Try Trying to move on in as the dark cover settles. They managed to trade one for one, but that's a rifle upgrade potentially sitting here. Hero tries to unload that sheriff, but unfortunately can't quite channel the uh, performance of Missy past as they finally do. And it's rifle versus Mads right now and manages to land the shot. And that's it. That's the sheriff magic. That's the sheriffs that I'm talking about. We've seen it from Kaneko in that round. We've seen it from... Um I think every single player has had like a sheriff moment already and that's Hero clutching that out with two lovely one taps to the head for the two remaining players of the A team and that is the first round on the board as well. It was an eco round for them so uh, A team are definitely going to be feeling a little bit of salt in the wound there of how they lost that one but again on their attack now AXC will know they opting for a very heavy stack towards this A. They're wanting to take these skirmishes, knowing that the A team haven't really committed that much to. They're committing more towards a um, normal defensive line of like a 2 1 2 and not taking the space towards A. And they're taking advantage of that. Nightfall in now as well, and here comes the site exec. It does indeed. Nightfall going to give so much information over to these gamers right now. They can start to push on forward with the Prowler back up as well. They easily force Mads out of this position. Someone comes down, drop. Don't know if they heard it. I think Shura dropped silently. This is exactly the kind of opportunity that has a great angle here to really deliver with a frag dead, but whiffs, unfortunately, and Kreia does no such thing as the Dome Shura start to move into a slightly better position. Arino has to find something successful here with that dark cover with the Rolling Thunder. You've got to look for your chance a little bit closer, a little bit easier. That's a great spray down. That's three brutal kills right now coming through, and they forced the rest of the players off site. Time is ticking away. They've not got a huge advantage in terms of that. As you see, the Vipers pit even invested as they slip on into it. Arena waiting around the corner with that shorty ready for someone to push to do something. Does actually catch it, but Missy Wait. goes down. However, they got the half. That's all important there, and the round will go their way as a result. And they even pick up here at the very end there. The A team get a fantastic round. That was such a lovely wall bang as well from. Um Ally, I believe it was in tree. But again, like you said, they got half, so it doesn't really matter. They were able to um, get back on it and get it within the three seconds. And I really like the investment of the Vipers, but they just keeping um, Ella out of that fight and isolating her, having to take that wall, um, wall bang shot onto the person defusing. And it's the split between the players down the site. Was, there was no sort of um, group of AEX1 players after the Rolling Thunder took out three of them. Yeah, I mean, that Rolling Thunder setup was just so darn brilliant, but it wasn't enough to keep them back because, I mean, the A team have just been so good at these retakes. We saw that in the previous half as well. They seem very coordinated, and that's a big part of what allows you to succeed there and succeed in general, especially on their attack. So, looking forward to seeing them as they swap sides later, especially with that cipher. Sorry, with the chamber on the defense. Something to keep an eye on if you guys are sticking around for that. This match is definitely going to heat up as we go through. And it's going to be a full CT retake from this from Stairs of Shura. Taking the first pick in the round after the bomb has been planted. It's been a very passive round from both of these teams. But passive is definitely not what Kaneko is going to be doing. Picking up two for himself. Mans trades back out onto Hekka. Hera, sorry. And as he picks up one. Three versus two. The bomb is getting diffused. But again, off it. It's over half now. There's only two seconds left on it. Ella is going to be swinging around the corner and nothing. Shura sticks the defuse, and that's the fifth round now on the board for the A-team. 
Oh my lord, the A-team are making magic happen right now. They push forward, they know they have to the control, they know they force these players off, and they just make the call. Sure, it doesn't even need to let any bullets loose to win that round. Again, showing the quality of the A-team right now. AEX won Nova, and I think this is absolutely the right time to use this timeout. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. The rounds that we've been seeing haven't been too detrimental in regards to there's been massive mistakes made by um, AEX. It's just been outplays by the 18 but it's better to nip it in the bud now you can see what the main issues of where the a team are finding the gaps and, and are exploiting them and it's better to do it now with they're going to be on an ego i believe it is as well so see if we can get some um booky strat out of the book and get a fast push to try and really catch the a team off guard but again they're going to be aware of this after the timeout as well. They're going to have made sure they know about the economy and hopefully be prepared for anything that AX can throw at them. Yeah. I mean, again, the A-team, they get to talk on this time as well. That's always something you've got to think about when you're pulling those timeouts. But stopping the momentum as well is going to be a nice thing, right? And I think A-team are definitely a team who runs on those hot streaks. We saw them get shut down a lot, I think, by AEX1 Nova with that tit-for-tat gameplay we saw um, in the first map. And I think that tit-for-tat gameplay is also why this deficit of four rounds is going to matter so much. AEX1 Nova need to rectify things immediately because otherwise it's going to go back, forth, forth, back. And eventually they're going to be four rounds down still and then they're going to lose the game. Yeah, and the only round that I went wasn't even the bonus round that um, the A team were on. It was just a random round yep. that they had some insane sheriff shots on. So the oh the Odin as well, Mizzy, the spray, the amount of damage going down. Oh. Book an echo, the sheriff shot through the smoke, taking down the Killjoy player of the A team. There, the plant going in. It's an open plant as well. But the gun won't be retrieved, and if they do, they're going to have a stark realization that it's getting protected by two 18 players. Yeah, but they'll take those 18 players all the way to the bank. AEX1 Nova using that aggression to their advantage, knowing that players are going to come to defend that. They know that, well, there's got to be someone dealing with it, but easy. Sorry, SE was waiting right around the corner in a great position. The Sheriffs are landing, but they're not quite enough to kill. It'll be Hero's backup that manages to finish it off, and Mads just doesn't have enough time, doesn't have enough space, doesn't have enough teammates to make that one work for them. And there you go, the Tour de Force getting the last remaining kill there. But Ikiro here, the kill that they're able to get in the space and the nade and the time and the conjunction of the utility from the breach from Kaneko far back down is just staving off time, allowing them to get into better positions. And it's really forcing the hand of the A-team to take unfavorable fights. Like you saw uh, Essie there having to run through a smoke around a corner to try and um, get that pick onto Ikkyo, but then by then you also have Kaneko trading it out. So it's in the situation of they being able to buy so much time with the combination of utility that they don't necessarily have to kill everyone to win the round. It gets to the situation where they have to make bad decisions, but what bad decision is Mads and Ella's gunfight? Mads coming out on top, and that is the first blood yet again in the way of the A team, and they're just wanting to extend and extend even more with the positions that they've got now down in main. And with that advantage, I mean, they're going to be able to cut up a lot of the map. You can already see the trailblazer being used towards the B site, they're checking, seeing what's happening there, they know that if someone's going to push, they have all the information about this A site, but nowhere else. I love as well that AEX Nova are willing to just kind of look at things and go, okay, well, let's stick around, let's buy, play with the time, play with patience, and I think that's a, a, a real boon of this team. They are very happy to play slow. Yeah, absolutely, but are they aware of Essie's oh, position? No. She's got one, she's got, oh, almost gets the second there, but the blind from Kaneko is absolutely perfect. Full blind, so, but still the round um, number deficit missing with the Odin coming in. Oh, nicely done, Kaneko does get something with Hera's backup. That is exactly what they need. That is just one left, but it is Shura. So you better be sure as anything if you could pick, that you could pick up this round. Otherwise, things will not go your way. There's the first, Shura. Not quite sure. Now knows exactly with the paranoia, but does not step away. Hera holds the ground, pushes forward, and, well, nets them the round. Five to three. This is exactly the kind of respite we were asking for for AEX. Yeah, and it's, it's a round after a round that we're needing to see to close the gap rather than just keep it at the same space and it just moves up one by one, which is something that we saw on the previous map when it was so close. It just felt like every round um, one team got the other team answered back straight away with a round or two rounds of their own then. But going into this, it is a two round deficit now for AEX and they're on their defensive, um, on their attacking side, which is something that 
I'm worried about. They are an attacking team and they're in such a deficit, but Cray is just proving why they're an attacking team. Taking that first pick onto Missy, that's your um, sentinel off the board. And well, what? Oh my, you know, I really think AEX learned from when they were playing um, the rank, ranked demons earlier, where they were getting super aggressive with those satchel charges. Just taking that, adding it to their strat book, because AEX won Nova had just been jumping on in. And I think A team just haven't been expecting it. I mean, why would you? Yeah, I don't think many people expect to get killed out of the sky <laughs> by a flying race. I think. Yeah, you can see a flying raise sometimes, but to get the falling raise headshot onto your head is not great. But Kaneko gets that headshot onto Mads and doubles up for the kill onto Shura as well. And there we go. One round difference now. And it was a four man surviving the um, round, forcing the timeout now again from the A team. So both teams are kind of in the position where the timeouts have helped them. AE1X have gone from 5-1 down to now 5-4. And the A team now are kind of trying to have the same sort of respite in, okay, what's happened? What have they just found that we haven't previously assessed, previously known was a weakness that we can cover in the coming rounds since it is coming to the end of this half. And the ult economy for AEX Nova is so much better than that of the A team. Oh, yeah. I mean, they've got so much to use here. And I think in part, <clears throat> because they haven't really needed to invest too much for a lot of these rounds. They've just kind of been walking on in, hitting their shots, using util that isn't ultimate very effectively, and it's been a big part of it. I, I, I think, again, something that I want to highlight is what we talked about at the start of this series, which was um, about AEX having lots of players that can just frag and that can deliver on the moment. And I think Kaneko is this game's player of the game because they just keep <laughs> popping up they keep on finding those frags and this time AEX one over are very happy to play around them very happy to allow them to set up for plays and even though they're the breach there's been focus around them in some of these situations and just enabling them to succeed you can see top of the scoreboard by a pretty significant margin compared to the rest of their teammates but everyone's still delivering on the squad right now yeah there isn't a there's no i in team um rook and it's definitely but there's definitely Kaneko in this squad in AEX1. <laughs> and like you said, it's the player, the standout player of AEX1, this map. And it seems like everyone is going to have their turn. But do you know whose turn it is? It's Essie's turn to try and dodge this ultimate. She has been hit by it, so she's going to have to stick this TP out. And look at this. They're already in spawn. They're going for this an aggro play. Are there any flashes to help it? There's going to be three players that they're going to find. Indeed, all oh, good usage of the paint shells and even the showstopper to come on out here. Sure, swings wide, swings out for the shot to Essie before the rocket does. That's the simple answer. And this one tries to swing out. They need to push on into it, and that's just a hold down. But oh, Mads needs to hold it. Does indeed. And now this killjoy, this lockdown is absolutely brilliant. Forces these players right off. You can see Ella all the way out it's here. Certainly play. hold that spike, but well, no, it's planted actually way too deep. They can't. They planted four CT. That's a Big problem. It would be less of a problem if, if the CT, the yeah, if the <laughs> CT players didn't die. I think that's the situation yeah. there. Um, Ella's playing for sort of a backstab, sort of a lurk positioning, since they're expecting a lot of people CT in sight with that plant, and then, well, since they died so quickly, Ella wasn't being able to play as that positioning in that post plant there, and the A team. I feel like even when the last map, went, um, the last time we saw AEX on this map, they do go for that CT push, but every time we've seen it, it hasn't been fruitful. They've overextended in certain positions and they haven't got the kills that they needed and then they just get crunched into that sort of position. But do you know who's getting crunched? Sure, in this position. Are they going to be aware But the swing and the kill? But she gets one, trades themselves out by the um, um, nade. And now down to a three versus two. Yeah, really nice from Erno there as well to be the third player in the trading sequence uh, for their team. So A team come out on top and have that advantage. But obviously on this defense, it doesn't matter if you're up by one player, you can still get played around the map. So they have to be very wary of these different sites. And I think right call to have put two players over towards this C site area very early on here. And you can, well, note that the uh, Omen is already knocking on the door. The... I'm kind of interested to see what they're wanting to do. They haven't got the spike. They do have the um, shrouded step to um, from the shadow, sorry, to go retrieve it if that is the kind of play that they're wanting to do. But, well, the position with the Omen was there was two players over towards there, not teamed up at all, Korea and 
the omen of AEX. Going to be retrieving this spike now. I'm going to have to fight for the position of A with the player in garden. Mm -hmm. Viper's Wall falls, they've run out of it, the Nightfall gets invested and they use the turning door to really move forward here. They shut down one, but they trade! That's big! And <gasps> can't get no. to the spike! That is tragic for Hera here! And, well, they should be able to move on in, maybe they can use the From the Shadows to pick it up, but they just don't no have time. the time now. Now they've got to go for kills to spray around the wall, but Hera does actually manage to find the frag, and I think very sensibly, as he goes, Okay, well, I don't need to fight this one. Yeah, you can you can save your gun. We're okay in regards to money. It's 7-4 now for the A team, and oh, that's just so unfortunate with the door. They were unable to pick that spike back up. If well, if they were able to get through to the other side, then they could have used the shroud, um, the from the shadows, then to TP to the other side. And in another world, in in the parallel universe, that could have happened. But in this one, it has not. And the A team are definitely hitting, um, Ex Aex One Nova where it hurts on their map pick on well the defensive side as well. And yeah, they're coming out very strong, making sure the series doesn't end here. Doing the Lord's work right now, the A team giving us more game changes action. I'm absolutely here for it, and especially with this series, which has been so fun so far. If we can get to a third map, I certainly wouldn't mind that one at all. As we're setting up right now for a potential move to Haven, uh, as we finish, as this map is looking strong for the A team, but I certainly wouldn't count AEX One Nova out just yet. When they move out of the defense, it's going to be a real problematic again. Mizzy. With the Odin, very happy to just spray through that wall, picks up a frag, and that's exactly the kind of rounds that the A-Team so sorely needed. But Kreia starts to make a move, trying to use that Bulldog to great effect, but there's too many players, too many angles, too many problems, uh, kind of just <laughs> constantly haranguing them, and that means the Shorty will find them, the round and the half will go the way of the A-Team. And that's an 8-4, it's double the rounds that AEX1 have to their name. And well, it does seem like Missy's opting for this Odin, and it's like kind of like a lifestyle. I feel it is. It's a lifestyle choice to be an Odin player in Valorant. It's, yeah. it's you just live and breathe the Odin at certain positions, and especially like it's like Sova uh, on ascent. It's always an Odin in the hands if you're playing towards that B site. And it does seem like any time we look at Missy and she's running around the map, there's an Odin in her hand. But going into the attacking half now, I'm really excited to see if the double in um, double controller sort of limits them in what they're go wanting to do since we have double initiate on the side of AX it didn't it wasn't as fruitful as I'd hoped on their attack but then 18 they have the double controller as well yeah, so. I, I, I think the double controller is going to be really interesting for the offense and how they how they employ it I think it could be a little bit weak and could be a real problem for them I think AX won over actually very primed for a comeback here. If you asked me, like, if th there was a situation and a composition, I think this is absolutely it. The only thing you could ask for more is maybe that 9-3, but I don't believe in curses so much. I think 8-4 is much <laughs> more comfortable. It's definitely a lot more comfortable for a comeback. The 9-3 curse is a curse since it is such a big deficit, but a deficit is going to be in the way of the A team in regards to losing some of their players, and Ikkyo picking up another for themselves. Kraya backing them up, and it's a 5 versus 1. Essie getting one for her troubles onto Hera. The Omen versus Omen battle is over, but the spike is still in hand. Far away from the other players of AEX, but she's going to be... Exploring CT, the, she's on she's on the wrong spawn, but she's kind of flipped sides with these uh, defenders now, taking the fight. There you go, Ikio closes that out, and there you go. It's like you said, it's the eight four is a lot more comfortable for them for the round deficit to be not as bad as a nine three. Coming into this now, they've got that pistol, so it's now down to a three, hoping to convert it into an eight six, and then there's only two rounds. And then if you're looking at the how the A team took the first half of this map, they were able to convert the bonus as well. So it's looking good for AX One Nova fans. Yeah, no, I think it absolutely is. And I think as well with Ella in a more comfortable position, didn't get to have so much of an impression on that previous half. And as a player who I think is very key to their strategy and play style, I, I think this is going to look way, way better for them. I think Ella should be able to have far more impact. They're going to be able to cover those flanks. They're going to be able to really shut down any of those kind of um, stray pushes that could come through from the A team. It's exactly where they need to be. And right now, those stray pushes are absolutely coming on through as they're hitting the C site with that boom bot early, but they don't commit towards it, even though all those players are sitting, watching, waiting 
eaten right outside. Manages to catch some damage, but doesn't quite kill yet as that Viper's Wall goes on up. And Shura looks for their time to shine. They move right on in. The Viper's Bite by Space, but Kaneko does not give up. And as we said before, this game is Kaneko's game. You will not take it away from them. Sure, you can kill them, but a 4k and a death? You know what? I'll take that one. Well, you might take a 4k and a death, but some people might want the ace. I know I know you might not have had the ace before in your rank games since that chamber is oh so pestering you in your rank games, but can I go again and a name I mentioned to you before on the side of AEX is a heavy hitter, having yep. so much experience on past teams in the V2K game changers as well, and now coming into AEX does feel like they're coming into their own on that breach support role. But that's the second round. We're expecting that round to go in their way. Oh, that's actually quite a cute elephant. Sorry, sidetracked. So that, we're expecting that um, round to go in their way, but you know what we're not expecting is that first kill from Ikio going into the bonus round. The Sheriff, the stun, and just the combination of utility down that B straight. And they've already gotten a gun, a rifle off the board for the side of the A team, but also a player and utility as well from that duelist. Yeah. <laughs> Even with a weapon deficit, Ella does not care. Hits the headshot, takes them down. Well, Mizzy eventually dispatches them, but the A-team are already a player deficit. This isn't exactly where they wanted to be, even with a weapon advantage right now. AEX, we've highlighted what they're able to do with Sheriffs. Well, what pretty much everyone seems to be able to do with Sheriffs here. And I'm certainly excited to see if they can pick this round up. They've got the player advantage. They've got at least a decent setup, I think, around the seaside that they can maybe flex some player two towards this A because it is a little too open, in my opinion. I want to see if they, once realizing that they are going towards this A side, that Korea should be coming to the team now. If they're going to be pushing out of C and B to collect the weapons that we see towards the south side of the map, since, well, they are on sheriffs and or pistols. And... Getting, being able to pick up that rifle like we see Akira going for now from the side of AEX, going to go on that flank and be able to get a rifle, get a rifle in the well, the behinds of the side of the A team, and really crux in their plan to take this site since they are one in a um, number deficit, but also maybe possibly a wef weapon one. The time now going down, Hera gets a kill. Mads busy with two. Oh, this is it. The A team certainly can deliver when it comes to those individual frags. And we never count them out. AEX1 Nova. I mean, regardless of what happens here, they've done so much damage against these rifles. The A team, not exactly where they wanted to be in this round. They were feeling like it should be more comfortable, should be more, well, just theirs in its entirety. Instead, you're going to have to bop double Nano Swarm, forcing them away from the angle and just holding it down, denying Yukio. And that does mean the A team will move to nine, but not at a significant loss. No, and like you said, it was the bonus for that round. The lovely Sheriff shots and Headhunter shots we saw from the two players of AEX right at the start. Able to pick up a weapon on that um, flank, um, Ikio did, but unfortunately it was down to a 1v2 at that point. And a Spectre can be useful in certain situations, but when you're up against two rifles and Mizzy's alarm bots and turrets and nano swarms, it is a bit of a fruit. Um, fruitless endeavor but going back into this now we're going to be going into full rifle v rifle rounds and for the side of AEX it's going to be this is kind of like the stand standing point that they need to start closing the gap without losing too many players and also making sure that it's a round win that they are getting from these couple of rounds to come it is. Again, Ella waiting in the wings on that A site, and I really like this position. They've played it very effectively in the previous time we've seen them on this map. They just need to get a couple more frags and then just dip away. They don't have to commit towards a lot of this. Going to get that first and instantly backs out. Really, really nice slick non-committal from this chamber, and AEX1 Nova yet again set themselves up to pick up this round with an early frag. They've taken these advantages to dizzying heights before, and with a spray what? through that finds two. Kaneko can apparently do no wrong. Well, yeah, do no wrong is what she is going to be doing, but she is going to be doing wrong for the side of the A team, since so she's just single-handedly taking down four players, two through smoke yeah two we didn't quite see them if you watch the replay now it's just the well game knowledge really and then well a bit of rng through that spray and then picking up the last two kills there the timeout coming in from the a team as expected from a round like that whether it's a strat mistake that they've made or something that the coach wants to bring in but after a round like that you you kind of need a bit of a mental break as well mm -hmm. 
No, absolutely. And the last time we saw the A team take this time out, they had a lot of success. They were literally looking at this and went, okay, well, AEX had just come off of a timeout of their own, really managed to rectify a lot of problems, and the A team went, okay, stop right there. Not going to let you get too far away with the head with this. Turn things on the head and picked up a good few on the trot. Now, normally I go, okay, well, that's fine. AEX can just use their own back, but if they let those few go that way, the A team are very close to picking up this hard, uh, picking up this map. They're only four rounds away from a win, and if you slip up a couple of times, that can snowball and it can be a real problem. Yeah, absolutely. And we've seen how AEX um, is quite a momentum-based team, and they've had the momentum so far in in the entirety of the day. The only time they've had a real challenge and lost was the very first map of the day, and they bounced back from that in the second map, and then the third map of the first series, and now we're in the second map of the second series now, and they're yet to kind of have some sort of bite back, I feel, and this is really nice to see that the A-team are really giving them a little bit more of a fight than they possibly anticipated. I mean... He certainly could have anticipated a fight like this from map one. That was close as can be without going to that overtime. And AEX, I mean, they weathered the storm. The problem is, well, they've to deal with the after effects right now as there are rumblings. The A-team trying to pick up the same map. <laughs> nice you, utility from each other. Yeah, aware that the dink came through and the paint shells there just to secure the kill. But it is an eco round coming from the A-team. Back onto site now, but Kaneko's there in the backside, giving oh. support for sure with the share of shots. Yeah. EQ there is, uh, though, is there to try and give that back up, make sure they don't lose too much from that, and they didn't lose um, space on the site. It's definitely going to be very impactful. Flank coming through, Ella looking for something, but gets caught by Mizzy there. A big frag to come on through, and it means that the A-team aren't that far behind, aren't that much of a deficit right now. They've got a decent amount of time. They could rotate away. Yeah, spikes in hand as well, and it, it was a 4v2, positions of both players were known, so taking that gunfight has been so favourable for the side of um, the A-team since, well, look at them, they've been able to rotate, they've been able to pick up weapons as well, and the flashes, the information, they're going to do a double back around possibly onto C. Ooh, I like the idea, you know, the whole bait and switch. But with that door opening, they will have to deal with players coming from their own spawn. I assume they will have heard it. They need to go for that spike plant almost instantaneously, though. We'll be able to go the for time. it. The shots are coming through. Mads no holds time. it down. There's not enough time. Just needs to go for the front. Gets it! Brilliant play from Mads here. And I was asking before. Now they're moving on to the initiator. Will they be able to have that same impact? And, well, it's Mads. Of course they're going to. Yeah, definitely showing why it doesn't matter what agent you put Mads on. She's definitely got something to say to the side of the AEX and, well, their attempts to get away with that round. And they were on an E here as well, so they've gone into that with Sheriffs. They've been able to pick up a few couple kills, and it was a little bit of an overextension from the side of the chamber of AEX. They're trying to open that door. And then giving an avenue for the A-team out weapons and then just Mads definitely showed up with the weapon she picked up but going into this now they're going to be hard pushing down oh. onto this A long getting that first pick the Viper of the A team AEX now in the man deficit we've seen them work from worse but look at the positionings they've been completely riled into this situation where they've pushed so far down C they've lost players on A and well the A-team are just taking every single bit of space that they can. Indeed they are. The A-team, after getting that first frag, I mean, with Ella gone, you don't have to worry so much about those flanks. You don't have to worry about all the other shenanigans that are going to be going on for the most part in the same kind of pressure. So they're going to have to commit two towards it. Mizzy is just able to hold that one down, finding a 2k for their team. AEX1 Nova do not know what hit them. They are not even sure that they want to know what hit them. The Viper's pick comes through and even more are these hopes dashed and dashed and dashed. And right now it might be dash, 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 dot, 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 dash, dash, dash. Because AEX1 Nova over. Really need the SOS. Oh, is that where it was? Yeah, I, I, it's, it's I thought you were having a stroke, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that old. Um, if I if I speak, right? <laughs> I'm in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> if I speak, but no, when I do speak, I am going to be talking about how um, the A team have done so well now. After on the back of that timeout, they've been able to get two rounds back to back and put themselves over the threshold of that double digit mark from the nine to the eleven now with a four round deficit. We're going back to similarly what we saw in the first half, and well, AX 
they haven't really had much to say about it. The rounds haven't been extremely close in regards to um, AX being so high oh! up. But what is that shot from Ella? I'm talking about being high up, but Ella is definitely, well, high praises after that shot collating the Rays and the Sky, the two heavy hitters that we've talked about from the A team before. And they're off the board, hoping to create this as the eighth round on the board for AEX, you. Yeah. It is going to be. Hera wetting with this judge, and we've seen just how problematic this can be. It's a very funky scenario. It's got a funky skin as well for just how crazy this might get if they push through. Reno does not know what's going to be on the other side, but has an inkling that it might be death and danger. So they very sensibly back up. But, oh, Hera makes the call out, gets the frag, sure falls, but denies that push for a second longer. Gives the space, gives the time for their team to rotate. Good usage here. Almost finds the frag, but the fully automatic weaponry definitely being a problem here. But the shot goes through. It's two. No, it's two versus zero as the A-team are shut out of that round. But also the lockdown expended by Mizzy there in yes. that situation, hoping to buy herself a little bit of space and time. Oh, look at that shot from Ella. Absolutely lovely. The sound call as well for the judge shot through the smoke as well from that omen. It's eight rounds on the board now. The deficit now three. And it does seem like it's Miz, uh, Mizzy versus Kaneko in this sort of um, fight. It does seem like it's Mizzy and Ko and then Kaneko and Ko at the moment, which is <laughs> quite interesting to see how the two teams have different leading players. So one has a Sentinel leading and the other has an Initiator. It kind of tells on how they're playing. Mm -hmm. The Initiators are taking a lot of fights and having a lot of head-on skirmishes, while the A team, they're having a lot of Lurk players walk into them. Yeah. The Tour de Force. Holding this angle very defensively. Gets spotted by the dog though, so might have to back on up here. No, chooses to get aggressive. Wants to find that frag and does just that. That key player for a for the side of the A team in Mizzy is already off the board. Those key picks. I mean they're gonna come again and again from a talented player like this. AEX, however, lose right on back. They lose their initiate sorry, not their their duelist apologies. Um, and AEX are very fine with that, I think, right now. That's not too much of a problem for them to lose. They still have a lot of utility available. Yeah, and they're going to be going towards this seaside. The oh. satchel from um, Shura, they just catches Ella off guard, not able to flick as hard with the operator since it was a scoped site, but now it's going to be a four versus three. The Rolling Thunder is available along with From the Shadows for Hera if they can get some sort of play going, but it's the hard pressure in CT that they're going to have to take care of before they can even think about taking sight. And Hera takes one, takes Shura down with her. Oh, that rolling thunder catches them at the most inopportune juncture right there. You can see it. Koneko just pushing forward so aggressively. One versus two. Has access to the paranoia. Wants to make it Does indeed! The clutch comes through from Hesse! What a beautiful spray. What a beautiful kill. And puts their team on match point here. And it's not any match point. They have everything to play for. They need this to go to the third map to get a place in the grand finals and get a place in contender. So they're definitely going, pulling out all the stops in this situation. And while the A team are definitely up to the A game in this series, they are match point now. Like you said, it's twin twelve to eight, four rounds now differentiating these two teams. One for the A team to win and five. For AEX if they want to even make it to overtime. But Ikkyo takes that showstopper and takes Shura, the opposition, the mirror pick off the board. But the Viper Molly secures that kill and it's back down to a 4v4. Only lo losing raises on both sides. Yeah, Viper's bite nibbles at the heels. Finishes off pretty <laughs> low player, darting through the sky. Tried to like dodge around it. Did actually manage to survive the initial yeah. salvo. But that rocket, everything else going on. AEX, one Nova now find themselves down a player. And on the defense, that means they can get spread out. Keeping pressure on this A site is going to be important when the Viper's Wall is here because otherwise it's going to go down very, very quickly. So three players ready and waiting there. Dark Cover's invested to try and cut off some of these key positions as the Util looks to start to get invested. They're even keeping an eye towards that B site and I think this is a really great heads up play from the A team. And it is the play that's going to be trying to make towards A. AX1 Nova seem to have the right reads here with Ella holding down the C and B bomb sites. It's going to be a site exec. It's got to come in soon. It's 30 seconds left on the clock. They are ready in the back site. The flashes are coming through now and the site is going to be the war ground. 
checks below, knows now that they're there, gets one frag, that's brilliant for Kraya here, should be able to set them up, the A-team at a deficit, need to get that spike down as well, time is definitely not on their side as the sprays come on through thick and fast as Kaneko again shows up here, and in the nick of time, in their darkest hour, that is exactly what they needed. And it really does feel like, like we said, we've said there's always going to be one player of uh, uh, AEX each map that we're just going to be like, okay, we're just going to have to have their name on a repeat and repeat on, <laughs> it's just a cycle and today in this series, in this map, it's Koneko and she's definitely showing up for her team, getting 3Ks and 4Ks, now a 28, she's almost hit 30 in this and it's only still in regulation, it's 12-9, that's only 21 rounds and she's almost hit 30. Such an impressive performance. Uh, over on this uh, breach as well, uh, that's the kind of most impressive thing that they've managed to have that kind of success on someone who generally <gasps> struggles to so set them up. I think Ella knows. Will they be able to find the shot with the operator? They whiff, unfortunately, there. But luckily for them, it's no loss to them. They just give up a little bit of space. Yeah, the pace lot of the head was there, but now they're going to be exacting towards this lone chamber with the operator towards the side the fast closing utility of the ray satchels and it's going to look like it's going to have to be a 5v5 retake it is indeed they need to get in position they've not got any ultimates that are going to be particularly useful here and that's going to be a real problem a real thorn in the backside of AEX1 Nova they've got the weapons they've got the rifles but they're lacking a player they're lacking hero they're lacking that dark cover which could be all important Mizzy covering the backside has got some support I wonder if they're going to be checking for it as the Seeker comes on through 5 HP for Arena are they going to check this angle they are going to do it they managed to clear them yet again the A-team are down to 3 this is exactly the opportunity I was worried with no ultimates are AEX1 Nova going to make it happen it looks like they just might if they land some of these shots. Those are the frags they need. Shura stays alive, but for only a brief moment. AEX1 Nova head to double digits, head to 10. They are closing the gap right now. And they're in the favorable position. They already have a map under the belt, so they won't be feeling too much pressure, but it's definitely the AT now. They've been on match point for a few rounds coming and a few rounds in the future. If AEX1 Nova keep up this amazing display, this amazing performance, and just look at that score. We'll look at how well these players are playing. This 29 kills and 11 assists on that breach on the side of AEX. But I just want to pull attention to the way they were able to flank. They had that first shot off from um, Ella there. Yes, she didn't net the kill, but the information that she gathered was so, so vital. And the double and up for the flank was great. And well, What's better than a peeking from a flank? A double peek from flank. So that was great from the side of AAX1, and then they were able to converge from three different angles onto the remaining players of the A team on site. And just look at the alt economy as well. They're in such a good position to take this to um, overtime as well. They just have to keep their cool. My ult's not ready. Keep their cool. And maybe put a freeze on what, a, what um, the A team are really looking to do here, because they've been hot and heavy in the way they've been getting some of these attacks going. It's been when it comes down to the post plants where AEX1 Nova have really shown up, really delivered, really demonstrated just how effective they can be. The A team taking a slightly slower start here makes things interesting. There's still two players focusing on that C site from the defensive side. I'm quite interested in seeing the A-team have put all the eggs in one basket going towards this C-site. Like you said, there's 40 seconds left on the clock. You have one player holding flank, not even flanking through B and trying to cut off the rotates. But this is the C-site. They are there, but the Rolling Thunder's coming out now. They're going to be absolutely ambushed on site. They absolutely are. That's brilliant for Kaneko here. Another frag coming through from them. And what an execute. What a deny. 22 seconds on the clock. I don't think they have the time. The spikes drop down anyway. I think the A-team will look at this one and go, okay, well, let's save the rifles. We really... They can't have much economy left. Really, genuinely. Especially after the investments. Like, Mizzy has a um, Odin in hand. Yes, that's one of the most expensive guns in the game. But for her, it's Aww. something that she's been so well at. But... Ella taking that off the board. If they are to reinvest into it, I don't think that they will. They'll be on a half by a very much a forced buy going into the last round of regulation here and trying to close it out with possibly even stingers on the side of some members of Team A. Yeah, I I, I haven't seen the, the Econ, but I think that it really is going to be have to be. Yeah, okay. They do they do have buys on most players, even if they're not the most optimal. They're going to have to go to half shields on some of those. Yeah, but I mean. 
I'm still looking at these rounds and I'm feeling like every one is an execution diff. I think the econ, obviously, at this level isn't hugely important when it's just the armor. These guys have just been trading back so well and so effectively, and AEX1 Nova have been playing around this kind of pressure so darn well. They deal with EQ. That's exactly what the A-team needed, and the advantages are coming thick and fast. Three. No, oh, there it is! There's Kreia! There's the pop-off we saw from before. Almost another netted for their team. Two versus three. AEX one over with some clutch players in hand, though. Keep an eye on Hera. Keep an eye on Ella. As the A-team still have three. Still have that Viper's pit. And I think that's going to be the most important thing here. Yeah, and the wall was close. So that's going to net information for the A team on at least one of these players knowing that they would have to be coming from B or towards CT. The Vipers pit now plant is down. It's just looking ever so dire, especially in the position of um, Mizzy far, far back long. They're going to have to take these two players out on site quite effectively and efficiently in order to get Oh, oh they have that's and Mizzy's so far away. That's so brutal. Mizzy is going to be in position to try and contest somewhat here. The shots are going to go down, but they're not going to be enough to deal with the defuse. The Nanoswarm is far, far too late here. And that's the round. That's overtime. A big misstep from Mizzy. A masterstroke from the rest of AEX1 Nova is exactly what they needed to bring this to overtime. I'm saying they're going to have to deal with it effectively and efficiently, and that's exactly what they did. They just shorty killed someone and then also a sprayed <laughs> through the center of um that little hut in the center of a and mizzy obviously not knowing the complete position knowing one would come from b or ct um but obviously b can also turn into that flank so her positioning was great in the sense of okay they've got the bomb site they have a viper's pit they have two people inside the viper's pit playing together i can go hold flank and watch outside the viper's pit but something boogie happened in that Viper's pit and then no longer left her in a 1v2 situation. And because of the plant positioning, she wasn't able to play from long. And going through the door would have been too much time and also too much awareness to the players of AEX would have known where she was. There'd be no sort of surprise there. But we're in overtime now. So AEX are back on this attack. And t the A team are on this defensive. They're not taking any sort of initiative like we saw AEX taking, like with a lot of long space here. But they're given a lot of respect. It feels like they're on the back foot now. They're losing momentum in this game. And the site exec from AEX 1 Nova is coming out now. It's going to be the execute coming very quickly as they open the revolving doors. Hikyu is so far up. Going to contest with Shura here. The trade goes the favor of AEX 1 Nova. And oh my lord. Getting the advantage again for being so far down. Can AEX 1 Nova make the comeback? Can they bring it back? The haunt goes through. Uh, Irino manages to stay alive. The A team had a big deficit here, especially getting pushed like that. If someone gets aggressive, this could be some quick kills, but Iku bites off more than they can chew. The spike is down. AEX 1 Nova, they don't have the impetus to have to do anything here. And Ella just, sorry, just teleports away, does not have to commit onto any of this. And look who it is. It's Kaneko delivering again, looking for a chance. There's the rolling thunder. This is the chance. A team at such a deficit in terms of players. They have to make this happen, and it just doesn't. Arena goes down, and that is AEX 1 Nova moving ever closer to picking up this map. And we were in, what, a 12-8 deficit on a, a, an 11-7 as well. And having AEX will Nova take the first round in OT as well since looking at the scoreboard, they were not winning the defensive rounds before. So now going into it, um, into this attack, it's quite interesting to see how the A team are going to bite back to because the, they have to. This is do or die for them. Otherwise, they'll be going down into the lower bracket, seeing one of the teams that are playing off now in the lower bracket semis. This, though, is the upper finals. This is playing for that spot in contenders. The winner here goes to contenders, qualifies through the regional of Polaris run by TGH. But it's the A team now. They're spread out. They're taking a bit of space now towards A. They're not playing too passive that we've seen them playing before. They have two players towards spawn waiting for that push that we've seen Ikyo also popular doing. Here they are. Reno pushing forward again, making sure they have control over this section, making sure there's no push coming through from the B site. But the shots might ring on into that backboard in just a second. Need to be careful about it. The A team looking for a similar push to what we saw from AEX1 Nova just a second ago. And the time ticking away early on here as the nade is invested in Shura. 
Again, in a similar position to where Iggy was in the previous round. Can they make this happen? The Prowler ignores them. They're able to slip through unnoticed. But Iggy is able to put the shots down range. But Mads just denies. This is so big for the side of the A-team here. This is exactly the round they needed to pick up. And there it is. The Viper's Pit potentially going to be a vested tier. As Arino gets aggressive. Gets the frag. Gets everything they oh so sorely needed. But Kreia delivers once more. Not quite enough, however, to push them over the edge. And it's back to even Stevens. Back to even Stevens and back to the drawing board for some of these teams and what they can do in OT to, well, shake up the competition, shake up the opposition and see if they can ca catch them off guard per se. But either way, the both teams have really shown up when the pressure is down upon them. I Eight. think it's really big that they managed to shut down the momentum as well. Obviously, yeah. they would have lost if they didn't, but the fact that they finally managed to put a stop to it, this is exactly what the A-team wanted to see, and they're feeling far more comfortable now than they ever were before. Yeah, because if you think about it, it was five rounds in a row then for AX, because yeah. including that overtime round and regulation, the A-team oh. here are down for the count, but Koneko out with a trade. It's not too bad losing your Viper in that situation. It's a Viper for a Viper. Oh, sorry, a Viper for an Omen. And Iko is going for a Wanda into CT all alone. If she can get the skill, she does. It's so good for the side of um, AX, but the flank, the flank kills are coming through in tons and tons, and it's all down to that raise player, to Ikyo in that one versus three. She takes one, she takes two, she, the showstopper out. No! She's right on the corner. She knows where the player is. And it just feels like it is so long coming for these players. It's been a long day. And it's by margins, by margins that they almost clutched that out. That rocket was on target as well. It was everything they needed. Thank you. Literally saw it and just a little bit prematurely clicked the button. Blew themselves up. And I mean, this is a mental reset call, I would say, if it were coming from AEX. But... The A team look of this going, okay, that was that was way too close, right? They almost yeah. got clutched against. It shows again, AEX, they're coming out swinging. They are looking to win this one. Yeah, absolutely. AEX wants to end this now, and f well, for the rest of the day, they'll be pretty happy if they do. But the A team definitely have something to say about it, whether that's the RNG, let's say. They have the RNG of the side on their side with Ikyo's, um rocket there, but. Timeout now, they get a timeout every um, overtime. They get some mage as well, use it. They only have to talk about one round. No talk about economy, no talk about ults necessarily because this is overtime. All ults are reset. All economy is the same. So it's just this one round that it, the A team really needs to hone in on and figure out what AEX1 are going to be doing. How are they going to be feeling? What sort of mentality are they going to be in? Are they going to go for something aggressive towards A or C? What are they going to answer back with? These situations that come down to, yes, if they've scrimmed them, but also in the moment, they have to have the decision making from the IGLs, from any loud players on the team. There has to be a voice in this stressful time for both of these teams. Yeah, there does. It's really where the leadership starts to shine. When you're in these clutch situations, when you're in these high pressure moments, when you're fighting for something on the line like these ladies are right now, obviously trying to get that contenders. That's what it's all about because this isn't just the grand finals. This is qualification for contenders. So these really are desperately trying for it. Ella gets that first drag. Missy off the board and AEX finding the kills that they oh so sorely need to bring this one right on back. A quick round in, well... Sucks back to the other rounds yeah. we've seen so far. <laughs> and it's back to even. It's 14-14. We are going the distance. What is it? The even Stevens, we have to say, every time they go we into do. a new uh, overtime round, this is the third lot of overtimes, I believe. Am I might... Yeah, 12. Uh, no, the second. 14. Is it second? No, this, sorry, this is the third one. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah, this is Apologies. the third round of overtime that we're seeing. It's going to be a long match if we're going to see such a close... Well game i said it was the rounds were going back and forth back and forth and that's exactly what's been happening in the last six and well 
it's going to be a C push from the side of AEX here. They're going to be pressuring this Killjoy and Omen right off the bat. The new information come from that flash. Yeah, they know now that they're not pushing there, but they are certain that they're pushing C. They have to back off. I think this retake play is so darn good for them to make. Hello? He's still on that back position, maybe looking for something, but opens things up and is actually looking to just play on the side. The spike goes down. The push comes through. This time the aggression into CT works wonders for the attacking side. AEX find the frags they need. They bring it to two versus five. And this time, surely, this time they can't find it. It's something right on back. The A-team, Essie, has oh, taken off the board. Her. Oh. Showstopper? Okay. Careful, careful. Okay, doesn't, okay. Kill. doesn't kill anyone on their team, but it is going to... Well, slow down, man's gain a lot of space for AX and a lot of time that she can't just push through. And there you go, Ella there with the Phantom waiting. And this is the first round in overtime. Take three, going to AX one over. And action for this <laughs> potentially final round. The A team looking to be a blockbuster hit, but uh, they've got a little bit of work to do before they can do that one at all here. Reno really showing up in these last couple of rounds, delivering for their team to try and bring it back, bring them back within a reaching distance, frankly, of this round. But AEX1 Nova, just in the clutch, they seem to be able to deliver pretty consistently outside of, you know, rogue rockets. Things really do seem to be going well, I, I don't remember that round. That no, I, For no, the no. sake of players, that round <laughs> never happened, right? Okay? It was, it was a glitch. It never happened. Okay, we did not see it, okay? But it is going to be this round that counts for them. They're going to be in their upper hand here, so there's going to be a little bit less um, pressure on them. It's going to be the A team. We're going to be feeling it. I see. Spike in hand, taking a little bit of an engagement with the, the breach player. Can echo towards oh. C? And, oh, the... <laughs> Oh, misses the ready open arms to kill well the heavy hitter of AEX. She's almost on 35 kills, I believe she was last time I checked. And it's the A side that the A team have been preferring to, and they've had the best post plant situations on this site as well. Kills come in. AEX down two players now, and that site is wide open. They push forward. Ella what? manages to make that happen. How on earth Arena did not find that frag? I do not know, but 33 HP and one hell of a dream right now. AEX 1 Nova looking for a chance to make this retake, looking for a chance to bring this back, looking for a chance to close this out here and now. They do not want to have to contest this one any longer than they have to. The paranoia comes on through. The defuse is going on through. Wait, They're not checking for what? That's not a ninja! How on earth do they manage to do I pity the A-team for AEX1 Nova. Burn bright. Find the nuttiest play I think I've seen so far today. And it was just simply holding for Brilliantly done. It's AEX1 Nova. Closed out 16-14. They assumed it was a tap. But unfortunately, they just lose the game. Lose the series. And are now headed to that lower bracket. Sorry, I'm a little bit speechless. I don't know if you could, like... We was we we stand up when we're casting, and I think I was fully like stuck in my shoes when that came through. I thought it was a tap originally, and then I was like, "Wait, why is why is the bar still moving, guys? There's it's a four v two. Why is that? Why is the bar still moving? We've got a paranoia through. We've got two plays in tree. We have two plays coming from long. It was like, guys, the bar, and oh my gosh, what a way to close out the third round of overtime." Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you couldn't have what? asked for a more <laughs> shocking uh, end, honestly, to it. And AEX, I mean, on their map pick, yes, but the most yeah. hard fought their map pick I think I've ever seen. An impressive performance to kind of have the mental fortitude to close the one out. I really thought we were going to map three. I was excited for map three, but with excitement like that, you know what? I think uh, <laughs> I'm not due any recompense. I think we've had enough excitement for four maps just in that overtime segment. It was so back and forth, obviously, if. It's going to three overtimes. Of course, it's going to be back and forth, but it's how close some of these rounds were. Oh, yeah. Like, we had that showstopper round. Technically, it didn't happen. Actually, guys, it, that didn't happen for the sake of the players. That that never happened. Showstopper? What, what showstopper? But going into that final round, the ninja defuse, realistically, is what it was. And it's the way the players were able to... I don't, I don't even know. Honestly, I'm still speechless for that. I'm going to have to look at it and it's like, what actually happened in the minds of some of these players? I generally, it's such a good way to end that series though, isn't it? It's 2-0, two, oh, two AEX, one Nova. They're going to be going to contenders because that's not just 
into the grand finals. They are in contenders. They've already made it. So they've already qualified to the next step of the, well, sort of family tree of um, Game Changers Esports in EMEA. But they do have a grand finals to play later on. So they will be watching the lower finals that will be... Well, soon, right? Is um, yeah. the A team going to be playing whoever's made it through so far? But that's enough from us. We need to go have a little bit of a sit down and mentally process <laughs> what's just happened, I think. But we'll be back in 15 minutes for the lower finals. Don't go anywhere. We are people dance. When the sun goes down. We are people dance.
everybody and welcome back to Birds of Prey Series 5. We're moving down to the lower bracket finals now after an absolute barn burner of an upper bracket finals series. Oh my lord, what a game! I, okay, I know we had a 15 minute break but I still don't think I've mentally processed what was happening. <laughs> but for these players they have to have mentally processed that because they have another best of three now to play so that yes they can have a little bit rough but well they are in the lower bracket finals now, so they've had a little bit of time to rest, have a little bit of a snack, get some um, water or some Red Bull if you are watching at home. Cheers. <laughs> As he takes a sip, I'm just going to want to say well done to AEX1 Nova again. So they've made it to the grand finals. We'll be seeing them again soon after this series. But now this is whoever wins this series does go through to the grand finals and make it to contenders. So the two teams that are going to be playing are ranked demons, which we've already seen on stream not two series ago, who went up against AE um, X one Nova and one uh, lost one two. But now they're going to go up against um, Team A, the A team. So let's let's hear your opinion. What we what we saying? So both of these teams have lost to AEX one. One was a little bit closer than the other in regards to a two one series instead of a two zero. Oh, but after the last map of that series, I don't think it really matters. No, I was going to say like Valorant does not have transitive properties, and obviously the kind of two one ver two one versus two zero. Oh, but it was close though with the yeah. extra rider. That's a classic like player. Like, we lost to them two zero, oh, but it was close. But it was close. No, this one actually was, um, and like some of some of your potential games might have been. But like um, it's. It was so close that I'm genuinely favouring the A team coming on into this. Ranked Demons looked like they were on fire in some of their maps, and on other maps they looked like, frankly, they were just, you know, burning pile of ash. They, they'd really burnt out of it. They did not have the power to really contest, especially on Pearl, so that's why I feel like it might be. Talking bad. about the maps that we're expecting to see, and you're talking about the maps that we've had in the previous series, let's get those map bands out, and let's see where we're going. We've been to Lotus a few times. We've been to Haven. Maybe we're going to see an Ascent. Okay, so first bands coming through, we have Fracture and Haven taken out for the count. We are going to be going to Ascent and Pill, which is going to be um, the A team on Defender for all of these are maps so well it's gonna be interesting since um, a um, ranked demons are quite an attacker sided team so it's interesting to see how they do on pill and ascent especially ascent is our first map is quite close but then we're going into split a map we haven't actually seen yet and I'm excited to cast since it's coming back into the map pool most recently yeah I'm absolutely here to see kind of just how exciting this third map can be. Um, I think Ascent and Pearl, I could see them being split, honestly. I think these teams are going to be very close. I'm really pumped to hopefully see some split because split is always a map where the most awesome matches happen. I'm not joking. It feels like every time I've seen that on stream, casted it myself, it's always super exciting. So looking forward to that. But obviously, we're kicking things off, I believe, with Ascent. Um, that, that's an interesting map. I don't think we've seen too much of it um, being picked um, over the course of at least on stream, uh, but it's one that a lot of teams like. Yeah, and looking at the general stats for some of the teams that have entered, especially the ones we've just seen on stream, but these are both newly developed teams and more towards the mix sense, especially with the ranked demons, since they've all played on teams separately and now they're going back to to the roots, trying to get through qualifications, see if they can make a team out of it, but currently they are one of the newer rosters within this circuit. But the A team, they're looking a lot more structured than I would have thought, especially yeah. since how new they are. And going into maps like Ascent, which is seemingly quite a 50 50 um, map in regards to attacker, defender sided, it's going to depend on the composition that they bring in regards to 
agents which hopefully will get you into agents like soon so we don't have to worry too much about guessing what's going to be coming but i hope to see the jet now coming back on for the side of the a team rather than that double do list that we saw on the fracture with the raise yeah i mean i desperately want to see sure back on that jet it was awesome especially kind of being the only player that we've seen on stream so far today um that has been picking up that operator and i think when you have someone who's comfortable to use that who is good without it anyway so it doesn't really matter if you don't want to pick it up but has that flexibility to do so i think especially on certain maps and i think pearl um is is definitely going to be an interesting one for that and i think ascent is a map where you can succeed with it as well especially on that jet yeah absolutely and on a I we saw ranked demons earlier and they were opting more for a brimstone because that is a comfort mm -hmm. pick from one of the um, certain players or it, at least it seems like and how well they were able to know utility. So going into Ascent I'm interested to see if they are going to take that since in that series they were either taking the brimstone or the viper and it ended up they were playing Lotus with solo smokes as the viper as their only controller so going into Ascent I want to see maybe if they've had some sort of discussion about role changes in the team or if they're really, really confident in the Brimstone pick, which it went great on Haven. Mm -hmm. And it's just when you're going into the map that possibly would need double smokes if you're taking a Viper. Yeah. And it's just they haven't got the roles to fill that team. But either way, they are a great team and it's going to be a spectacle when we see these two teams come up against each other. There's all to play for. It is a best of three. All the other games in the lowers have been best of one, so this is going to be a grueling experience for some of these players, especially it's been a long day for them, so the endurance is going to come in. Yeah, uh, no, definitely will, especially with games like we've seen, obviously three map series and then the longest two map series I think we've ever seen. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think especially as we kind of go on through, if we make it to Split, I think it's just going to be it's going to be a real test of that drift because I think split is a map as well where you have to endure a lot of kind of getting beaten down sometimes when you're on when you're on a losing streak when you have that don't have that economy it's so difficult to make anything happen and and it can be really hard on the mental I've seen teams you know just collapse from it sometimes and I think neither of these teams are weak enough to do so uh, but it certainly could come into a factor and affect their play yeah absolutely and we've seen Mizzy um, over the last map be quite partial to the oh, yeah. Odin so Hoping to see if she brings that out on Ascent, which is one of the main um, games, well, main maps that you see it on. But before we see if they're going to get the Odin, let's see who they're going to be playing. Is she going to be on a Cypher, a Killjoy Chamber? Maybe they switch up the roles completely and then she goes on to Jets. Who knows? But there we go. We have Mizzy locking in that Killjoy. And over to the side of ranked teams, like we said, they are going to be opting for that Brimstone. And then the KO as the second um, initiator along with that Sova. Yeah, I mean, I think KO is fantastic on this map, allows us so much, and we were talking about the Null Command, I think you highlighted it on the first map of the first series today, I can't quite remember, I want to cast my mind back towards that. Um, I, yeah, I think yes, it was, really yes, it yeah. was I think. I think possibly too. it was I one think... of the maps from one of these te uh, from from the side of ranked demons um, and it was a really impressive performance uh, from from them across the board but in particular that Nokomon was brutal I remember it was the second map because um... it was it wasn't on Haven it was on oh, Pearl yeah. and they had one or two rounds that were really good in the retakes and it was probably like one of the few rounds that actually won on that map but... I think it was like 13-3 in the end yeah like it was yeah. a really strong showing from AEX1 <clears throat> but they've already made it to the finals we don't have to talk about them for at least another hour and a half this time our conversation and our well our full attention is going to be on the a team versus ranked demons in this lower bracket finals the winner of this like i've said so many times before this is the winner going to contenders and also the grand finals but both teams in the grand finals will qualify so let's get into it well, indeed. And, you know, I think, again, these pistol rounds for both of these teams have been aggressive and, you know, quick. And those are all the things I want to see out of a good pistol round. From, from a viewer's perspective, obviously, you can play at hard strategy. You can be, you know, big brain and all that. But I think <laughs> neither of these teams are well drilled enough to really go for anything other than aggressive. Use that gunplay heavily and really effectively. And then from there, work out what you're going to do. These frenzies are definitely going to be a feature. That's all I can tell you. And with Shura on this... <laughs> shorty as well it's cheeky but i'm absolutely here for it 
So am I, and obviously she has that classic backup in case she needs to go anywhere, but the first kill does go in the way of the A team, not by much cost, only cost of health there, but Tycho is going to get shut down by the opposition mans. They're coming through short now, picking up a second for herself, Mizzy gets one, and just like that, in the space of a couple of seconds, the A team have put their mark on the first round of this series. They, they've just fought against, well, the best team so far in this tournament they definitely don't want to be knocked out just yet before they can take that revenge story and this is a good start to that yeah i mean the a team desperately want to make that uh contend um uh challenger spot and i think rank demons obviously do as well and they could both taste it having lost to aex who have obviously now qualified it's better to be the one who doesn't make it so we're going to see a lot of hard fighting over this one and the a team were just ready and willing to just hold these angles shut them down make good rotate calls and this belies a really good understanding of what's going to happen here on ascent and keeping control at mid like we're seeing from them as well here is definitely a key part of it so loving what they're showing us so far yeah, and it's definitely a lot easier for them to take the mid control, especially in this round, since they have that weapon advantage, along with um, Rank Team has just been stuck up towards main, but Essie getting one, getting two, traded back out though, only a good for two, that's the Phantom down now in the middle of the site, hopefully going to get retrieved by them now, but man's clearing, cleaning it up with the Guardian shots, there's not too much damage done, they can swap out, hopefully they've picked up that phantom yes they have and well it's quite a strong buy realistically going for the a team going into this since they have the marshals and well it's ascent operators and marshals are galore here especially when you're talking about that mid control you were talking about but also you still have um shura with that phantom in hand and yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting one to see what they're going to do. Possibly a Vision Striker sort of strat flash over towards mid. Mm -hmm. Managed to spot that there is an Omen in that mid looking for control here. Wants to make that Marshall work, but unfortunately for Essie, that's a little more than they can chew. And Tiny Lady shows us that aggression, that signature aggression that we were so impressed with before, but Shura steps a little bit too much up to Adina as they're able to shut that one down. And this is very much looking like a ranked demons round through and through. Man's had a little bit to say about it, not too much shut back down by um, We Will Be Bop. I have missed <laughs> this team <laughs> being casting it. It's such a fun name to say. But going into it, it's okay. We've got the Odin now online for Mizzy, that what we were expecting. The Operator now in the hands of Shura as well. And Rifles then galore for the rest of the team. Same, similar sort of buy towards ranked demons, all rifles, but they also have full shields. They are not lacking in any sort of funds it's after just winning that round almost flawless. Yeah, I, I mean, it was just an easy round for them to be able to pick up when they have that weapon advantage. And when Shura tries to make a, basically a gambit with that rifle um, and it doesn't work out from there on out, it's easy, easy round for, for ranked demons to properly close out. They didn't have to deal with any you know, surprises or anything of the sort. So instead, they're going to play a slightly more default um, opening here, trying to contest that mid. And I think this is a really good call to uh, make, and they're going to be able to re be rewarded for it massively. Mizzy not able to get that spray far too late to the punch, and as a result, this is going to be a massive swarm onto this site. But it will be the A-team wrapping around, pulling all their players together for that retake. But the turret is going to spot them they, and their presence in mid. So they're going to have to be aware of any sort of flank coming through main, even if the A team are not opting for it. Doing their due diligence, clearing the corners, the blind on the thing. I don't think they've cleared the right corner. Oh, they haven't checked it just yet. We're going to have a player dash on in. You can they see haven't. that we will beat Bob, able to get a frag and even make it out of that position. How on earth? This is absolute madness for the ranked demons to be able to sit in this position and reap the rewards. The A team confused and frankly bamboozled by the fact that a player had managed to slip on by them. And in that confusion, ranked demons just destroy them. The Aldrin got blinded. It got, I think it was the flash or the, yeah, it must have been the KO flash that blinded um, the drone and did not wasn't able to clear close stairs and well since there must have been a comm saying oh i'm, I'm droning or um they saw that drone or heard it and well they just assumed that it was clear and i talked about how well the a team were of doing the due diligence at clearing due diligence at clearing corners it just it's a bit lackluster there yeah it's definitely gonna be a problem for them if they don't manage to check those sure 
And Irono do actually manage to stop up and get a frag, but unfortunately it seems like it's a lot of pressure towards this A site and it might be too much for them to really deal with. They're going to rotate on in quickly. Essie's waiting right here. The lockdown is there. This could actually be a real chance for them to find something. Puts in the paranoia. Almost no, doesn't even get one. The health goes solo, but the fragment does clean it up for Irino here. But gets caught by the detain. Not that it's going to matter too much. They have lots of time, lots of space, and lots of control over this area. So not going to get caught by that one. But the Hunter's Fury going on in. And I think this is going to be a problem for Mads. Could easily get hunted down. Does finish it quickly and no one pushes them too hard. She's away. But has that bulldog. She's aware of the position of this jet as well. And the comms are going to be the confused but the tiny lady already there gets traded out by Mads and now it's a one versus two situation. Taiko all to play for. The positioning known of both players but Mads swings out from heaven taking down the mirror pick there and putting them back with their best foot forward taking the lead now in the rounds after the pistols. Yeah that force up was absolutely brutal. I did not think that was going to go that way. Um, they got some really nice frags off the back of some of these stingers um, and the utility usage and the flank as well. The setup, the, again playing around the individuals of this team has been so brilliant for the A-team. And I, I, I could say the same about Ranked Demons, but in that position they were playing solo because they had the advantage uh, and unfortunately squandered it. Yeah, and even if they had the advantage, they were in positions that they couldn't get that help in just yeah. based on where players had died previously or that sort of supply chain link you have between players. If the two players up front are already in their position, but it's the middle plaque that dies, then you have a fragmented team, which... At that time, the A-team have taken advantage of that and, well, crushed Rank Demon's hope in that round. But we're going into a full site exec now with that null command. Will be indeed. Looking for a chance to move forward. Shura waiting on the operator, something we've had a lot of great performance from. But will be forced away. Obviously, that suppression from that null command could be way too much for them to just try and stick around. Play for the retake. And the spray comes through. How on earth Tiny Lady found that? That's Mads off the board. That's going to be one of the initiators. Done and dusted. Orbital Strike now invested towards Tree, buying a little bit more time for the um, ranked demons to get into good positions, but the A team are already in uh, positions to crunch down on the remaining places. The 3v2. Missy coming in from behind. Yeah. And there you go. Shira closing it out onto Tiny Lady, the last remaining player of ranked demons in hell. The A team going very aggressively to get some of these retakes. Starting off kind of early on, maybe finding that one frag, and as soon as that happens, they use it as a chance to just propel themselves forward. Mm. Absolutely, and that's exactly what they've done. And it's really nice. Like, we've talked about both these teams so much today, but it's the way they're able to find... Even if it's just... It's the, kind of like the saying that if you're given an inch, they'll take a mile. These guilds are given centimetres, and they're able to take the tiniest of timings like with that orbital strike coming in ranked demons were assuming that okay they can lay back a little bit they can get into better positions but the a team off that they're immediately switching up where they um their focus is swinging far wide heaven and being able to take more advantageous unsuspecting positions sure away of the player top mid yeah now in surprise Wants to try and hold it, but that smoke is likely to come on in. Actually has to push away. As you see the rest of this push come on through. The recon bolt hits, and that means their position is completely known. Now they're, com well, pretty stuck there. We'll be able to make it out with some cloud burst and a little bit of time to keep them alive. But the A-team on the whole going to have to leave this position pretty significantly as you see the flank come on through and that is so aggressive from Tiny Lady that they managed to turn it into two and the A side is now wide open you see not just their team but the other team as well quickly make a move over to the safe side so they can capitalize on that opportunity. Yeah, the split through short is coming through now. The Molly's out towards heaven to buy more time to get this plant down door closed into these post plant positions because the spike is coming all the way around from main in the hands of the saver. It's a five versus three. They don't have to worry too much about a fast retake from the A team just yet. Just as they get into positions now. Mm -hmm door be opened quickly by the lock and key which is the Odin in this situation but you can see the fragment and a lot of other pieces of utility the Hunter's Fury even coming on through right now ranked demons are investing everything to try and make sure this round goes their way they need to stop the momentum you need to stop the pressure of the A team but the A team I think very sensibly see all the investments and go okay well we'll just back away you can use those yeah absolutely and especially since you if you're looking at you have an operator in the side of Shura on the A team taking down Tiny Lady just overstepping slightly there but also you have the Odin that they just want to be able to take through, whether that's taking a kill with them or not. Yeah. 
It's smelly. Hold them down. That's a nice view. Yeah, it's a nice view. I don't think I've seen a scent from that angle yet. Looks quite like um, holiday-ish, like European holiday. Well, it's supposed to be like a like a Venice style thing, isn't it? Is it? Is it's it supposed to be Venice? Venice lifted out of the ground, essentially. <clears throat> That's why what it's got it? canals and everything. Does it have canals? <laughs> Wait, where, where are the canals? What? Uh, there's like one down on the bottom left. Is it? Yeah, I think so. If I remember correctly, it's definitely an Italian village of some description. I'm pretty sure there are canals somewhere. <laughs> the canals I could be wrong. From. I'm pretty sure someone can correct me in chat. Remember your Valorant law gamers. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty certain. Yeah. Oh, the only Valorant law I know. Is his Omen's name is Fred. Is it? Yeah. Oh no, I was talking about Killjoy and Rings, but <laughs> that's, that's that's valid. That's valid. Best Valorant law. But there you go. Shura is going to be on this angle now. The owl drone coming through, taking her off that angle, but it's pushing it back. The information of at least three players now is known in B main. Going for that cheeky wall bang. Yeah, they've got the knock command for this retake if they want to invest it or play slightly more passive, but with Mizzy down, they've got to be kind of careful, especially because they've got two players still on this site. Retakes are not really an option. They have to hold here, or they're going to be so far behind it, too much of a deficit to really make it work. Adina manages to get an all-important frag, and Arino's taken down as well. They try to invest that knock command, but it's to absolutely null effect, unfortunately for them, and it's going to be the A-team losing out on this one. Essie is going to have to push one versus five. No backup, unlikely to be able to get that KO up at all. Gets the first frag, but there are the shots, and we woo beat bop does pick that one up. I swear I've heard that before. I I know we were talking about where players get their names from. I swear I've heard. I don't know if I'm making that up, but I swear I've heard we woo beat bop before. Yeah, we custom. No, 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 no. Not like the player name, but like the actual like we woo beat bop like outside of Iron. Maybe. I I, mean, I, I don't know. Like I'm gonna have to. I'm totally gonna have to message her asking. Trying to figure out what this is, or in, if anyone knows in Switch chat, please, please enlighten us, because yeah. we're in awe. We like, we like the name. We're just a little bit interested in where it came from. But where Shuri is coming from is the mid angle, and it's an operator versus an operator. Dina taking down the jets over ranked demons and of the A team. Tycho getting one for herself, taking down Essie, putting the numbers in their favor. Four versus three, going for a short split. Going to be walking into this kill drive setup now. And indeed, right now, a team. I mean, they were not expecting to have to deal with that operator. No one else has been pulling it out so far. Adina bringing something new to the table again, showing that ranked demons are ready and willing to put something a little bit more different out there than they've shown so far. They have depth. They have those layers, and they're putting them to good use here. Kill drive operator. It's my favourite. We have had the. We've got the kill drive Odin on Mizzy, and then we have the kill drive operator on Adina, but. It look, looking at the positions that they've had, they've revisited mid in regards to pizza area, and they've just fr given a little bit of frozen freeze here. They've spotted Mizzy there, taking her down, getting double the man advantage now in their favour. They can I like, split over towards B, just having to worry about any sort of push from CT since there's no smokes available for them. Just one. Oh, dark goes in, but. Tycho still pushes forward and gets that frag. Right, demons really are starting to find their footing here, and especially on the offensive side here on Ascent, this is a really good look for them. I think their comp will still succeed even on the defense, so every round they find here an advantage is worth its weight in gold. The A team, I think very sensibly, finally call a timeout here. Yeah, I'm, I'm very in favor of ranked demons getting good um, rounds on the attack since moving to the defense. I think... That's where we've seen Brim have a little bit of um, struggles in regards true, to the true. smokes and being able to slow stuff down. Especially on Ascent, realistically, the majority of the smokes that you use is one in mid and then two towards the site, wherever you go. And it's been working out really well for ranked demons, whether they're using all their smokes or they're taking advantage of their not being smokes to not have to cut off angles with, like, we've seen Adina on that operator. The A team, on the other hand, is interesting to see how they're dealing with the mid presence which we it's kind of like they are taking. it seems like they either bite off more than they can chew or they just don't visit it at all and i want to see something a little bit more reserved in regards to actually taking mid presence but not taking too much in one go yeah. and being a little bit more respectful to the side of ranked demons since well it's in their name there are a little bit of demons coming into it and definitely have that gun skill to match up to the side of the a team 
and it's just whether or not they get the first pick, if they get the mid control, because they've been using that as such a pivot in the most recent rounds. I mean, it's something they were having a lot of success with when they were winning on Haven is playing around that gun skill, playing around the fact that they've got the gun skills, so push aggressively, take a lot yeah. of space, and then fall back from there. And it was working wonders for them. They were constantly pushing into CT, and on the offense here, it's being like, okay, we'll push, then we'll go straight onto the B site. We're not going to wait around. We're not going to mess around. And the A team have not really been able to deal with that in any effective manner. Yeah, I don't think they're ready for the aggression we say this all the time of the teams that come up with games ranked demons they just they have no fear they're ready to go into ct they're ready to go into your spawn yeah it's as it's almost as if like they're trying to plant the spike in the opposite spawn rather than at the sites they are not afraid to go further than the sites themselves and take off these unexpected picks yeah, I mean, don't give your enemy any core to give them no space to really work with. Flash is good, that's going to lead to an Ooh. easy frag for sure, but the refrag needs to be there, it is indeed a Reno, means that that is three for one. A brilliant trade, honestly, if you ask me, from the A team. And now with Mizzy holding down this one, it's one versus four, and, well, might even struggle with any more pressure, as they're starting to get closed in on from all these different angles, and, well, Mizzy just wins those anyway. Yeah, Mizzy has that gun skill, like we've said. Not on the Odin this time, but um, on the Phantom, I believe it was. This play in main, they're aware of the people pushing through short with the um, Killjoy utility going off, and they just made that um, split-second decision. Okay, we're fighting main. This is They have to make one, and that the decision was they're in the main um, segment already. We're going to flash, we're going to fight, and then we're going to turn around and fight the ones coming from site, which is exactly what they did. But Mizzy is also there rotating from mid all the way up into heaven by... For by the time the last player comes through short and is trying to fight so mercilessly, let mercilessly on the player in main that she gets shot in the back by um, Mizzy up in heaven, which is great team play and it's just the spacing that this team has. Yeah, completely merciless. I mean, no, that's the word. <laughs> I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna call you out on it. I was just gonna. Hey, hey, hey! I'm second language. I'm second language English. Okay. Yeah, this is fine. No, that's fair. Tiny Lady, however, first language is aggression, um, as they're looking to try and get through this one, pick some players, but unfortunately the bot gives them far too much information, and Tiny Lady is taken down alongside. We would beat Bop, and now the A-team, with that lockdown, with that setup, are going to find so much. Detain onto Tycho. Oh, this is going to be such an easy kill when they drop on down. It's going to be one, now it's left to just two versus five. They have access to the nano swarms. it's going to buy them a little bit of time. But you can see Adina pushing back, being careful as the darts are going through, the fragment is going through. Going to try and spray on him. I think actually hit Mizzy there, but unfortunately for them, it was too little, too late, and the defuse is going to come through anyway. Yeah, and it's really lovely use of the double kill joke. It's just unfortunately... It was not deep enough for the attacker one to stave off the heaven push and possibly could have saved the player on site. But either way, um, Killjoy lockdowns traded for each other and the alt economy is looking quite dire for the side of the A team in regards to the uh, main heavy fragging round winning alts like the um, Jet, um, Killjoy and KO. But one off the um, Hunter's Fury could be good for a sort of rush site push or to stop the plant. Indeed, sure. Being forced off that position, this time ranked demons pushing more aggressively into that mid. They've had a lot of success with these mid pushes. See if they can make it happen again because, I mean, if they can get that, this B site becomes far more open and it's where they've really been able to push that advantage. Yeah, especially when they're able to hold on to some sort of position in mid that they can rotate or use as a little bit of an anchor to stop. Rotate, is it coming through from the side of the A-team? But do you know what's stopping the A-team? This time is Adina from the side of Ranked Demon. She has been an absolute demon so far already in this matchup. And that's it. They're on the B site now. They're getting that plant down. Still having that player in main to hold off that flank. And they're going to be fighting for the CT and market pushes now. Here they are, Tiny Lady, trying to get a spray through the smoke, but it doesn't quite land it. It's that barrage that really does the work. And swinging out wide, it's Dis and Mavi dispensing justice right there for ranked demons. 6-6 six, six, half. Who do you think is coming out on top? Um, yes. Yes, okay. Yes. You think it's you think with 6-6 six, six it's even? I think this is one of the most, like, 50-50 maps. Like, I, it's, True. It is a cent. It yeah, is a cent. It's, it's the most 
equal map in regards to um, d defense and attack win rate in regards to just general. And the comps aren't that different. The only difference is um, Dismavi on that Brimstone, which it's her comfort pick. She's shown yeah. why she's good at in, in multiple maps before. And obviously we've just seen a really nice crisp couple of shots from her in that round. So it's nothing to do with um, um, the player specifically. It's more of how the team can work around the Brimstone mm -hmm. in the way the utility works. And on on the defense, I'm kind of hoping that they've got something up their sleeves for it, just in case. Well, the brimstone smokes get expended so quickly on the defense if they are hitting one site coming back, hitting something else. Since there is two minutes in the round, they can do as much as they'd like. But what they're doing is going into spawn. Yeah, there's going to be a couple of people waiting for them as well, trying to make good usage of these classics. Don't quite make it. Tycho gets hit by the dot. 29 HP could easily go down here, but luckily there's nothing high enough caliber to pierce that wall. No, but look at the positioning of... Oh my gosh. Oh, gets one. Almost doubles up there, but Arino definitely aware of where those shots are coming from, even with the silence and knows exactly what's up. Fnatic? Sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's Mavi. <laughs> my brain going hard there, but... Um, Ranked, de um, ranked Demons started to look for a chance to push on in for this retake. The plant hasn't quite gone down yet, but it certainly will in just a second. The problem for the A team is the health are so low. They're probably about even in general, but when you look at Dismavi with so much to their health pool, they should be able to just force their way on in here. It's going to be very, very difficult for the A team to really do anything. It's yeah, gonna be, definitely. Oh, it's going to be pushed through, and it is going to be Tiny Lady going down. That is the worst start they could be looking for, and the right click at point blank into the head. That's exactly what the A team needed. Are we, are we casting Fnatic? I have a I think cover going out. <laughs> <laughs> Fnatic this movie. Yeah, no, it's my bad. She's Boaster. She, yeah, she, she, is is Boaster. she is the female representative of Boaster on this team, guys. And it is, well, the first round of the second half going in the way of Team A. They've won both pistols now, which is interesting since they're going to realistically convert the next round as well. And that's four rounds above um, general gun rounds, eco rounds against Rank Demons. Yeah, I mean, the A-team doing a really good job of playing that one aggressively and under, um, in the start and then understanding how they were going to clutch that one out with such a health deficit. They just played it really well and because it was one... It was basically, they took two 1v1s two v instead of the 1v1 one 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 and the 1v1 one one and the 1v1. One one. Lovely playing around um, the turret. The tiny lady trying to take a turret out with a shotgun will take a little bit too many shots and allows Mizzy to sneak on in there, connect the shot, and that's only a shortly down for this. It is a eco round for them, but they are going to be walking into double shotguns, I believe it is, on the side of Ranked Demons left and right of this A entrance. Well, indeed. Knife goes in, trying to get some of that information. Don't think it spots anything, but presence will now be detected. Sure, it has to kind of move away from that one. A lot of time to work with, so they could easily back off, rotate, the good thing about the thing, this, I think, is is what we were talking about earlier with the brimstone. You don't have access to any more smokes. Yeah. And realistically, she's not even going to have all the smokes bought since there yeah. is an eco round probably buying seconds. up for that um, shorty instead. But since the time is running low, if they have judged this wrong, which they haven't, they have to make sure they do the due diligence check in the corners because, like I said, they could have a shorty in one of these. But they are clearing it. She is taking the initiative and is being the fast forward, fast footing um, jet player to get that space onto site. Clearing, make sure nothing happens. That plant goes down. It is a five this is four for this retake but the um, gun advantage is still in favor of the a team mm -hmm. recon dart could go on in here and i think that'd be really really big but losing adina as you try to move in that is absolutely brutal rank demons struggling to make their way on in here without losing too much is now they're going to start to move but shara is on the flank with M mizzy that is so darn big and then there was one and a player who can barely really make that push happen. Unfortunately for them, Dismavi is going to have to kind of look at this one and maybe look for some exit frags. I think actually could find someone here. Swaps over to the pistol. He's already waiting for it. Uh, I do, I, uh, yeah, it's not happening. They, they just don't have the firepower. There are too many players coming on in. And yeah, ranked demons getting completely denied away from that one. A flawless round coming through. And a flawless round to secure the conversion of that pistol win. 8-6 now, two round differential. The, eco the economy of both teams is quite stark difference. 
The A team are going to be on rifles, just not the um, Vandal or the yeah the traditional ones <laughs> that you expect. And but the um, oh my gosh, what's it? The bulldogs. Yes. <laughs> the bulldogs are heavy hitting in some of the hands of these players. Like it's similar to like the ghost um, <laughs> versus absolutely. the sheriff. They both can kill if you can get that double tap off onto that bulldog. And with the burst fire as well, Essie trying to take some chip damage onto the two players daring to push into her in main the flash ready but they've already retreated yeah i think really sensible there getting a little bit of information kind of trying to trade effectively but that usage of the drone was brilliant taiko even being a solo player fell for hook line and sinker ranked demons down a player already the a team starting to ferret the way around find those openings and really look to exploit them where they can it's not even just the openings, this is um, their bonus round as well, and they're able to get that first pick, which is um, looking good for the future of this team, but position of Tiny Lady, she's going to be hearing the rotates coming through from this Killjoy player in spawn, but is Shiro going to see him? They must be able to see each other, and it's just the, it's just the look, at, and there you go, Tiny Lady gets that pick onto Shiro there, but... It's a little bit too late for the, to stop the A push going in since it's already underway. Mm -hmm. I think the door has been dealt with. If not, it's very low health. So real chance to pick this one up as the fragment goes on in to try and deny that. Oh, Tiny Lady desperately tries to dash on in to find the space for their team, but just gets picked. Areno absolutely aware of what is going on. Drops down. Adina gets that one frag. Knows there's likely a player on the opposite side. Peeks them out wide with the back of the rest of their team is two versus two. But that turret is going to be a real pain in their backside as they want to peek on out. The pistol, the ghost from Mizzy is more than enough right now as Dismavi has to peek on in to this position but there it is there's the crossfire they dispatch that with ease and the a team move up to nine very nice sight hold from them it is a bit unfortunate here with tiny lady and Shiro. they were both in each other's um view line if they were just maybe a little bit a little bit too um focused on the right which realistically tiny lady did go in a little bit of a gander realistic like quite quite far away and it was only by chance that when she turned back she saw her getting that kill but it didn't matter too much for the side of the 18 they lost a player but they also won that round in the end with the sight hold which is really nice it was something that we saw back when they were playing pill the um postmans are really good that's that's one thing i really like about the a team is they as soon as they can get into good postman positionings they they're gone they're ready they know what they want to do do indeed, Tiny Lady trying to get some of those shots sh down range and unfortunately not able to channel that magic this time. Gets spotted out as well by the bot trying to make sure that that one gets tracked across the map. The A-team understanding of how they're going to be able to play this one. They have a real chance to just push onto the safe site completely uncontested, use it to cloud burst to move aggressively. Love this from Shora as they're going to be able to find their way onto this site. Knows that there's not really going to be anyone who can lay down that fire with the door, with the dark cover, with everything else being invested into this area. It's going to mean that those shots aren't quite going to land. And with the flank being completely denied from a tiny lady, that is absolutely okay. I was about to say brilliant. But the sheriffs, the magic that I was talking about earlier, are instigated by Ritual here. A brilliant shot, eventually denied and can't quite make it double up for them. Instead, it's going to be these rifles eventually closing it out, but some decent damage is done. As he had enough of the sheriff shot yes. and decided for an end to that and, well, stop that flank. Stop the preposterous position of some of these ranked players. I see that smile. See, come on. I'm, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I can, I can do it. I can do it. But no, the position of some of these players coming into that flank is a great idea. And, like, some of the shots were executed so eloquently. But, again, sheriffs versus vandals is only one way that normally ends. And it is with Essie going 15 and 8 so far in the series. Double digits found for the A team. Okay, there's the Odin in Adina's hands. Oh, they're not going for it. They heard the shots on those. They heard the uh, orb getting taken there. I'm sad that they didn't try and go for the spray, but likely would have led to something else instead. They take Erino as they try to push on in. So managed to make it work in the end. But unfortunately, Adina falls. Good trades back and forth. Those rifles really coming to bear with the uh, frag. Sorry, with the null command player down. They're all going to be able to get that res as well if they take this control. And it's one versus three slash four right now. Make it four now. The A team have really got this one on lock. And now they've got that Odin of their own. Mizzy, very happy with that. Upgrade. Yeah, but 
not even just an upgrade she upgraded the skin as well available <laughs> getting that reva odin for her in the hands for the last couple of rounds in this game which is looking quite dire for the side of frank team as the a team had a little bit of a rough start and they've really come into themselves in this half they currently have not lost a single round of their um attacking half so something important I really want to note for you guys, if you're thinking about the, this as an overarching game, uh, overarching series, this is also Ranked Demon's map pick, which is making this even more problematic. The A-team are so happy to be able to find this one or at least be putting the pressure on, and Shura certainly is doing just that. Eventually falls, this is it. Tiny Lady has to deliver now. This is exactly the kind of opportunity they need. Will manage to get a rifle for their team and is instead rotating around. Needs to be there ASAP, and they really want to take this control, but the A-team, I think, very sensibly going, okay, Let's go back to spawn. Let's chill. Let's not overcommit. There's one player who's stuck, and I think Arena very sensibly, I was going to say, is staying hidden, but instead gets caught. That's the spike. That's out in the open. They're going to have to contest it now. Mizzy just doesn't have the weapon that I think will work at this range, and as a result, you see the Sheriff get its just desserts. Rank Demons are just going to push on out into it, but it's a mistake, as look who was waiting in the wings. Mads deletes them from the server. And Miss uh, Desmavi was not there. She was holding the spawn bush. Man's able to get that weapon upgrade. But no. Smavi, as the smoke phase connects that headshot, and what turns a quite die around on its head. Just look at the shots from Mads as well. Very nice um, shooting from that saver player of the A team. But it does come down to Dismavi being an absolute head shooter with that sheriff. Well, speaking of head shooter, Shura over on that uh, on those knives now. Um, obviously, picking up that shorty, which has worked fantastically for her so far. I, I don't like it. I I, 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 I feel mean. sorry for the rank rank demons and the teams <laughs> that they go up against when they have that shorty in hand. It is never good news for the opposition. But let's see if rank demons have something else to say about it. if they can put their own spin to that tail of the shorty and the knives. Yeah, can indeed. Well, Tiny Lady is certainly dispatched very quick, though it won't be neither the sh knives or the shotgun, but sure it does indeed. It's going to be four versus three. Three ultimates available apiece, and then they start to use the ultimate from the omen here to make that push, to make that rotate very quick, and that B site we know is wide open. This is exactly where the A team need to be, and they've managed to put themselves in the right place at the right time. And the right place and the right time, like you said, is what's going to be happening to Tycho, though. Mizzy is the one in the right place. Tycho overstepping slightly into the crossover of Mizzy. They're waiting for any sort of push or peak, trying to get some sort of timing. And it's a two versus four. And realistically, they're going to have to go for some sort of picks, whether that's to pick and then save and play exits or if to try and take that retake have not got the money to make they have to make this expensive for the a team invest the utility they try and contest it but there's the shot Smavi manages to take down Mizzy, and this is such a big opportunity. Paranoia goes on in, has to peek out wide. They take down Adina, and it's just one. It's just Dismavi versus the world. Takes down one, leaves it to one versus two, but has to go for the defuse. The time is not on their side. You're going to have to push on forward. They get the frag, but there's the refrag. Erino in the right place at the right time again. The positioning from the A-team has been on point, and now they've positioned themselves to win this round. And, like you said, it is not their map pick. So, they're very much in a position to win this series and be able to go up against AEX1 Nova in well, the sort of the rematch in the grand finals if they do make it through this and the next map. But look at that scoreboard. Look at Mads there. 19-9 and on, well, Sova. And realistically, you don't expect um, the Sova to be fragging that much on this map, playing that more supportive agent, expecting the jet with the operator to take, well, leaps and bounds. But Mads taking it into her own hands. Sometimes you can't let those jewelers get away with everything. you got to do, do some of the dirty work yourself. And I mean, I've certainly been Mads so far. I've, I've been loving it. Absolutely. She's taken her role from playing um, the raise on in that double duelist comp to the sky and now to the Sova on this map here and has been given us a masterclass on adaptability in playstyle while also still being able to frag. But sure, taking this bit of a high vantage point, making sure there's no one, no one over these walls or trying to catch them off guard. 
I love the mid presence that they have. Look how far back that they've pushed the ranked demons in regards to they have to play three players in short. Someone's all the way back in CT spawn. There's B site's completely open because they cannot afford to hold it with the weapon that they have and also the positions that they found the A team in. Yeah. Tycho forced away by the dark cover there. Tiny Lady makes sure that that flank route is open. They are going to have to think about it now. Berino just finds one, instantly deals with it, has to oh. reload, unfortunately, and there is beaten down there. And now there should be a rifle in hand. The attackers invest that run, that <laughs> the lockdown, but it won't be there for very long. Tycho, could it mi miss? Um. Maybe maybe they were going for okay, players sure, since the timing sure. was coming down anyway. Either way, no tags found and also the lockdown went off with it. Defender Kildo is going down. He's going to push these off the side. He's forcing them into these confrontations. Sure, and Mizzy get one for themselves. Tiny able to trade out, but it's still a three versus one. And they're going to have to hold down as these players have to force them into that gunfight. But, well, the lockdown goes off just after the kill comes through so that is it that is the first map of the series first map of the lower finals going in their way yeah i mean what an impressive performance as well we saw great contact plays really good communication and when it came to those post plant situations they just seemed to be on top i'm so impressed by what the a team were able to bring to offer and ranked demons are really gonna have to step up a notch if they want to make it to um to challenges and, and if they want to pick up the win here to go to those grand finals as well yeah absolutely because again like you mentioned it is contenders that these teams are fighting for currently but since two teams of this tournament do qualify so a ex1 nova have already qualified and they're waiting in, in the grand finals for the winner of this match but they also the winners of this series qualify too so it is all to play for it is a high stakes game in this lower finals before we even get to the grand finals as well so let us talk about what we've seen you've talked about how you liked the uh, mid presence right yeah. can you talk a little bit more about that from the side of um well i actually think it was from both sides right yeah. we saw the um ranked demons they were pushing up aggressively they were forcing on out they were making sure that, that everyone was kind of pushed back into ct if they were trying to look at mid get any information there and no one was really able to contest it properly as a result good usage of the smokes even when it was the brimstone coming on through investing it at the top there making sure they were completely choked off couldn't really contest and it really meant that the the the, 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 the site control as a result was really focused and really a problem to deal with because not only do you have to deal with obviously the main push coming on through but you have to deal with the push coming in from mid too. There's too many problems to deal with, and with just one smoke, you cut off any external help. So it makes the problem so much more um, difficult to deal with, and it was what both teams were using to effectively get that attacking side to go in their favour. You were talking about smokes uh, quite a lot there, and how the um, brimstone came into it. Do you think I feel like that didn't have that much of an effect onto how the game was played since it never felt like, oh, there should have been a smoke there or they haven't got a smoke from that brimstone to um, play into it. So I feel like it generally was just based on how these players ad approached it and nothing to do with whether it was a brim or an omen. And it was quite nice to see the adaptation that we saw um, ranked demons do around that brimstone. But either way, it is... Uh, the A team that take that map we are going to be going to a short break don't go anywhere we're going to get some more Red Bull and make sure he stops coughing and we're going to see the second map over the lower finals of Birds of Prey <laughs>
And welcome back to the Goose House Birds of Prey Series 5. I'm Rook, joined by Winterriors. We're here for the second map of the lower bracket finals here. And map one 
was a dominating performance for the A team as they really showed us what they were made of. Loved the aggression, loved the play style, and loved the coordination. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely showing why they are in this lower finals and, well, fighting for that spot in contenders. But yeah, it's, it's really interesting. It was quite a dominant, like you said, first map in that series. It was a 13-6. Yeah, 13-6. 13-6 map. And on their map pick as oh, well, no. they lost. And, well, going into the next map, they're going to be feeling really confident. They took that win, 13-7, on their opponent's map pick, going into their own now. And, yeah, what are your thoughts on the next map? Well, I think it's going to be really problematic. I think the A-team are definitely going to be able to pick this one up, simply for the reason that it's their map pick. And they looked so good on their opponent's map pick, albeit it is a scent, which is like... Is it really your opponent's map pick when it's the mo probably the most played map? Um, it's it's and ascent is in particular very much like based on the matchup between the two teams and less on kind of other external factors because everyone has it practiced. Uh, it, it's an interesting question that always get raised up, but I think Pearl as well just kind of fits the A team a little bit better. Yeah, we saw them um, playing on it as a general map, and it's quite comfortable for them. It's it's a positive win rate. They've won. Um, majority of the games that they played on it and mostly they're winning on their defensive round which when we're talking about Pearl you tend to see a lot I personally think it's more um, attacker sided in regards to um, the most default comps but when you're talking about um, the A team they're winning more defensive rounds than they are in their attacking since the compositions that they're running are a little more defender sided but when it does come to their attack it's quite it's a little bit of a step back from what you tend to see with the aggression, but they're also finding so many loopholes in the mid, um, mid round through the mid sections, and they're able to split onto sites so easily from what we've seen from them previously. But are we expecting to see a chamber on this map? I'm just going to ask this every map that we see. I just, I just want to know your opinion on chamber every time we, before we go into an agent select. No. No. I just I I, th I don't think it's necessary for this map. I think uh, bringing the killjoys a little bit better I yeah. think it covers more of the angles, and that's why we've seen other teams not run either. I mean, we didn't see it um, from AEX on this map either. I would be surprised to see it at all. We are going to get right on into those agent picks, though, so we will find out if your your nah, for, a, for a for uh, a for a for a chamber. Apologies uh, does go on through. Uh, if you guys are looking for something, though, don't forget about exclamation make merch in the chat. I've been I've been told to say that, so uh, you can guys can pick up some uh, genuinely quite nice merch so uh yeah uh do that one if you want to but obviously also focus on this game that's the most important thing right now these guys are duking it out for a chance to qualify for challenges right now and i, I don't know they're, they're pretty desperate for it. it it would be a fantastic opportunity for themselves and obviously get the chance to go to that grand finals for a rematch for either of these teams up against aex as we do see that uh killjoy locked on in and we see the return of the harbor is that what you were doing at no i it's the comp change from the side of rank team, and since they obviously got well, they did get they quite had difficulties. They had difficulties last time this went to this map. It was a three thirteen against AEX, and the main thing that I brought out was the fact that they only had one smoker. But now they've got Adina going from the fade to this Astra, and they run in the double smoke with the um, Viper and Astra. It's I'm looking so much more confidently into this and. Yeah, they obviously still got Tyco on that Killjoy. They have Sky getting hovered now as a replacement for both the Fade and the K, which is kind of a bit of a confirmation of the both, yeah. so it does make sense, allowing for that double controller rather than the double initiator and then having the Viper as the solo controller. But then talking about the A team, it's just a normal comp coming from them. They have that Harbor and that Viper. So similar to the way they've still got the double controller, it's just a Harbor this time. Yeah, I mean, I, I like it. I was talking about the harbour uh, uh, at length, frankly, uh, last time we saw uh, the harbour picked here. And frankly, it was also a real problem uh, for the side of Ranked Demons. They did not know how to deal with it with the double um, double controller composition. Now they're going to be running a double controller composition their own. It's going to be interesting to see how much practice they've got on it, because obviously this is a... I, I, I always worry when I see teams that don't always play Astra pick Astra. That's a worry for me because I think Astra is a team. If you don't have it practice a team, it's never going to go as well as you want it to. I think the main thing coming from ranked humans is they had to change something. Yeah, that's having true. the Vipers that solo smoke was great on the defensive in regards to the possibilities that could be there, but when they came down onto the attack, it was just so lackluster. Yes, we didn't see much of it. It was uh, only a 16 round game, but. Talking about the A team, we haven't seen them play um, Pearl yet, other than, 
yesterday it was against uh, Kamek K Lumi team in which they won 13-11 in a 2-1 as part of the very start of the um, series. Although they are running the similar comp, so it's not too much of a change there for them. It's going to be interesting to see how ranked demons keep up with this double smokes composition. But Mizzy, they're taking a few shots, doing a little bit of a chip damage, but the spike is going to get planted here. Brodina is going to hear so much information, has had some shots fired against her. She's going to have to be aware of the positions of these players, but they know we are few. Oh, those shots whiffing as well. That is brutal. Unless you find something with the right click, which they absolutely do. Adina was really going to struggle to lift that one, but the shots are coming through. Mizzy, however, will not give up that. It's the ghosts that are really making the mark in this round right now. Two versus two, slightly lower. You do see the wraparound coming through from these two controllers. The shots at range from Dismay Dismavi are going to be able to lead towards this one being a freebie for Adina and a freebie for Ranked Demons. And there you go, the first round on the board. The pistol in favour of Ranked Demons, which is something that the A team have been a little bit um, lackluster on in regards to stats this tournament. They don't tend to win their pistol rounds. So whenever they can get it, it does seem to catapult them a little bit into a further earlier win. Like when we saw them against um, Kamike yesterday, they didn't win the pistols. They even lost one of the conversions when they did finally win a pistol in that map and in that series. And the momentum was lost, but then also as soon as they get back into the rifle rounds, they're a team that you have to be careful of. Indeed it is. It's definitely going to be a way to kind of flex that. Oh, oh. Just about makes it out to Shura, but Tiny Lady's Nades, again, set up well for this team. They're going to push up aggressively, wait for that Viper's Wall to expire, and then it's their chance to really shine. They drop their own. They're waiting for the toxics, Toxins, which are now low, to really go on through. It's going to drop in a second, but instead, there's another wall. Love the usage of the harbor here, but the harbor gets picked, and this is big, as now Tiny Lady can go on high. Decides that that was against their best interests, and instead lets the rest of the team push through, get the advantage, use those flashes effectively. Mizzy wants to land those shots with the Marshall and does just that. One versus three, a Marshall and a dream, but the Viper's bite doesn't quite land the shots. However, absolutely are loads back on up, but walks into the waiting arms of that Phantom and Rank Demons move to 2-0, and oh, but not without significant loss. No, significant loss indeed. Mizzy picking up so many for herself in that round there, making it such an expensive round for the side of Ranked Demons. Although both rifles were able to be kept and brought forward to this bonus on both of the controllers now on Miss and this maybe and also Adina possibly cycling out to Tiny Lady. No, they're gonna they're gonna force up with the stingers here. They have enough money to buy next anyway, and they're just building up that economy and making sure they have some sort of um, well yeah. upgraded weapon yeah. rather than just a classic going into this bonus round. Since they can afford it, they have had very flawless rounds towards the start, and they didn't lose too many in the first pistol round. But do you know who's losing the life this round? Tiny Lady. Um, Harbour taking the very first pick. They're ready and up in the face of Tiny Lady as she tries to create space towards the A bomb site with her team. Yeah, I mean, uh, very much a flip on the head from what we saw in the previous round with the Harbour. Was that first to fall this time? Managing to back off. Mans is in a brilliant position to make that push forward, especially with giving back up to Arino here, who is letting loose on some of these players. A 3k in total, but unfortunately blocked off, and that Viper reaps the reward. Missy and Shura both falling. Ranked Demons, they have that Viper's Pit to try and keep themselves alive in this one. The, <laughs> the Sheriff's Shot's not quite landing, but the Shorty Shot's certainly are. The Stinger is more than enough, and the attackers pick up that round as they clean house. A 4k for the Viper. And that the conversion of the bonus around as well there, with the use of that Viper's Pit, like you said, has been so favourable for the side of Ranked Demons, and seeing um, this maybe backing off a little bit of the solo controller allows her to play her agent and look at what she's done so far 6 and 0 oh. viper's pit invested as well in the previous round winning the bonus over for the side of rank demons now 3 and 0 oh versus the a team yeah i mean this is not what I expected to see coming on through here. I was talking about the fact that this is a team's map pick. I'm feeling comfortable about it. I'm feeling confident about it for them with the way they were playing in map one. But 
flipped on its head. Frank Demons had come out swinging, and I think maybe out of desperation, maybe, you know, the cornered rat bites the cat, and right now, Rank Demons are looking for a chance to really shut them down Here on their own map. Pick, strike right on back. Go right to that final map where they feel far more comfortable. Mizzy, taking one with the Sheriff. Adina down for the counter. That's your Astra out for the side of Rank Demons. Seek is invested as well, but look at Tiny Lady's positioning. Taking that trade. A bit delayed though. On to Mizzy. Still a 3 versus 3. Reckoning available for the A team if they want to invest this in the retake. Oh, Pan gun down. They know. They know there's a player there. That satchel was really, really good. Great call. Wall goes up and, well, more balls go up as well. It seems to be more and more shut down. Three players waiting on the other side. If that drops and Tiny Lady's not ready for it, that could be an easy kill. Instead, they move out. They wait for Dismavi to provide the support that they oh so sorely need. The paint shells forced back yet again. And the A-team have to back away from this. They've not been able to make the mark that they oh so sorely need for this map, for this round, and, well, for this half. Yeah, it does seem like they took a little bit too much time going into what they wanted to do in that round. They were all put into that sort of choke position in there. And, well, like you said, the satchels, the mollies, it really was delaying them and delaying them. And it took too long. They had no chance then after those two picks then as well. The harbour, there's nothing else to do but to save that weapon and to get out over the rank demon's firing line. Yeah, I mean... How are you supposed to get aggressive into this when you've got players like Tiny Lady just completely shut you down, willing to move up into those positions and contest them aggressively? It feels like everywhere the A-team go, they seem to get ambushed. And if they can't deal with that, if they can't understand the pressure which uh, Ranked Demons are putting on them, they're really going to struggle. I do like, however, from the A-team, the change in how they're approaching this because they are buying... Um, light armor on everybody here to maybe try and keep their economy down, even though they could have bought heavy armor on some of these players. They're trying to make sure that they can get as many rounds in uh, to contest as possible. Yeah, especially since they're on full loss bonus yep. now as well. They're going to be getting a little bit extra money every time, but there you go. Tycho takes one, traded back out there by the harbor. Cosmic Divide invested. It is a B site for the side of Ranked Demons. They have it. the Showstopper invested as well. Tiny Lady going to be satching out. <laughs> Mizzy trying to hide in that corner, but unfortunately, Tiny Lady spots it out. We will beef Bob gets a wall bang headshot as well onto Essie, and it is just looking so, so dire for the A team. Flash doesn't really give them enough space, especially with the player dropping on and down into you. A nice attempt by Mads, but unfortunately, to no avail yet again, ranked demons. I mean. They're just getting super aggressive in so many of these situations. And when you see players kind of cornered up like that, eating nade after piece of utility, after just getting sprayed at, what are they supposed to do? Tiny Lady is going walkabout and finding absolutely anyone they want to with that raise. I don't even think it's a walkabout anymore with Tiny Lady. It's a bounce about. She's chatting everywhere. She's jumping with the showstopper as well, since that gives you like a little boost when you pop it off. Yep. She's just everywhere. She's in the sky. She's like a bird. She's like, like honestly, it's like, is that a bird? Is that a plane? No. It's Tiny Lady satchelly through the sky. I know that is exactly what you were thinking about. I can see the smile on your face. But the timeout now coming in from the A team here. It is so dire. It's such a dire point for them. They're 0 and 5 down. They've lost, well, the bonus round that Ranked Demons were on. They lost then the round after that where they had the guns and they've lost, well, looks like they're losing hope. Well, they're going to need to find some. Otherwise, they're going to be 1 1 in this series. They're going to be struggling. Um, especially coming to that second one. If you lose quite as badly as they're, frankly, losing right now, even when ranked demons were losing a lot of rounds, they were taking a couple back here and yeah. there. That's why I ended 12-6, even though the A-team were pretty dominant. Right now, it, it seems to be a shutout. And considering what we saw from ranked demons the last time they played here, that's a shock, right? Um... Uh... Okay, apparently not. I, I, You know, I thought the last time we saw them, they went tw 13, like, 2 on this map. <laughs> yeah, okay. It did so not look good for them. They've almost real. doubled the amount of grounds they've got in the last time we saw them on this map against a X one than they have against uh, the A team here. But <laughs> a bit of a skirmish going down in A main. Equaling out as a 2, lost 2. 3v3 left now. Both skies available. Seek is invested, so that's so much information there along with the information of the spike is down in A main. So they're going to have to retrieve that, the space being given up by the A team. They're playing in spawn, playing for the overextension pushes, but it's not going to be there. All three players are going to be going to 
towards the B, uh, A bomb site, one holding down and two retrieving that spike there. Doing the due diligence, making sure they don't lose another player unnecessarily. But again, the A team, they just sat in spawn waiting. The patience of these players, look at them. Yeah. They, they don't need to do anything. The spike's not getting planted. There you go, the information there. The attacker, Killjoy, lockdown down. The plant's going to go down. And then it's the A team's turn to react. I really like this from the A team. They're like, okay, well, plant, see what happens. We're going to have to make the retake anyway. I think contesting it is absolutely the wrong decision now. They're going to be ready for a player like Tycho to check this one. The dog does see it, and that's going to be the concuss. That's an easy frag for Mizzy, but they need to be worried. Tiny leaves behind. Come on, thank the Lord. This time, the A team managed to deliver, managed to find these frags. They're up against Wee Woo Beep Bop. Can they shut down this player before they become too much of a problem? The flash goes in, they push out, the vipers bite. They do actually get a frag, but how on earth do you stop that from happening as they can just sit on the defuse? Eventually, Mads will finish it off, and that's the first round on the board. Finally for the A-team here. Woo! Let's go! <laughs> the A-team finally bringing their A-game to this map, and it has been a long time coming, especially just so nice to see how well rewarded their patience were. Uh, patience was in that round since they had been sat in spawn for around 20 to 30 seconds while they waited for ranked demons to retrieve that spike to decide on a game plan as well. And, well, the A-team definitely showed how their strength in their retakes there. Yeah, I mean, if they play towards those strengths, if they play towards what they know can work for them, that's how they're going to find. We always focus on playing to your own strengths, playing to your own play style. It's definitely going to be a big part of it. Sure, waiting around the corner, Tiny Lady again being the first player to make that impact. But the aggression around the corner, the push up from Mads is exactly what we want to see. Bring it back to three versus three. And it's the usual suspects right now for the A team in terms of players who are still alive. Can they make this clutch happen again? This time it's going to be the B side. Yeah, but you know who also is towards that B site, hoping to slow down these players is Essie. If she can get a frag here, she cheered the updraft. Oh, could not find a thing. Adina denies, but look, oh, I was about to say Mizzy manages to get one, but at the cost of their own life, they're just hemorrhaging players in this situation. Drops on down the flash a little bit late, unfortunately, there for Mads. And as a result, Rank Demons are able to destroy that one, move themselves up to six and continue on in this half. Yeah, that flash right at the start of the round is so unfortunate. It popped just a little late <coughs> and, well, full blinded the jet as well as well. It full blinded everyone, technically, but unfortunately that was not the game plan. <laughs> full blinded the enemies, but also your frag and duelist, which was the whole aim point of that set play. But talking about set plays, it's really nice to see ranked demons. Like you said about the change in Astra and Viper, and it's, it's so good for them. They've been actually able to use the smokes as they had intended to be rather than be forced into the use of the Viper wall and the Viper orb as their only sort of cover. But they're going to have to do that for the rest of this round though because Shira has taken uh, Adina off the board. Adina has Adina off the board. That's an advantage early on here for the A team. Let's see if they can make anything of it this time. So far they've struggled to keep it for very long. This time they will. It's going to be Looking like it's going to be a very passive hold here on the A side. And I think this is absolutely the right call. The retakes are where they succeed. The A team should play for those retakes. Yeah, but also the ranked teamers haven't committed to anything that yet. They're towards mid and double doors also in art. But looking at the um, smoke coming through now, look at that Viper Orb. They're going to be coming to get that plant down. Um, Viper's pit down as well. They're going to have Seekers available if they are wanting to use them now because of that plant. Mads. He's going to have to defend oh. this Killjoy lockdown with your life. Yeah, they're getting so aggressive on it. The lockdown is coming on through. Managed <gasps> to hit the shot. Managed to deliver. The lockdown does go. But they'd run out of players at that point. That was oh, so unfortunate. If that had resolved a second, or even a half second earlier, it would have been exactly the chance they needed. Caught in such a difficult position. Missy hits the first shot. But the second is too late. And the A team, I mean, they have gotten so close. But they are investing these ultimates and finding nothing out of it. That's really got to hurt. Yeah, making it very, very expensive for these players. But also, Ranked Demons, they are investing the ultimates to kind of counteract that. Like we saw the Seekers invested as soon as that plant was down. We saw the Vipers pit as well. So it's not as if the A-team are 
an easy target to beat. Ranked demons are putting everything towards it, and it it clearly shows that they are not holding back in regards to how they are approaching the A team since they are currently 7 and 1 up. What a stark round differential so far already in this half. Yeah. Right, Demons. I mean, I, from this position, just seems so in control. A good trade back and forth does mean that there's no access to that sky. I think that's the only initiator as well, if I remember correctly. And with Arino managing to take down one of the controllers as well, the Viper, all importantly, this means that post point is going to be a lot less scary, especially with Mizzy on the flank, finding shots like that. Eventually, they will fall, but at the cost of a lot of time and a great flank from Mads, that does mean the A-team pick up their second. If they could bring this back a little bit, bring it to 5-7, to seven, the kind of death bells I was hearing are starting to fall a little more silent. Even if they can secure an extra two rounds in this, and when you think of it in the all grand scheme of things, they have the um, gun skill and also the economy to have the weapons available. Yep. And when you, without even looking at the scoreline, you're just saying, okay, two rounds. Two rounds is not that much of a difference. And to get it to like an 8 4, even if they can get three rounds, again, three rounds doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're looking at the scoreline, it looks like a lot. That's why it needs yep. to get into the, make sure the players are remembering it's two rounds, three rounds, that's it in the rest of the half and if they can secure that it's looking so much better as a 7-5 rather than a well a 7-2 yeah. the potential of these players to close that gap in and what they are doing is closing the gap around ranked demons rotating <laughs> the harbour over towards art along uh with the viper I love the fact that they've been willing to go for these rotates far more aggressively than we've seen from them before. This time it might work for them. Usage of the Harbour Ultimate to force them away. Both of those Nano Swarms popped so early. I mean, it might be a little bit of miss and they might lack in terms of utility, down. but they are just coming towards this. The Showstopper being invested, the, the plant going through. They really are going hard for this one. Managed to trade one for one. Mads is even getting aggressive as that Cosmic Divide finally lands. And this is great for Adina and the gang. They could easily hold this one down as Ranked Demons are ready for the push, but they're not ready for enough as it, it will have to be a refrag coming on through. Two versus two. The flash from Mads leads them forward. However, those smokes coming out from the Astra are a little bit too much as Adina tries to wrap around, is ready for it, hits the shot, taps on the defuse, the spray is there from Wee Beat Bob, the spray is there from Adina as they move their team to eight. Yeah, two rounds, it's still two rounds and it's not that bad of a half the side of the A team, it's just, it really feels like they're getting picked out in certain positions that it just shows how into this game ranked demons are. It just feels like they are all permanently switched on in how they're playing, whether that's Tiny Lady getting uh, entry kill or two entry kills compared to stuff like we were beat up following up, helping with the sprays and also Adina playing that site while well, anchor after that spike goes down. And like you said, the reckoning was invested and in, well, they just ran through it and there was no sort of play off the back of the Reckoning, but the play here is going to be towards B long. The skirmish is coming down. Indeed. See, oh, wants to land the shot, but rank demons again. Just win out these jewels consistently. And it is that gun skill that just seems to be coming on through in these situations of the flash going in the right place at the right time. Rank demons, when it comes to split second decision making, just seem to be a little bit ahead right now on this map. And it's not even just the gun skill as well. You're talking about the guns themselves. Yeah. You have players on stingers who are hitting their headshots, but as soon as a few of the people in front of them are going to be on, oh. well, stingers, they get headshot with a phantom, and that's it. But, Spoiled. lovely couple kills on the flank. Mizzy going for a third, making this 2v2 a winnable round for them. Tiny Lady, 4 HP. They've got access to that Viper's orb. Can they contest on it? Tiny Lady goes down. It's one versus one now, but with the Viper's bite and everything else going away, they <gasps> get the shot. That is exactly what they needed. They can stick on this now. This is... I can't quite hear the sound, unfortunately, to tell if it is, but I believe oh, that is time. enough time. It's going to come through for the A-team here, and they are going to pick that one up. He was saying, just two more rounds. That's exactly what they need. An 8-4 half would not go amiss. That's, I think it's just more of the ability to string rounds together consecutively is the issue that we're looking at yeah. because the economy is going to be a little bit shaky, especially since they've lost their loss bonus over the last couple of rounds since it has been back and forth. Same goes for ranked demons though. They're going to be on a little bit more of a sketchy buy for the last round in this half, but they have the Seekers and the Killjoy Lockdown available if they were going for some sort of um, 
executive um exec play but Tycho and the sky on well guardian and a sheriff <laughs> It's not what you're wanting to see on the players of ranked demons. Especially when you're 8 3 gap, you don't expect that to be an issue. <laughs> no. But A team have done really well at curbing the economy of ranked demons. Now, with ultimates available of themselves, seeing what they can do with it in the last round of the half. Yeah, the economy definitely demonstrates just how close this map has been in spite of the round differential right now. The lockdown goes through, looking to invest it. No way they can contest that apart from with a return lockdown. Definitely looking to invest that one, making sure players can't get too aggressive on into this. Don't think they're going to be able to get a wall bang or any sort of push on into this. As instead, they're going to have to keep some of these players further back. And it gives the time, gives the space <gasps> over the edge. Gets to detains on both sides. This is crazy. Arino gets taken down. Sorry, not Arino. Sorry. Um, Tiny Lady gets taken down as they got far too aggressive here, trying to escape. And Mizzy will even manage to set up for the rest of their team. Now with that Viper's Pit down, however, this is exactly what Ranked Demons were looking for. Play around the Viper's Pit, they've had a lot of success. I mean, you can see it, this Mavi has been absolutely brilliant with this shorty, as it's terrifying to try and move on into there when you know that there's a Viper sitting inside there somewhere. We would be Bob waiting in the wings, gets a spray, takes down one, but gets refragged. Good coordination, good callouts from the teams right now. The communication is rife for the side of Ranked Demons. It's one versus three right now, and it's just not enough. It's gonna be a nice 9-3 half, but Rank Demons have kind of been challenged, I feel, in nearly every round. Yeah, this the, the, that situation on the replay with the lockdowns is a little bit of a beaky one, but it does, like you said, turn out into the Rank Demons side. And I think that round itself was just so messy in regards to you had, well, people playing in that Viper ult, but there's so much gunfights going around, uh, going around that... It looked like some of these players were spinning on 360 axes because you just sat there like, I don't know if that's my teammate shooting or if someone's actually shooting yeah. at me. And eventually does go in the way of ranked demons, but the A team definitely put in like a fight up. It's just the rounds are so close, but again, it doesn't matter how close these rounds are, it's whether you can close them out, which is exactly what ranked demons are doing. And going into the defensive half, now they have double... Um, as sentinel kind of with the viper so they can act as a sentinel and controller so they have like one and a half controller and one and a half sentinel especially the way we've seen the viper being played by um effie on this um ranked demon side yep sure getting aggressive a little bit more enabled over on this jet than we've seen on some of the other agents they've played as of late. Very happy to see them back on it, and hopefully on this attack they can have that kind of success. Good frag early on onto Tiny Lady means that kind of penetrative power to get deep on into the site for uh, the side of ranked demons is going to be much more difficult in this retake right now. Adina setting up for the rest of their team as everybody starts to move on in. You can see the Trailblazer coming on through, making sure that they know where these pushes are coming, but with Mads down, Tycho setting the scene for the rest of their um, players as they're waiting on the other side of this. They know that they can just chill out, relax, play this post plant very carefully, and this is where the A-team have really had a lot of success. Adina wants to make it happen. There's the shots with the ghost denying away. Shura showing that rather than Shura, they're an Asura right now, an absolute demon taking down their own. Why is it they are sure they're going to win the round? What yes. about that one? That, yeah, do you like that one? Okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely a nice run from the A team, securing the first pistol of the... Um, f securing the second pistol, sorry, of the game. And it's kind of like, we always talk about the 93 curse, and it always starts off with a pistol getting one. It does. So, well... The pistols won. Next is the conversion that they gotta get, possibly even the bonus as well. But the way we're looking at it is the buy that they're going in with this is really strong. You have the um, three rifles, you have a bulldog guardian, and also the phantom. But you still have the spectres coming in. So it'd be interesting to see how fast they're able to deal with the fast pushing mid players over ranked demons. Mizzy already taken one for herself. I think the important thing is, right, is you can look at this fast mid push, but we've seen it already be dealt with earlier today. AEX completely shut this down, completely ignored it in a very similar manner to what the A team does. Sure, they don't yep. have to play a lurking um, deeper on uh, kind of the CT, ACT side, um, but they're still going to be able to just go straight onto this B site, get the plant down, and play for wherever makes them comfortable, frankly. Yeah, given the amount of information you got from that mid push and the amount of space you had towards the site, they've just been able to plant for CT, have players up towards heaven, have players back site, have players and the bridge as well and well it's the right call since all the ranked demons are coming from long and well they only have sheriffs 
Yeah, I mean, and we've seen what can happen with these sheriffs, but Scary. these rifles are certainly stronger, right? We're looking at it right now. Harino just absolutely shutting that out. And ranked demons couldn't really get a word in edgeways. They lost that first frag. Their positions are completely known. The A team then just found themselves just going, okay, well, it's a post point and we have control of everything we want. Yeah, and it's also like they are coming into that with sheriffs and that's the maximum of investment that they had made into it and being able to get that full push in through mid they got a little bit of chip damage but yep. otherwise going into this round now it's going to be the interesting one since looking at the um the a team's money they have two right they actually have two rifles they've invested an actual rifle into the side of mizzy since she did save over the sheriff in the previous round so they have two rifles uh, um two sorry phantom Bundles and then another two rifles and the spectre but oh. doesn't matter because this maybe is going to be shutting down that rifle into this round with a sidestep of that flash yeah that was absolutely brilliant and really really solid way to play the anti-flash in that one thought you know normally you want to sit behind those corners wait for it but it was just so confident so in control of the situation and ready for it so rank demons shut that push down and that mid control while still in favor of the A-team, has not been allowed to encroach any further on uh, the areas which ranked teams have kind of got under their purview. Been able to upgrade the weapon as well, traded the Bulldog out for the upgraded rifle, but does not not matter? We would be Bob taking Mizzy down and extending the um, player deficit to a three versus five. Mm -hmm. Reckoning available, but given the circumstances, Nothing yeah. quite to come of it if it was invested. Yeah, I don't think it's reasonable to invest it when you're at a player deficit like this. This is a bonus round for you anyway. You can kind of play chill, play slow, find frags like that, and push on <gasps> in Areno again, being an absolute haymaker for this team. She's been brilliant, and ranked demons have really struggled to deal with some of these longer range plays that we've seen come through. A good frag coming in from Tiny Lady does mean it is a player deficit now, and they don't have the right setup for a post plant that's kind of offside. So the A team right now have to play fast, they have to play aggressive, they have to get something. I love the investment of the Reckoning, denying the entirety of this section away from a lot of these players. Jumps on in, but look who's ready for it on the other side of this wall. Gets the shots in. Areno takes him down yet again. And look at that, with Mads hitting the shots as well. They're going to try and use the orb in order to buy a little bit of extra space. But the A team used that ultimate effectively and used positioning to great effect. And that's all off the back of getting those two kills. Walking down Art here. Areno going absolutely bonkers on that harbour there. And then obviously with the Reckoning in hand has just secured that round for the team and what do we say starts with a pistol starts with a conversion possibly even a bonus in there now it's a 6-9 and realistically they're going to be getting that to 7-9 since it's pushing rank demons back onto their heels reaching to the deepest parts of their pockets to try and even afford some stingers and then sheriffs in this round yeah it's a mid push again with the lower buy a, a lot slower this time. They've invested some smokes as well, but the information Mizzy's going to have is going to be relayed. Just depends if they continue pushing and go for this flank. There is someone waiting there now. There is actually a player for Rank Demons, Tycho, having to push off here. Love the usage of the Viper Wall in order to deny them from a lot of this, not having to mess around with a lot of that extra utility, and just able to get that plant down. Is he waiting in the wings? Gets that first. We'll move out. Have to try and give themselves a little bit more space. Does go down eventually, but gets some good damage onto this maybe in this situation. Tycho tries to swing, tries to show us that share of magic, but unfortunately, it's not how the West was won. The A team, four versus three right now. Got advantage on site. They've got access to the Viper still. They can lock down so much of the site if they need to. We need to be wary. Wee Woo Beep Bop is in a fantastic position in contrast to the rest of their teammates. They are on the flank. They're going to be able to find this frag going through here. Mads tries to get the frag, but there's the Sheriff. There's the plays. Mads steps up to the plate. Has to win this one. Gets one. Gets the second. Brilliantly done with a 3k from what looked like a terrible situation. The A-team do find it. That is an incredible situation that they find themselves in. But either way, Mads there with the absolutely skill there. Amazing. Looking at the replay. Very nice transfer onto the remaining players. And there you go. Seven, seven to nine now. This is looking like a lot more of a competitive matchup. And now we're back to, well, quite equal footings in regards to um, how much these loadouts will be with. All of the utility and then also rifles available with armor. But... 
this is going to be one of the make or break rounds is 7-9. Are the A-team going to be running away with the momentum that they've built up so far in the last couple of rounds in this half, really? Like, they haven't lost a, a round in this half. No, they haven't like, so far. think in that sort of perspective. They have not lost an attack around in this match yet. No, they haven't. I'm sure, well, certainly looks to be sure of that one. Gets that first frag setting up for that mid control, and they just use it to go straight to the B side. Not looking at the fact that the A could be wide open. No, they are gunning for it right now, forcing players on into long from their positioning. Mads is waiting for a potential push, potential flank to come on through as the Seekers are invested to try and hunt them down. You even see the flashes trying to go on through, but there's no one really to capitalize on it. Instead, the A team are going to kind of redouble themselves and push in from long and from the mid section. And look at the um, adaptation. You saw the A team in link retreating, and then rank teamers were mirroring in that. But then the players are coming down long, and then Shura is going to get a pick onto Tiny Lady herself, aware of the other player up in heaven. And it's a two. This is for rank demons versus the A team in this retake. Cosmic Divide available, but nothing if they can't clear out these players' back sites. It won't be very fruitful. Now the flash goes in and Shura finds another instead. It would be Bob getting the frags, but not enough to close it out. Unfortunately, some good damage, but now it is a one round deficit. So they've closed up so much. You know, you could say anything about the A team, but from this series and the last, mm. the A team sure do give us some fun games and keep you on the edge of your seat at all times. Yeah, I, I, I sympathize with any A team fans, along, along with the AEX, especially after that OT game that we had. Like I feel like the, there's going to be heart palpitations for some of the fans out there. It is going to be a one-round deficit now. Just look at that timeline in the way um, the defense rounds have been so far for the side of Rank Demons. They just haven't been. They just have not won a single round yet. And that's not for lack of trying. Some of the rounds have been very close. It's just the A-team are just nipping them to the bud and having better positionings, better gun skills sometimes as well. And it's just the team coordination that they have with some of the ults that they're using has been sublime. But it's Ranked Demon's turn to use an ult. Now it's the Viper's Pit invested over towards the B bomb site, along with the Astro in the middle. But Tiny Lady's going to be taking people down in mid. We will beat Bob Game 1 for herself in the Endeavor 2. And this might be the round that they can win. But no, the trade's going back and forth as well. It's a 3 uh, 2 versus 4 now. A team on the back foot finally in one of their attacking rounds. Yeah, the speakers tried to push on through, but instead are denied with a hail of the bullets right now. Four versus two, the concussion going on through. Adina really desperately trying to get that shot and does actually take down Essie. Can Mads clutch this one out? Flash goes deep. They swing out wide. They find one, and even though they're flashed, they're not quite going to go down yet. Two players holding this angle as the flash goes in. Swaps over she to a stinger for a second, but I don't she think gets the spike yet. They still haven't managed to pick it up. It's just too wide out, too difficult. <gasps> Fights one, but it's the second! And yet again, if you doubt, Mads will deliver. Mads is an insane player in these clutches, not even just in general, but especially in these clutches, the isolation of these 1v1s and just the sure, the sheer gun skill to back it up. We've seen it, what, three rounds ago? Now we've just seen it again in that round. They went from, what, a 3 versus 5, a 2 versus 5, down to a 1 versus 4, and she was still able to isolate each and every one of those 1v1s, putting ranked demons back in this seat, not and letting the well, the momentum that they build up in the first half mean anything. It is their game now. It is the A team's time to shine, and they are the ones going to be dictating how this map gets played now. Indeed, they are, and I feel like they have been for the entirety of this half. It's been it is their half. It's been confident. It's been yeah. everything we've seen from the A team before. Why they had a dominant map one. Why they're going to have another dominant map here potentially. I'm surprised they haven't even called a timeout after some of the man's clutches. They have must be shaking with excitement and, well, maybe it's just another day at the office for man's. But the information coming here to Tiny Lady for where this ult's going to be invested. Showstopper down, but this still to no prevail. They're going to be able to destroy this kill joint lockdown. Sight's taken. Tiny Lady get a pick on to Shura. Lockdown of their own to potentially contest this, and Tyleni steps up to the plate. We will beat Bot. Delivers another crushing blow, but shots are coming on through. It's one versus three, one versus four this time. 
I feel so inclined to believe in the clutch as we left. see just Millersy. Very little you can really work with. That flash is going to go pretty deep. Mizzy in this clutch situation this time. Half HP to a name and a lot of utility on the side of ranked demons if they do wish to invest it and the crossfire the time it is just dwindling and guess one. But traded instantly back out by Weebu Beat Bob on that um crossfire angle. Okay. First round in in the half. It's looking good for Ranked Demons. They are finally able to breach that double digit mark. And then the, there you go. The time mark coming in from the A team. That's the first round that they've lost in attack. What's gone wrong? What happened? And they need to fix it since they've gotten this into back into a competitive game. Yeah. Well, I think I think the last two rounds are definitely something to look at and go, okay, what happened here? Because yeah. obviously the prior round was very much Mads popped off, saved what was a pretty dire situation. So Absolutely. I think there's a lot to kind of talk about here, obviously. I think being more flexible in the way they're pushing, when, especially when they have that mid control, right? We've seen them get mid control and I'm like, wow, they have so many options. And they're like, <laughs> B. Or A, we're going to go into where the kills are, all the Vipers waiting for us. Yay. No, it's like you said, I want to see them more into this um, mid play style. Like you said, they take it mid, but they're not really much doing much exploration with it. They, I've really seen them go into connector at all. So even if they can take into art, they don't have to necessarily split art to A. Get people down into B, maybe go into connector. Or if they did want to go for a straight um, A push or B push, they have to have something that they can split onto the site with because the Killjoy lockdown from that they just um, utilized there, it doesn't do anything and since the positions that you're going to have all the way back towards Flowers and Pit, where the lockdown usually goes and where Mizzy placed it, you can still get shot and pre-fired and just sp sprayed down from that position and they had to have that art presence in which they didn't. But going into this round it's a new day it's a new dawn and for the side of ranked demons they're coming into their own in this half finally for those fans watching and it's a team now who's been put on the back foot slightly goes up they're really looking to cut this off they've got the vipers wall as well ready and set up as look who goes deep look who goes aggressive it's surer as anything and looking for a chance to maybe contest as that harbors wall is going to eventually expire here, but they do have a wall of their own as that, well, the opposing wall starts to finally fall. But Tiny Lady is very happy to swing this, very happy to invest those paint shells wherever you darn well need. Arena as well has had an impressive performance. Still no flank coming through that mid control by a single player right now for ranked demons. As they can use that positioning advantage to maybe push forward. Keep in mind you have to spike a Reno. You've got to be aggressive. This wall is eventually going to fall and Tiny Lady is ready and waiting right on the other side of it. There's going to be three of them as they push on out. The spray tries to come on through but there's too many players unfortunately for Tiny Lady. Can't take that many players at once as instead it's going to be some trades on the other side of the map as the A team maybe overextend into their pressure but the ranked demons is just finding frags left, right, and center. It's cleaned up in the end and ranked demons. I thought it might have been a brief respite, but it might be the death knells for the A team on this map. Yeah, it does seem like that timeout worked wonders, not only for um, the A team maybe possibly able to calm down, get their mental back in check, but also ranked demons. They've seen to crack the code over the A team's attack, in which they were able to hold down mid, hold down A very late into the round get that kill onto the um, Lurker as well of uh, Mizzy, but also they were able to well shut down any sort of B main take as well with the utility that they're using with the flashes, with the um, paint shells like you said of Tiny Lady in um, back sight. And it's just really nice to see that how they're coming into their own and being able to work off each other and adapt to how the A team are playing. Yeah. Because you can say you can play your own playstyle however you want, but when there's a playstyle that quite directly counters or is doing very well at countering you even changing a small little thing as positioning whether it's backsides or heaven towards b has changed so much in regards to how the rounds have been playing out and that is to the detriment of the a team's success mm -hmm. the a team right now Playing a lot slower than we've seen in prior rounds, not really contesting the mid in the same way, not really pushing anywhere just yet. Obviously they've got Viper's Wall over on that B site. See the flash goes in and that 
that's really big because it means we would beat Bob now knows where at least one of those players is and probably susses out that there's probably more than one player especially with the harbour walls starting to go on up to provide them with a little bit of extra space it even invests the reckoning here this is a really good way to make this push happen but that nade was brilliant the paint shells providing so much of the concussion goes on to tiny lady this is a chance to push but because of the wall they just can't afford to do it yeah, it does feel like it is dwindling chances, but Tiny Lady going to be fighting the people on site. Sure, trading that out. Another one by Adina, picking up that shot. Does maybe as well with the shorty. It does seem it's the shorties that are the ranked demons' favorite weapons, and it is a two versus four. Time is not there. They're going to have to get these kills, and it is just not going their way. It just isn't. Ranked demons now on 12 rounds. They're on the precipice of picking up this map, moving us to map three. Can they do it? Can they close it out? We've seen these games go to overtime before. Can the A-team pull it back into that, this time for their own benefit? Exactly. We've seen worse, well, worse scorelines turn into OTs, but I don't think the ranked demons are going to be too happy about anyone speculating whether they're going to let this match run away with them more than it already has since, like we said, it was a 9-3 half. And they're only now starting to win the defensive rounds. Don't think they have any plans of slowing down. But the A team, a little bit of a different approach this time. Dedicating three players towards this art position. Turret, Turret dead. Now Tycho's going to have to be careful to make sure these players aren't crossing over into the site. And are able to fight Adina from two, two fork points in this A take well the cosmic divide they are going to invest it here i like this call I like how early it is taiko's waiting there the dash is there and that is some good frags coming through with mizzy as well taking the um astra off the board is a really nice way to set themselves up they get the plant down they're playing four five sorry five versus three but this maybe does manage to actually get rid of that turret, meaning that they have to be worried about the push from behind. Arena, however, is ready and waiting on this angle. I don't know if they're going to be expecting it. Maybe expecting a slightly deeper push. There it is, the flash, but it's not enough. Instead, it's just going to be headshot after headshot for Arena here. Tiny Lady versus four. We've seen her pull off fantastic things before, but this one seems a little bit too fantastic, unfortunately. The satchel will try and go forward, but Mads picks them from the sky. Ten rounds on the board, the double digits for the A-team. Are you feeling the overtime? I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to be blamed for Caster's kids if any of the players rewatch this game. But um, <laughs> when we're talking about like, yeah, it's not me. If 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 there's a Caster kids, it's, it's Rogue. I promise. It's not me. I promise. I, I don't do it. I don't do it. I'm not a Caster kids. But when we're talking about it, it's two rounds. We were saying this on the first half. There's only like two, three rounds if they can get them. Then when you're looking at the whole grand scheme of things, it's not that many rounds. It's but when you're looking at that scoreline, 10, 12, the players are going to be feeling the pressure, are going to be in the position of what do we do now? What's happening? What do we have to change? Because they've gone through three losses in the attacking half, and that's all that they can let. They can't lose any more rounds in regulation, otherwise that is it. Since Ranked Demons are on that match point, they're going to have to be precautious in how they approach the next two rounds. Make sure they can get these first picks, but it's definitely not what's going to be happening with Adina there. Getting that operator shot. Legs, a player of the A-team. Yeah, because maybe we'll have to push on back the Trailblazer, giving a little bit extra space, a little bit of an extra setup for this one here. As Tycho is waiting with that drum, trying to contest that a little bit more. Unless I tackle with the drum, my head is uh, a little bit focused on that one. But obviously, still holding down this angle, making sure that the D uh, the offense trying to push on through will likely get denied. Shura waiting in the opportunity with the backup of this lockdown. This is exactly where they want to be, but Tycho pushes forward aggressively, just nets two. This is exactly what the ranked demons desperately wanted. This is exactly the kind of round they need to close this one out. That lockdown is not going to be enough. Of that, I am certain, especially with Adina waiting right here with the operator, locking down these angles. They're not even able to capitalize off the back of it. They have to push back, push away. You can see attempting to pull them in for right for the picking. Mads is going to have to go for the plant here. Des 
desperately, but there's too many players, too little time, too many problems coming their way, especially with those paint shells moving on forward. Tries to go for it, eats some of the damage, gets peeked out on, and that is Ranked Demons closing out the map 13-10. Impressive performance in spite of what looked like a potential comeback from the A-team, but unfortunately it wasn't quite enough to get them there. They still showed a solid performance. Absolutely, and I was believing in the comeback. I was believing in the 9-3 curse, and maybe that was the Caster curse. I, I believed in it, and maybe that's what inevitably did it. But Ranked Demons definitely showed up very well in that match. Didn't let the, well, match, realistically, the scoreline slipping away from them a little bit to really scare them into doing anything too drastic. They played the game that they went to in the end, and, well, we know how that turned out. A 13-10 is 1-1 in the series. Now we are going to be taking a short break, but we will be back with the last map and the decider who will be in the grand finals and who will be making it to contenders. VCT Game Changers EMEA.
Welcome back to the Goose House Birds of Prey Series 5. I'm Rook, joined by Winteri as we're getting ready for the final match of the lower bracket finals. We've still got grand finals coming your way later, so stick around for that. But we are getting to the bitter end of this one, and oh my lord, the second map going right back the other way. Yeah, I, I've lived in the comeback at a certain oh. point, and you have to, you always have to support the underdogs, don't you? You have to, you have to support the storyline as a cast, and it's like, oh my god, there's a 9-3 curse, and it's always the 9-3 curse, right? You have to believe in it. And when it got to, like, I think it was when it equaled out, like it was a 9-9, nine nine, and I was just like, it might be, it might oh, be. it might be, it might be, and then getting it to the double digits, both teams on double digits, like this is actually a map rather than this 9-3 domination that we saw. Although it did go in the favor of the 9-3 yep. up team, it's a 13-10. We are going to be going to see Split next as our decider, so I'm very excited to see that back in the map pool. Although Icebox is going to get removed soon and then Bind will be back. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm glad to see Bind. I'm a big Bind fan, especially for some of these teams. I, I've had enough Icebox for a lifetime, I think. Maybe I'll say that I'm wow. really looking forward to it again in like six months, but I, I, I've had to cast a lot of it, I'm going to be honest with you. Whereas Split, you know, I, the heart, the distance makes the heart grow fonder was definitely my thing with Split, right? I was kind of getting to the point where I was like, oh, I see so much Split. It's cool and all, but we have some very one-sided matchups on it. Um, but then it went away, it came back, and I'm like, oh! This is the coolest map. I, I'm, I'm in love with Split. It's really, really fun. It's got a lot of interesting things going on. Okay. And it always seems to get the best games on it. That's how I feel. Is that what you're going to be like when Icebox comes back? Probably, yeah. Okay, okay. I thought you were going to be like, no, I hate Icebox forever. And then I'll see you like, in a couple of months. Ro, do you remember when you said you hated Icebox and you never wanted back and you were so excited to cast it? But no, we are going to be casting Split. It is going to be the decider again. Just a little bit of a reminder. This is the lower bracket finals of the TGH um, qualifiers for contenders of VCT Game Changers EMEA. So whoever wins this matchup gets a place in um, contenders along with um, representing Polaris region along with AEX1 Nova who've already made it and are waiting in the upper, well, upper bracket run through in the grand finals for the winner of this map. Split. What are you expecting from these teams in regards to the agent composition? Well, I'd love to see the Cypher again. I think that obviously Killjoy can be effective here. You could even run the Chamber if you really want to, but so, um, right, I'm a right, big okay. fan of the Cypher. I'm just going to leave it as we can run the Chamber if we really want to. Uh, that's all I need to know. It's Let's get the into Let's it. it. It's already a Cypher locked in, at least for Arena. I could see it being any kind of flex of these. I would be shocked, frankly, to see the Neon here. Maybe that's just, you know, baiting us a little bit, but I, I've seen some teams run some really funky stuff on Split. Neon's not normally the one. 
Yeah, it's definitely not one of the ones you tend to go towards. And looking at the side of the A team, pretty basic comp. You've got that raise, you've got the omen, the breach, and then the cipher. Interesting that they're going to opt for a double um double duelist in the, the sense rather than maybe getting another initiator in. Although initiators aren't that strong realistically on this map. You tend to have more of a breach sky. Otherwise, Sova's not really used since yeah. it's quite of a bit of a janky, quite close cornered space. Like you said, Tycho is not going to be playing that uh, Neon, unfortunately. It would be, it'd be interesting to see, but they're going on to this Astra. So it's really interesting to see the flexibility now coming into this lower bracket finals that we've only just come off Adina playing that Astra. Yeah. And then now we have Tycho doing it. I was saying before, I don't like it when I see Astra from non-Astra players. And I was like, oh, well, if Adina plays Astra, <laughs> yeah. then sure. And then they completely swap Adina and Tycho on this map. And, you know, well, if you're comfortable with it, sure. I'm I'm just a little bit like, mm. it seems a little bit unnecessary. Maybe this is just the way they've practiced it. Maybe this is just the way they play it in ranked, as they are obviously ranked demons. Um, but course, course. it's a bit Truth surprising to kind of see that one, um, especially kind of with the switch up. Well, I don't mind Astra here. Now, I think the big thing about that is that they're bringing the Sage as well, and I actually think this is a really good call for this map. It's something which, if you, ha again, have that Sage play, if you've got someone who's willing and understands how to play it around mid, it could be such an asset. I agree to a certain extent. I don't think Sage is needed on this map. Not and needed, sure. And especially when you're going to a certain level as well, um, you see less and less of the Sage and more opting for these sort of Viper picks to yep. hold down mid. And although we haven't got any Vipers here, they do not have the Sage on the side of the 18. They're going for that double duelist. They're going for that really leaning into the aggression side of um, Split since it is a... Um, defender sided map they're really wanting to go heavy hitting and making sure that they can make that space and they have double the chance of doing it with both of these duelists yeah tiny lady pushing up aggressively not in a duo of duelists but alone this time however not alone in terms of the backup they are receiving Tycho the first one to push forward on this controller and se jumps into mid where there's some paint shells which is an interesting decision which doesn't really end particularly well for them. I think she's learned her lesson and she won't be doing that anytime soon. But it is a kill nonetheless for each of these teams. A four versus four. But the Smokes player is the one that falls on the side of the rank demons and the A team. Both of these now having to fully commit to these gunfights that they're wanting to peek into. Mm -hmm. I think it really depends on who's on the uh, defending side in this situation. If the plant goes down, I think Rank Demons are perfectly fine with that. But getting onto the site, I would think, you know, normally they'd really, really need this. But the A-Team don't contest it at all. And that might be a big mistake with access to no smokes. It could have been a real problem for them. But instead, as he just manages to deal with exactly that kind of issue, what we, we what Bebop does manage to get hurled down and taken out by the A-Team. And that's a quick round going their way. And there you go, the Diffuse coming in there with three players left alive, putting that all point over onto um, Mads on the phrase. I do love seeing the double duelers coming out of this team. Yep. It does seem, to, it, it works so well for them in regards to the chemistry that you can see between the two duelers, but also between the two duelers, and then add Mizzy in there. And it just, it just looks like a fine oiled machine. Yeah, I really like it because obviously you've got... Um... Uh, Arena over on that Cypher who can kind of be pretty self-sufficient for the most part. I think that's a good thing about Cypher is that he can kind of chill, hang out, do whatever he needs to do, um, and then you know, function from there. And I think again, the same thing happens for the Omen who can play on their own angle and smoke for the rest of the team. The fact that you've got this kind of trio where you've got the double duelist and the initiator really set them up, that breach I think looks super, super strong here. However, what they weren't expecting was this spray down because this is going to be a oh 4K my. here for sure. Uh, as I mean, that's just a dominating performance. They were not expecting it. And that duo that I was talking about, the, the combo of breach plus any duelist and you can really make good usage of those flashes of those concussors yeah absolutely and it's the layering the utility like you said and se is going to be the one who's to be facing this player coming through at ct and well a flawless round into the second um second round over this matchup 
and Shora definitely showing why they are on this jet. Why are they the the star duelist for this team alongside well Mads the flexible? Well, I do it all basically is what is her role within this team. From our perspective, we've seen her well be absolutely amazing on such a varying role, such a varying playstyle. Whether that's from support to initiation to being the space maker, and I think that's what's so important for the A team now. If they can keep this and make good um, defense, run it over into the attack and make this an attacker side of split for them. Mm -hmm. Mads does get taken down. The aggression this time not working out quite so well. Trying to make good usage of the weaponry. They do indeed get some good spray downs, but it's the rifles in the hand of Tiny Lady that, again, manages to make a big impact here. The A-Team getting some damage down, but obviously losing control of the site. The spike is going to go down. The A-Team fine with this relatively, though, because this is a bonus round for them. It's not the end of the world. But... It is the end of Tycho's life, and that is a Vandal available for upgrades in the main position for the Cypher. If they can isolate any more of these 1v1s, Tiny Lady's positioning is going to be crucial. Oh, good isolation of the target there. Manages to meet, deal with Tiny Lady pretty effectively. Two versus two, not a lot of time. They've got to go quick right now. The A-Team do just that. You see the dark cover, they tap on it. They force the players to maybe come on out, but they bide their time. They know that it was a fake. This time it's a second tap, and the spray through finds some damage, but not a kill. And that means it's going to be the ranked demons pushing through, finding the frags, but have lost a significant number of players in this exchange. Yeah, a significant number of players, but still getting the round so it's not too bad in like the great grand scheme of things and also the frags at the end there gives sage of uh dismavy that resurrection online in the fourth round here one of the most expensive ultimates and is the first online which just goes to show how well she has been playing so far she already used her blade storm of course but dismavy ready and waiting to resurrect one of her fallen comrades in the next couple of rounds. I think something else as well I want to highlight is Shura has access to this operator. Able to lock down, especially on this A site, this is going to be a real thorn in the backside of Rank Demons. They're going to have to invest these smokes pretty much every round if they want to try and contest this one. Gets aggressive, doesn't quite land the shot, and has to dash back on out so it doesn't get caught. The Tiny Lady's position now known. You see the rotates come on through. The A team are fully aware of the kind of shenanigans that uh, ranked demons are up to and are able to deny them from trying to push on in the res is there and there are a lot of players on site this could be a good chance for them to use it effectively yeah you're saying the res is there but no one's actually died yet so they can't even take um advantage of that until some of these kills start coming through the flashes are and look at the position of main it's going to be a crunch they're going to have to clear out we will be bop from this position and or she's going to be a crux a thorn in the side of these players and they're going to clear they're getting a second Second now for Mads, and now it's a three versus two. Adina, one for herself, get, trying to get that spray through. Two players now in the backside. It's a one v two, and Adina, three for herself in that round, evening out that score count. Yeah, really nicely done. Not what I was expecting to see, especially after Mads opened up the site like that. One frag important into right another, but the refrags are there. Again, Tiny Lady on the backside alongside Adina, always going to be able to open things up. Absolutely. And look at that scoreboard. Shura leading the charge going 7-3 it's just the ability to close out some of these rounds have not been there and it just comes down to the full team effect and the duality of Tiny Lady and um, Adina and how well they work together in that backside like you said but talking about the backside of A it is A that they are going to be favouring towards at the moment Adina having a little bit of a gander towards mid seeing three players and look at that reaction straight into um, Exec and out A oh judge does put some damage down, but not enough to get a kill, unfortunately, for them. As you see the rest of the players moving on in, Tiny Lady making great usage of those satchels in order to make use of the verticality you can truly get on this map. The spray is there, but not enough to get a kill. Instead, it will be the backup from the rest of the team to be able to turn that into at least one in spite of what was pretty much painting a picture around the uh, outside of that player there. And it's going to be the Neural Theft coming on in, locking down the uh, locations of these players as the spike has gone down. And Arena going to be able to set their team up for a lot of success. Two players on the left here easily could find themselves trapped in this util, but the trades are there. The shots come down. And again, it's ranked demons who are winning out these all-important duels. 
Yeah, and I was I was gonna mention about the Sage Resurrect, and there's no need to be using it. And well, if you look at where the players are dying first when it's coming down into that four v x three v x situation, they're dying all the way up so far into heaven. They're basically on the zip wire or in CT already. And just thinking of how how are they dying there is because they've gotten that much space yep. going onto the site. And that's the important thing I think I want to highlight from the side of Ranked Demons is, yes, they might be a little bit overzealous sometimes, but that overzealousness is getting them so much space, which is buying them so much time for the remaining, uh, like, retake anchors who are anchoring that bomb site now to set up in better positions, to coordinate a sort of crossfire that they can get into. And it's all down to how far and how much space that they can get, hold on to, and, well, really push the A team back and back. <laughs> They're definitely a f space focused team rather than yeah. some of these kind of strats. They're like, okay, take this area and then take a little bit more, go from there, rather than trying to, you know, set up for some of these utility combos like we've been seeing from the side of the A team. And obviously, to relative success in the chances that they've got for them, but when it doesn't land in that same place, the A team don't have quite the same punch that the ranked demons do. That's why you're seeing the ranked demons just walk on through, win these duels, both those uh, duelists straight off the board, mm. and the A team very much lacking that power to really contest in a lot of ways. And there you know here, as the Scythe are going to be anchoring this site, Rolling Thunder comes in, but the all the Utah going to invest in, and she gets that kill actually onto Tiny Lady, and it's now a 1v4 for the remaining Omen player, and it's all that she wrote for that round. It does seem that ranked demons are having that, well, over the last round, a couple of rounds, yep. but also over the last game. The last match that we saw, they had an incredible start. A little bit of a rush patch in the middle, but at the end, they look so dominant, yep. and they've just brought that back over into split. Yeah, they certainly have. Ranked Demons looking confident. So confident that they invested two ultimates there. I'm not so sure about that when you had that kind of numbers advantage, but yeah. at least one of them kind of to make sure. Um, I like it. And they've still got a lot of ultimates available. Uh, again, we were kind of highlighting, I think, this for the A-team in the previous series they had, willing to invest these ultimates, to cycle through them, to use them effectively, and maybe not get exactly, you know, the epic ultimate with the Rolling Thunder, but get a couple of frags off of it, and then have it up the next time. It's a really good way to go about your life and as a team to kind of just make sure you have these powerful abilities available as much as you can over the course of a round. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said about the cycling of um, ultimates, we've had that Sage Resurrection up already, but we haven't had to use it in mm. regards to the position one. You can't actually get to half the places these people are dying. But also, two, there's no need since the ability to play off each other within the crossfires have been sublime from them. And like you said, they use that Rolling Thunder um, from the side of uh, Ranked Demons there. And it's just, the more, the e quicker you use it, the quicker you can get it back up like you ca were kind of inferencing. And it's exactly what they're doing. It's not as if they're completely out of ultimates. They have three other, like, round winging ultimates on their team already available and, well... It's now down to Shira to see what she can do with her ultimate ability as they take through mid again. Tiger is going to be the one that spots it this time rather than the Killjoy player. But same reaction is they're going to be taking out onto A. Tiny Lady Satchel's through and look at that space already gathered and within such a short amount of time. The A team is still in mid. They're still having to retreat. Yeah, I mean, they seem like they're separated from their sites and from each other in very significant ways. The fact that Tycho gets this frag here and there's no one there to refrag, this is a big disconnect from the A-team. They need to be moving together in enemy territory, even though you don't consider it to be too much of a problem, it now is going to be. In fact, Shura even has to invest that there. Moves out quickly. <laughs> this Mavi, oh, so brilliant with this rifle. And you're right, doesn't have the chance to use this res when you just win all of the Wait. fights. That was so big from Rewop Rewop. <laughs> we we will be Bob gets two with the um aftershock. It's just, yeah, that's what's so important about the kind of map that you're playing is so tight corners, so many tight corners is that that can happen, and it's not even necessarily out of bad positioning from the side of the A team. They were coming through the vent and trying to come up um through to a heaven for the retake, and well a stun and a little bit of a um, aftershock and that's all that she wrote for their lives in that round basically. Yeah. You should run. But lives in this round, it's going to be attacker killjoy. Lockdown invested towards the A site, ranked demons again, showing they're not shy of using these ultimates. It is Ernie 
over towards this bomb site on her own to see if she can get some kills with the tripwires as they are on their way through. Mm -hmm. Lockdown doesn't detain anyone, but it does force them away. So Ranked Demon's very, very happy with this one. Happy to contest, happy to fight. And you see the Showstopper even coming through from Tiny Lady here. That rocket is going to kill, luckily, this time <laughs> for Tiny Lady as Essie goes on high and, well, lets them down low. Drops down as well, wants to try and triple it up, but unfortunately it doesn't quite make it to that one as we were Bebop will actually get caught by the paint shells. And now it's two versus two. Can the A-team this time make it happen for themselves? As it is that post-plant situation again. This time, both the duelists looking for a chance to get aggressive, take this space, but Adina going to drop that Nano Swarm from on high. They're going to be able to even find the kill on Tashura. But look at this, Tycho moves out and the Operator is in hand for Adina here. Looking to try and contest this one, looking trying to hold this one. And they know they don't even have the time. There's the kill, but Nads has to look at it with despair, not a able to get the defuse. Not even uh, able to pick up that operator from heaven either. It's only going to be the rifle that's going to be held over. I'm so glad the tiny lady ult has hit this <laughs> this series and it is it's been it felt it felt awful for her. But going into this now, looking at it, it's a six two four round deficit to the A team and wow it's it's all that she wrote really. They got full util, they got full um by multiple rounds and yet they still were only able to pick up the first pistol round and that conversion and everything else has just been ranked demons decimating them on any sort of attack any sort of reaction play it has been perfect down to crossing the t uh, crossing the t's and dotting the i's let's get a frag setting them up potentially here the a team have had advantages before though in this half and they have squandered them before as well so Rank Demon's definitely able to capitalize off the back of this one. Reno doesn't even get that one. Millsley does, however, set them up well. The res, they're finally used here by Rank Demon's. They're going to try and keep themselves in this round. The shots from Wubi Bebop Bop and they almost find that raise. Instead, she they're going to go for a flank to apply on a different me. angle. All four players are surrounding um, this Breach player, and she just has to buy as much time as possible since... <laughs> What? <laughs> Gets Rolling Thunder to deal with as well. Oh my lord. I think it was the most valuable distraction I've ever seen in my life. But it's two versus four, two versus three. I'm quickly corrected by Adina there. And with the setup that they've got, they've managed to catch some damage as they go on by. But eventually they fall. It's one versus two and Adina is able to set up that bot. Able to set up a lot of uh, chances hello. for them to find the frag, but instead it's going to play passive as the They're door drops the and they get no. caught the wall at the most unfortunate timing. Honestly, I thought if that if that tower went off slightly earlier and she hadn't died through that like <coughs> just corner wall bang into the uh, main, that tower would have killed them. Look how low these two players are. But either way. It's a round now in favour of them. The A team have put another round together on the board, so now it's only a three round deficit. Three rounds, like we said before, it's not that much. In the whole grand scheme of things, it's six minutes, realistically ish, to get it. Depends on fa how fast these rounds go, and especially since we've seen the A team getting closer and closer in these rounds now. But a little bit of an expensive round, like we saw the um, rolling thunder just to clear one player out but it was successful so I can't comment on it yeah if it works it works right yeah <laughs> you're able to take that one and, and considering the a-team hadn't won a round for six rounds on the trot they'll take whatever they can get absolutely good aggression here like this from Shura and Mads good to kind clear. of push this again as a duo I want to see this team play from them that's where they've had success that's where they're going to have success yeah, and it's a really nice clear as well into main, but look at the positions they have. And, oh, Essie, ever so careful, but there you go. Dis um, Marvi there with the trade, back down to four versus three. The A team looking so confident now. They do have the um, neural theft available if they can get towards one of these um, dead bodies, but Ernio is over towards the A side, playing with her trips, isolating A1v1. But only good for one in the position. Mads, again, moving forward with that showstopper. Wants to try and find something. The rocket doesn't land, and that's just tragic. That seems to be the raise situation so far. Going to get the heal. Shura taps on the spike. They'll be able to speed. They will be able to get the shot, and that will be the round for Shura here. But far closer than they surely had intended. 
Yeah. Um, Dismavi, I feel like, is the person you want in the clutch. She's been able to isolate the 1v1s in certain situations so well. But then also, it's not a Mads. Mads, Mads clutches this um, series has been insane. Mm -hmm. Four six, and it's not too much of a buy coming in from ranked team as they're starting to run out of money now after those two losses in a row. They've been forcing up each time. This is kind of going to be a little bit of a make or break round since they're going to be on a th uh, three loss bonus next. They shouldn't be able to afford all utility rifles and shields, but. It is a blade storm invested. Sure is going to be taking the initiative here and taking so much information, gathering that at least four players were there, including the killer, which is tending tending to be your flanker. So the A team are able to act accordingly, rotating their cipher over towards heaven. Indeed they are. Four knives still available for Shura. Looking for a chance to maybe find someone who strays into this dark cover. Tapping away on it. Oh, it's a brilliant shot, but it will get refragged. Well played yet again by just maybe got the access to the res as well. That is fantastic usage. Rank Demons again playing well with this sage, and just maybe has looked so darn confident on it. Does have access to the from the shadows, but that is so bad. Arena gets caught by the concussion, but there's no one there to capitalize. Plant is going to be going down, and like I said, the Resurrection Investors is back to a 5 versus 4. Make that a 5 versus 3. We will Bebop has something to say about it. So does Taiko, and it's a 2 versus 5. It's looking so, so dire for the, team, the A team. Yeah, and it didn't even start off that badly for them. They got a frag. They managed to then get it traded back, but the res was there. The rest of Ranked Demons were so happy to capitalize on the space which they gained. They got rid of the players on site, and from there it was just plain sailing. Four to seven. Ranked Demons looking confident, and they've just got one round left in the half. You, split is a defender-sided map, right? I believe so. Can we just appreciate the score line that Ranked Demons have been able to but forward for us. They've already won the half. And when we're saying um, split is a defender side of map and having someone already win the half going 7-4, it's not as if they're going like 10-2 on uh, attacker side of split, but it's still it's still something for um, us to not shy away from. But do you know what? Who's not shying away from anything is the t A team and taking the skirmishes to rank demons here. Yeah, that is so worth for them, especially, oh my lord, when they had those stingers. But they built far more than they can chew. They bring it to the 2v2. They're going to need to redouble their efforts and bring themselves together, especially with some of these lower health bars. They had the advantage, but they decided we need more. And instead, they find themselves even Stevens in terms of players. And I think that's it, it makes some things so difficult when you're being a little bit more greedy like that. And it's also the positioning now over the cipher of the A team was not part of the original skirmish. Rank demons are going to be freezing, reassessing the situation, use of the killjoy lockdown as well towards the A site. It's going to be clearing so much space for them towards the heaven and also site. It'll be good for them so they can. All they have to worry about is really CT and also any now anyone flanking from heaven. Yeah, there will be a Dino. Checking out, making sure there's no one on heaven. The bulldog will catch a player crossing, knows that they're now there. The concuss, concuss does go through, but it's going to have to really be this cipher leading the charge. Flank already coming through. They don't know it's coming. I don't think they can hear it at all. They're going to drop on down right into the waiting arms of that turret, which is going to be active again in just a second. And look at that, the flash that we want Bebop does manage to force them into a difficult position where they're wide out in the open. The plant was so good for this, but the shots land. That was just a stinger and just a taste of what Mads can do right now. Going to be able to get the half. Can they finish it off? No, they can't. Unfortunately, the weapon disadvantage is just far too great. That was a stinger. Can we appreciate that? Was that a was nice. Yeah, I, I, I saw that. I see you. Lovely shot there. That must be like a double headshot onto the Killjoy flanking through, or maybe even a triple headshot on the Killjoy flanking through heaven. Unfortunately, still the round goes in favor of ranked demons in that clutch. We will bebop a clutch master there, and the A team definitely on the back foot going into the attacker side of split, which is the most unfavored side and they're already half more than like half the rounds down that ranked demons already have to their name and it's just something that they're going to have to figure out how they're going to make this double duelist comp so exceptionally well on attacker side of split the a team right now 
really are on that back foot, especially trying to kind of get their aggression going. They've struggled in some of these rounds. They have made comebacks before. They have shown us impressive performances, but it feels like Ranked Demons really have their number, especially when they were on that, um, that comeback on the previous map over on Pearl, and it mounted to nothing in the end. Ranked Demons just seem to understand what makes them tick and might just be going to challenges, might just be going to that grand final unless the A-team can really shift into a high gear. Now with a frag like that, you bring things back to even, but you still got to take one of those sites. Yep. The heal as well for the side of Ranked Demons, something that the A-team are quite lacking here. So the Breach is going to be staying on that low HP. But this pistol round is going to be ever so important for them. Oh, Teko's waiting right here with the shorty. Looking to provide some percussion here and looking to provide some percussive play onto these players. Brilliant usage of the shorty does mean they're able to shut that one out. And there just weren't enough people to kind of force on through that angle. They didn't have the util to flash it. And as a result, you just got a player with a shotgun waiting around the corner. Of course, they're going to ruin your day. Yeah, ruining the day does seem to be the memo over ranked demons, whether that's in actual ranked in the chamber that's traumatized you so ever much. And also the A team in this matchup. This is, like I said, way before this is the decider. It's 1 1 so far in this series. This is the lower bracket finals. And whoever wins this. It's the ticket to contenders. Everyone else will have to go through the open qualifiers and they'll have to go through group stages. These players will qualify straight into playoffs of that league, but also will be representing quite literally the Polaris, um, Nordic and UK and Northern Ireland leagues. They'll be that they'll be the representatives since they are the um, eligible countries. But in to this round, Taika takes one trader straight back out by Mads. The problem is, is there's players just waiting layers and layers deeper, especially with this Spectre. They're just able to make so much happen, and I think just Mavi has definitely been the key player for this map, right? We were a bit like, eh, well, the Sage is okay. It definitely can perform, but, but it's just been the player who's really delivered here. Yeah. Definitely impressed by that, and impressed by, the honestly, the entirety of Ranked Demons who have looked so good this map, and there's a reason why they've been dominant. I re I'm really enjoying watching just Mavi play, just since... She was the player that was bringing the brimstone. I was like, um, it's not the meta pick. It's not the most normal pick on this map, but it's a player pick. So let's see what she can do with it. And she's come out hitting the ground running. They won that uh, map on Haven. And then obviously further down the line, lost out in the series. But it's nothing to do with the characters she's playing. It's generally the type of player that she has like shown herself to be over the series. And it's really nice watching Ranked Demons play. Like you said, been impressed by them all. Although the A team has impressed us as well, not so much on split. It is 4 10 currently, and they are on attack. They are attacking sides of this map. Double digits already hit by Ranked Demons, and they are so patient. They're not really overstepping any sort of boundaries other than. Maybe using the uh, wrong usage there for Tycho, unfortunately. Maybe expecting someone to be a little bit closer, but gets caught on the cross as Mads was holding. And the A team again get an advantage. The question is, as I've asked a couple of times, how do they push it? And when they try to push it, we see things like this happen. Arena goes down when one thing happens on one side. Ranked demons get good communication good communication and like, okay, make a play on the other side where we have an advantage, make something happen and the trades come unilaterally. Yeah, they're getting pulled back in one situation, they're pushing back in another to make this sort of um, seesaw of the map. If they're coming further back on A, push out a little bit on B and that's how they're able to clear out the position of the cipher of the A team multiple rounds in a row, whether that's on the B side or the A side that they're looking. But let's go into this retake now. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a retake, but it might only be one take, honestly. It's so darn quick, but the shots come on out from Missy. Missy, and again, this is a player who we have seen time and time again when I've been worried, when I've been down on the A team. They step up, they deliver, and now she's found them around in pretty dire circumstances and maybe just what they need, as that was a shutdown, that was a... Um, beating out the bonus round, but you look at the Econ, they still got not got too much going for them. Absolutely, and there you go, you got even a judge coming in from the um, side of Mads. Although, judges on split can be an opted for position, even when some players have the full money. So, I'm not too um, worried about the situation of some sort of like lower economy or something like that. 
it's just the way that they're going to have to change their use um, playstyle, go for that more space similar to the playstyle of ranked demons, but they're going to be going over, but Mad does not matter. The setup, the nano swarms has just absolutely ruined her day. But Adina ruining Essie's day as well. Five versus two, and they've learned from their mistakes. They gave too much space to them last round, and they're like, okay, we want to close this out a little bit quicker, and they've kind of fully put put well put their best foot forward. Well, be bop. Holding <laughs> down this mid. Yeah, again. And actually managed to take down the Saifu, just was not ready for it. Or, you know, just not aware that they were on the angle which could be seen from heaven there. And as a result, it's yet again just missing. Can they clutch out versus four again? That's my question. It's going to be easier said than done, obviously. And, I mean, they have the choice of where they want to go, but it's a pretty much a false dichotomy. Either way, they're going to have to deal with four minutes. players. Yeah, Spike is in hand, but if you're thinking about the position of this Astra in mid, the jiggles coming through will mean if they are wanting to rotate and not be seen, they'll have to rotate all the way through spawn. But Taiko already taking that initiative and walking towards A to make sure no bomb sounds or bomb planting is going down towards A. It's going to have to be a save from the A team. I think very sensibly here, Missy doesn't want to mess around, wants to be able to show they have that rifle because there's only a couple of rounds potentially left in this map and in this series. So Ranked Demons really putting the pressure on them. And I mean, Ranked Demons have looked so confident, so comfortable, especially on this map, right? I was coming on into it, I'm like, well, split really could be a difficult one for them, especially with A-Team showing up on the previous map towards the kind of like latter, so the second, sorry, the third quarter uh, is yeah. what I was really thinking of. And Unfortunately, the A-Team just have not been able to do that. Ranked Demons have got their number from that second map. They understand what's making them tip, tick. And from here, it's really been a dominant performance and dominant showing from them. I think it's um, Dismavi that's figuring out how people tick yep. going currently. 19 and 8, boating over to um, KD. Definitely a heavy hitter here, and it's very nice to get your stage having those kills. But who else is getting the kills? This tiny lady getting that first pick onto Essie. Traded back out. Back and forth. Three versus three versus three. The cipher um, alt invested. Guns retrieved and recycled to upgrade on the side of the A team since they started this on an eco. Just Mavi, gonna have to be very careful on how she. Oh, that's brutal! I really thought that was gonna deny them, but just Mavi knew. And that's such <laughs> brilliant heads up play, aware um, of how the utility is going to work, and actually managed to just survive through that. Yeah, the angle was a little bit too wide. Of course, it would have, well, killed her if she was not even two centimeters to the right. But the position, the missed utility, so capitalized on by um, Dismami, swinging, getting a 3k for herself, and putting them onto match point, series point contenders point realistically one more round and these players have made it to contenders they've qualified for the Polaris region through the TGH um, qualifier of Birds of Prey series 5 it's exciting it's heart heart rending for the A-team right now seven rounds down they they look like they might have had it in the previous map but at the end of the day, Ranked Demons have just looked far too strong in this one. They've got four ultimates. They've got the economy. Sure, you've got your brains and you've got your aim, the A-team, but you're lacking right now in terms of pretty much everything else. It's, it's been a real problem to try and force through. The Econ's not quite been there. They've been on um, light shields the entire time to try and get just as many rounds as they could. But even full loss bonus and that couldn't get them there. It, and some of the runs that the A team have been winning, it does feel like it was like the hero runs. Like we had that a uh, couple of rounds from Mizzy getting those yeah. 4Ks, but then also certain rounds where something has been very negligent from the side of Ranked Demons and the A team have um, figured it out and gone through. But when we're talking about um, going into this now, it just feels so deflated from the side of the A team because the Ranked Demons are just going at them, what it feels like with knives. It's like they're a hot air balloon and the Ranked Demons are just knives. <laughs> That's It generally feels like that because when we're watching it, the A-Team aren't necessarily doing anything majorly wrong. It's just the way that Ranked Demons are kind of corralling them into certain spots and are able to use utility and combinations. And the team play has been amazing with the rotates. <laughs> to shut down any possibility that the A-team have sort of had or any idea that's popped into the mind. They've started going for it. Ranked team is already there with a counter, with a setup, and it just feels so 
deflating for the side of um, the A-team. It really does. I mean, they tried to fly so high, but Ranked Demons keep on popping, keep on finding those opportunities. Again, the Duelist duo looking for a chance to maybe lay down the law, but whenever they try to do so, there it is. Just maybe, just constantly in position to try and say, okay, cool off, here's a slow orb, here's a barrier orb, here, so, well, hot lead, honestly, in a lot of situations. There's the showstopper trying to come on through, Tycho waiting in the wings, trying to not get caught. That's a good use of paint shells, does mean that they can cut wide, but with the showstopper not landing, and Mad's catching a little bit of flack as they try to pass back through on that. Arino gets some good shots over, and it does manage to take this maybe down. However, with the lockdown invested, they've got to get aggressive, otherwise they're going to get completely forced off of this one. Some good shots are coming on through. Shura is contesting that, opening up the site where they can as Essie goes aggressive as well. That's exactly what they needed in the nick of of time, but they lost so much trying to get it done as Mads is alone. One versus two. The Cosmic Divide goes through and they're trying to shoot and contest on these angles, but they were just ready for it. Tiny Lady, the star of this team and some of the other maps, has been usurped the tad in this one, but will get that defuse, will set them up for it and rank demons. They qualify for challengers and this is them moving to grand finals as well. Yeah, that is it. That's all that she wrote for the A team in, well, Bays of Prey Series 5. It's ranked demons that are going to be the ones that are progressing after that amazing round there. Well, they've secured their spot in um, contenders, they've secured their spot in the grand finals, and well, what a way to do it. What a way to do it indeed, and it really showed that they were growing as they were playing. They were understanding what was making their opponents take some really great macro decisions, something we weren't hailing them for necessarily when they were playing AEX. They grew on the spot and really showed us that they know um, how to kind of dismantle a team, and I think that's really what happened. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like the um, comparison I made. It felt like the A-team were a hot air balloon, and it was just felt like daggers going into any sort of direction that they wanted to go it was just popping any idea that they had in their head but when we're coming down to it do you want to talk about any sort of star player that you had from that team in the in the most recent map obviously we've talked about the other two but yeah. the the decider map is the one because as soon as the first it's one one it, is, it turns into a best of one at that point and it was split that was the decider and it was a 13 5 oh. And it was, I think, mostly down to Dismavy's performance. Obviously, on that Sage, we were talking about this maybe playing uh, the Brimstone and the Sage and a couple of other things as well, kind of flexing around with whatever they want to do, whatever comfort. And comfort is king, especially when you can deliver performances like that, really understood the flow of the game, great macro, great positioning, and honestly, just great gunnery in general. Um, really did lead their team forward, and obviously the Sage was able to cut off a lot of those key positions as well. What's better than a Sage that can support, heal, and slow down enemies? A Sage that can kill them as well and be one of the heavy hitters on that team. This maybe definitely showed up for her team in that last map of the series. But what's next for this team is they're going to be facing up in the grand finals over Birds of Prey Season 5. Well, shortly against AEX um, no One Nova, who've been, well, waiting in the sidelines really for mm. well the winner the victor of this team just for the bragging rights because both of these teams will be going through two contenders it will just be whether they're going to be taken first or second away from this tournament but that is it from us for now it will be back in 30 minutes go get some food go get some red bull and we'll see you back then for the grand finals
Sleeping on the floor again. We never sleeping on the floor again. For the ones who didn't make it out. For the ones that didn't see the life. For the ones that never cared. Never gave a thought. Found no happiness in that brand new car. Or the house you bought. I see you talking about the love you lost. And it was gone like way before you ever thought it was. Yeah, I took my time. No quick ones. Quick run. Quick guys to get back there. Hot roads. I didn't think I'd come back fast. Cause I was running roads so many nations.
Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities. I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach. Cross out the ones who heard my cries and watched me weep. I love everything. Fire spreading all around my room. My world's so bright, it's hard to breathe, but that's alright. Hush.
We had a barbecue in San Jose in May with some friends drinking booze, getting all loose. We drove the cars to the beach on the outside of the streets, sat around a bonfire, eating marshmallows all night. We were young at time, I know it, know it, but you were so damn fine, couldn't get you on my mind. We were young at time, I know it, know it, but I wanted something more than you. Cause you wanna be free for the summer
uh, the A team in that lower brackets finals, an impressive performance, and showing us again just how much they can grow. I'm interested to see if this time they can take down AEX1 Nova. Because, I mean, things looked a little shaky. Sure, they picked up mm. one map, they picked up Haven, but I don't think we're going to be seeing Haven again. I'd be surprised. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in seeing what the map veto is going to be for, well, these two teams, since it is sort of a rematch. We've already seen how these two teams faced up against each other in the semi finals earlier today, and, well, it was a 2-1. So I'm a little bit more interested to see if it's going to be a lot closer series now since it is a rematch and there's going to be a little bit more background information there for, well, how how they've come through the lower bracket. They've like changed a few things. Like we've seen the comp on Pearl have changed when they last met them. It was a 13-3. So the comp changed and how they've adapted to having more than just the Brimstone or just a Viper on certain maps has really changed how well they've performed. And inevitably won the last series that we did cast. Yeah, I mean, it's it's also going to be interesting to see if they're able to apply that kind of more aggressively, because I think aggression was the name of the game, especially mm. when they had some success um, against AEX before. Um, but obviously, maybe shifting things up entirely, showing us kind of some of the more actually pretty reserved play, especially on Split, was uh, kind of the focus of it uh, that we got to see from them in the previous series. So we've seen a couple of sides of them now. We've seen a couple of sides of AEX as well. And AEX, I mean, they were looking hot as anything coming on into those uh, upper bracket finals. Showed a really solid performance. Managed to close out in two games. It was close, but it was still a 2-0. Yeah, close, but ever so far, especially when you're looking at it, like you said, it is just a 2 0. It doesn't matter what the, well, scoreline of those games are, it's just the series scoreline that people tend to look at. But if we can get those map vetoes up now, we'll see where we're actually going in regards to, well, the maps, what venues, what is going to be the decider if it does go back to a three map series, since this is a best of three for that finals. Yeah, especially since we've already had kind of a matchup come on through, um, and we saw some maps that were pretty one sided either way. Um, so much so that I, I think it's really going to shift up mm. uh, the pick and ban. I could be wrong. They might just go back to, straight, back to the same maps. I think they'd be a miss to do so, but you know, I, I think these teams are really going to have to battle out over which maps they go to because I think it is going to make a big difference in terms of the way it goes. I would like to say that Lotus might be a little better um, than we saw. Uh, for the side of uh, Ranked Demons, but they just weren't able to show it. I think they actually would work quite well on that map from how we've seen them so far. So Lotus is something you're expecting. What else? Were we expecting to get banned out straight away? Oh, Haven. Haven banned out straight away, yeah? Yeah, I mean, AEX, that's the map they dropped and things didn't look quite so confident for them. They would get overwhelmed, frankly, in a lot of the different places. And I think when we saw them on other maps, we didn't see that at all. So perhaps not so well drilled on Haven. It might be that they're not particularly well drilled on a wide variety of maps, and that might be a weakness of the team. But if they get the maps they are, I mean, they've looked very confident. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing more. Um, I think they played Pearl as well, yeah. Yeah, definitely. They, well, they have played Pearl. It was a, yeah. it was a quite a stark victory on the side of AEX um, 1 Nova. And talking about the players, I'm really looking out for just the general team for AEX but especially Ikyo and Kaneko. Um, they've been one of the more consistent heavy fraggers, whether they're the ones that are top fragging or the ones that are always in the top two or three on that leaderboard. But talking about the side of um, ranked demons, I'd, I'm not too sure about, other than obviously the series we just had, if there's any sort of similarities of um, star players there, or if it is just sort of a free-for-all from what we've seen so far, kind of like the ranked uh, mindset as well. I think uh, on, on the whole, um, ranked demons, they, they have a lot of players in a similar way to AEX that can show up. Um, but obviously in particular, I was really impressed by some of the Sage play. Um, I mean, they're raised though. Super exciting to watch. Yeah, Tiny is absolutely amazing on that raise. And well, it is going to be a sort of, if we get onto certain maps, it's going to be a raise versus raise map again with Ikkyo and oh, uh, Tiny. Sure. And it is quite stark that we've seen the comparison over the maps over the series we've had before, but also then um, Tiny going up against other raises and then vice versa. But let's get that map veto sorted so we can actually give some sort of like information behind the teams because we can speculate all we want about what yeah. they're going to be going, what we're going to be seeing, but without any of the hard uh, truths of it, who knows? 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to know until you have cold, hard evidence in front of you. There's a lot of things you can kind of arm and are about and, and, and try and, like, as you said, speculate. But I think especially with the way these two teams have been playing, the way they've been kind of flexible in the way they've been playing, I think especially I was kind of looking at Ranked Demons thinking they were relatively um, one-dimensional, but we saw a lot more from them, especially in the lower bracket finals, that... I'm excited to see more of those sides from them, if they can manage to perform them against AEX, who do look very strong. I think that's the one kind of caveat is, is yes, Ranked Demons, they've shown that they have more to them than they had before, but they still are up against an opponent that did show some pretty dominating performances against them. All right, let's see. Let's get that map veto up. See who bans, who picks, and who is deciding what side. And if we're going to see a pool again. We oh. are. There you go. AEX bans out Fracture and then picks into Haven, which is quite interesting. But then we also have Rank Demons getting that Ascent out, picking into Pool, actually. I think it's, uh, from the information I'm seeing, I think we've got that mixed up. I think it was Haven pick for Rank Demons. Um, that might just be in the wrong order, I think. Either way, we've got two conflicting pieces either there. way, it does not even matter. We're go definitely we're going to Haven, we're definitely going to Pill, and definitely Lotus is going to be the decider. So, from what I know, this is quite the exact map picks that we had, and yeah, in the exactly. same order from the last time that they came against yeah. each other. And just a quick recap: Well, AEX came through the grand um, came to the grand finals through the upper bracket, so they were victorious in a two-one fashion. They lost on Haven dominated on Pill, but then also won in overtime on the Lotus game. Yeah, I mean, that's why I was surprised to see this Haven come back on in, but they must be pretty scared of the other map picks, which could be coming their way. Uh, so opting into that Haven, feeling like they might have a good chance there. Honestly, if they manage to chill themselves out, um, focus on the kind of things which they were struggling with and, and kind of make sure they don't get swept up in their opponent's tempo, I think they could still take the Haven. It just mm. requires them to be able to do that. And I think with the way we've seen uh, Ranked Demons play, it might not be so easy. I think both teams have definitely settled into the tournament a lot as well, since Haven was the very first map of the day completely for AEX as well. So I'm just kind of in the mindset of, okay, it was the first map, it was the first match, and it was the first game that they played. A little bit of leeway for both teams, and we've seen both of the teams throughout the upper bracket and lower bracket run have developed so vastly over the last couple of hours and for it to go back to the very first game that we casted on stream today it's kind of a bit like a full circle same exact maps same exact order and it's kind of interesting to see how the endurance of these players are going to come into it now because at the start it was kind of like okay how well are you going to do with just a warm up this is the first official of the day how how are the nerves feeling but now it's coming to the end of the day this is the grand finals some of these players have played like six or seven maps now yep. and now we're going back into another best of three the same maps that we started with and it's going to be the test of endurance versus what we saw at the start which was how well you are getting out of the gate into and hitting the ground running yeah i mean it's it's definitely going to be interesting to see whether that is going to come on in because that haven map did feel like they were a bit unprepared i, I actually kind of agree with that aex um won nova when they got into the swing of things they looked so confident and we didn't i don't think we saw a shred of that unfortunately on on the first map they did have some success when it came to the attacking half when it came through to them um but i don't know if it's really going to be enough to allow them to have control in the same way i think what's interesting here is the differing side picks so for example i think ranked demon started on attack the first time around on haven um, and this time aex is starting on the attack and i think that could make a world of difference when it comes to um getting the momentum early and getting a bunch of rounds under your belt and then from there just trying to eke out a couple of rounds on defense and again, like you were saying, they've swapped the sides that they are starting, whether it's attack or defense. And it's AEX are an attacker sided team, it's an attacker sided yep. map. So it's definitely going to be a little bit of a confidence boost, possibly, if they can get and hit the ground running, like you said, for that first map of this series, the grand finals, again, which is, well, it's been a lovely weekend. Like, TGH have put on an amazing event for um, the female and marginalized gender community, partnered with Riot as well, so they can have that contenders um, upgrade um, and qualification. But talking about ha Haven, 
can we get into that game? Because I really want to get started on this series. This best of three, the grand finals. Let's get into the agent select and see if there's going to be any sort of changes or we're going to be going back to the same exact repeat of the very first map of the today. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see very similar comps, maybe a little bit of flex around in terms of the agents. I would love to see some rays here from someone, uh, probably Tiny Lady, but it uh, doesn't look like they're hovering, at least at the current moment. Obviously, moving on over, picking up the Sovas, which are so good. Wouldn't be surprised to see Double Breach. Obviously, going to get to see the Double Killjoy. There's a kind of core of this uh, map, and I think both these teams looking towards it. The brimstone, not usual here, but hey, if it works for you, this may, um, this maybe, absolutely go for it. We've been seeing what you're able to do when you're on that comfort, so use that comfort effectively. Speaking of that, Tiny Lady is looking to go on over to the raise, and I mean, what more could you really ask for? I was actually quite interested to see if she would be locking that jet. Obviously, he's still not locked in the raise just yet. Yeah, might have a little bit of a change of heart, but it's the way um, the initiator and the duelist interact together you tend to see the rays with a fey aid so they can do um seize nades and that sort of combination of utility and then there's stuff like um the jet and the sova combination of utility that works possibly slightly better than the uh, sova rays but like we saw in the very first um matchup they actually won this it was a 13 10 victory two ranked demons when we saw them face up against ax1 nova in the first half and it was with the tiny lady on raise and Adina on Sova, and but they're also just maybe on that brim. So we've already had that sort of um, match up. So it's exactly the same, same comp, same, same map, same roles. The only thing that's changed is whether they're starting defense or attack. Yeah, um, and you know, it seems like a very simple thing, but in terms of the momentum of the game, in terms of who gets the advantage first, who really gets to kind of set the pace, um, I think it could make a huge, huge difference here, honestly. I'm looking forward to as well seeing whether we have the pistols kind of change, because that's a big thing, right? You were talking about ranked demons, they're struggling with those pistols, whereas AEX, I think they've had a lot of success there, and just that one number kind of ramps up massively you know you've got the bonus you've got the um obviously you've got the uh, the second round as well where you're able to force up against your opponents who shouldn't have too much econ there's so many things that you can kind of convert and get off of that single round that it makes a world of difference look at this all these players started up towards mid it's going to be very stacked and it's going to be such a skirmish going into this now yeah, I mean, they are cheating back and forth, trying to get those shots with the ghost, but I think they were getting blocked. The frenzy, however, has been strong in this series so far. Well, over to the rest of today so far, obviously, we're just starting off this series, but the ghost in Adina is certainly looking for some heads as well. Ikyu, showing the kind of form that we saw in that first series and starting off with the kind of energy that I really want to see from this team. Yeah, Ikyu definitely hitting the ground running. They're coming back after a couple of hours break as well as since Ranked Humans had to go through the lower bracket to make it up into this grand finals here with them. But it doesn't look like they've cooled down since the last time we saw them <laughs> over on Lotus in that triple OT game. And, well, four, four kills in the first round, two away from the blaze so now which is going to be really pivotal if they can get this online for next round into the bonus as it could be a very good win condition for them to convert the bonus round into the uh, 3-0. Yeah, I really like it as an idea to try and get that advantage and really extend it super duper far and a lot of teams kind of sleep on it just how powerful it could be especially in the hands of a great jet like we can see here. Adina moving up, trying to get something for their team, but it's a lot of damage from that Sheriff and the turret as well. There's so many players being held back behind it, and it's a slow start for AEX1 Nova, who now are looking towards that seaside. Yeah, definitely um, being careful of any sort of stack that um, ranked demons are doing, or any sort of aggressive play, in which, realistically, is the right um, way to approach this, since, well, it was a five stack towards A, a lot of pressure up A long and short, and, well, Ella getting a little bit of a trip damage, allowing the team to explore through mid in a safe passage and go over towards C to get that bomb plant down. They have so much space now to be able to set themselves up into a post plant positioning. And we've got this uh, triple setup towards garage and um, the little uh, highway into sight. And there you go, double kills coming out now for AX. 
Yeah, really nice player on this garage. So you actually get a frag onto one of these players, but the Spectre's just too strong right now. Just maybe looking at the situation and going, well, I could try and push on forward, maybe get something with the smoke, maybe pick up that uh, Spectre. I think there might be one on the floor. I'm not sure if it got grabbed and moved forward. Uh, but just maybe, I think, maybe looking for it, no. Uh, instead, get ahead on into the site. Doesn't have enough time. Just make sure they die to that spike to make sure that, obviously, they get that ult charge point. I don't think they get the oh, ult no, charge. Oh, no, they don't, yeah. No. It's, to okay. it's to stop um, AEX getting the ult charge, if oh, that makes yes, sense. Yes, if, if they died to them, they'd get it. Yeah. And also AEX player would too. Yep. But either way, it is um, a death, technically. They won't be carrying any shields, any weapons through forward, but that's okay. That is the third round. They were experienced in this, they were expecting it, and they can fall by up into it. They have full utility, full armor, full weaponry. And well, the Bladestorm, like I mentioned, is online now for... Um, AX one Nova's jet player to use EQ there, going for a very fast aggressive play onto the C bomb site. EQ definitely trying to play that fast and loose style. They take down Tycho and that site in complete control. And especially when you're kind of in these situations, these specters become all the more valuable. But they do lose Ella on the backside. That means the flank is well open. But the rifle in the hand of EQ will mean they're able to clean that one up. Three versus two. What? But that is a spray and a half from Adina here. I don't think they know where the last player is. They try and go hard on them, but it will be the refrag here from this Mavy. That was a one heck of a spray through the smoke. And yeah, it was a spray through the smoke, but also a collapse as well. I don't think they were completely aware that there were two players there, but you'll take what you're given, especially in that situation, getting it down to the 1v, uh, 2v1 situation, then to the 1v1, and allow your ranked demons to pick up their first um, point. Although, that's quite an expensive round for them. That was the um, bonus round for the side of AEX, and all they really expended there was that blade storm. And now they're going into this full armor, full weaponry, and against the side of ranked humans, you're getting judges and guardians. It's it's not looking that favorable for them. So a very good bonus from AEX. Yeah, that's very much dodging a bullet for ranked demons because that could have easily been one bonus, absolutely destroy their economy, and then they really struggle for the rest of this kind of first part of the half. So ranked demons managing to dodge that, managing to at least have something to contest here, but they're not out of the woods just yet. Not out of the woods, but the definitely the Aldrin coming up. The sound cue should be getting fed into this, but it's not. And it's Adina, Tiny Lady, picking up three for themselves. Trey's going back and forth. It's now down to Kraya, and only Kraya for the side of AEX. And, well, it's a stark difference from the last round compared to this one, especially when, well, the gun, the gun power was in favor of AEX. Yeah, I mean, it was also just the pure gunnery from these players, right? Swinging out wide, winning out on those jewels while players tried to move on in. They had a lot of angles they were holding. The rotates were swift as well towards this A site. There's, there was a lot of kind of things that went well for ranked demons there. And I think their calling on this map as well was quite impressive the last time we saw it. And it was a key of what made them effective, right? That is, individually, they were playing well, but also they were communicating effectively. And that's a big part of it. Yeah, absolutely. Communication is key as the phrase goes. But do you know what also is key is getting those shots off and Adina using that um, reveal to get the pick onto Kaneko and within 20 seconds the first kill is in the way of Ranked Demons yet again. But Iko and AEX um, fellow team members are making their way onto C and securing more space towards CT. Hunter's Fury to try and deny the plant here, or maybe catch one of these players off guard. Doesn't manage to land onto anyone, but Dismavy yet again manages to find a frag and takes out IQ. That's the first point of contact here. Jumps around the corner, Tiny Lady making a mistake, but that satchel charge has given them the space, given them the respite to maybe turn this into something. With the paranoia and with the moving forward, Hero definitely trying to put that pressure on by space, by time, for the spike which has already been planted. Dismavy makes sure that that alarm is not going to be a problem, but the ranges, the plays, the ranked demons contesting these fights is just Looking so darn good. A spray will make it happen, and Kraya is able to reposition as that showstopper doesn't quite land as they want to. Tiny Lady has been struggling with this, and the pistol from Kraya manages to confirm it. The damage was done, and it's 3 2 to AEX 1 Nova. One bullet left in the Phantom Mag, and she gets the classic out. The free gun and right clicks across <laughs> and connects the headshots, and that is a round win to AEX. One that you didn't quite expect, especially after the positions you see ranked demons getting in the flank with Tiny Lady, getting the kill onto her, and then um, you had uh, Dina, sorry, in the backside crunching onto um, Korea, but she was just being able to play a ring around of Rosie there and, well, dodge and isolate 1v1s.
<laughs> AX1 again, taking great advantage on that seaside, I think is a good idea for them in terms of the way they play forward when they get one of those opening picks. And Well, if they can get there, it's great, but sometimes they certainly can't. Dashes on and uses the Cloud Burst, but they manage to catch even though they can cast. That is so brutal! And AX1, no, but not just take the space, but take some players too. And trying to contest it with these sheriffs, but it's just not working right now for ranked demons. They get some damage down, but they don't kill anyone. And there's all the spraying into these smokes going back and forth. And who can blame them with the success that it's seen so far? Eventually, Koniko go, does go down. It's only a single player advantage right now for AEX1 Nova, but not for very long as those spray bursts come on through. They tap away, and Adina is the only one remaining with only 15 life to their name. And it does look like that's a four on the board for AEX one over. Definitely a stronger showing from them as it originally was when we first saw them on this map, especially on their attacking half, which it didn't start off too great, but now it's definitely improving and improving and it's come leaps and bounds and it just feels like the players are so confident within themselves and in their team. But going into this, there's a lot of um, lack of mid pressure that I'm seeing from ranked demons. They're not really exploring it too much. They, they've had a few rounds on ecos or on pistols or on bonuses and stuff like that that they've explored it. Or if they do come for that B site, then they just play for that retake. But there's no sort of flanking from A out of garage or any try and pushing like that. It always tends to be you get them coming falling back from A and then they're dying in um, A link close to the A heaven path. I mean, I would like to see a little bit more pressure towards that and maybe the garage um, a little bit more tentatively rather than committing hard towards it. But on the whole, I think AEX as well, kind of understanding um, how to kind of play the wider micro map, but they're just macro map, but they're just pushing on in, contesting these angles and winning these duels. And hey, I guess if it works, it works, especially against a team like Ranked Demons. If you're confident and you're hitting your shots, you'll take it. But they get those opening frags and they instantly go, okay, well, now we've got this advantage. We might as well make sure, first of all, that rifle is safe and then make a move more aggressive. Yeah, and getting that rifle off the board, especially since uh, Ranked Demons are on a hard eco here, they have Marshals and Sheriffs, or Stingers possibly, on some of these players. Uh, they've re... Venturing towards C, knowing that the uh, Killjoy is going to be near since the Killjoy utility is up, but Adina is going to take that pick onto Ikkyo, overstepping before the smokes are out, but the information's there still. Good um, utility from the side of AX Nova to delay this sort of retake attempt. Yeah, Adina investing towards it. There is the usage of the barrage, but good play there. Make sure they have the nanoswarms ready so you can't deny them away from that. The lockdown, however, won't go through. The Hunter's Fury, however, absolutely will, and they pick off Tycho instantaneously there. They're going to try and get the most value out of that one as the players just spray on forward, take them on down. And AEOX1 Nova, in spite of what could have been a real problem with that orbital bombardment, do manage to make it happen. You like the word bombardment, don't you? Yeah, it's a good word. Oh. It's an orbital strike. It's an orbital strike, yeah, yeah. I but I, 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 honestly, I love the orbital bombard. It just sounds so much cooler, doesn't it? Yeah. I guess bombardment is more like missiles and bombs rather than a laser beam, which is definitely a strike. I suppose. Yeah. 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 I, I, I understand your thought process. And it does just sound cooler. But do you know what is sounding cooler is AEX1's approach to how they're attacking this map. They send in, um, well, players towards A and towards A long. If they're peeking, they again, they're trying to isolate those picks. And then they reset. There's a lot of resetting going from AEX, which is something that I'm enjoying seeing. They're not just saying, okay, we've got to pick A, we have to get A. They're like, okay, we've got to pick A. What's the likelihood that there's going to be another two people here already? But Adina is definitely putting the likelihood of Kaneko playing much of this round to a zero. Oh, the spray through but doesn't lead to it. This maybe pushes in aggressively and actually gets the kill with the shorty. The team is actually even as a result of that. Good aggression actually working out brilliantly. Start going through, but damage not going in. However, just maybe still wins that duel. Has been playing so well on this brim. It's going to be a plant towards that C site most likely here. Um, the Killjoy is no near. Really ready. The Killjoy is still alive, importantly, from ranked demons. So they need to be able to make sure to shoot that one out and not get caught. Oh, and especially for um, her, there, she is so low. She's 3 HP to a name. Any sort of mishap of that turret or um, nanoswarms could have proven, well, quite awful. 
Oh, the judge on the flank from Tycho here is a brilliant 2k for them, and it's a nice round to pick up here. Ranked demons play effectively, and it always seems to be a Dino, right, on that A site through smokes, catching people with those darts. It's brutal, right, when you're pushing on and you're like, ah, I've got the smoke, they can't see me. Little do you know, there's a server waiting there, ready to spawn you. And there's something that we saw every time we've seen them on this map, all going back to right at the start of the day, around 12 o'clock, so that's exactly what she was doing, and the amount of kills she bested from it, it, you'd expect them to have learned from their mistakes, let's just say. And especially in the time off that they had, they knew that they'd be going against one of these teams again from following the lower bracket. But it's kind of... There's not much you can really do except shoot her out, but by the time someone has figured out which direction she shot the dart this time, someone's already been scanned and someone's already dead to rights. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it makes things difficult. Um, I don't know how else you're supposed to deal with it. I guess just spray Adina when you know they're trying to go for it is a simple answer. Or yeah. spay and some of that utility. They don't have access to the paint shells, so they can't use that to get it away. Maybe a nano swarm, but you really want to save those for post plants. So it's very much a, like a, a, a question of how do you deal with it. Now, Kaneko is looking to pose some questions of their own. Aggressive here on the breach. It's got some backup. They should be able to make that push forward. They do manage to take one. But the push forward is denied as Ruby Bob does actually manage to deal with the breach who gets a little bit too big for their boots. Yeah, a little bit too big for the boots, but also a little too far into the, well, the defender spawn. But also, Ella and Tycho getting that killjoy battle towards mid. Tycho, uh, Ella coming on top and going to be able to flank around now. So they're going to have to worry about the players in front and also behind them. And just time as much as they can waste. Yeah, trying to go for that teleport, or trying to contest in some way, shape, or form. But there it is, Adina managing to deliver really great play around the utility. And I want to just highlight, right, tiny, tiny lady. That satchel charge was so brilliantly done; it made them so quick. The, the jet just was not expecting the race to be there in time. They knew that they were coming. They knew they'd already won a duel there, but just instantly the satchel and they were in position completely catching them off guard and meaning that AEX1 Nova were out of position and then lacked the ability to properly contest on the site. And contesting on the site is exactly what ranked teams are doing. They're very much going towards uh, fast retakes. They're aware of certain players and um, we were Bebop's pick onto um, Kaneko. There was pivotal since it took the um, Rolling Thunder off the board, took the Breach Flash, it took the Breach stuns. it took so much utility in buying time to slow down retakes and to isolate kills on the, re um, on, um, the enemy team's retake. That is just a lot of utility lost. Yeah, they do good refrag here for Tiny Lady means that that advantage that AEX1 Nova were looking for does not quite come to pass. However, those stingers do at least find one frag before finally being shut down here. And demons have to be a little bit worried about those pushes and as a result, Tycho coming in at the right time gives all the opportunity they need in the world. Nadina even looking for a chance to drop here. I think uh, Ella likely going about to be caught in between a rock and a hard place, but just loses the duel versus we would beat Bob there. And Rank Demons have evened the scoreline up. And just like that, it does seem like there's been a, quite a switch in their playstyle in regards to how AEX1 a Nova has been approached and stuff. Or it, I can't tell if it's that or if it's the ranked demons and they've just, well, figured out. They've got the calls. And this is exactly the kind of time I would take a timeout as well for the side of AEX. Something's gone wrong. Something's not working. They need to fix it now before it um, tumbles out of control in this half. Yeah. They don't want to lose too much of a deficit. They need to get an advantage, I feel, here on the attacking side. And AEX1 Nova struggled with this on the last time on Haven. They were not able to make that defense work for them quite as much as they wanted to. So they really could feel that pain coming into this next half. And give, again, Ranked Demons that chance to pick up an advantage early in this series. And then hopefully this time use that as leverage to kind of springboard and pick up a win. Yeah, absolutely. But in regards to this map here, it's 5-5. But in the position that we're talking about now, Ranked Demons are already in a good position to start the second half. It is an attacker-sided map. They have an attacker-sided comp, realistically, with the difference between the Omen and the Brimstone. There's less um, delay utility that they can have on the um, defensive. So it's going to be interesting to see how they come up onto the attack and really flourish into what their comp and, well, what their name really suggests, which is Ranked Demons, the ones that want to be taking the fights, the attacker side of the attacker-heavy teams versus the structure of AEX1. Yeah. 
Phoenix One Nova do have access to a good couple of ultimates to try and maybe force their way on any in particular the Rolling Thunder. But it might be easier said than done with the positions that and ranked teams are playing. You can see even Tiny um, Tiny Lady waiting on kind of an off angle if they try to contest in mid here. I like this aggressive mid control that you were asking for, I believe, earlier from uh, ranked demons. And I think it's worth one that's fun. Yeah, absolutely. And Tiny is going to be venturing down. Paranoia traded for this, though. And there's going to be two players now stuck in that cubby. They're going to be venturing back onto the B site together, but it doesn't matter. They're not venturing. A anyway, Croya and Koneko picking up one for themselves there. And, well, the reset, they've given back up the space. They haven't decided exactly where to go yet. They're still assessing situations, but it looks like it's going to be towards an A exec. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't they if they can open that one up? The only problem I think they might face is Adina, who always seems to be a thorn in their side, has access to the Hunter's Fury, but also obviously the Dart to try and deal with the smokes that could be coming on in. Do still have access to the Dark Cover, I think, just waiting for that one to come through. Or they're going to have to peek Adina with uh, great difficulty. You can see that Dart can come through now, waiting for it, forced off. The Concussion goes on in, still trying to line up that shot, but it just doesn't happen. Finally, Adina is the one to fall instead, and this is the kind of round that AEX1 Nova desperately looking for. <sighs> this may be looking for a chance to get that shorty going, but uh, it's going to be the spike plant, and instead they're going to have to make their way on in. And it is. It's a 2v5 for you take. They have plenty of money, so there's no problems, no qualms of them going for this. It just it depends if they are wanting to. The crossfires are set up. Utility trying to be expended here just to try and force some players out of position, but they are not there. Tyco drops from heaven, gets one, traded instantly back out. Losing one in that um, position there is okay. They're going to be going into this next round now with utility, with the breach ultimate, and also so much economy that they should be fine. On the other hand, ranked demons, they're, they're, they're having a little bit of financial issues trying to afford this operator now for um, Adina over towards um, the C site. It's uh, surprising to me that they're opting into this operator for Adina here. It's not something they've done a huge amount. I think they did it once or twice, but I don't know if it's... I guess for the C site, you really want to lock it down, but we've seen so much pressure towards mid and A that I don't know if it's the kind of investment that I would have expected at the very least. They might have the perfect read, who knows? But we have we have seen an um, op, uh, op on the Killjoy on Ascent against um, t the, t the A team. But whether it's going to be fruitful against AX is going to be another question, since, like you said, they are venturing towards mid. They're not going for these um, C long peaks is mainly the turret that was taking those peaks for them whether they would have gotten a uh, operator just to get rid of a turret i don't think so so maybe it's just they're trying to corral them into a certain area especially with um tiny now taking up a position in short the information and any sort of damage you can get is going to be so important but it's who that gets the headshot from the phantom mm -hmm. I love the fact that um, they had Adina on that C site. They shot one shot, saw a little bit of contact, and was like, okay, we could just move that operator. So the fear is still there for the C site. They're unlikely to look for that push. The Rolling Thunder does not hit IQ here, and that could be absolutely huge. Does get scanned, however. That location being revealed does mean the pressure is really going to come on. That spray almost lands, but it's just going to be kills coming in for their breach instead, and they can't commit towards it. The lockdown is a little bit too much, and look where IQ is going to be. Actually, going to catch themselves a little bit of check. a chance here. This could be someone pushing on up. No, they were ready for it. They knew that there was going to be a player there. And Ikkyu is now completely sussed out. As a result, Tycho will be able to take them down. But the time is ticking. They need to clear this quickly, get that spike on down. And they just get the frags instead. And while well, they did leave it quite, quite close to the time of ticking down, I was wondering why certain people were peeking. I was like, wait, hang on. Why is Ikkyu peeking? Wait, they haven't got the spike down yet. There's like 10 seconds left on the board. They have to do something. And well, Ranked Demons definitely didn't want them getting that plant down and were just facing, which... Unfortunately for them, it was AEX1's team that were the ones who came victorious in those frags. Yeah. So AEX1 Nova do actually come out of that half with an advantage, albeit a small one, only the two rounds minimum you can get. But Rank Demon is still picking up quite a good number of rounds for themselves coming on this attacking side. Yep. You were also highlighting how good their comp is when it comes to the attacking side. This could be their chance to really shine, and I think the question really comes is AEX1 Nova, when they're not the ones dictating the pace, are they going to struggle in the same way we saw them on this map before? 
I think they have a really good ability to take this mid, which is exactly what they're going to be doing. We've seen this before, the garage peaks and then the Ikea going all the way down into window. Get that pick onto Taiko, so unexpected. The frenzy coming in, Kaneko and Ikea and, and Ella picking up one for themselves. It's all down to the Sova, who has already been spotted long by um, the Omen player. But Spike is down. They're going to have to retrieve any sort of kills, guns, and also the Spike. I think Adina very much looking at this one going, okay, well, it's like a puzzle, but it's a puzzle that I might not really get to finish. Adina going to be able to sneak away because of the dark cover, but does not know that there's likely a player on that left-hand side. But if they move on out into it, they're certainly going to find very quickly as Ella just nears on the, in, in on their position. And that pistol round that we said AEX1 Nova are very good at does go their way. And that's both pistol rounds now from this um, map going in their way. And they're very... They, I don't know what the um, actual stats are for this um, tournament so far, but from what we've seen from AEX, they've been very good at converting the bonuses. I think they've only lost one um, yeah. second round after they've won a pistol, which is, is realistically, that's not that bad, especially since that we've seen a lot of teams force up buying stingers, taking shotguns and taking that various cheesy strats, being able to only say one or two lost um, second rounds is good. It's a good number when you have so many different kind of strange tactics coming your way. You just really want to make sure. Though, good concussion does force away. Dark cover goes through. Ella is waiting in the wings with that spectre, and that is going to be a pretty difficult situation, as there's going to be so many bullets flying through. As the reload, they try to push forward, but to no avail. Alas, as ranked demons, then there was one. And look where IQ is, looking for that final one. Lovely snap then onto the remaining player. And, well, that's nine on the board for them. Although this isn't a very heavy investment for them, it was a full Spectre one. It was flawless although, so they're going to be carrying all five of those Spectres over. But there's no sort of rifles available that we've seen them have in past. Sometimes buying a um, Bulldog, Guardian, or even um, investing into a full Vandal. So going into this um, bonus round, I want to see how well they can get some sort of like a herd mentality kind of thing. And really show, okay, three Spectres can be better than two Vandals. So having the numbers advantage and just the overwhelming power if they can push a certain area. Which is exactly what they're doing down towards C. Yeah. It's going to be a lot pressure towards that scene. I, 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 I mean, I like it. It's worked for them before, but also they've made some mistakes and really forced themselves into difficult situations when they lose those interactions early. And I think that's always something you've got to be wary of. But also, you know, you can't let it stop you from trying to make a play. Love the aggression here from Ella to try and swing out wide and find another frag. They only get one, but at least it's a trade, right? Keep in mind, every little bit of damage is going to be more valuable for AEX1 Nova, especially since they've got a little bit of a buffer in terms of rounds. Can I go waiting for Wait, a chance to catch someone here? I don't think they realize that they've already crossed into long. So the position of Ikio here could be so unknown and so vital and there you go already one pick two picks now onto Weebu and Adina and there the flank through short as well the flankers over Koneko and EQ are the pinnacle in that round since well the killjoy had barely missed the timing on that flank of the players coming around the utility was down for milliseconds when they came back around the corner well EQ had already made it all the way down long and the teammates are in a way and there you go, bonus converted. Yeah, double can digits I, found. Can I go even jumped on over that, that uh, turret as we got to see, which is always a spicy play because it just couldn't see them at that uh, position. So she managed to make good usage of that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, as you said, just the rotations from AEX1 Nova are a little bit too fast this time. And I think the calls maybe have sharpened up a little bit. Maybe it is a little bit of that warming up because they did not look this sharp, especially on the defense. Um, when we last saw them on Haven. And that was why I was a little bit worried coming here, but it seems like they're confident. It seems like they're pretty sure. Kaneko shuts that push down as they try to get a little bit greedy with it, but ranked demons, unfortunately, find themselves getting absolutely mowed down. The Stinger does find one at the very least here, but this maybe is going to have to deal with quite a few people pushing on through, which the Stinger certainly can, but with a superior weapon, it might be difficult to really make too much happen, as now only two rounds away from picking up map one and AEX1 Nova looking for that do-over, as they seem to have a better performance than last time. Yeah, you are talking about how they're looking a lot sharper in regards to possibly calls, the IGLs feeling a lot more confident. But I don't think it's... Oh my gosh... <laughs> I've been talking too much. I generally think it's the way um, AX1 Nova don't necessarily look sharp in regards to what calls as the general thing. They're looking so decisive in regards to we 
maybe had some um and ah in mind as we got into it. It was not necessarily not trusting the IGL or something, but it's the taking time, having to react. But now they look like such a well-oiled machine. Something happens and this straight away. Everybody knows what they want to do and what they have to do in reaction to it, rather than it be this happened, the IGL calls something, then they have to do it. Is it seems like it's more of a mechanical algorithm now. Yeah. Like a literal machine, like yeah. when one thing moves, the other moves, not because it has to think about the fact that something has moved. It's not had to have that extra hesitation. And, and, and yeah, I mean, they certainly look just more alive. That dart almost Ooh. killing Hera, but is still alive. I'm going to use that cover, but going to get sprayed through it a little bit too quick on it. And Adina will push up, get refragged, AEX one Nova, not losing all too much, especially in a lot of these exchanges, because as you said before, there's no hesitation there. Someone is no. ready and willing to snap onto these situations and get an advantage back. And the ones who are trying to get the advantage back this time is Ranked Demons equal in that man count now with that pick from his, um, this maybe is, well, the support players of the Ranked Demons versus... Jet, Killjoy, and Sova for AEX, who are both zeroing in on the fact that they are coming to be. Thirty seconds left. This could be a chance then. Good look for AQ. Getting aggressive. Actually doesn't manage to catch what a flick coming on out there. Two versus two now. Looking for a chance. The flash comes on in, so Ella's bot also not keeping an eye on things as you see. Nanoswarm invested, knows now that there's a player there. Ella flashed, but no one pushes them, so this is absolutely perfect. Knows that there's a player especially because that gun does peek out. That's going to be an easy frag for Kraya as well. They're going to double on up. They peek out as a duo and utilize the numbers advantage that they have. AEX1 Nova on match point for a map that they struggled with last time. Yeah, and struggled with quite dearly. They lost it 13-10, but the, um, their defensive half was like quite awful and I say that in the nicest way because now they're coming into this and it looks sublime the yeah. difference between their attack <laughs> their defending half now just they have not lost a defending round yet and when we were looking at the first match they defending round the defending half was uh, a lot to be desired but when we're coming into this now we I like how initiative they're taking as AEX I was talking about when um, ranked teammates weren't um, venturing out of garage for any sort of retakes or any pushes. That's exactly what AEX have literally just done in that round. Bella went out, took that 1v1, but also, like you said, that position and she was able to get the information. And then she got flashed twice, but nobody peeked off it. Nobody ice wanted to take the isolated 1v1 on a flashed player. Yeah, I mean, maybe the communication wasn't there. Maybe they just didn't have the time or the space or were a little bit too worried about it. Ella certainly isn't worried about anything, but Tycho strikes right on back. And it looks like Ranked Demon's aggression this time is working out for them. They're able to get something going. They invest a lockdown to really make sure this happens. And they even win the duels. This is the Ranked Demons that we've seen before when they are running on a hot streak. Oh boy, are they running on a hot streak. Ranked Demon's very able, very willing to shut down any of these pushes. And it's all onto the shoulders of Ikkyo to try and close it out in a 13-5 fashion. But, uh, no. They've, they've got at least another round in the Medina securing that as well f for the size of ranked demons. Well, I think the question really remains is how much better can AEX1 Nova do? Especially looking at this, this is the benchmark which I'm using for the rest of the series. This is looking like it could be a 2-0. It could be that first place in pretty short order for AEX1 Nova. Ranked Demons, we were talking about how much we felt they changed, how much they warmed up, how much other play we'd seen from them. Well, now's the time to show it, right? You've got six-round deficit. Make it up. Yeah, exactly. But also from the side of AEX1, they have six rounds. They have six opportunities to close this iron regulation without even talking about overtime. They've at least secured that. And, well, ranked demons are investing ultimates for an empty site. A barren site is what they're going to be finding themselves on. Yeah, tiny lady going to start to try and jump on in. Knows that the orbital strike <gasps> oh is my gosh. there. They don't know, however, that Kaneko is waiting in the wings, gets the spray on one, gets some damage, yes, and does actually finish the second as well. This is exactly what Rolling they want, and the Rolling Thunder can come right on through. IQ manages to dodge away, does fall, but with the rest of the team pushing on in, that might not matter so much. You could try and play from long, but Ella is going to spray you down, put the pressure on. You know that the Hunter's Fury is coming through, yes, but what are they really going to be able to do? They catch one. Can they finish it off? No, they can't, as Ella is getting aggressive. Just holds on the spike. There it is. Ella finishes 
Precious, the last remaining player, and AEX1 Nova. They struggled here before, but in spite of that, they come through, they deliver. The 13-6 scoreline, that is completely flipping the script. Flipping the script from a 13-10 loss, they're going to a 13-6 win. Absolutely amazing from the side of AEX. They've come into this, they've learned from the, well, not necessarily mistakes over the first map that they played against them. It was more, they've learned from the past experience because, like, they won the series overall, but, yes, they lost that map. Now they're coming into this, the same map, Vito, same map, well, order, and they have just absolutely knocked it out of the park. A 13-6 victory on their opponent's map pick in the grand finals of Birds of Prey. Yeah, what a performance, and we're definitely looking at them now as the favourites to win the entire series. If they weren't already before from winning yeah. the previous series, they've got two of the same maps, which they already showed us some fantastic performances on. I'm certainly excited to see what they're going to be able to do there, and if we get to see more highlight reels, is the, is the first thing and the very simplest thing that I'm looking for. Yeah, Iggy and Korea absolutely smashed it out of the park for that match. We're talking about, oh, yeah, it was the one player from the past series that was always popping off. But then, no, it was Iggy and Korea, both around the 1917 uh, kills mark, just coming into the last round. But, well, they can get 19 and 17 kills on Haven. Well, we will be back in five minutes to see the next map, which will be Lotus. Are they going to be able to close this out in a 2-0 fashion in the grand finals? Or can ranked demons really push them to limits and take a reverse sweep? Honesty is a one-way gate to hell I want it 
uh, a bit rough. Well, it's not only it's a bit rough, that was the map pick as well, and it looks so dominant from the side over AEX1 Nova, winning it out 13-6. And we'll start performance from Ikyo and also Cray on that Sova. So, going into um, our next map, which is going to be Lotus. Yeah. Yeah. No, Pearl, oh. sorry. No, it's Pearl. Because we, we, it's Lotus Pearl. Lotus is the final map, yeah. Yeah, Lotus is the final map. Lotus was the map that, well, it went to that massive OT on. But no, Pearl is the last time we saw this. It was a 33 between these two teams. So after having a 13-10 last map in uh, like in the first series and changing that to a 13-6, I am skeptical, I think is the yeah. correct word for how I'm expecting the next map to go. Obviously, I can't promise anything that is going to be this, this, and this. Like, But looking at how they've performed previously i do like the adaptations that rank demons have brought in in regards to changing not just the solo viper they've brought in that astra whether they keep it for this matchup again or they change who was playing on the astra since we had different people playing the astra from the split to the um pearl and i just want to see that change that's the one change i want to see from the side of rank demons coming into this is to see if they can have a little bit of a bite back onto the onto pearl but otherwise, it's looking very confident for AEX1 Nova fans. Yeah, I, I think it really is. And, and we've seen just why in previous performances and just in the one line um, we just we had. Completely flipping it on the head, going from losing 13-6 to winning 13-6 is exactly what AEX seemed to be on the trend for. And with Pearl, a map that looked so confident for them, loved the uh, double controller coming on through. Um, it looks super good. It looks super confident. Um it felt like every single round they were pushing, they just knew exactly what they were doing. The executes were there, the communication, the hesitancy that we were talking about that we saw on the Haven the first time round was also gone. Um, and with it already gone, I had hate to see how they've warmed up next. Yeah, exactly. They had the, a bit of a longer break as well between the maps since they were waiting for the lower finals to be completed. So they were coming into this while freshly warmed up fresh off a break as well so they've definitely had enough food to fill the tummies and enough probably red bull as well to make sure they're ready for the matches what are you trying to say with the expectation of the scoreline more like is there a possibility that we're going to see like a massive upset from ranked demons in this okay in my mind give it given the change of like comp if they yeah. do run with the change with the astro well i was gonna say like in my mind aex looked super confident on pearl but they looked like the prime version we've seen of them. I think they looked super good with it. They looked confident. That hesitancy, as we said before, was gone. So I think 13-2 is the best saw line, or 13-2 or 13-3, I can't remember, um, is the best line we were going to get from them at all. So I think actually the score's going to go up this time. It's still going to be a win. It's still going to be dominant, but it's not quite going to be the same. And okay. I mean, these, this agent pick is definitely going to have an impact. Let's see if ranked demons um, are going to go with that pick. And it seems like with Adina hovering it, that they just might be. And I want to see if they do go back to the sky pick. So when they did change off the um, the fade and the um, KO, sorry, they went into the Astra in the sky, which the sky kind of encompasses both fade and KO utility and one with the dog and then also yeah. the flash. So it'd be interesting to see if they do lock in the KO, as it does seem like they're having a bit of a discussion about it. But... AEX were Nova, staying with the same comp, staying with what works. Why fix what isn't broken? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really good question. AEX have looked confident um, on this map before. They've played this comp uh, before today as well. Um, at least I assume they've been pracking it. Off, and it's, at least it looks like they've been pracking it. It looks confident enough that I'd really believe you uh, if you told me that. Um, AEX won Nova, why change it? Well, maybe you think that there's going to be some kind of anti striking, but Rank Demons haven't had enough time. Yeah, Rank Demons definitely haven't, unless they've got some t massive team of people in the background who've been working throughout it all. But they've had different opponents up until now. And yeah, there we go. They're switching back over to that Sky. It makes a sense when they're locking in that Astro and Viper to get the Sky, who's a bit of a more of an all rounder encompassing in regards to uh, initiator utility. You have the flashes that you'd get from the KO, you have the sort of. Um, equivalent of the fade dogs yeah. in the sky dog as well so going into that it makes sense that they've um changed off the ko for that and keeping that astro in since it did look so much more confident when they had the double um control thing and last thing you said when we saw this was oh, i don't know how i feel about non-astro players playing astro and they absolutely knocked you out of the park mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I was really impressed with what Adina was. We then actually saw Tycho play Astra on the next map, which was strange, but also worked for them. Um, Ranked Demons, uh, they're, they're a team who can run Astra, right? So mm -hmm. I have no problems with it now. It was just unproven to me at the time. Um, yeah. So I'm always a little worried, especially since they hadn't run it before. Um, but yeah, I, I think it works for them fine. Um, and I think if they can make good use of it, it could actually deal with a lot of the problems. Obviously being able to uh, concuss some of those areas, maybe catch some of those players um, very impactfully, um, could actually break the kind of pressure that we've been seeing that has been so far pretty unassailable from AEX1 Nova. Well, let's get into it. It is the first rounds now of the second map. And it's going to be a lot of mid pressure from Right Demons. Smoke all from the Viper on double doors to ensure there's no one sneaking through there. But the frenzy of Crow already picking up two. Traded back for one one for two in that situation. We will be about getting the pick onto Akio. It comes to a halt. Everything in art is now gone still. Players reassessing positions, having to clear into water as well. To make sure no one's passed. And that's exactly where they're going to be going. They're going to go through Art into the Ella. Ella is still back here. Has that Nano Swarm. Is going to be able to pop it and probably deal with that player. It doesn't quite kill them, but certainly just force them off the angle. The plant will go through. However, the shots are whiffing. Ella goes to three. Importantly, doesn't die just yet. Could tap away, try and find someone. But Adina's aggression is actually working out well for them. Turret does get shot out, I believe. But the shots from Hera from on high and the rest of this team starting to move on in. The cavalry is there for Ella. And they even managed to find a frag. 3 HP, no problem here. As AEX1 Nova find that first round, that pistol round, as they are so wont to do. And there you go, and you have three players surviving that as well, so it's not as if it's coming down to 1v1 clutch situations. It is quite a convincing win, especially after the first two kills. Korea getting a lovely double kill with that frenzy towards Art, which well, really put a halt to the ranked demon's attack. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty brutal. Um, I, I thought initially, with the way they were able to execute onto the site, maybe Ranked Demons could have got something going, but unfortunately, the fact that Ella survived so long back there at 3 HP is actually kind of crazy, and even manages to turn it into a frag. It shows that AEX1 Nova are very happy to play that slightly more patient style, and I think that patience is key as to what is going to allow them to pick up the win against Ranked Demons here and close out the Series 2-0. Absolutely, and it's definitely something that they're going to want to do. Why take it out to three maps if they can get it done in two, which is definitely the well standpoint that they're going to have after last meeting Ranked Demons on this map. And, well, Ella's taking it into her own hands. They're taking Wee Wee Bebop off the board. Adina getting one for herself, picking up a Spectre as well. So he would, looking to use that spec to get aggressive, but the frenzy is more than enough for some of these players. Tycho looking to truly try and deny this. We talked about how good they are converting this round, but AEX1 Nova this time don't manage to make it happen off the back of some brilliant play from Tycho. The question is, will this be enough to set them ahead? Will this be enough to get ranked demons into the right mindset, into the right position to pick up some wins here? I think there's a little bit of, in that round, we had players just standing out in the open, a little bit unawares of possibilities, maybe taking it for granted, um, some of the rounds that they've had previously in the last match upon this map. And then, obviously, Tycho just stepping up with that frenzy, playing in that little bit of a rat position just underneath the stairs. And, well, unbeknownst to the players of AEX, she was ready and waiting for them. Yeah. A really nice way to be able to pick that one up and rank demons, find the kind of rounds that they need to be picking up. A couple of rounds here and there that allow you to set that econ going that really managed to stop the momentum of AEX1 Nova. But Koneko, getting really up and aggressive. I don't think they're going to be checking for this at all. And there's both of them walking through spawn. They're going to have to be aware of Tiger's positioning. One down. Does Tiger think there could be another? He's actually watching for it. Yeah, you can see the line, sign of, um, the line of sight, keeping an eye out for that one, especially with Hera giving the information away. The Guiding Light, however, does give it a chance to move forward, but Kraya loses out that duel. The weapon advantage right now for Ranked Demons, I think, being the most important thing about this. Trying to land those shots of their Marshal at close range does actually work out for them, but they trade one for one in the end. Manages to upgrade to that Marshal, wants to catch one of these players, but there's too many bullets, too many birds coming on at them, and AUX1 Nova drop another round as a result of kind of the lack of economy that was a symptom um, of the second round. Yeah, definitely a symptom of the second round. 
And the second one they weren't able to convert. So that's the third one now of the tournament. So it's, it's still not a bad statistic, especially since what we've seen from the, um, some of the players in regards to the forces and um, rat plays like shotguns and, and um, frenzies. But going into this now, ranked demons have almost bested their score. The amount of rounds that they got last time <laughs> they saw um, AEX won on this map. So ranked demon fans, it is a good situation to be in at the moment. I was saying, I do think they are going to perform better here. They've already shown us that they can deliver a little bit more. I think the problem was is that AEX1 Nova were more switched on in the previous Haven that we got to see. And, I mean, the question is, are they going to be able to turn that on its head and keep that kind of pressure going? Koneko manages to turn that into oh, a 2k. Lovely. That's exactly the kind of little play that AEX1 and Nova really do love. And as a result, they're going to be able to find a lot of success from it. Tiny Lady does not manage to find any frags extra there. And Koneko, unfortunately, denied the ace by their teammate. But still a flawless round coming through from AEX1 Nova. I think it was on this map, again, we almost had a connector ace from the exact same positioning <laughs> of just the bait play. And since they're not the killjoy, they can play there with a flash if needed. But again, lovely swing out, isolating the 1v1 from the left side and then coming back in for the right side swing. Coming then back in, then running through art, killing the two people coming through main. And then it was left down to hero then f to catch up the straggler that had satcheled all the way into spawn. Nicely done. Ranked Demons, I mean, they were looking to maybe try and make that bonus work for them, but in the end, the weapon advantage for Nova was a little bit too much for them there. Seekers available, but on the flip side, Ranked Demons have access to Lockdown and the Celestial Divide, so I think especially playing on this B side, they have a lot of util to work with. Yeah, and the utility of Hera being here, she has that wall available to give a little bit of delay along with the snake bites if needed, but at the time... Frank Demons aren't taking too much at liberties in regards to the time they're pushing. They're waiting for this uh, Killjoy to go off before they take it, but the Satchel should be here. Oh. But no, Ikki is being caught off guard there. Yeah, I really thought Ikki was going to be ready for that one and get the play off the back of it. The Trailblazer does note where they are. Kaneko under a lot of pressure and as a result is going to get swung. Ranked Demons making good usage of the tempo of the kind of play that they want to be going for and that Cosmic Divide cuts off even more opportunity. Ranked Demons right now have taken up their positions and have taken control of that B-side. Yeah, and this is definitely a change in tempo that was needed. Ranked Demons had been playing a little bit too disjointed in regards to how they want to be spending their time, but Tiny Lady is spending her time well in this round, getting a fourth for herself. A lovely 3k connected to the very first opening pick there. Yeah, nicely done by Tiny Lady again, getting that boost stop, managing to deny um, the jet, which I really didn't expect to happen. I thought they would have been ready for it. They've seen it happen quite a few times now. Tiny Lady loves to use that verticality to their advantage, and I think if you're kind of playing up on that B-side, you really do got to be careful, because Tiny Lady's always such a menace. And I think this timeout is actually quite good in regards to AEX1. I know it's only one round difference, but it's the way that they've been losing the rounds. Yes. Yeah. Right? Realistically, there's nothing wrong with losing gunfights, but it's not just the gunfights that they're losing, it's the disjointedness of how they're going for retakes, how they don't seem prepared for certain situations that they, in the back of their mind, know are going to happen, and it's just having to connect the dots realistically and action them in the game, which they were absolutely amazing at last map. Yeah. But coming into this, it feels like maybe a little bit of the um, break buff the break buff has worn out mm -hmm. and they're coming in, into this on the back foot a little bit but it's only five rounds in it is too early to tell but definitely that last round from rank demons was absolutely lovely in the way they approached it and the speed that they took yeah i, I love the fact that they've kind of just decided okay well if we play contact we play aggressive um, AEX1 Nova's kind of slightly more slower style isn't going to get to take root, and that's why they had success on Haven the first time round, is that decisiveness wasn't quite there from AEX1 Nova, and Ranked Demon were able to really prey upon that. And I think while the decisiveness has returned somewhat for AEX1 Nova, they still got that weakness is if you're playing fast, sometimes they just don't have, to have times to respond, especially when it comes to just those duels. Ranked Demon's are really solid. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not even just about being fast, like you said, it's about controlling the pacing. But Tiny Lady, I don't know where it is and how she gets these first bloods and first picks. And the showstopper now is online and is going to be gathering so much space for the side of Ranked Demons. And the information from Taiko, she gets two for her troubles and Chris 
gets one and trades back out. Four versus two. And Viper's put down is looking dire. Yeah, uh, dire is an understatement, frankly, especially with this last remaining player in Kraya, uh, completely alone, basically, and completely flanked uh, from these two different angles. Ranked Demon shut that round down post um, Brem, post uh, timeout as well. That's really brutal. AX1 Nova looking to try and reset things, get a little bit of an understanding of what they're doing tactically, and unfortunately, it doesn't work at all. I understand wanting to push out through A main and get in control and flanking, but when they don't have any sort of control at all towards mid, they don't even have any control in the sort of um, B link area through double doors into connector. They have no one in R. The closest person they have is someone in water. One have just died on B and then they have three people running straight through spawn. When they've already hit an alarm bar, because you can see the vulnerability, they're not aware that they could be someone in mid, which because they haven't taken time to clear it at all. The flash comes out though, so they're going to be aware of this maybe this time. Yeah, but again, Adina does manage to find that frag onto Konako. And that's a real problem, especially losing your controller. I mean, look, it's an eco round. But again, the fact that Adina is able to just peek out and find those frags, we've seen it even when it isn't an eco round. AEX right now struggling, I think, to respond to some of the pressure that's coming their way. <laughs> And it is certainly pressure that's coming in their way, but two kills, two Kraya, so realistically it's not that bad of an eco round at the end. Kraya pulling back the hopes from the, the eco depth yeah. of despair there. Padding those uh, stats with a couple of those eco round frags does uh, Adia, but I mean, hey, you got to go for it. you got to go for those AEX1 Nova. Down in the dumps right now, I think, um, kind of on that momentum. They had a lot going into this. They picked up their first round, but instantly pipped at the post. Ranked Demons have really managed to control this half quite significantly. And it does feel like uh, Eko's having a little bit of trouble getting online in the series. There's an operator now available for her, and she's going to be posted up towards the B, B long bomb site. With that smoke and flash there, it's going to be well, already taking her off her high pitch position. Mm-hmm. Wants to try and use that dash, wants to try and use the operator to great effect, but is struggling with it. Finally managed to make it happen. The dash didn't go quite as they wanted, but they still got the frag, and that's the most important part. Ranked Demons denied away from trying to contest that long with so much of it, and as a result, they're pushing over to that A site. And we're having players coming back off A when all we've seen towards B is two people, and even then... Out of the two people, someone's already been killed by that operator. But Al is going to be taking out Taiko, taking out the mirror counterpart in this matchup here. So five versus three. And now, there you go. Eko's already rotated over, ready with the operator to take out Tiny Lady and Adina. Yeah, it's a nice couple of frags and finally getting the kind of pressure they need. They know there's a player waiting in this orb, but doesn't spot them out quite straight away. Here eventually falls, but one HP. Eventually, Adina is taken down. Adina has just been the master of those smokes. Master of smokes? Yes. She <laughs> has been um, using... I'm trying to be positive here. I am a very positive outlook person, and Adina has been great. At being a rat. <laughs> so, whether take that as a positive compliment or not, she's been getting those kills, she's been getting certain key frags, and unfortunately sometimes the rest of the team or herself have not been able to follow those three into a round win. But even then, it's 5-3. They're in a positive position for this round. They're getting good rounds on their attacking half. Just see if they can get at least six rounds, trying to get into the seven or eight mark that we had previously on... Um, other maps that we've seen today. Yep. Thank you. Again, locking down that B along. Expecting one of those players has access to the dash, but it's going to expire now. And the patience here, knowing that there's going to be that activation, the flash, not quite going to land, does give them an opportunity, but unfortunately can't quite hit that shot. And with the wall down, they can't peek out in the same way, having to hold a slightly more defensive angle, but the usage of the Viper wall really cuts up this site, makes it much more difficult to make that one happen, and the aggression was denied by Ella. Thank the Lord if you're an AEX1 Nova fan, as the missteps have sometimes been a real problem for them, but Ella has been the stalwart for this squad to give them the space they need. 
And it's a two versus three. It's going to be a two versus two in this lane fight if they choose to commit to it. We have the Killjoy and the Harbor versus the Sky and the Rays in this lane. But it's definitely a tiny lead that's going to be coming out on top, taking that kill onto Ella there. She's not going to be having any more problems, uh, causing any more problems for the side of Ranked Demons in this round. The regrowth now from We Were Bebop. Put in Tiny Lady back up into a good position, getting the spike. Now they've reclaimed it. Oh, They're look at this. Going back to B. The Viper is watching over, though. They try and step through that, especially with Hero just waiting right here. From above, catches the player, almost gets a second, tries to double up some low HP, just has to wait for that spike plant, just has to play patient for it, doesn't have to commit towards it. Now, we'll look for a chance to drop on in, drop on down, wait for the movement, wait for the chance, drops and no! Could it just stayed on high? A misstep there from Kraya, uncharacteristic, and AEX1 Nova seed the round. And that is another round in the way of Ranked Demons being able to clutch it back from, well, the claws of defeat after Ella in the mid section there, putting it, like you said, putting an end to any sort of mid door presence. But Tiny Lady and uh, We Were Bebop had a wraparound from the B Long, taking out the B site players, able to fight their way all the way back up to the spike, then return back to B, take the two 1v1s given to them, and get that round on the board and into six. Oh man, right demons managed to pick that round up in spite of what looked like uh, such a brilliant play from Ella. AX1 Nova definitely hurting after that one. It should have been theirs by right. This time they invest two ultimates at round start one obviously being that Viper's pit and it seems that's where ranked demons really want to push. It's, I mean, if they're confident, if they've got the information, but they've only got one initiator. That makes me question this at least somewhat, but I guess with the boom bot, with a couple of other things you can really invest, you definitely can make this work. The lockdown is definitely one of those. Tiny Lady on the flank manages to pick up a frag, and this dynamic play from Rag Demons is exactly what you want to see from them. A return lockdown coming through, but it's just two versus five right now. The knives come out. They actually take down Tiny Lady, but only for one as Adina still gets that refrag. Yes, there's a detain, but it really doesn't matter. Ella is sat being peppered through these smokes, and there's very little opportunity available to them. And the only opportunity for them in this round is to be able to make it away with their gun. That's the kind of position we're in now, looking at uh, AEX or Nova. They were able to save this. It might be a little bit more beneficial going into the next round since nobody's going to have any money. Ella's going to be the only one with a rifle, anything to her name, if she's going to pass this on to possibly uh, one of the duelists or one of the initial players who's going to be taking these first contacts or a set play that they've got. And... It's just kind of lackluster. We were so confident with AEX um, 1 going into this, especially after the last performance. Ella does pick up one for herself there and is able to save over that uh, rifle. Yeah, I mean, this is simply uncharacteristic for AEX. This is kind of similar to what we saw from Haven the first time around. They kept slipping up. They kept giving opportunities over, I think. AEX won Nova, maybe getting a little bit too complacent in this situation when they should be picking up the win. We've seen that they have the talent to do so. This map was dominant for them last time, and now they're really struggling. Ranked Demons are just firing on all cylinders, and when they've got their game going, it's very hard to stop them because they're just brilliant gunners, they're communicating well individually. Uh, maybe the macro uh, plan as a whole is not always the best. I mean, they seeded control of the spike in the mid, but when it comes to player to player, there's a good amount of chemistry there. Yeah, absolutely. And like we said, the last time we saw them on this map, there was a difference in composition. We had a KO instead of um, the Sky, we had a Fade, and we also only had the Viper for the Smoke. So the difference with this Astra is they're having so much more utility that's useful, and they're benefiting off it. They're working something off it, but do you know working something off is Tiny Lady getting the kill onto Kaneko, traded out by Ella, just maybe picking up two for herself, Adina one for herself too, and now it's Ella again in this situation where it's the one versus X and it's just the one V the shorty and it's the shorty that comes out on top. <laughs> shorty power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a short person. Short face, I know now. I, I love my short kings, but I am not a short queen, thank you very much. <laughs> But right, we're going into the last round of this half. It is do or die here to try and even out the score. And ranked demons are kind of like, okay, do you know what? You've 13 3 us. So we're going to do the exact same to you. It's the kind of vibe that I'm getting off them since they've only allowed three rounds going in the way of AEX1. And one of them was a pistol, which is historically ranked demons were not the best at. So 
that's okay. But then the second round, they managed to convert. And look at this. The fight going into a main. There's a flash. And then after that, nothing. They've already decided that, do you know what? We're not going to deal with you. We don't have to. We're going to go to where there aren't any people. The fast reaction now running over towards B. And the stack of AEX1 are still over towards A. Yeah, and there's that Viper's... Um, pit as well available and ranked demons have been playing around this so darn well I think AEX1 Nova leaving that at B site open is going to be a real problem for them I think honestly they're going to struggle to deal with any of the pressure that's going to be coming their way the Viper's pit is going to go down and well you can see the ranked demons are positioned again for it look at the aggression coming out of, uh, of Tiny getting up on that high ground continually trying to contest these even has the showstopper available you can hear the satchel forward to try and deny these ones the rocket goes deep even lands everything's coming up Tiny Lady right now and everything's coming up ranked demons as they shut that round out tight as anything and there you go it's the 9-3 so we're going back to what we were seeing on well the first time we saw haven it was a 9-3 lead for ranked demons they were able to ax were able to bring it back to that 13-10 loss but ranked demons they're just coming into this with a new well found identity i was talking about how ikio and Nakreo were so good in the last map and it just seems like they're all failing to get online they just not even for lack of trying it's ranked demons have just found the sort of secret recipe to shutting them out and it does seem like adina is that recipe she is the secret ingredient into a pill for ranked demons is the fact that they have that double controller they're relying on be we will be bob for the initiation but Adina has been going above and beyond in her role on Astra, not only as the controller, but also fragging, absolutely fragging power. Yeah, really impressive performance from them as a whole. AEX, one Nova, I mean, <laughs> they just have not been able to keep up with the kind of pressure. The pistol rounds, though, have historically been theirs, and they've got the advantages here again. But for how long when Tiny Lady has that ghost? That is a brutal combination and very difficult to push, especially when they've got access to these paint shells yet again. You can invest the boom bot there to make sure no one's coming on that flank. Adina coming in for the backstab to try and provide and relieve some pressure in this position. The right click at range. What? The left click would have sufficed. I'm going to be what? real with you, buddy, as Hera actually makes it out of that alive. I cast a curse, dude. I just, I've just been like saying how amazing she is, but unfortunately that is something that can happen to the best of us. The nade coming in from Tiny Lady, they now know where she is, and instead of, they're opting for taking this fight because they have to because the um, spike is down towards backside. The lovely two double swing, Hera then with that frenzy. It's terrifying that Tiny Lady actually just completely one one of those players. Easily could have gotten the body shot if the shots had whiffed at all. So that was definitely a very close one. And uh, off the back of the fact that they actually managed to get away with uh, keeping one of those players alive towards the mid area. And AEX1 Nova do pick up that pistol. It wasn't as confident as we've seen before. And that confidence is certainly slipping. Slipping? I wouldn't say just yet. I, like we said, it's the, it's the pistol rounds. We don't want to talk about the pistol rounds for the side of ranked demons, but AEX might, might be, I don't know how good their mental is. We, we don't no. know. They might be the best mental. They might have like sort of fanatic mental. They, they better have scored than the fanatic when they won the world, worlds, didn't it? When, the, when they won lock in, what was it? 11-3 deficit. And they're only in a full nine. They're fine. Yeah, they're, they're just going to, they're just going to pull like a little less impressive fanatic. Cause it's a full nine, not a th three, th 11. Okay. <laughs> For all those uh, AEX1 fans out there, but they're going to be going over towards this B bomb side. The information from that Sky Dog is um, crucial for these players to get into backside. And Ikyo is not going to let a shorty take her down this time, but this plant. Oh, okay. The right clicks have not been working in the way of ranked demons recently. So for um, the side of AEX, you're quite lucky in the situation that some of these players have gotten themselves in. But 5v3. They need to stay alive, all of them, as much as possible to try and get okay, try and get the Spectres into the next round. One, one loss is okay, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, but one loss right on back. It's the conversion of the pistol round as well. So it's a, it's a nice round for AEX1 Nova to pick up, but it's not a problem for ranked demons right now. They've still got a lot of leeway to work with. They're the ones now on the defense. If they can make that work for themselves, um, and I believe they certainly can, especially with this double controller, they have lots of ways to set this one up. Lots of ways to set it up indeed. And when we're looking at the composition of ranked demons, you'd say that's it's kind of turned into an even more defensive comp than you had before. What they had before was that KO, KO, Viper, Killjoy, Raze, and then the Fate. But 
This is quite a defender sided combo. And do you know what? It's not defender sided. EQ going just absolutely in the face of uh, Nas and the two players in double door. Oh, I can't believe that D Dismay maybe is actually able to find these frags like this, continually finding these uh, multi kills that uh, honestly provide so much relief from the pressure that AEX1 were putting on in there. If that dash had worked out from IQ, if the pre pressure or push had come through there and they managed to trade one for one, they would have had access to that A site. There would have been opportunities for AEX1, but they keep not quite making it. And, and, and shout out to Dis maybe because they've been impressing me the whole day long. And also a really nice um, swarm setup for Disney V to actually play off since um, Taika actually got a kill with one of the nano swarms in that situation. And it's just, with the um, play in that utility setup, it doesn't look like um, Disney V has the lineups unless it was missed onto the double door that creates that sort of one way. But even so, they were running through it. There was a Viper Molly on the floor, there was Kildra nano swarms, and even then, they still had their gunner and they were still fighting it because it pushes them into the um, view line of where they're playing from connector. <laughs> and while well, it's just it's kind of like sending lambs to the slaughter at that point. But it's going to be a B site. It's going to be a hit. We need Trailblazer starting to push on through. Tiny Lady is able to back off. <clears throat> Doesn't get caught, so that's important. As the Frank comes around here, they actually manage to catch Tiny Lady, but don't catch the sky, importantly, here. And that's Konica. Uh, Konica is actually able to get that spike on down. You can see. Attempt to contest these where they can, but all these players slipping around, the plant is so open, it might make things very, very difficult here, trying to set up some of those angles. But Adina just walks on through, and this has been a player who we've been so impressed with as of late. The Viper Spike goes a little far, and that means that things could be problematic. The Spike is not planted in the traditional position for these post-plant lineups, and as a result... It's going to be them contesting a little bit more standardly. Though the plant is very open, it is very easy to spray. It is very easy to get those shots on, especially when those walls and those smokes start to fall. They want to land some shots. They need to get the shots down. They kill everybody else, but they don't know they do. Okay, finally kill the plant. I was a little worried they were going to start whiffing and we'd see a repeat <laughs> before where the stack stick just comes on through. I was thinking we might have a repeat of Lotus, but like, obviously the Lotus one was in OT. That yeah. was in the fourth round of OT. <laughs> It wouldn't have been as epic, but definitely something to behold for the side of ranked humans if they were able to get away with it. But AEX1 getting that spray through, making sure there's no one on that bomb, and securing the rest of the kills to close out that round. Four round deficit now, so it's, it's not looking as dire as we would have expected it, especially since they were able to pick up that pistol round, something that well they are known for currently in this tournament. Nice from Tiny Lady, it's a bit of a gambit to kind of be that aggressive onto the turret, but actually shooting out because they know where it's going to be coming uh, it is really nice, and it means that obviously that mid control is not going to be quite there. The AEX1 Nova getting aggressive, managed to just trade those back and forth. The rifle, however, now in the hands of ranked demons. That's never a round um, thing you really want to hear. They're so confident with it. The harbor wall dissipates, but the Viper's Pit certainly ain't going to for a while. Adina, however, with this judge, is well equipped to deal with the Viper's Pit very simply. Yeah, it does seem like that is where she is to be, but Kaneko is shutting down any sort of judge attempt in there, and <laughs> Ty Tiny Lady's just having a little bit of a gander. They've got a lead, it's fine, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe not for much longer, but you know, Tiny Lady is maybe thinking, oh, I can write off the satchels, I can write off the nade, right? What? It was, a, it was a joke, don't worry, it's fine. Well, you know the like... explosion from the satchels allows you to jump forward. Right. I was suggesting that this explosion from the grenade would do the same. No, I think it killed her. Yeah, I think it did yeah. as well, but it, yeah. it's fine. I think, I think... I'm just bad at jokes, it's okay. <laughs> this, is the f this is more the fact that I didn't understand like, what you were trying to say. Like, if you, <laughs> I don't know. You, you caught me, you've caught me slacking and not trying to, not keeping up with the joke. That's my bad, honestly. But keeping up is AEX1 Nova with the scoreline currently. They're 7 and 10. And looking to make this even more of a competition, more of a second match. A little bit of a poke from Tiny Lady and Be Bebop towards um, the end. A very top of B main the information gathered from those four players there. 
are going to be reassessing Ella towards mid like we've seen her multiple times before. It's going to be the Killjoy engagement here and it's Ella that comes on top almost as if it's like history repeating itself round after round. This may be actually this time able to stop Ikyu. That's a nice frag. And I'm interested to see the fact that Ikyu committed towards that when the Viper's pit was already down. But it's going to be that A plant. It's going to be, sorry, going to be the A focus for this. But Adina denies again in the right position at the right time and making all the difference in a world to stop Ella there, who otherwise likely would have taken the site oh so easily. But with that Vandal, they're just so brutal. However, Kraya does mean that it is going to be two versus one rather than, well, the three versus one that we're potentially looking at at their ranked demons looking for a chance to maybe push on in. Kraya making sure that they're not getting flanked and we've got that spike on down in time. Has access to the Reckoning, has access to most of their utility as well, so going to start to round the corner, set up slightly differently for it, and maybe get prepped for that one. This Reckoning is going to be so good if they she's able to um, use it while they're going for the tap, as since they have to stay on that bomb, they can definitely get that stun off. She's going to be going around... Walking into oh. that situation, but the double up of utility has been absolutely amazing with that Viper Snake bite and the paint shells. And that was all Adina, right? Obviously, the utility in the end was very nice, but Adina single handedly delayed the push and then killed three members of the push. A brilliant performance from them that then meant that ranked demons were able to get in position in time, play the 2v1 rather than like a 2v4 that they would have had to deal with otherwise. Ranked demons very much relying on them, and Adina. Showing a pardon me, a spectacular performance like we've seen from them before on that sofa, now over on this Astra, and I'm very happy to see that. Yeah, honestly, the way that the Astra has been integrated into this um, team has just been amazing. Honestly, I, I was kind of skeptical, same as you, when we first saw it a couple of matches back, and it was just like, why wouldn't have we done this in the first place? Because these players are veterans in their own respective teams. Like Tiny has played on Prime, she's ex ITB, and it's just coming into this, they all have that experience of eh, Viper Solo Smokes maybe isn't the best idea, mm -hmm. but they still opted for it, which is, I give kudos to them for playing what they want to play, but then also this adaptation of realizing, okay, we actually do need an Astra, bringing her in and being able to adapt this easily, and well, this well has the, well, the results have been shocking. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have even minded to see this kind of more on other maps as well. I think the Astra could uh, could potentially go there. I think the difference is, is then you have to have uh, DMAV um, actually play something other than, you know, the Viper or the Sage or the Brimstone. So mm -hmm. that might be why. Um, I'm not really sure about it. But I, I like the idea that they have the flexibility open to their team and definitely a lot of improvement. And, I mean, ranked Demons, I think they're only going to get better and better. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they've had two different people playing the Astra in yeah. the last se series that we watched. But it is going to be an A main sort of exploration from the side of AAX. They have players towards mid and also the presence at the start of B long. But it's going to be cleared out by that sky flash now. Now they're knowing there's no ring peeking, no ring facing just yet. So when the rotates are called for, they can do it quite effectively and efficiently. Guiding light is going to come on through and likely spot out onto this player. Does not know that they're quite so close, but that nade's not going to quite do enough. They will be able to deal with Tiny Lady in short order. So a really nice execute in spite of some hiccups coming through there. AEX1 Nova going to get that spike down. They've got Harbour locking off every angle which way. Um, this is a really nice opportunity for them yet again. And Ranked Demons are going to have to make that post plant really work for them. They don't have access to a lockdown. All they've got is the divide, and they're going to have to deal with a lockdown. Aggression from IQ does actually work there. Um, work out in their favor this time, which is always nice to see Ikyu sometimes struggling with those, but we know they're a brilliant player, we know the space they can provide, and when they do, it's integral to AAX1 Nova. And they aren't aware that Adina only has a judge in this position, so when she's going to be peeking that, they're going to be looking the back and off so far, but it does not matter. <laughs> Adina, with that judge, is going to pick up two for herself, and that's a three versus three. Aww. Absolute Rat Queen finding those frags with the Judge, but Ella steps up to the plate, continuing to contest. There's no one touching the spike right now. That's very important in terms of timing. And the attackers do pick up the win in the end. So good play from Hera to be able to lock this one out, but that was a little close for comfort, if you ask me. 
just a little bit, but it's the Adina again. She's just able to pick up these multi, well, I say multi kills, the double kill there out of nowhere and with the judge as well. So it's really nice to see the players. Well, she's on 20, she's 25 and 10 and <laughs> it's not even 20 rounds in the game yet. So we're going into this and it does seem that the scoreboard for the side of ranked demons is a little bit top heavy. And when we're looking at AX1, it's a little, it's more average, and the the kill disparity from the top to bottom isn't as large as that of ranked demons. Oh, that A site is wide open, and AX1 Nova are completely aware of it. They're going to go on to that A site. Um, they checking all these angles, they're making sure, and they're just like, okay, well, the A site push worked last time. Why not go for it again? We can do it slightly faster this time. We know it's going to be an eco. And this is a team, I think, in Ranked Demons who really do love to stack on an eco, right? We've seen them stack towards mid loads of times. And they would have been ready for it as well. This is a really good call, I think, from AEX1 Nova. I also want to see a double up towards this flank watch in regards to where they're going to be expecting these players coming from. And no, it's just Kraya, but Kraya can do one, two, three players on her and then she has the fellow teammates to come up and support. Lovely shots coming in from the Harbour player. Thank you. As well in position. The rest of them kind of have uh, two ultimates available to them, but I love the fact that they have this reckoning. It's sad that they didn't get to use it in the previous round, but Tokyo does actually find a frag here, trying to upgrade that weapon. The pistol in hand now has that Randall, so we'll round the corner, but just was ready for it, was Ella. And another round going the way of no um, AX1 Nova here. Only two rounds in it. They're bringing this one back. Was it 9 3? Yeah, yeah, it was a. Uh, yeah. Was, uh, oh we, no. We don't speak of that in the caster room. <laughs> <laughs> We've already 9-3 Kyrs played teams before, we don't want to do it again, not in the grand finals of all places. But no, like you said, it is a, it was a big round deficit, you can literally see it on the um, scoreline there. And looking at it, it's not that bad for the side of AX Nova in regards to what they've been doing this half. It's been amazing, they've given up two rounds, but Two of those rounds, so one was a bonus, it was the bonus round that they lost, and also one random eco round that the mm -hmm. Mark Demons pulled out from under the rug. And it's just looking so confident in the a AEX1 Nova's um, attack. Yeah, this is going to be that setup, the exact same setup again, and I think AEX1 Nova are very sensibly just coming towards this. They invest the reckoning, expecting someone to be there, but nope. Ranked Demons are playing for the post plant. And I think rightfully so, right? They don't have to contest this. They've got access to the lock now. They've got access to the Seekers and the Cosmic Divide. Like, what more could you ask for on a retake right now if you're Ranked Demons? And as such, they're going to play towards that. Yeah, that's what I'm quite worried about is how they're going to be able to combat all this utility since they're going to have to push in. And the double up of the Killjoy Lockdown and the Cosmic Divide, they can't push to come and fight because they have to get in past this wall. And, well, the, the lineups. Oh, the lineups were there. They need to be quick, though. They need to get that shot. He's... Oh, she manages to survive, and it's Adina as usual. Queen of the Rat picks up a round and moves their team to match point. Yeah, it was just seconds too late on that um, second Viper's um, Molly coming out, the snake bite. And it was really great utility usage from the side of Ranked Demons with that uh, Cosmic Divide doubling up with the lockdown. was absolutely sublime, and like you said... Well, Adina is just taking it into her own hands at this point with regards to how wanting to get this game over and get into the third map. Yeah. I respect the hustle, ranked demons. I mean, this map, if you could argue from the previous series, was their own demon. They weren't able to really get anything going on it. But now, after a little bit of change, moving on over to that Astra that looks so much more comfortable, they're able to really deny AAX1 Nova the kind of pressure that we saw from them before. And I'm loving it. Absolutely. Loving it is exactly what... While well, rank queens are doing to this map since they're getting another first pick onto the board. Yeah, managing to get rid of that, and this judge is, oh my lord, not even there. The headshot at point blank range is also good enough as a shotgun if you have the precision to make it happen. The trailblazer goes, to, sorry, the uh, guiding light there goes a bit deep and doesn't manage to get too much of the flash going. Instead, they're losing players left, right, and center, just maybe trying to discourage players from moving on in, but it just won't happen. The spike goes down, and ranked demons are staring down the barrel of double digits now for AEX1 Nova. They are looking to make that comeback. They're looking to take it to overtime. They are 100% confident in doing it. 
Absolutely, and this is similar to what we saw on Lotus, and it was AX1 Nova that were around 12, um, 9, and I think it was 11, 7 down at one point on that map. Also, made it to OT, and then made it to triple OT to win out that map in the third, well, the decider of the last best of three. They played against each other. And there you go, double digits like you said, it is a 12-10 and now the economy on Ranked Demons is looking dire, so it's looking like it's going to be a 12-11, it's going to come down to the last gun round unless they force or overforce in this round here. I don't know, Adina with a stinger, might be enough. Uh, honestly, the stinger, <laughs> why is that still in the game? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, the stinger is a good gun when it's in my teammates hands when it's in the enemy's hands then I'll have a problem with it <laughs> but in this game like you said Adina has been playing absolutely amazing and do you know what she's trying to do is take the initiative into her own hands like you said St Stinger is doing working wonders she gets two with it but Kraya gets one G getting the classic out <laughs> right clicks the classic onto Tiny Lady and now we're back into a three versus three and even then the change that we've had is we've lost guns for, well, stingers and classics. I think the econ should be fine from AEX1 Nova, but you're giving way too many opportunities over to ranked demons. They could pick up this round and pick up this map in very short order. You cannot afford to slip up like this. It's the very simple answer to this situation. No ultimates available on either side. This may be waiting in the wings to try and play spoiler to this, but with the walls up, it might be a little bit more difficult to contest than you would otherwise like, especially with the lacking weaponry. The plant's going to go on in. This maybe tries to spam away, but it just ain't happening. Position potentially given away, but look at that! We Woo Bip Bop is able to actually deny one of those players away. The plant does go does go down, but that sheriff is not happening. Instead, it's the rifle which closes it out. And AEX1 Nova also generate that Viper's Pit. And there is the Viper's Pit online with the Reckoning and also with the Bladestorm <laughs> for the last round of regulation. And there is Rank Demons finally taking advantage of the timeout. They have to close. Well, they didn't have to, but they were going to be wanting to close this out yeah. in regulation. They don't want to drag it on too much since, well, we've seen what happens when these two teams meet in overtime. Yeah, we have. I mean, Rank Demons right now, I mean... They've got to be kind of scared about it. AEX1 Nova just seem to be so confident in those overtimes. It's just... They've also gotten to the groove of things. I think that's the other part of it. Like, the attackers looked really good for them. I think they feel more comfortable. Again, they're not getting caught off guard by most of what Ranked Demons are doing, unless your name is uh, Akima. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think for the most part, AEX1 Nova have gotten into the swing of things. Yeah, it definitely looks like they've found their identity, and it always does seem to be on the attack, which is... A little bit leaving to a bit of a lackluster on the defense, which, yeah, we've seen it. It's not great. At least yeah. it wasn't in this particular matchup. But they've definitely figured out what was wrong, figured out where they're going, and the plan as well. So it's in that timeout, it also allows EX... E e a e x oh my gosh one Nova's um, coach to talk to them as well. So they both are going to be coming into this with the added backup of any sort of information the coach can relay, any uh, tendencies that the coach has picked up on, on the enemy team. <laughs> Knives out for AQ. Does have access to a backup weapon. That guiding light doesn't really lead to all too much. And in fact, good usage of the smoke actually means that ranked demons are able to kind of keep that A site on lock. And the quick adaptation, they saw, they know what happens when there's a smoke and a flash in a main. That means there's three people and they're ready to fight it. Which means the sudden reaction that the AX1 Nova's had over towards this B site has been great. But they still have to get rid of this Viper from the position and the Reckoning invested along with the dog and the Blaze Storm. Oh Eco my falls. Lord. I can't believe Ikyu lost that one. It's just this maybe yet again playing spoiler to this with Pyko waiting in the wings. This is exactly the opportunity they need. Two player deficit. Plant hasn't gone down yet. Right now, AEX1 over a hemorrhaging rounds where they really shouldn't be. This should have been their opportunity, their time to shine. But those ultimates are getting wasted. It's all getting swandered and ranked demons. They're taking us to map three here. A brilliant performance. Taking it 13-11 right in the nick of time. And well, it does seem to be a little bit of a repeat of the last series we saw it is going to that decider, but they've swapped maps that they're going to take. They're taking each other's map picks. And well, we're still going to be going to Lotus, the same map that we saw the amazing overtime on. Albeit it was quite a long overtime, but I think 
the only way that overtime could have ended was the way that it did with that little bit of a ninja defuse because of how hyped it got. Hopefully we can get something like that again. But first off, give me your thoughts on the map we've just had. Well, I think AEX is it was theirs to lose and well, they did exactly that. A couple of slip-ups here and there. Some brilliant performance in particular from the Astra uh, was all it took for Ranked Demons to take that one. They switched up their composition. They knew what they were going for, and the strategies just sat right. They were able to close that one out and not really give too much uh, of a chance at the very end there for that overtime play, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad for it. Well, glad for it may be you as a Ranked Demon fan, but for the AX1 fans, supporters out there, they're going to be having to face up in the last map of the series. So again, that is Lotus. Last time these guys played against it, I believe it was a 16-14 win or something along those lines. It was triple OT and it came off as a, well, a ninja diffuser. It was a 4v2 and someone stuck the diffuse in the situation. Well, and that was how... The, well, it was written in the, that overtime, and that was what got them into the grand finals now. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a little bit of a revenge match for happening, that happening to them. And I'm really interested to see what it's going to be like. I certainly am. And I, I'm, I'm definitely excited to see if we can get a, a really solid performance uh, in this final game and if Ranked Demons could take it all the darn way. But they're going to have a little bit of a chance to unwind, to chill, to get themselves prepared for the very final map of today. Don't go anywhere. We're going to go for a quick five-minute break. We'll be back with more Valorant action. Why can't you just let me eat my way to My own world of make-believe Kids screaming in the cradles Profanities Some days I feel skinnier Than all the other days Sometimes I can't tell If my body belongs to me I love everything Fire spreading all around my room so bright, it's hard to breathe, but that's all right. Hush. Go. 
We had a barbecue in Santa Fe in May with some friends drinking booze, getting all loose. We drove the cars to the beach on the outside of the streets, sat around a bonfire, eating marshmallows all night. We were young at time, I know it, know it, but you were so damn fine, couldn't get you on my mind. We were young at time, I know it, know it, but I wanted something more than you. Cause you wanna be free for summer, ah Free for summer, free for the sun You wanna be free for summer, ah Hello everybody and welcome back to the Goose House Birds of Prey Series 5. We are here for the final time tonight, for the final map. We've gone all the way here in the Grand Finals. There's a lot of finals I just said, but uh, I am joined by the lovely Winteri. I am, of course, Rook, and we are getting ready for, honestly, a matchup, a, a game that we didn't expect to have to see. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to correct myself. I am too tired. I did say that it was the... Um... I said the A-team score when I was talking about the OT. It wasn't, but it, AEX1 did actually go to OT against the A-team. So they have had a lot of rounds on Lotus today because they also beat um, Ranked Demons 13-7. So they've had a 13-7 and then also a 16-14 victory. So they have had a lot of experience on Lotus, a lot of time to drill in what that map is and what it means to them as players. But when we're going into this rematch, we were expecting something... A little more 2 0. At least yeah. I, I'm talking in regards to the analytical side of me, not necessarily who I want to win. Yeah. But that's what we expected. It's on paper. They've had it not three hours before, three, four hours before, and now we're going into it. It's like, okay, we're going to somewhere we didn't actually expect. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting series, and I'm glad we've had this as the grand finals. And yeah, like you said, a three map series in the grand finals is the best place to have it. Yeah, no, it certainly is. I mean, I, I agree. I mean, coming into it before we saw map one, we were thinking two one. You know, same thing again, right? Why not believe in that when it happened the first time? We got evidence for it. But after map one, with the dominant performance on Haven, I think we were all looking at AEX um, and going, "Why aren't they going to pick this up? Why aren't they going to dominate again on the map they had before?" Well, the big reason was that Astra obviously coming on through the changing up of the entire composition, and you were talking about how the fact that. Viper is not a great solo controller, especially on that map, and it made it really difficult for them to play it the first time around. Now they changed, well, they managed to take it. Yeah, and it was the way they were playing the solo controller. It didn't feel like that was the way they had planned it originally, but it doesn't matter about the last map. What matters is about this map. It is the last map that you're going to hear us cast, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> I'll leave that up to you, but let's get into that agent select. Let's see what they're going to be bringing out on Lotus. Is that... Oh, do you know what? I was thought we were going to see a gecko. No, but we do get the chamber. Don't worry yes. about it. You okay, can, gecko for one. a chamber. I'm okay with that change. <laughs> uh, potentially going to be this fade coming out from Cray, and we saw that before. That was very successful. I'm interested to see what rank demons they're going to be bringing out. Whether they're going to be thinking about that Astra and looking at the fact that they've got this. Well, oh, geez, um, whether they've got this Viper and thinking about whether it needs a second uh, controller. I wouldn't mind the Harbor as well. I mean, we've seen how effective it can be from AEX on the on Pearl map, and over on Lotus, I think it also has similar um, effects. So, yeah, I mean, I'd be absolutely here for it. Yeah, it's definitely, if they do stick with this harbour, it's a change from what they brought last time. With last time they had the Viper, like I said, the solo smokes, which I'm not a fan of, whether it was on um, Pill and Lotus, which they played it in the last series we saw against each other. They had the Breach, the Raze, the Sky, and then the Killjoy. So now we're going into this Viper still from um, Dis maybe, but also bringing that harbour in if this is the comp that they're sticking with. 
Yeah, I mean, they've definitely been playing around with it. I'd be surprised to see Tyke on anything but a Sentinel. I don't really mind which one it is, but I'd be surprised to see them on the Phoenix that they were hovering earlier. Gonna be that Killjoy. That seems pretty characteristic for them. Um, and Ranked Demons gonna lock in... I. I mean, I'd be here for the harbour. Uh, I, I just don't know if they are actually going to do it. It looks like they are indeed. So double controller coming through from them, and this sets them up well, I feel. Yes, but... <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do like a little bit of an improv thing. It's the whole yes and situation. Yes, and they've also lost their breach. So That's they've true. lost the breach in favor of bringing the harbor over. And I just want to point out how effective um, Adina was in that series. Even though they lost it, the um, amount of assist she had was skyrocketing. And it's just losing that sort of the true. stun, the damage, and also the flash all in one kit. I would have thought they would go more for the breach as that solo initiator rather than bringing the sky. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think you've really got to be thinking about what you're losing. I think that's always something that I think a lot of people go, oh, well, this 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 agent is really good here. Yeah, but if you don't have the other one, then your comp, comp kind of falls apart. The thing is, there's very little you really want to drop from this. It makes it very awkward sometimes when you're thinking about it. You'd love to have just another agent, right, obviously, because an extra player would go pretty hard, if you ask me. But uh, um, rank demons on the whole. I think their comp sets what? up well, but... <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, Ella, firing squad works as well. Yeah, and Ella has not only faced the firing squad, but also faced the grenades of um, Tiny there in that situation. And even though she does not make it out alive, the information does. And also the adaptation in AEX's attack. They've gone straight in towards this C. And... It's, a, it's again, they're going for this um, CT push and CT presence. The Naze is going to be pushing them into this situation, into the frenzies, but oh my gosh, the kills. That was a lot of damage, but unfortunately, not as many kills. Kaneko, I mean, we've seen them pop off before, but unfortunately, AEX1 lose out on a pistol. We might be seeing a turn up for the books. Might be the upset of the century. <laughs> but talking about AEX1 Nova... I don't think I've seen a single round where they've planted C and they've planted the normal, I say no. the normal default for mount. They always plant towards CT, they always push CT, and I, do, I think only three times it's actually been fruitful and successful in gaining the space. Yeah, I think sometimes you got to go with conventional wisdom and kind of hold back a little bit. There's some really solid per platforms from which to contest, and maybe you can play at slightly longer angles. They had access to uh, a couple of ghosts, I think. I could be wrong on that. I think at least one. Um, so they have ways to kind of hold back from that longer angle, and they can have some players play really close contact positions, which I think AEX are really good at. So I I'm surprised to see them go for it, but at the same time, they want to get aggressive. They want to take control um, over the CT spawn because they want all the space they can ask for. Yeah, and the space is going to be taken by Ikyo with those double satchels, still oh. shorty in hand, but Tiny just there, sat waiting for the CP from Ella. Yeah, I mean, that is a call out and a half. Ella not able to shut down the flanks like they were on previous positions, but that aggression with those Spectres is just so brutal. And Tiny Lady takes four kills in that round. Showstop are already available before the end of the second round. Even so, going into this um, bonus round for them it could prove vital. But also we know how unfortunate Tiny can be with those raised um, showstoppers. Especially on Lotus. Yeah, it, it definitely can be pretty scary and for both players. I mean, sometimes those don't go quite as you want to. We saw some <laughs> difficult ultimates before. Just mi missing, honestly. It, it was, it was weird, but it seems targets. like in this series, Tiny is a... Uh, been a lot more successful with them, which I'm here for. Yeah, she's also a lot more successful in kills. She's netted seven kills in wow. two rounds, and also been able to pick up, obviously, ult points, and that spectre still in hand. Yeah, I think definitely wants to invest into that showstopper what? early in a spray that just finds some answers. I mean, that's exactly the kind of thing that AEX1 Nova desperately need after some very difficult rounds, but, well... I mean, it's just a surprise to see coming on through. The flank is being... Not being watched! Hera getting caught off guard. The rocket lands on two! And this time, Tiny Lady looking far more confident. Ranked Demons looking far more in control. And in command right now, Kraya has to step up one versus two, but just doesn't have the space to make it work. What did I say about the showstopper in the bonus round? Exactly, exactly what 
um, you said is going to happen is the showstopper has been used in a, such a great position and being able to secure two kills. But when you were talking about the flank, Harris just been shot in the back with no sort of flank watch, no trips up from Ella, and no sort of awareness that someone could push all the way from C straight down into the um, well into spawn. It feels like all the uh, map awareness that we saw in Haven that I was like, wow. AEX1 Nova, they've turned it up to 11, they look so good. Seems to have just gone out the window, honestly. Yeah, it does seem that it's gone somewhere, but let's see if they can reach out and pull it back since this is going to be a little bit of a um, half by round for them in the future. In the next round, this one and the next are going to be the more important ones for AEX1 Nova to get a grasp on how they want to do things and how they're going to be approaching this map. What a good catch. Adina again just finding some brilliant frags over on these controllers. And it's a scary prospect when Adina is just finding names left, right, and center. She has definitely been, I think, the most Ooh. standout player from this squad, at least in this series. And Rank Demons have been making it work as a result. The Guiding Light does get some flash, but doesn't lead to any aggressive pushing. Instead, it's going to have to be Ella, the one stepping up to the plate to try and contest this. But you can see on the minimap, those players are just waiting patiently for the push to come on through. They know that the spike is down there. They're going to have to contest it one way or another, and Ella is not going to be able to land those shots. AEX1 Nova seed another round, and four on the trot for ranked Demons. This is looking pretty darn good for them. I think it suffices to say. Yeah, it looks like they had a rude awakening up in the first map on Haven. Like, oh, we've just lost our map pick. What is this? And, well, we saw the adaptations they made on Pill. And the change of scoreline, really, is the most stark difference. And now, coming into this, they're already halfway to the scoreline that they had previously, which was seven, um, seven rounds on the board against AEX1 Nova on this map. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Tiny Lady has really been going to town in terms of setting up their team, being aggressive, taking control of the map, dropping the showstopper not too far off of another one even. And that's a terrifying prospect if you're an AEX1, AEX1 Nova fan right now because their ultimates are very much lacking. Here it gets a frag as Tiny Lady overstays their welcome. And the frags are starting to come through as it seems to be a pitter-patter of tempo now for AEX1 Nova. But this is just one round. They're still going to make it into a little bit more AEX getting the start of their control over this game though. And well, as soon as they start getting to control, this maybe has something to say about it. Getting the round, um, the number differential back down to something a little bit more manageable. A one uh, player difference is not that bad in the whole grand scheme of things, especially when they should be able to isolate some of these gunfights. Oh, this maybe looking to try and hold this one, but was not expecting Ella to be roaming around with Vandal in tow. Tycho's position, I mean, pretty much well known. They already have an idea of where the rest of this is, and Ella just has to hold it patiently. The rest of their team is going to hold the angles. Does not win out the duel, but can just teleport away. That's the big thing about this chamber. Does not have to commit to any of this at all. As a result, the spike is in a fantastic position, and AEX1 Nova should be able to lock this one down. Tycho trying to get a spray. But Almost gets a second there. I was a little anxious. Look at those health totals. Um, there's not much there no. to look at. Um, yeah, a little bit. They might need to go to the hospital. Get a bit of a checkup on that one. <laughs> but no, again, great round from then. First round on the boards for um the side of AX One Nova, and it was a nice adaptation. They were able to get the first couple of picks. It was the brawl towards a long again. It's kind of messy, especially with the um new picks from ranked teams bringing in that harbor. But it does seem as soon as they add a supportive agent in regards to a supportive controller to help um, Miss Davy on the Viper, and it's not only on her to help Smoke to cut off angles, they've just excelled. They surely have. The Rolling Thunder is great. Does mean they're able to capture this one. But look at Tiny Lady, ready and willing to trade back on out. And it feels like Ranked Demons in this map have been so willing and ready to trade out on all of these. The fact that Miss Dis Maybe is even able to find a frag there is honestly shocking to me. Can Co <laughs> gets one as they try and step up to the plate. And well, now AEX Nova have got control of this round. It's one versus three again. This time, Tycho with a little less to really work with just that turret. And, well, having to push through a smoke was not exactly conducive to a great round for them as they get sprayed through it. 
<laughs> yeah, as soon as that barrel is going to pop out through the smoke, the spray comes in yeah. from the side of A1X Nova. And it looks like that timeout really did do them the world of good. They've managed to put together two rounds now and some two quite convincing rounds as well. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> Do I'm still hesitant about it. They were con confident rounds from AEX1 Nova, but at the same time, Ranked Demon's ceding a little bit of control in the earlier part of the rounds. They've slipped up a little bit. I don't know. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still very much looking at Ranked Demon's going, you know what, I think they've got it. I believe in them. I've got the faith. Is this a biased caster? Well, I this? mean, I think oh. most people are expecting AEX1 Nova to pick it, and I think that Ranked Demon's, they're looking exciting, and I think, I think they have the chance. Well, you're going for Devil's Advocate then. Uh, a little bit, but also, <laughs> they're just looking fun. Okay, okay. So, looking fun is certainly a word for it, but Tiny Lady is definitely having some fun with Ellis in this round, taking her out with that stinger. Hera making it through the door just at oh. the last minute with that teleportation. Yeah, AEXQ just constantly using those satchels to great effect. Tiny Lady looking for a chance to do it themselves, but lacking a little bit as the shots just ring true onto the rest of their teammates. Now they don't really have the firepower to make these angles go, especially with that stinger. As much as you can spray those players, eventually you're going to just find yourself landing with very little damage really managed to net. We would bet Bop is... I think you're going to struggle with that one, forced away by the paint shells, and it looks like it's going to be three rounds of the trot for AX1 over here. Yeah, and again, we're just saying about the pistol runs, the pistol, and then the conversion of that. Let's just take that out of account. They've been 2-2 two and two for gun rounds. Yes, there's been eco rounds in that involved, just because of how the economy has worked. But in regards to how they're winning these gun rounds, it's been more confidently in the way of AA1X. Yeah, I mean... And this is actually contrary to what we would normally see. Ranked Demons normally struggling with those pistols, struggling to kind of get some of the more cheap rounds going their way. But AEX1 Nova now start to step up, do this more solidly. I mean, it's a bit of a surprise to me because, you know, I'm looking towards Adina and going, okay, where's the shotgun? Where's uh, the SMG? Where's the ratty positions? But I think with Harbour, it's a little bit more difficult to get in some of those ratty positions. You don't have a smoke to hide in, for example. You don't have these kind of set plays with which was kind of what enabled the sofa. Absolutely. Whoa, just maybe just about managed to make it out that horn. Really could have led to that showstopper. Well, stopping their show very simply. IQ getting aggressive, taking a lot of space for their team. And again, this A-site seems to be fantastic for them. Tiny Lady in a really cool off angle here, trying to catch some of the players from on high. Using the showstopper of their own, dropping down rocket. <gasps> doesn't kill, just barely will finish it off, but gets traded as a result. Puts themselves in harm's way, and AEX are not going to let you stand in harm's way and not get punished for it. Kraya, however, able to slip by the trailblazer and as a result at least managed to trade one for one as the aggression starts to come on out here now for AEX1 Nova. They've got a player advantage. Can they make it happen as the Viper's Pit is invested by Dismavy as they really want to lock this down. They really want to bring this to a knockdown drag out fight in this situation because the numbers don't matter so much but no one can see but now everyone can see just how badly that round went for them. Yeah, and it really does come down to certain positions that A AEX1 have put themselves in. They've taken, without it sounding bad, they've taken a lot of 1v1 positions. With, look at where Kraya was there, then you also have Ikkyo then walking upstairs, taking the gunfight onto, I believe it was, um, um, we would be Bob in the stage position, but it's like we've had three different 1v1s go on within the space of three seconds, all n none with like supporting utility, and it's just you've gone into that position, good luck, kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> and realistically, that's okay if they're winning the gunfights, in which they were, which is great to see for the side of uh, AEX, but long term. I want to see the back, the regimented back, which exactly what they're doing now. They're going for those gunfights. It is an eco, but it's still they're fighting it together with mm. utility. Yeah, looks like this time someone is going to be watching, especially since that uh, piece of util was brought out. That haunt is going to give. I think I don't think it actually spotted anyone, but the fact that it got shot out obviously still belies that there is someone. And with Ella watching these angles, I mean, this has been the rear guard for this team pretty consistently it has been very impressive in their ability to do so AEX have gotten this round in tow and that's why everybody's lining up for a chance to take down Adina and especially after what Adina did to them on the last yeah. series I think I think that's justified from the side of AEX but going into this now finally getting breaking that round um, differential they are now in the lead 
just look at the timeline. It's four losses of, to then go into four wins for the side of AX. Yeah, I mean, not not in themselves up right now to uh, to five in total is a really solid position to find yourself because there's so much they can do to really finish off this half. And right now their economy is looking. I mean, look, it's a bumper crop. Multiple players over seven k in tow, so they could buy for the rest of this half. I feel and not even have a problem. AEX one over right now are just absolutely rolling in it. They've got a couple of ultimates as well to work with if they want to. They've only got to deal really with the lockdown. That nightfall is going to be pretty fantastic at catching players like this Maeve out. The Prowler does not give a chance, but the spray is there and just Maeve, when I doubt them, that's when they start to show us just how good they are. And the adaptation now is straight from that. They've invested so much into the side over this A. They was like, okay, you can have A. We will go towards B and take towards the C side of this map. But Ikyo is not going to be able to get any fruits for your labor. And neither will Ella. It's all down to the two players of AEX1. Mm -hmm. The Reckoning makes things very difficult to really stand and fight on, unfortunately. Good spray from Kraya, but I don't know if they're going to be in position. It's important to keep in mind, yeah, about Hera and what they're able to do. They're able to deny that defuse, but how much else are they really going to be able to do? There's too many players, too many angles to deal with, and while someone dies to the Viper's Bite, it is still going to be the round going their way. It does seem that we've seen so many team kills yeah. or self kills in a, in the series is today. But... Timeout definitely helped them. Going into a 5-5. Five, five. Evening the man count, like you say, is even Stevens now for these two teams. Yeah. I think AEX1 Nova are, are fine with this, as we said. But they've got the economy. They can strike right on back. They can keep that tempo up. Um, whereas even though they won the round, Ranked Demon is going to be struggling a little bit. They're going to have some of those players on slightly weaker buys. They don't have access to the jet or the chamber to be able to force up onto that, um, sorry, use that ultimate effectively, like the Tour de Force, to um, have an extra weapon. So they're just going to be lacking in that regard. They're going to be sitting with the Sheriffs, which certainly can do a lot of damage, but not quite obviously as versatile as something like the Rifle. I agree. I concur. It is definitely something that they're going to have to watch out for, but what Ella is watching out for the Sheriff of Taiko getting that trade onto and re avenging the dying teammate Bakraya, clearing out that site now, and it's two versus four. The Breach Rolling Thunder now on line four. AEX will know whether they choose to use it this round or in the future. Yeah, I think, I mean, when you've got site control, that rolling, then not quite as helpful. Maybe they use it if the post plant starts to go a little bit skew if, but Tiny Lady pushes forward, tries to make some space for their team, but Taiko also isn't there to capitalize off of it in quick enough time. That haunt, not quite spotting them, so Taiko fine for now. As they don't know where she's pushing from. That concussion, though, will easily belie, and, well, a great round again for AEX Wandova. I feel a little bit like... AEX1 Nova is starting to just get that footing. I was looking forward to what ranked demons were able to do, but maybe I cast as custom. Honestly, <laughs> the caster curse has just been so apparent in all the games, whether it's the 9 3 caster curse or just the general. Oh, this play's been really great, and then they just get like one tapped out of the air or something yeah. the next. But going into this round, I really want to see. Ranked demons actually take space and hold it. We've seen loads of skirmishes towards um, A long. But why can't we do something towards C and rather than take all the space and push all the way into spawn, just hold it, see what you can do and have sort of a uh, traffic light system of red a space you leave, um, orange a space you hold and a green a space you like explore and want to go into. But it's not something that we're seeing so far from the defensive half. But what we're seeing from AEX is so much aggression. <laughs> Taiko tries to step up to with some of that aggression of their own, but Paranoia and a couple of other pieces of utility do force them back for now. AEX can be able to claim some of that space, start to back off, hold from slightly different angles. They've got that spike planted, and they don't really need to hold it or contest in a lot of these angles. That lockdown invested here, I think that's a really, really good, interesting choice to try and just force them off, but with AEX's position right now, I don't think that's necessarily going to be a problem. They instantly get shot out here. There's not anything. There is actually going to be a player detained to maybe try and bait something to go here. They want to stand on top of the mound. They want to try and deny that chance to get the defuse going. The shot hit through the smoke and Adina right now oh, trying to stick utility. it is going to die here. Unfortunately, as you said, that utility was just too much. Tycho does get a couple of frags, but it's all to no avail. This maybe just can't move up there in time. It is now going to get caught by the bomb as is everyone. It is, as it is the last round of the half. <laughs> 
the utility in that situation. I don't think there was any sort of way, even if they got all the kills, that they'd have enough time to get all the way around, back up on to the bomb and defuse it, which is great utility. That's something that we've, I've, we've always said about AEX is the post plans or also the side XX in regards to the utility itself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, AEX 1 Nova have set themselves ahead now going into this defense. Mm. And I'm looking forward to seeing if they're going to pick up this best round, first of all, which has been kind of their thing so far. <laughs> um, and whether they're going to be able to show us that kind of play continued on the defense. And I actually think their comp is a little bit better geared um, for defense in terms of the chamber, but obviously with double initiator, they're really looking towards those retakes. That's that's the kind of play I'm expecting. Maybe find a frag if someone moves in, then play for the retake. We also see Ella being a lot more comfortable, although she has just fallen as that first pick. They, like you say, um, chamber is more suited to the defense. At least how Ella plays um, him, he's been so um, pivotal in regards to using the headhunters towards the A and also C long. But what also is coming from A long is a horde of AEX1 Nova players. Yeah, there's so many of them looking to just pile on in. Tiny Lady tap tap taps away with that ghost and we'll find a second even trying to, well, leave themselves up for that third. But AEX1 Nova now playing two versus three. The spike is down. Here are waiting on the other side, is looking for a chance to push on in. They are also just inside that smoke. The flash goes out, position is known, but the right clicks are more than enough. Hera being the heroine right now for their team, but it is Dismavy versus Hera on this position, expecting the flank. It does, in fact, get it, reads it like a book, and AEX on Nova. It's close, but they still find that pistol round. There you go. Like you said, pistol runs what they're known for in this tournament, apparently. And like, like you said, they've picked that up, and Hera... Lovely right clicks. I think that was three right clicks in a row. <laughs> yeah, I do believe it is, especially on that one. There's the Viper comes on up, just yeah. a right click right on through, and free yeah, gun, guys, free gun, <laughs> free gun. By the way, <laughs> yeah, you gotta indulge in the memes, but also it's really annoying when you get right clicks. All I'm saying, it does suck. Yep. Anyway, going back into this, this is a game that matters, not our poor, poor ranked games where we're getting right clicked. This is where it's do or die for these teams to walk away the victor over Birds of Prey at Series 5. Mm -hmm. Both of these teams already qualify for challenges, but they do still have to battle it out for that top spot here. That's why we're still here this late in the evening, juking it out, bringing you these games. AEX1 Nova. They've looked confident in the rest of their series, but this one, they've made some slippers. They've given some opportunity. I don't know how Ike, you found that frag, but, I mean, they'll certainly take it. Ranked Demons now on the back foot. Don't have the numbers, don't have the weaponry, don't have very much, honestly, going their way in this half. The right click could absolutely do it. It almost does, but Ike, you just barely survives. There is a new sky available either to heal up back to full HP, but... If they stay a little bit far back, is okay for them, but Hera has something to say to um, any of the other remaining ranked demon players. Hera setting up for their team, as they expect that push to come into B, and they're absolutely right, just maybe looking for a chance to maybe sneak on in, find someone, or set up for that rotate to C, which they do definitely have available. They're going to invest that wall, they're going to start to push on through, trades one for one, the weapon advantage very much apparent here. The reload was going through for Kaneko, but certainly wasn't for Heroes. They closed that one down and edge ever closer to that double digits. And yeah, only one round away now from the double digits from claiming the upper bracket run all the way through to the grand finals and then possibly even winning it if they can close this match out. But that is the first two rounds over the half over and done with. I just don't like to talk about those. They, I'm not a fan They're of pistol fake. rounds. Yeah, they, they don't count, guys. We're only talking about the real rifle rounds here. And this one is slightly different since obviously ranked humans are going to be going in onto this with a access bonus. Be interesting to see what they can, well, gather in regards to kills or first bloods or, in, or at least positionings like we've seen Ella get into already this round. Mm -hmm. Prowler doesn't quite make it around the corner, so not going to be very helpful information, unfortunately, for this one. The rifles, however, certainly going to be helpful in dealing with Ella, who has played this position pretty consistently. But there it is. There's the share of magic. We always see it come on out, and it's exactly what AEX need in that situation. Every little lick of damage is all good for them as ranked demons start to make their way onto that A site. 
Yeah, and the kill onto Ekro, they're trying to get away through those, uh, through the secret passageway. But no. Tiny lady is waiting up here. They actually go check for her. This is so big. Okay, Hera does, but it's actually not that good for them. Ranked Demons managed to find the frag as there is some players with their heads screwed on tight. Tycho gives the backup as well. And Ranked Demons find that round. They manage to convert over and deny away that bonus from being a bit too much of a problem. But they've still got to deal with rifles coming their way from AEX Nova in the next round. Yeah, absolutely. But it's, it's a good start for the side of Ranked Demons keeping their um, name in the game for this matchup and also for the Grand Finals. So yeah, AEX1 Nova coming in with rifles here. They've got access to the From the Shadows. I think the big problem for me is that they're going to have to deal with Tiny Lady on this Showstopper again, because this is, while it was struggling in some of the other rounds we've seen, for the other um, series we've seen from them, has been deadly so far in this map and in this series. So it's a real threat, and they need to make sure they don't get caught off bit, because just this one frag advantage can make a world of difference here. Yeah, it's like the... The showstop has been magnetic in this series, just attracting itself to all the AEX one Nova players. While in the other games, it's been sort of the opposite sort of effect. But Ella, who bullets are magnetic to Adina's brain there, and taking the harbor off the war, uh, board already, they're going to have to rely on the Viper smokes to cut off these angles. Showstopper buys a lot of space. I don't think he's going to be able to find any target, unfortunately, for Tiny Lady. But I mean, no one's messing around. No one's going to have to. You know, actually fight with that one. Actually manages to land the damage. Does not kill Ella, but pretty much puts her all, all butt um, into that position. So AEX now got to push on into this um, into this Viper's pit. Catch up with these players. The spray damage is there, but not quite the kill. Eventually they close it out now as they continue to push on forward. Just the Viper and their pit right now with a little bit of backup, and they do eventually clear it. It's just Tycho left alone versus three. And AEX1 Nova, they push into the ultimate, they get to double digits, and they are looking comfortable right now. Yeah, comfortable as well, and also in their element, it does seem like they are thriving on this defensive half, like we saw in the previous matches that up. Like you mentioned about Ella and how, how she plays the Chamberlain's, like, yes, she's had great influence on the attack in previous matches, but also when she's on this defense, she, it oh, yeah. it's... Just a completely different story. Being able to get those um, rendezvous TPs out of certain situations while also getting early information and early picks, well, hand in hand. Yeah. Going to be the only one covering the seaside right now. Obviously has access to that rifle. Playing some pretty aggressive positions as a result as of said rendezvous. And it seems like right now we've got a date with picking off yet another player, but unfortunately gets caught by Diz Mavy just this one time again. And AEX, they've got these ultimates for the retake, so I think they're fine to chill out, make sure there's no push coming on anywhere else, make sure they don't lose any more of these players, and then, well, look for that as a chance. Yeah, there's, that's also a rifle they're going to be able to pick up. Can I go? I left. They don't know Tiny Lady's here. This is such a good frag to come through, and, and Tiny Lady even turns it into a second weapon disadvantage. That ain't no thing. No, and it's AEX1 Nova now in the disadvantage. Yes, they lost one player for nothing, but then losing another two just for the one. It's a four versus two. Yeah, it was a really nice chance for AEX Nova to play for that post point, but they slip up, get caught off guard while trying to go for the flank that would have been really impactful. But they didn't count on the fact that there was a slow rotate coming on in, and Ranked Demons do manage to catch them. Hera and the gang, right now, I think kind of looking at this one and going, okay, can we find a couple of these frags? Can we find the openings? That's how we're really going to make this push happen. We start to force through on these angles. This maybe wants to try and contest, but the Viper's Bite does not go the way they want to. However, Tiny Lady is on a tear. Tiny Lady and 4Ks, it feels like it's just how Bears of Prey Series 5 has worked so far. The amount of 4Ks that um, Phil has gotten is insane. Uh, it's really impressive, and uh, it's been so dynamic in their play, in their positioning, and the kind of space they're able to take. Definitely a raise to watch if you're looking for someone to learn from. Yeah, 
Absolutely, and well, someone to learn from is definitely Korea. She's coming in this heavy hitting, and I think the last two times we've seen this map, it was Ikio and then Kaneko both having outstanding performances, respectfully, in two different matches. Now it's the third time we've seen this same one in this, well, in the last couple of hours, actually, from the side of AX. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a problem. Seekers completely denied here by AEX, but a lot of information given over to the side of Ranked Demons. They're going to spread out again, maybe look for that C-Site, B-Site push, which they've been doing quite well in tandem. Right now the spike, I believe, is looking towards uh, the C-Site, so going to be first contact for Hikyu, oh, but can't make anything happen. And they don't actually commit towards it yet. This is slow, patient, and exactly what I want from Ranked Demons. It is something that is quite uncharacteristic in regards to ranked demons in general, whether that's your actual ranked demons or this team. They seem to be a quite aggressive team, and the fact that they're taking so much time and their approach to this has been very methodical is quite nice to see, and it's the respect that they're giving to AX. And, well, it's working for them. They've been able to win some of these rounds or get at least get them a lot closer and catch so many people off guard. They will. Tiny lady on the flank. Left. Patience to discipline right now is going to get a lot out of this. I'd be surprised if they don't. The reckoning invested. We see players start to move in forward, move in aggressively, and there it is. Rank Demon shutting down as the push come on in. Kreya will step up to the plate, but look who's behind. Tiny Lady takes down Ella and Kreya and the gang. It's two versus three, and they have to be wary of so many angles. Adina does not manage to keep it alive. Does not manage to keep the dream open as the Nano Storms are starting to get pop. Tycho wants to move into a better position. Wants to get that back up, but they don't know where it is. There's one. They're aware that there's probably someone sitting waiting on mounted dis. Maybe is that the only player left alive? AEX1 Nova, they're contesting it, they're getting aggressive on it, and they are going to try and go for the defuse here. I believe they have more than enough time, I can't quite tell. Yeah, they they do time. indeed, and they should be able to pick this one up and take themselves over to 11. And an ace as well, also coming in for the Omen player of A1, AEX1 Nova. Lovely shots as well. I think... Wait, was there an ace? It said, it said ace, but I swear it her got a kill. And Korea it's, got a kill. Yeah, that's a weird one. I don't am know. I, am I too tired? Have no, I, it did say ace. Right? And Korea did get a kill and her got a kill. It wasn't team ace, was it? No. It no, might have It might have been team ace. Guys, okay. we're tired. We're, we're sorry. Tired. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I thought I saw ace as well. Don't worry. Well, team ace is technically ace, right? Yeah, yeah. Basically, right? Yeah. Well, EQ is going to go for an ace of her own, getting the sheriff shot onto Adina, taking that harbour off the board for the side of ranked demons. And even though they won the last round, they're going to be in a little bit of dire need of financials, just the way rounds have been going. Yeah, right now, Tiny Lady looking to make some money, catching some of these players and maybe catching a little bit of a bounty as well. AX1 Nova have access to an ultimate in the same way ranked demons do, but with a lower health uh, raise, it might be a little bit harder to really get that one to work. Now, ranked demons, they continue to push aggressively, and it's Tiny Lady yet again spearheading that kind of push. The nade goes deep and forces them away again as the push is really going towards the seaside. The entirety of this was just Tiny Lady applying pressure to distract away from it. Can Ella find a frag? That's access to this gun. It, oh, struggles with it a little too much. Tycho will not let that one slide. AEX1 Nova going to lose out on this round most likely unless we see a fantastic push from the fade. But it might be Kraya kind of holding back, maybe saving this rifle. But maybe also contesting. I mean, I don't know what the economy looks like. That's really... Uh, the economy's right not great. <laughs> well, okay. If the economy's not great, then maybe try and save it. But Kraya decides otherwise. AEX1 Nova. They're two rounds away from winning, but... That could be a long way. Yeah, they were on a half by that round, hence coming into this you had a couple of players with half shields or with just tour de, um, tour de force, um, just headhunter bullets. Now they're going to be going into that buy, maybe missing a little bit of utility here and there. But the side of ranked demons, they're going into it with good, um, good money. Yeah, uh, we are having a quick tech pause. There are some issues. Um, I don't know what they are. It doesn't look like it's ping issues at the very least, uh, unless it's Tiny Lady, but that's 40 ping. It's not like it's 300. Um, hopefully, they'll get sorted in just a second. Uh, but yeah, I think now looking at the economy, right, we've got it on our screens. AEX have a really good opportunity ahead of them. 
because they've got access to all these rifles, they've got everything. They've also got those three, nearly four ultimates um, as well, with Ella close to, at the very least, that Torda Force. I'm really looking at this Rolling Thunder right now for the retake. I think AEX1 Nova want to really be looking for that more than anything. I'm also quite worried if they do allow Ranked Demons to take that space onto site that it will be um, just maybe getting that um, plant or getting any sort of kill or orb coming into the site and then that means the Viper's Pit is available and we've seen how um, well catastrophic the Viper's Pit can be for the rank de um, for Ranked Demons in regards to how well they're able to play around it and the opponents are just unable to well quite utilise what they can like, sorry, not utilize, quite um, get those 1v1s when they, that Viper's Pit is up because it's just so hard for them to do it. Yeah, I mean, they're really good at splitting people up using it and, and kind of just finding the right kind of fights. And especially with players like... Um... Uh, like Adina, uh, who's really able to play those close quarters very well. I I'm looking forward to more and more of this. I'm a little sad. Adina not able to have the same kind of impact that we've seen before. Great amount of assists, don't get me wrong. Still playing their util well, but maybe Harbour not quite so comfortable for them, not able to deliver. And We've been focusing, I think, with uh, Ranked Demons on that comfort, on kind of just going for the kind of play that we want to... Um, that they're used to making, and that's done them quite well, but maybe kind of expanding out a little bit more has not managed to net them the benefits that we otherwise would have seen. Yeah, I do like the adaptation in regards to they have the Harbour and the Viper over the, just the Viper itself. I don't think they would have gotten this many rounds if it was just the Viper, but again, if it's the comfort picks of one of your top fraggers and it's caused issues then it's not great but what's causing issue is Taiko's positioning and Ella's just unawareness to how <laughs> it looks like the Viper wanted the orb then but they're going to be able to get it from the plant anyway if the spike gets dropped over and the Viper stick yeah. pit will still be coming online going to be a couple players rotating around they've still got potential to move onto that C site but you can see that the rest of AEX1 Nova are ready to pounce on that one they don't pull the trigger just yet, knowing that they're waiting for Ranked Demons to really commit towards anything. As we said before, the Rolling Thunder is still available. They could reposition for it. If you're communicating that there is some sort of, well, play coming around the potential B-site, and that I think Ranked Demons are really evaluating their options. Yeah, absolutely. And the options that they've decided for is to go towards this C-site. <gasps> oh, it doesn't check behind. Looked at the corner, but didn't look hard enough as the rest of it's set up. If you've got the rocket inside the Viper's pit, it will land, but it importantly won't kill the Viper, who's actually able to find the frag back. This maybe is taken, well, is able to take a frag, but can they get taken down? There's players right on the outside, and that is match point now for AEX1 Nova. This is looking so grand for them. The Nightfall available, so many things in hand, and that Econ still looking fine. Yeah, and it's not just map point, it is series point, it is tournament point for the side of the AEX1 Nova. They're looking so confident coming into this. Expended two ults in them, they had the um, show stopper and also the Rolling Thunder, but then they still have three still available versus, well, none of um, Ranked Demons. I was going to say that ult economy is looking fine for AEX1 Nova, but the economy, not so hot. They've got access to the Tour de Force for Ella, so they've got ways to try and contest this. And I love the fact that as soon as they hear that, there's the adaptation from Ranked Demons. They look at it and go, okay, well, if you're doing that, we could just wall it off. We can use that harbour effectively, right? They have so many smokes, why not? Yeah, but the issue is is that hasn't netted them any space at all, as they're just going to be backing off that and... Ella can re-explore further later on into the round that we've seen them do it so often. But it's going to be B that they're going to be going towards the harbour utility now coming out. But no committal. It does seem ranked demons are slightly worried and over um, thinking some issues possibly. Tiny lady aware that there could be someone flanking, someone pushing down A. Yeah. I think this is a really good call. The lockdown coming on through um, is going to be a good way to try and maybe force them out of this one, but the molly is going to be too much. The detain comes on in. That hits two players. That's going to be huge. Ranked demons right now. They're down a player. 
Kray are looking for a chance to maybe burst onto the scene and deny. There's not a lot of time left, so Ranked Demons definitely have to be aware of this. I think committing towards the A is absolutely the right call. They've got time enough to go for that, but committing into where there's a bunch of players could easily have many, many a hazard. Now, we would beat Bop is actually able to get that spike down. The Haunt goes through. Kreia is going to try and move around the corner. Knows there's a player there, but just can't commit towards it. Iku giving the opening they need. It's just one left. Kreia hunting for it. Wants to finish it. Unfortunately, it's just six HP, and eventually it will be there. Iku finishes it all. 13 to 8. AEX Nova, it's a little later than we expected, but they still pick up the series in a 2 1 fashion akin to what we saw before. And Ala dies right at the very end at the hands <laughs> of Ikkyo. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty classic. Uh, you know, I respect the, the, the vibes that they got going on this late <laughs> to the night. They're still going through it all, and they must be an absolute cloud nine. It, it, <sighs> I'm so impressed with the kind of performance they managed to put on here. I was a little bit down in the dumps after map two. I was like, ooh, they could be slipping up. But in the end, AEX Nova still managed to show us just how good they are. Absolutely. And what a showing to have in the, well, the last um, game, the grand finals, the last map of the final series point. It was 1-1 to both in that best of three and they came out hitting for that final map and to claim, well, the prize. They are the winners of a Birds of Prey um, season five. And yeah, can we just say thank you so much to our prod? Hopefully you can get a picture of them on the screen now. Give us a bit of a wave, guys. Look at them, they're in the back room. This is where we keep them. They're not allowed on camera often, but we got them on for you because we've had such a lovely day and weekend giving you some of these um, games, especially for Birds of Prey. It's a female and marginalized gender community and a tournament, along with having the grassroots stuff going up into more esports in regards to the Game Changers um, tournament way into contenders, which we will be seeing these two teams representing the Polaris. Yeah, so excited for that one. Both of these teams, even though there is a loss going through there, they can't be too hard done by, I feel, uh, for um, Ranked Demons. They've got something out of this at the very least, and that's always a nice way to feel. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it was a really rough road uh, for Ranked Demons. They got put down into those user bracket, but it was AEX that beat them both times, and AEX looking super confident over the course of the tournament and, and really able to show us just how good these players can be. These girls really were kicking it. Yeah, absolutely. And well, that's it from us, really. We've had what an amazing time. It's AEX1 Nova. Just for that reminder, they had a flawless run through the upper bracket, not even going to the lower bracket once and then defeating the revenge attempt, really, from the side of Ranked Demons. But again, that's it from us. We've had an amazing experience at um, Red Bull Gaming Sphere in London, but that's it from us. And hopefully we'll see you in the next series.